All right. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, we're here with uh, the Northwest Vintage Rotisserie Draft Series. This is draft number five in the series. Viva. Uh, I'm Paul Waite, and joining me here is Stephen Berkland. Howdy ho. Uh, so, yeah, uh, thanks for joining us today. Uh, so, we'll go we're going to go ahead and start off and talk about uh, what is Vintage Rotisserie. A lot of people probably aren't super familiar with the format. Yeah, it's kind of a, a new phenomenon. Do you want to walk us through it a little bit? Yeah, so uh, the idea here is that one of every magic card is available to be drafted by the players. We have eight people. Uh, and then they kind of just go one through eight, eight through one in the second round, and everybody selects a card. Once a card's been taken, nobody else can take that card. The idea is that you want to create the most powerful deck you can in 45 picks. Yeah, so kind of an easy way to think about it is imagine uh, eight players sitting down on the table. Uh, the first player gets past a pack, a god pack, if you will, with every vintage legal card in it. Yeah, that'd be just sweet. Just a giant pack. And they take a card, they pass it to the left, pass it to the next person. Yep. Once it gets to eight, it snakes back around like a fantasy football draft. Yep. And from there, they pick 45 cards, they build some sweet decks. Yep. You don't have to draft your basic lands. Uh, those are provided in an in infinite supply. Absolutely. So, um, moving on here. Uh, the what our structure for this tournament? Uh, it's a round robin tournament, so everyone's going to play everyone. So we're going to yeah. have everyone play seven rounds. Yeah. Um, the buy-in for this tournament. Why don't you tell us a little this bit? This is about the most important part. Why don't, you, why don't you tell us about? It? I know yeah. you love the buy-in. The buy-in is uh, it's my idea actually. So, yeah, yeah. Uh, we started this out and we were drafting for scratch off, scratch scratch. Yep, yeah, and uh, lottery tickets and stuff. And then you know the winner of the draft would win maybe three dollars. Right. Yeah, uh, I actually won that first draft. We did it where uh, everyone bought in with twenty dollars with the scratch tickets. Winner got all of it except for twenty dollars, and the second per place person got it, uh, uh, twenty dollars worth. If they won, or if they won more, they would get it all. Yes. Uh, I won the draft, and uh, I got twenty-four dollars. So I made go. four bucks. Yeah, plus four. So that was pretty pretty cool. good. Well, this draft, uh, all eight of the participants have showed up with one bottle of sweet alcohol. Yeah. Uh, we've got uh, what what uh, what all do we have in there? I know Corbett brought some uh, wheat wheat vodka. There's uh, some Maker's Mark in there. Okay. Right. Um, there's, uh, like a chai tea vodka that Sean Collins brought. Okay. Um, Last time we ones. had some Everclear. Yeah, no Everclear this time. All right. There is, like, a Long Island mix part oh, of the combination. Okay. It's, like, five different kind of, well, who cares? No but single malts? No, uh, I don't think so. Not okay. today. All right. Uh, so the way we're going to do this is after all, uh, the matches are completed, we're going to have a best of five finals match between the players in the first and second uh, st uh, on the standings, it doesn't really matter what they're. The, if someone's seven and zero and someone's five and two, we're still going to do a playoff match. Yeah, got to beat them again. Yeah, you got you got to got to play it out. Mm -hmm. That's what we're here. We're here to play some magic drama. Uh, as far as controversy, uh, <laughs> yeah. As far as uh, rules enforcement goes, this isn't the pro tour. Uh, we're in, you know, we're hanging out here, so uh, we're we are it, playing for alcohol. Yeah. So we're calling it "Don't be a dick" enforcement. Yeah, it's the official terminology, I think. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, in as far as how the prizes get paid out, first place gets five. Yep. Second place gets, as you can see, uh, two, saying. and third gets one. They're gonna go ahead and draft actually the bottles at the end here. Yeah. Which is kind of is my favorite part of the draft actually. Really? Right. Yeah. Um, and then in last place, oh, uh, actually, we have a new addition this time around. We have our first place trophy. Oh, yeah. Uh, let's show the first place trophy. This, uh, we had the, the sweet Black Lotus trophy. Ah! Made. Whoa, don't break it there, buddy. Uh, <laughs> and uh, the Black Lotus on top there is made from a local artist, uh, Amanda, I guess, Sharp now. She married uh, Lee Sharp of Ooh. Watsy fame. So um, the, the pillars are sweet bottles of alcohol. Yeah, yeah pretty clever implementation. And there, the ooh, this me. lights up. It's on already. Yeah, it is. so that is the first place trophy, but we also have a last place trophy. This one rotates in cycles. Um, so the way we do it is if you get last place, you have to take home the last place trophy, and then you get made into the last place trophy for the next one. Last last place, last draft was... Teddy one, Vitro. One Teddy Vitro. And he drafted a the, Time Vault deck. So he is the Vault Scourge. Uh, and Vault his Scourge. deck got a little bit of away from him. He didn't quite turn out the way he had hoped, so... Uh, Whoever comes uh, ends up in last place today is going to have to take that home and display it prominently. In the yes, room. that is part of the rules. You must display it prominently. Absolutely. Yeah. All right. So moving on here, uh, this is the first draft that we're doing with Journey to Nix and available in the mix. And yep. I uh, Nix in the mix. Yeah, Nix in the mix. That's kind of fun. And uh, we're going to take a look at some cards here that might uh, we see drafted today. Yeah, I think the best one is the Disciple of Deceit. That card's insane. Disciple of Deceit. Yeah. Uh, it's pretty exciting. I mean, you can play that. I, I see that maybe getting in a you know Painter Servant Grindstone deck. Some kind of some kind of control deck that controls the game. Then at some point, it can start pitching its cards away for its yep. combo and take the game away. Uh, you know, City of Brass doesn't always get drafted, but I think Mana Confluence is new enough. People are going to be thinking about it, and probably I, I wouldn't be it's surprised. Possible. I mean, if there's any sort of a five color deck, they're going to end up with it, right? It's not it's not a very exciting deck, but um. Okay, uh, and then we also have Brain Maggot, 
which uh, Mesmeric Fiend always gets drafted. It's basically a functional reprint. Yep. Uh, you can enlighten tutor for it, which is a little reaching, but uh, no, I, would I would do be, that for sure. <laughs> I would, yeah, you definitely. I would. definitely would. Uh, yeah. But I, I would be shocked if we don't see a good draft. Yeah, I enlighten tutor for Tide Hollow Scholar like every time. Oh, God, yeah, so good. Okay, moving on. We've got a couple more cards here. Uh, the red deck gets some nice additions, I think. Here, uh, everyone's talking about Edelon of the Great Revel. It hasn't quite uh, really found a place yet in uh, you know constructed, but. I think it it's a will. good spot for it here, and I think Prophetic Flame Speaker could give the Mono Red deck the edge that it needs to really, you know, get, get a little bit. What am I? What am I looking for? Going over the top. Yeah, sure. Uh, and now my personal favorite card of the set. You like Disciple of the Seat. I'm on board with Disciple of the Seat, but I want to see Crucifixes in Psychic get drafted. You want to see somebody Enchantress people? I want to see someone draft Green Black Reanimator. Oh, okay. Uh, you can cast this card, and you know you can put some fatties in your graveyard, but you can also get Animate Dead. You find your survival. Necromancy, you can get your survival of the fittest. Mm. There's some there's some spicy meatballs in there with that card. True. I, I think we might be reaching a bit. We might not see it today, but I, I think in the future, that card we might see that card. All right, maybe maybe one of us will have to draft that. I, next time. I have I have like two or three lists with it already. Okay, all right. So um, moving on. You actually sold me in about four seconds. Yeah. I thought it was pretty bad, and then yeah, it, it's a spicy one. Yeah. Uh, uh, we have Banishing Light, uh, the new Oblivion Ring uh, with the new templating, and. Uh, Another card that you can just go and lighten two or four, a good, decent removal spell. Oblivion Ring always gets drafted. Yeah, the Oblivion Ring normally gets drafted. I wouldn't be surprised. I mean, if people want a second one, it's there. I, I, I would be shocked if we see both get drafted, but it's there. Yeah. Um, moving on, are we going to start talking about our drafters? Yes. All right. Oh, actually, I spoke a little too soon. No, these are previous drafters. These are previous drafters. Yeah. Uh, so the way we're doing this is we're doing drafts up until we have eight unique winners yes well, one, once we have eight unique winners at the end we're gonna do a draft of champions or a championship draft yeah so uh, if we go through the roster here uh, yours truly took down the first one of the season two, uh, season one winner. season one oh, wait uh, I drafted a blue black reanimator deck uh, took it down a uh, little bit of luck involved but I'm gonna claim it yeah. Uh, moving on we've got Charles DuPont who uh, drafted a blue green tempo deck the in best season ever. two and uh, it was pretty disgusting. His deck was just so good. Yeah, he had, he had a channel, was doing crazy things with that. Yeah. Uh, you want to talk a little bit about Peter? Uh, Peter's Time Vault deck was uh, one of the best decks that we have uh, we have seen in this It was in this spicy. Series. He also it had Painter, Servant, Grindstone. Yeah, yeah he had Painter, too. Servant, Grindstone. He had all the Tinkers. He had Tinker. Uh, it uh, was... And then just he sideboarded into uh, like Gamble and Time Spiral. Yeah, it was a thing and of just beauty. Comboed people. It was like crazy. It was very beautiful. Very good. Uh, next up, we have our reigning champion. Yep. Uh, Greg Peliquin drafted a pretty sweet blue black, just kind of the rock. Black, it was deck. black green. Was black oh, green. Sorry, black green. Yeah. That's what I meant to say. Um, um, he had like a survival package. He had dark depths in there. It was mostly order. yeah. It was it was mostly a base black uh, like disruption deck with some green creatures for clock. Yeah. Um, and he he had like survival and stuff, but he said he wasn't very happy with it. Uh, he he did he was very happy with his natural order, mm -hmm. uh, but um, yeah, the the disruption plus clock uh, and is is a winning recipe in yeah, a format absolutely. like this. Black is a very powerful yeah uh, color in this format. So okay, now we're ready to talk about this drafts uh, drafters, and we have some pretty spicy drafters today. I'm pretty Got excited about ones. it. Yeah. Uh, in the one seat or the black lotus seat, as we're starting to call it here, is uh, Nate Heiss. Uh, Nate Heiss is a guy maybe uh, maybe more newer players may not be familiar with, but back in the day this was one of the one of the bigger pro players. He has infinite pro points. He's sec you can see up there he's got second place at Grand Prix Kansas City. Is he Hall of Fame eligible? Does he have that many pro points? It's close, right? I think uh, I'm not sure. I'll okay. check on that. Yeah. Uh, but he did work for uh, Magic R and D for a long time. As there you, you can see there, he designed the persist mechanic, Thought Seas, which is a card we all know and love, Goblin Guide and Countryside Crusher. Nice. So. Uh, He's got to look out for. He is very good. This is his second one. He's got a cool plan too. Yeah, his yeah. deck is pretty sweet. Uh, he the last one he did with these, he tried to draft a uh, Splinter Twin combo deck. Yep. Uh, didn't quite work out. The format was a little faster than he thought it was. Beat and me. I and yeah, well, I think he was. Got me. He might be the only person he beat that. Jeez. Day. Uh, so anyway, moving on to our next drafter is our reigning champion, Greg Peliquin. Um, you want to talk about him for just a second? Yeah. So uh, I talked to Greg a little bit about uh, what he plans to do. Uh, for the draft, and uh, he he wasn't sure if he was going to be on Ancestral or uh, if he was going to be on uh, some sort of fast mana strategy, but uh, he definitely has uh, a lot of magic experience, uh, and uh, he'll probably be able to navigate his way through the draft uh, even without a concrete plan. Yeah. Um, he, uh, he obviously smashed the last one of these. Yeah. He, he beat all seven of the... Uh, 
of the other players. Uh, he his, actually, his round robin record was six and one. His only loss was Ventura, yeah. who he then beat in the finals. He actually so. came into the draft last time thinking he was going to get just absolutely smashed. Yeah, he, he was wrong. He was I like just just happy strategy. to be here. It was kind of his mentality, and he ended up winning. Yep. So uh, moving on to the next guy here, we have Sean Collins, uh, Portland player. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> he had uh, he his most recent uh, success was he top eight a Grand Prix Las Vegas the, the biggest, biggest Grand Prix of all time Grand Prix right? in yep. history yeah so uh, he almost almost got there uh, as Oregon State champion this year but uh, mm, close didn't quite make it yeah, so not, not quite good enough yeah we're gonna go and move on to the next guy who I think is someone everyone should probably be familiar with yeah Mr Cedric Phillips uh, I know you know Cedric pretty well do you want to talk about Cedric for just a second here sure uh, so <laughs> Cedric uh, Cedric's preparation for this. Uh, this event is, uh, I would say, minimal. But, uh, loose uh, is a word I yeah, would use to describe it. Uh, Cedric and I were, were searching for answers at the bottom of a pitcher of sangria <laughs> last night. So <laughs> He's a busy uh, guy. I think we found a couple. Yeah. Uh, we had to dig pretty deep. Uh, we, we, got to the, we got to the limes. So, um, yeah, he is, uh, Cedric is the, uh, probably the big name player we have. Yeah, in this, yeah. In this. He's, uh, everyone's looking out for him, excited to see what he's going to do. So, yeah. uh. Moving along here, we've got Carl Jans. Carl Jans won our Cube Draft qualifier, or our yes. first Cube Draft qualifier. Yeah. Uh, he doesn't have a lot of uh, success in, uh, in, the, in you know, the pro circuit or anything like that, but he has been playing a long time. He's, he throws a lot of cubes around He does throw a lot of cubes. He's, a, he's, uh, he's one of these guys that kind of thinks off the wall, plays crazy combos. Yeah, be on the lookout for a first pick Coiling Oracle. From yes, him. the yeah. Coiling Oracle is his favorite card. I, he will absolutely get drafted. Yeah. Um, next up is uh, Greg Champeau, who is currently MIA. We don't have him here yet, which is why we're kind of dragging this along for the people in chat asking about it. Uh, if he doesn't show up, we have Paul Tef Meeker. He waiting. might be dead. He might be dead. He was yeah. very excited to be here. We haven't heard from him all day. He's running about an hour late. So uh, Paul Tef Meeker is probably going to tag in for him. Yep. Um, so Meef Teeker, Meef Teeker, uh, the Red Menace. Yes. Like to call him. Yeah. Uh, so anyway, moving on, uh, we've got Corbett Gray. Uh, Corbin Ray saw quite a bit of a success uh, a couple years ago, right? Yeah, he won uh, uh, a couple PTQs uh, mm. and uh, did decently at uh, one day of one Pro Tour. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and, and then uh, did not so decently the at the reverse. other day of that Pro Tour. Yeah. Um, but uh, he's done uh, He's done pretty well on the SCG circuit when they come over to the West Coast, and uh, he, he usually caches those things. Um, and uh, he once uh, destroyed Gavin Verhey's screen door. Oh, yes. And thus is referred to commonly as the Ogre Gate Crasher. Affectionately. Yes. Uh, yes. And, uh, uh, and then so, yeah. in our eighth seat, we have Alex West, who is another name people might be familiar with. Yeah. Oh. He's the West around. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so Alex West here, you can see he's got 81 lifetime pro points. He's got some top eights in there. He's also, uh, he works with a lot of pros on deck list. He actually yeah. designed Craig Wesco's winning green white deck. He's been on a lot of teams. He's He has been in a lot of places. Yeah, a he lot, travels he, the world. He He's a guy that maybe people haven't heard of him, but a lot of the pros work very closely with him. He's very widely respected. Yep, yep. Um, he's in a lot of circles. I, he, I know he has put in an ungodly amount of work for this. Yeah, he's probably the most prepared. I, think. I, I would yeah, say so. He, he was very excited. Excited to get in here and kind of check it out. There's a couple of drafters in this thing. He's one of them who has a deck that they're they're planning on drafting a deck that I couldn't quite figure out what I wanted to do with in the last couple of drafts. Mm -hmm. And so I'm pretty excited to see like where these guys take this stuff. Uh, and Alex is is definitely one of those. All right. So I think we're at the end here. So let's go ahead and we're gonna get the draft started. We're gonna take. It looks like we're officially calling Greg Shampoo out of it. Uh, sorry, Greg. Don't know where you're at, buddy. But uh, Paul Tef Meeker is going to tag in, so we're going to see how Paul does. Paul, this will uh, be fun. I just, well, I just roused him out of bed. Of his pants. Roused him out of bed. He uh, was a little grumpy, so we'll see how this works out. But uh, let's move on to uh, the draft, shall we? Uh, all right. So, moving on. Uh, I think we are all set to go here. Oh, that was not good. That was a bad idea. Are we still live? This should not. The, the monitor should not be plugged into this thing. Because this controls the light. Anyway, uh, could you go tell them to start drafting? Because I can't turn this switch off now. Oh, that's pretty funny. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. We so have a red light in the other room to tell the guys when to stop. Yeah. Uh, and when to start. And uh, we plugged our whole setup into it. Yeah, apparently. we just turned everybody off. So that's cool. All right. So yeah. uh, in the first seat here again, we've got Nate Heiss. Uh, he's already shotgun Lotus uh, in there, which. Uh, Big surprise. Inarguably the best pick of the draft. I, I don't think <laughs> the best pick of the draft. Yeah. The entire draft. It's already over. It's already over. Yeah. Uh, so moving in Greg Pelquin, I'm pretty sure he's gonna take Ancestral here. Okay. I'm talking to uh him. he had mentioned that that was one of his main plans. Yeah, there, there we is. go. So, 
uh, some blue base mid range deck. Uh, he he was talking about wanting to be some sort of tempo. Um, yeah, he was talking about trying to make some kind of blue red uh, wild. Uh, what is it? Young pyromancer. Young pyromancer. Uh, Delver of, of secrets. We'll see how it works out. Uh, Sean Collin takes Mox Jet, signaling uh, mono black. Yeah, I uh, talked to him quite a bit. He's pretty sold on the mono black plan. He likes the disruption. Yeah. He likes the early creature beat down. It's uh, also something that like after the first seven rounds, you're not gonna have to fight with anybody for anything. You know, yeah. and that's a big deal in these in these sorts of tournaments when when you're getting into pack or picks you know 20 through 25 and you have to fight people for picks it's a lot harder uh, to construct your deck so uh, Carl moves in on the time vault strategy so he's gonna be uh, Cedric takes mock sapphire which is not quite a blue card ooh it's close but it is signaling that he might be uh, yeah. stopping the band from playing blue cards and he might be doing it yeah he uh, he has a lifetime uh, anti-affinity for uh, for the blue cards, but uh, uh, this is vintage, and uh, you don't have a lot else of, yeah. <laughs> of a choice. Wait, uh, Carl Jans takes Time Vault, which uh, I know he was thinking he wasn't going to get, but he had a plan for it if he did get there. Paul Tiff Meeker. I think five is like you pretty. You're pretty sure it's going to be there at five. Yeah, yeah. What? Uh, uh, yeah. Okay. Mana Crypt at seven is. Paul Tiff Meeker snaps off Mox Ruby, signaling that he hasn't done any preparation because we just woke him up. Probably draft mono red. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so I, I like it. Here's em Emerald and Pearl probably from Alex West. Yep. And then Corbett's going to get Tinker on the on the way out, I think. Yeah, Corbett takes Mana Crypt. We talked about this last time. People are probably wondering why Mana Crypt over Soul Ring. Do you want to go into that a little bit? Yep. Uh, yeah, so this is a format where everybody's converted mana cost is super, super low. And uh, the two colorless mana from Soul Ring having to invest one to it uh, doesn't net you as much as Mana Crypt being able to get you, say, turn one Tinker. Uh, and that is an, a very explosive uh, addition to what you can do in the early turns of the game. Yeah. Games don't last very long, so the three damage from Mana Crypt not super relevant. Yeah. Uh, in Cube, like I think I think Mana Crypt is better than Soul Ring in Cube anyway, but uh, it's closer. And the reason for that is a lot of people are attacking you with creatures in this sort of a format. Not too many people have been building creature decks. Yeah. Uh, and so the three damage from Mana Crypt is. Not so much of a liability. Although I will say, I think this might be the first draft where we really see yeah. the decks start going mm -hmm. from super unfair decks to um, more creature-based decks. Yes, uh, absolutely. The creature decks have been seeing more and more success during these. So yeah, and uh, it's the the disruption is 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 super key. Looks, um, looks like Paul Tef Meeker is running the Josh Ventura plan. Yeah, just time. probably just going to run down the list. Almost for sure on mono red. Uh, when you're in the mono red, there's not a lot of cards you want to fight over with people. So you he just, probably he probably could have strip mine there, but yeah, I think strip mine's the pick, but. Uh, you know, picking up the fetch lands, the, the the fun side effect of taking the only cards you care about with fighting over the fe those fetch lands is everyone else doesn't have the fixing they want. Right, and actually, oddly enough, that Arid Mesa is uh, is probably upsetting a little bit to Alex West because he's planning on drafting a zoo strategy. Absolutely, and he's going to see a lot of yep. his his lands get snapped up here. Yep. Um, Carl Jans is on Time Vault here, so uh, probably a little sad to see that Tinker get snapped. Yeah, uh, usually the Tinker just goes to the Time Vault guy. That's but, what we've uh, seen before. Yeah. Corbett ain't playing around. Uh, mm -hmm. So let's see. Uh, I'm interested to see where Cedric goes with this blue. Ah. There we go. Soul Ring from Carl Jans. Super. Yeah. Super I like good it. Pick there. Um, just takes the powerful card. Like as much as Mana Crypt is slightly better than than Soul Ring. Soul Ring is still Soul a very powerful. Absolutely. Card. And uh, the, yeah, the Charles in previous drafts had made fun of anyone who ever took Soul Ring for saying it was too early. Uh, but yeah. uh, I think this is about as late as I would be comfortable letting it go yeah um so we're on set here we'll get to see kinda... something tells me we're going to be waiting for cedric phillips quite a bit today <laughs> it's it's possible Maybe you want to get the uh jeopardy theme music going here chris Maybe. yeah i saw i saw him at uh states i was it last week or the week before we were chatting about the draft and he was like i don't know i'm just gonna draft some blue blue deck and just crush everyone yeah and we're like all right uh we'll ain't, see how... it ain't that simple yeah uh a lot of these guys have put in a lot of prep even if they're not you know on that same skill level as Cedric, you know, they right. maybe don't play as often. A lot of these guys have dedicated the last month and a half to coming up with a really strong plan here. Yeah. And uh, iterating so many times before in, in preparation. You know, Al Alex did like a lot of practice yeah, drafts yeah. with just himself. And, uh, I know Sean Collins also did a lot of preparing. Yep. I'm, uh, I mean, just for one deck. Yeah. I was kind of interested to see what would happen if. Uh, Someone else drafted black because he had no backup plan. Right. It looks like that's going to work out for him here, though. Yep. Cedric takes Force of Will. Um, so, uh, interestingly, uh, we have 
like maybe we don't know what Nate is doing yet, right? But well, uh, I know, I know what Nate's yes. doing. Yes. Oh, he's gotta be so upset. <laughs> Little dagger. He wanted time that walk. time walk so bad that he was gonna go into blue green elves with time walk and. Uh, the this, list he sent me actually didn't even have time walk on it. Oh, so we came up with a backup plan. Yeah, okay. no, I mean, it's still the same deck. He, he told me that if he got Black Lotus time walk, he could not lose. And I didn't believe him. He showed me, he he, he goldfished the deck for a little bit, which, you know, is, uh, is not always so good. Nah, but he was just so going off turn two and three every game. It was insane. Yeah. So uh, we see a strip mine from Nate. So um, and just see where he's going to take this now. Here. Uh, and he gets the second. He gets another. Uh, so I like to see what color he signals here. Okay. Time twister. He is, he is on that. So it looks like he's seven. he's still all in yeah. on his uh, elf um, plan. Interestingly, Sean is the only one who's signaled black so far. Uh, yeah. Okay, and, which means he might be in a you know, real nice spot. Yeah. And we're into the third round, and cards like Demonic Tutor and Vampire Tutor haven't even been taken yet. So, yeah. Uh, and if he's going to be drafting a super aggressive deck, then uh, he might not even want those cards. So it'll be interesting to see like how far they fall. Yeah. Um, because I, those are cards that I, like, you can make a case for taking them in the first round. It might not be right, but you can make a case. And here we are at, you know, pick 20. And, yeah. and we don't have a, a Vampiric or a Demonic off the board yet. Well, I can tell you right now, I think me and you are probably both big fans of Sean Collins' deck. This is a Paul and Steven special yeah. right here. Yeah. Uh, we both are big fans of the Black Arts, uh, Dark Ritual, and Thoughtseize, or something like. I, I basically, I think I've first picked those three cards every draft I've ever yep. done. And he's not gonna. It doesn't look like he's gonna get anybody fighting him over Inquisition and Duress either. Yeah, he was worried um, about Liliana the Veil, but I don't see anyone in a position to take that card. Yeah, maybe not. Uh, you might get uh, maybe Sed takes it and like tries to be some blue black control deck. Yeah. Uh, you might get. Um, let's see who else. Um, Tef Meeker could try to be like uh, Charles drafted a black white red deck in the draft that you finished first. Yeah, in, right? yeah. Someone tells me Paul is just on mono red burn you kind of kind of I, deck. Yeah, I'm, I mean, like I'm I said, certainly not. I don't think he's going to be trying to deviate and try. I mean, to I don't even know if the guy's too awake too yet. <laughs> so, uh, we'll see how it turns out. So, got it. We have his feet to the fire. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, he's hoping to hold his opponent's feet to the fire. It's yes. Like, yeah. Turn the. Turn the tables. Uh, Back on said. Do, 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 do. <laughs> so how do you feel about that Force of Will pick? This is the second pick It's here. a good card. Uh, uh, how would you, let's say, how would you feel if that was a mana drain? I would feel better. Uh, I would feel better if this was a mana drain. Decides Ooh, to go dark confident. Okay. He, I think he sees those blacks pretty wide open yep. other than Sean. That's, uh, that's a smart move, I Ooh. think. Smart move. I am, uh, Carl Jans is putting together something. Oh, Paul Tefmeeker saw, I think he sees the strip mine gets taken. He's like, oh shit, I forgot to take strip mine. Yep. Picks up a shot in port before it's too late. Probably going to wheel wasteland. Hopefully. Uh, um, Corbett's, uh, I like, I like the, uh, the shift, uh, into the dark confidant and then Carl maybe like n n realizing that he's not going to have Tinker for free. And so trying to assemble something else perhaps. Yeah. Uh, we might see him do, uh, what, um, Mana Vault falling to third pick. Yeah. yeah. It's uh, actually gone in the third round in a couple of the drafts that we've done. Sure, sure. It went in the third round in the last draft. Or so, round how about this? Draft. Do you think Corbett's going to try the mud deck? Uh, I mean, he has a tinker, so that makes it a lot better. Yeah, it's true. Uh, and I legitimately think Charles' deck last time was insane. Yeah, yeah. I think he ran bad. His deck was absurd. <laughs> we'll have to agree to disagree. Uh, yeah, right. I, I think the problem with the mud deck that we've seen in the past is, like, you get all your mana out there, and then you run out of cards, you don't have anything to do. Sure. I think, like... If maybe Charles, for those of you guys not didn't watch last time, uh, Charles Dupont drafted a pretty sweet uh, Mistress Workshop deck with Channel. Yeah, it, and was, he had it like, was a mono green mud deck. Yeah, he had like three ways to cast Channel on turn one, and uh, he yeah, could crop like, rotation, crop rotation for the workshop. For workshop, yep. and uh, he just did, didn't get that. The deck looked awesome on paper, yep. and he went three and four with it. Yeah. Uh, like I think if he had drafted something, maybe like a Harmonize or something, something to get yeah, some cards. Yeah, double green is like. Yeah, I mean, not, not easiest, necessarily harmonized, but, but something to refill your hand. Sure. Like, I think there's still potential for that deck. I don't think it's officially dead yet. No, um, and I think that where he moved with it is the right direction that it would need to go. Yeah. Um, but, uh, yeah. I think we're going to see a lot of headbutting between Corbett Gray and Carl Jans. Uh, I think you're going to see less than you think. Uh, mm -hmm. I think they want to be doing different things. All right. Um, also, a card that hasn't been taken yet, uh, Painter Servant or Grindstone. Yeah. Um, which is usually signaled relatively early. So uh, it'll be interesting to see where that goes. Um, and uh, I actually like where Corbett is right now. How, uh, oh, so has, I missed this. He has three super, super fast mana pieces and a tinker that he can do anything he wants with. Alex uh, West took Goblin Guide from Paul Tuckmaker. 
yeah so uh alex is not letting up uh and we're so for the first time we're gonna have a fight over red yeah, I, I mean, I think we were talking to Alex. He's he's looking to more go like Naya Zoo, right? Yes, um, uh, but it, he still like he still has to prioritize the um, the fetch lands, yeah. the dual lands, and uh, and the red one drops uh, because Paul has signaled red. Um, he can't let you know. He can't just try to draft the green and the white one drops uh, because Goblin Guide is probably the best one. Yeah, um, absolutely. Everybody's land count is so low because they're on moxes and stuff. Um, yeah, and, I think. Uh, uh, Talking to Alex, his plan was to just deal 20 damage by turn 4. Right. right. Yeah, he, his plan was to present 20 on 4. Yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, haste creatures are a good way to do that. I imagine Paul's got to be a little grumpy right now. Got woken up out of bed at draft. Just a size draft mono red thinking no one's going to fight him for it. And then yeah. in the third round, has his goblin guide sniped off. Like, well, that's a bad day. Hey, man, you know what? He could still... Uh, yeah, that sucks. <laughs> but you know, it's not even anything. That just sucks. Uh, I, I wouldn't be surprised. Oh god, I was he tried to do something where he didn't have to think, and now he has to think. It's, this is a bad day for Paul. Poor Meef Teeker. <sighs> Poor Meef Teeker. So, uh, it's gonna be a slow draft, I think. It might be. We might need to yeah. get in there and uh, have David uh, hustle him up. David's kind of overseeing the whole draft in the room with the guys there. Um, so, oh, uh, something to talk about here. We are giving away store credit today. Oh, yeah. We, we haven't talked about that too. at all. Yeah. So um, we are working together with Northwest Sports Cards, yes. a local store here in Seattle, Washington. Uh, actually, it's like Tacoma, right? Yeah, they're in Tacoma. But as according to like every Magic tournament ever thrown, Tacoma, Tacoma is Seattle. Seattle. Apparently. Um, so it's an online store, though. So if you win the credit, uh, you can go on their online store, and uh, they'll ship it out to you, whatever. Uh, so we're giving away $120 total. Yep. We're going to be doing it out in different increments throughout the day. Um, well, let's start off with $10. Okay. Like we did last time. Probably let's uh, give it Is away. It, that's the same amount we gave away last time. Yeah, we did Total like two 10s, two 25s, and a 50, I think, last time. All right. Which, you know, maybe we'll play around with that today. But we're going to start with 10. Okay. So, uh, at, so here's how we're going to do this. Once we get to our first break, which is going to be at 15 picks. Um, yep. uh, we're going to go ahead and just raffle off $10 to someone. Nice. The way that's going to work excuse me, is you're going to have to be signed into the Twitch chat. Yeah. We're going to just roll a die or whatever, but Chris will handle it, and uh, go down the list and name them. So in order to win, you must be logged into Twitch chat so we can see your name. Right. That's all that we really need. And um, it's not even a skill game. You don't even have to do anything yeah, difficult. Yeah. Exactly. We might play around with it later. I have an idea for a different one that we'll probably do a little bit later. But um, <laughs> Nate Heiss, a little bragging. He designed <laughs> two cards on this list. <laughs> <laughs> Thought Season Goblin Guide, right? There you go. Yep. Yeah. Two, two great cards. Two cards in the first 25. We were given a bit of, uh, before the draft while we're sitting here waiting. Uh, we were talking, we were giving Nate a little bit of crap uh, before because uh, he was around during Fairies. Okay. He worked on Laura Windblock. Yeah. And so we were giving him some shit about the old Bitter Blossom. Sure. Um, which, I think that card's sweet. <laughs> which he said he tried to get fixed, but uh, yeah. it didn't happen. So, all right. So we see Paul Tia Meager in the red deck labor for about three minutes to decide to finally snap off a lightning bolt. Yep. Uh, so uh, we've got Transmute Artifact okay, from you're Carl. Right. You're right. They were going to battle over some some, uh, some Tinker targets. Um, or some Tinker spells, rather. So hopefully these guys have snap off these picks real quick here. They've had some time to think, but... You know, nah, the way that this works is nobody <laughs> thinks until it's their turn. Yeah. Nobody thinks until it's their turn. Because uh, so, then by the time, like, you're like, oh, I'm going to take this this time. And then it gets up to you and you're like, ooh, but what if I leave this on the board? Then I might not have it as an option for the next pick, even though you don't even want it. So here's what I see happening here with Cedric. Do you remember Jesse Hampton last time? Yeah, where we thought his deck was really bad. Where he just basically drafted blue-black good cards, but not really any win conditions. Yep. I wouldn't be surprised to see that from Cedric. Okay. Um... Just try to build a deck that he can get there with play skill, essentially. Yeah, I think that's what he wants to do. Yeah, just try to defeat people with his with like the game of magic, right? Yeah. He wants to interact as much as possible. Uh, you know, force as many decisions as possible. Mandarin's still on the board in the fourth yeah, round. Yeah, that's insane. This was library. Uh, Greg is probably I'm sure Greg is very experienced with this format at this point. I'm sure Greg is sitting there just crossing his fingers that Cedric forgets about Mandarin. Yeah, Jace the Mind Sculptor is still available too. Yeah, Jace the Mind Sculptor, Mandarin, um Yeah. There's some good ones left. Nobody's really blue carded very much. I mean, Greg Peliquin. Yeah, he has blue, blue, blue. Yeah. Um, in fact, I Greg's deck is nice. Yeah, Snapcaster Mage is just insane. Like, uh, I was talking about this the other day when you know when uh, 
last time Jesse Hampton took uh, uh will. Yeah. I was like, we're kind of in a, in a world now where Snapcaster may, like in formats like this, when you're not like storming off or whatever, is uh, Snapcaster made is just kind of better than Yawgmoth's will. Yes. Um, uh, it, is, it is definitely the case, uh, mostly because you can cast it on your opponent's turn. Uh, and also, um, it's really hard to build a storm deck. Yeah. And that's when Will is insane, right? Yeah, Joey Spelly drafted a storm deck, I think, in, in uh, our second round, or mm -hmm. maybe third round. And it was really good, but uh, just didn't quite get there. It's really hard to just make that a 40-card deck. His deck was pretty good, actually. Yeah. It was nice. I think he had a couple cards sniped from him, but, um, yeah. Can, uh, uh, hold on. I'm, I'm going to send a text in there to uh, have David speed this draft up a little bit, because this is going... A little ridiculous. TikTok, TikTok. I will handle this. <laughs> uh. All right, so uh, Cedric probably should take Mana Drain here, right? Someone um, says no possible to see what's in the pack as they pick, huh? There are no packs. Uh, the way this works, we'll go over this again. Um, Basically, this is called a Vintage Rotisserie Draft. So every legal Vintage card is available to pick. Yeah, so when it is your turn, you can select any card in the game of Magic that's Vintage Legal that hasn't already been picked. Yes. Uh, so so as I said before, basically imagine you get past a pack, a gigantic pack, with every card in it. Yep. Take one out, pass it to the left. Yep. Um, yep. Imagine they were all, all... Well, yeah, Sean gets the Inquisition. Still no black signals I, from really anybody. I think Cedric's lack of preparation is starting to show here. He, he takes a brainstorm over Mana Drain. Which, yeah. it's a good card. I don't think it's a fourth pick in this format. I mean, there's a lot of cards that do something similar, you know. Yeah, I, I, I think I agree. But, uh, again, he just wants to create as many options as he can for himself, right? Yeah. Uh, I don't know what he plans to do with those options, or, like, what actual options he plans to create. Yeah. Uh, but um, it sounds like he wants to be, you know, low mana cost and... Disruptive. And then on the other end, next to him, Sean Collins, you see someone who I feel like is prepared for the draft, takes Inquisition as his next duress effect over yeah. duress, which in this format, if you look around the board, Inquisition is hits basically every card that's been it drafted. It takes every so card far. except Force of Will. Um, right? Yeah. And uh, it's just one of the best cards, I think, yeah, it's, for, in that. Yeah, it's very good. Now, he's also, I'm sure he's going to also get duress. Yeah. And, um, and now Peliquin can take the mana drain fourth. Yep. And he's going to be doing, if he misses it, uh, and we'll then see. he could take Chase the Mind Sculptor on the way out. Yeah, Greg's yeah. deck is shaping up. Yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of... Uh, it, you, it's funny how, like, one or two drafters that seem unprepared uh, yeah. can affect the strength of everyone else's deck yeah. so much. Yeah. You know, because you've just taken 25% of the field and distributed it back in. Um, I legitimately think everyone has forgotten Mana Drain exists. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Greg Pelican snaps up. And there's, the, click. The, there's always something. There's yeah. always a card that goes just yeah. way later than it's supposed to. I, I hear I hear Cedric and they're cackling. Yeah. Uh, I wonder what's going on. Uh, uh, so I do, I mean, I love Vendillion Click from Greg. Greg's deck Nate's, is still looking sweet. Nate has some combo-licious stuff <laughs> Nate's going Nate's deck is looking spicy. So, uh, Ancestral Vision. Oh, my God. <laughs> this is just funny at this point. Oh, my God. I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to sit in the ninth seat. I'm going to just put in a night seat, and I'm just going to take Mana Drain. <laughs> yeah, and then our deck's going to be very good. Yeah. <laughs> so Liliana 5. I like Sean. Sean gets exactly what he wants out of so those five picks. Yeah, Sean's mono black shell is looking really good. So, I mean, these are the obvious picks, right? Yeah. What, I like, what I'm interested to see is how he tries to win the game. Obviously, he would have wanted, uh, you know, Dark Confidant. We see a gush from Cedric. Okay, folks. so he is on that plan. Uh, Cedric mentioned uh, this morning that he had thought about um, doing uh, a Miracle Grow strategy. Um, so, like, uh, Query and Dryad. Uh, it looks like he wants to be in the bug shell. Um, uh, yeah, yeah, interesting. Someone in the chat also mentioned uh, Library of Alexandria is still alive. Yeah. Which, you know, in this format, not as good as, like, a Powered Cube or as in, in other formats. It's actually, I would, like, before the last draft, I thought it was very overrated. Mm -hmm. After the last draft, I think it's pretty underrated. Yeah, I like, mean, you have to definitely have the right deck. Yeah, I mean, you want to be, like, a one-for-one one deck. And I mean, look at look at Greg's deck. Like, what if he had gone Mana Drain Jace or Mana Drain uh, uh, with a card we're just talking about? He still can. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> I mean, Cedric might remember those cards exist at some point. Maybe maybe uh, Corbett decides to take Mana Drain. Yeah, I mean, here. he's yeah, he doesn't have a second color. Nope, he is Monolith, Monolith, Monolith. 
Corbett wants to make a lot of colorless mana and very fast. Yeah. Um, yeah, he's just got all of them. Yeah, so Carl takes that Voltaic. I actually, I actually think that if he hadn't taken Voltaic key there, Corbett would have Oh, absolutely. Yeah. That, that's something you got to look out for with the guy with the Grim Monolith and the Mana Vault. Mm -hmm. He's going to want that just as bad as you. Yep. Um, Corbett's got Power Artifact. His card, his deck's starting to look spicy, but... Power Artifact is the... It costs two less to untap it. Yeah, well, we have this handy it. thing here. Well, uh, like, that that's obviously not the text that exists anymore. But um, it reduces the activation cost of an artifact by two. Okay, so Grim Monolith and Basalt Monolith go infinite. Uh, yes. Yeah. Okay. Chris is giving us the thumbs up. I'm not super right. familiar with that interaction, but that so is So, like, he's probably going to set up some Stroke of Genius situation. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so, Paul Tefmaker, Lightning Bolt, Figure of Destiny. Uh, he's taking the cards that I think he thinks Alex West might want. Uh, Alex West is like, no, I'm going to do this whole take all the fetch lands thing. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's going to be interesting to see the two, uh, like, base red aggressive decks yeah. try to fight each other and see how they sift that stuff out. Paul takes Sulfuric Vortex, which is a good one. Yep. Uh, so someone in the chat says, uh, what, so there's two red decks? Uh, not quite. Paul Tef Meeker is currently mono red. I, I wouldn't be shocked to see him move into Boros. I mean, the guy loves the Johnny Vengeant more than yeah. any human alive. Uh, Alex West is going Naya. Very much is on the Naya planet. Yeah, he had actually planned on taking Dark Confidant in the third round, but that was gone. So oh, is he is he playing black? Then? No, he was Naya splashing Confidant. Oh, okay. Uh, that makes like sense. when you have all the fetch lands and all the dual lands, like it's pretty easy to just put a black land in. Place, Absolutely, right? yeah, yeah. Um, but his plan is, yeah, base Naya, uh, he, his plan is not too many spells because uh, he didn't want to have to play around like spell pierce and stuff. Um, and, uh, okay, so Carl takes the Painter's Servant, and now Corbett has to win with a creature on his tanker. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah. And that's uh, that's probably not going to be very fun. For Carl's him. deck is looking, I mean, he doesn't have the tanker, but he does have a channel and soul ring. Yeah. Like, uh, his deck is starting to shape up to be a lot like Peter's deck from us. True, but channel's going to be difficult to set up when you're in you know a base blue deck with probably not too much is he base blue i mean he has transmute artifacts yeah he's gonna have transmute artifacts i guarantee he's gonna go after reshape sure uh you know he's gonna want cards like that yeah he might even draft fabricate you know um enlightened tutor is another card that uh a lot of people are probably gonna want um cedric is has another opportunity to take mana drain here um, Joe Bono, our third commentator for the yes. day, uh, just messaged me. He's wondering if Carl Jans is going to try to move on uh, when he's going to take Tezzeret. Oh, sure. Wow, yeah, that's another one that's kind of late. Yeah. Um, um, that's probably if it, he should take it next because I think that's got to be Corbett's next pick. I agree. Yeah. Let's see if... Uh, let's play the... Does someone remember Mana Drain this round of game? <laughs> All right, so let's set a line. Let's set a line. I'm going to say... What round Mana Drain gets taken in? I'm going to say round eight. You think it's in round eight? Mental misstep. Not All as right. powerful as a counter. You know what? Story. I'm gonna just for the sake of the story, I'm gonna take the over oh. on eight. I okay. think I think Mana Drain will go in the ninth or later round. What if it goes undrafted? <laughs> no way. There is no way. At a break, someone's gonna say something. No, uh, you can't. No, no, you can't say anything. We can't say anything. Uh, unmask, which is uh, the pitch a block card from your hand yep. to duress someone, or it's like a thought seize, right? Uh, yes. There it is. Mana Drain! Yay! Off the board, everybody. Yay! There it is. We figured it out. <laughs> we figured it out. <laughs> there it is. Alright, so. Uh, we got Lotus Greg, Petal. Greg Pelequin, the, the least stupid person in the room. <laughs> <laughs> Greg Pelequin, our former champion. He's exactly. showing us why. Showing us why. Ooh, my god, Nate's deck. Uh, oh. Strip mine, fast bond, crucible of worlds. I feel like at this point Nate's just showing off. Yeah, if this is cool. <laughs> yeah. I I don't even care if he wins. He's he's his deck is. We're gonna see a Jace ball here. So you yeah. owe me like a lot of money now, right? Because because the, the, you, you said the over, right? Yeah, yeah. I owe you like a million dollars, probably. Deal. That's what we would have bet. I think. I think so. Yeah. We have that sweet Russell Wilson bet going still too. Yeah. <laughs> What was what did you put up? I put up. A, uh, it was, was a, a bottle, bottle of. Uh, I put up Johnny Blue. Right? Yeah, Johnny Blue. If yeah. uh, if uh, Russell Wilson will be playing for the Seahawks in like four is years, is their or starting quarterback in 2017? Yeah, that's what yeah. it was. Uh, yeah. Let's see here. So Greg Paul, just take the Jace, man. Come on. Nah, he can wait. It actually went in like the ninth round of the last draft. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah. Uh, library is a card that he nah, probably wants. Library is there. a card that he wants. I think he. I think he can make use of it better than anyone else. Uh, Max points out in the chat that Wasteland's still available. Yes. Because uh, everyone here is silly. Well, it's not like anyone plays, you know, non-basics in this format. No. Right? Just all ba well, actually, we, I mean, we have a mono-black deck, we have a mono-blue deck, and, like, a mono-artifact deck. 
how about this? Chad just pointed out something that we've missed. Demonic Tutor. No, I said that in oh, like the oh. second round or oh, yeah, in the yeah. third round. But I said after Sean took Dark open. Ritual. Yeah. Uh, after uh, after Sean took Dark Ritual, I said nobody else is signal black. I wonder how late Vampiric and Demonic are going to go yeah. because he doesn't want them. I think what we're seeing here is a lot of people that uh, maybe have planned too much. Uh, they they like, have cards they did they, not expect to get and they didn't just... plan to deviate. Well, not even that. Yeah. They they just probably well didn't plan to deviate one. Yeah. And two, they probably assumed okay by the time it gets to me, the Monotune revamp's going to be gone, so they didn't even put it on their list. Yeah. So they like a lot of these guys have lists in front of them that they're going and off. They're just of, going like, off of what they expected plans to be available and yep. things like that. And a lot of those guys probably just think, oh yeah, man, uh, someone took the Monotune revamp and uh, oh, those cards just aren't on the board anymore. But yeah. they are. Uh, I, would, I mean, Nate could just take them on the fucking like the eight nine wheel, you know, and just have Lotus Vamp Demonic. What? Yeah. <laughs> what? Uh, I feel like, I, it, God, if Lotus, if you first pick Lotus and Vamp and Demonic are available at 2-3, you have to be psychotic not to take them, I think. Do I know you you're want, big on that plan. Do you want one Black Lotus or three Black Lotus? We have Lotuses? a Ponder taken over a Jace. That's fine. So why don't you so so Cedric is basically is very much on a plan here. Yeah, uh, he's also like getting a little hosed. Yeah, because I think he wanted he wanted to be bug shell and he wanted to like have cards like Thoughtseize Inquisition and Ponder. So uh, personally, nothing against Cedric, great guy, great master of his craft. But just for naming rights, I want him to lose because yeah, for the said for the the, the, the last place trophy has been Jed the Ted. And the said just has such a nice ring to it. That's true. Um, That's true. I'm not wishing it on him. No. But it would be a good name. Dwayne was saying that if uh, if Pelican lost, now we actually have another option if Tef if Tefmeeker loses. The red. The red. Yeah. Which yeah. actually Paul uh, Paul uh, could it could happen, especially yeah. since he's drafting a red deck. So Ooh. this could be fun. Uh, we have a couple of good options here. Uh, Grindstone snapped right up. Uh, not going to try to float that. Um, I might have taken Tezzeret in that spot, but. Yeah, I think uh, we're probably gonna see Corbett take Tezzeret on one of his two next two picks here. There's the workshop. Yeah, that was. So, I, th I think that is a wasted pick. I think so too. Uh, I don't think there's another human on Earth who would draft that in this thing. Uh, yeah, he could we were take it in the fifteenth round. Yeah, uh, we were talking about how uh, we we at some point we think we're gonna get to a point where Mission's Workshop stops getting picked. I don't think it'll ever stop getting picked completely. I think it will stop being prioritized as a powerful thing that people want to draft early. Sure, sure. Because it's not anything that two decks are going to want. It's yeah. never a card that two decks are going to want. It's going to be something like, once the, the drafters sift into their strategies, you be like, oh, that guy's going to draft the workshop in round 35. Or yeah, whatever, yeah. You know, and just like not get it sniped from him. Uh, uh, we've got Strika03 in the chat is uh, pointing out Carl Jans' deck could use a Trinket Mage. Uh, yeah. And I can't disagree. Yeah, he has a key, a soul ring, and a, and a grindstone. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, Corbett's deck could use a, a Trinket Mage with Mana Crypt and Mana Vault. Um, but uh, that's about it for the Trinket Mage decks. So it's kind of a weird... Um, we see some more fast mana come off the board for Alex West. He now has three Moxes. Yeah. They're he's... not all created equally, but they're that's all fine. very he's, good. He is going to present a quick clock, and I, I like that he's prioritizing the mana over everything. Um, because yeah. in the zoo deck, if you stumble on your mana, you cannot present a fast enough clock. And yeah. It's going to be really, really troublesome. Absolutely. Um, Paul goes back to, it looks like Alex and Paul are fighting over those fetch lands, which oh, means... Oh, Strikeout 03 is Colin McCune. Okay, okay. So, um, um, so, Paul and Alex have got a good chunk of the fetch lands off the board already. Carl Jan takes natural order. Okay. Uh, so, Painter's Servant turns his stuff green. Interesting. Uh that's a thing if he wants to do that um so he looks like he is gonna make use of that channel i, I see i like that uh carl is just drafting a deck that has just nothing but like well if i draw these two cards you're dead <laughs> like, oh you you stop that okay i'll have this different two card combination you're dead yeah uh, do you think uh corbin and carl are gonna fight for academy ruins uh maybe not corbin he doesn't have the combos a tolarian academy uh, yeah. maybe um Cedric picks up to rest. Yeah, see, the, I, I expected him to want, like, Inquisition and stuff. I, he probably should have taken it instead of Brainstorm. Um, knowing that, like, he's heading into Sean with that round. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but, uh... Sean's deck is powerful. Yeah, I, Sean's deck is, uh, probably... Probably the second... Like, in the second best position. 
uh, I think Greg's deck is absurd. Uh, someone in the chat is asking, uh, could Cedric take uh, Wake Thrasher and possibly Lightning Greaves to go with that, uh, uh, you know, the infinite combo? Yep. Which is kind of a funny story. That's how Carl Jans got here. Yeah, he, had, he doesn't actually need the power artifact or anything. All he yeah. needs is just base alt mono. Uh, you uh, pay three, tap it, pay three, untap it, pay, or tap it pay, to get three to untap it. To just make an infinitely large exactly. Thrasher. <laughs> so Carl Jans in the final of the cube draft qualifier, how he got here, he actually had Basalt Mana with the Wake Thrasher on board. Yep. against Brendan Gould, and uh, Brendan just apparently didn't see the combo, didn't know... Uh... Well, so it was funny because Brendan was, uh, like, playing it as if he was representing something, mm. and so Carl almost didn't go for it. Okay. Uh, yeah, you were there. You were doing yeah. coverage on it, right? And uh, Carl almost didn't go for it, and then was just like, eh, screw it, yeah. and then did it, and Brendan was just like, oh, wow, that's that kills me, I'm dead. Yeah. Because he didn't have any chump blockers or anything. Yeah. And uh, it's funny because he sold it so well that he didn't think he was going to die. That Carl didn't want to actually do it. And the reason that he didn't think he was going to die is he didn't know the thing worked. So uh, he, he sold it via ignorance. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, We've got a remand from Greg. Uh, Jace is still on the board. I would have rather seen Counterspell from Greg there. Yeah. Uh, well, I, I don't know. Actually, like, remand is a good velocity card. Uh, you know, it gets you through your deck while tempoing and uh when decks like this are full of you know they want to do powerful thing powerful thing powerful thing um if you remand like a turn to like say a tide hollow scholar that's not going to get drafted by anybody or whatever mm -hmm. right that tide hollow scholar on turn three like isn't as good anymore because you can just respond with ventilant click and yep. get a big clock in play yep. you know sure sure um and uh remand is just going to make sure he makes his land drops uh, you know, so that his Snapcaster is even more effective. Um, uh, I'm interested to see what he's going to do with the Mana Drain Mana. Um, yeah. Because his deck, his, his curve seems very, very low. Yeah, that is one thing about Mana Drain that we've seen a lot. Uh, you know, I took a Mana Drain in the draft, and, like, I just didn't have anything to do with the Mana. And that's... Yeah. Mana Drain's a great counterspell. I mean, at worst, it's counterspell, which is, right. you know, one of the best cards. But you do need something to do with the Mana. You don't necessarily have to, but to take it early, yeah. you should have a plan. Yeah. God, Nate's deck is... Wow. There goes the wasteland. He didn't take Vamp Demonic. It's so insane that Vamp Demonic. <laughs> this is if he figures it out. He if he figures it out, he could have like the best deck uh, just yeah. ever. And Nate's good enough that he could just totally audible into that if he, if he realizes it. Yeah, because he. Did we talk about what his plan was going to be? That can't. Deck? That can't possibly be right. Is that right? Uh, they're they're snapping off. Okay. Yeah, I don't know what else it would be. I you, thought it could have been Library of Alexandria. Oh. Hmm. No, because he wanted to be blue green. I don't know. He typed in Sylvan Library. That's it. I'm gonna message David real quick to do a little cleanup here. So since cheap counter spells start coming off the board here, um, I like uh, I like that Cedric is probably going to end up getting an opportunity for that library. And I know it's on his radar because we looked at Jesse Hampton's deck list this morning. Um, and so... Uh, Lightning Tutor for... Carl, I don't know what Carl's doing. Well, I don't know what colors he's Carl playing. Carl is presenting A plus B deal. But but he's got... Let's, let's see. We've got double green, double blue, yep. white. Uh -huh. Like, the all the fetch lands are gone. Like, or not all of them, but most of them are gone. We'll see what happens. No, you know what colors of mana Noble Herrick makes? Do you know, Those colors. Do you know what colors of mana Birds of Paradise makes? All of them. Yeah, exactly. I, th I think he's So what you're saying... Hey, we have our first journey to the Knicks card off the board. There we go. Eidolon of the Dome U for three. Is Welcome it, no, to the draft, does, journey to the Knicks. Does it do two, two damage or three damage? I believe it's two. We can't... Oh, actually, I have here. It is two. Two damage for CMC three or less. So I was playing around with this card, and uh, actually uh, me and Dwayne San Arnold, our other uh, commentator, we were talking about this card. He played this card at States last weekend, and he was like, it seemed like a sweet card until I realized it just kills me because the mono red deck plays all compared yep. to three or less. Yep. So maybe it's a sweet card, maybe it's not. I don't, like... It's good in a format like this where yeah. your opponent will not have any sort of clock against you. Yeah. Uh, but um, what did uh, Corbett take there? Mystical Tutor. That is... A good pick. That is a card Greg Pelican could have possibly had. Yeah, that is a good pick. I, I don't like Sylvan Library from Greg there. Like, is anyone else, like, Carl's Green? 
I guess Alex is green, but I uh, we we know. Yeah, we know I that think he, he just ran out of stuff on his list and just went to the next thing on his list. I can't imagine Jace the Mind Sculptor is not on his list. I bet it's not on his list. Okay. I bet I bet he just didn't think that that would be there. Um. Uh. So is that all of the fetch lands now? Uh. One, two, three, four, five. No, Misty Rainforest still available. Uh. What else is still available? Windswept Teeth, Bloodstain, Mirevert, and Catacombs. That's five. Uh, six. So, Personal Turtle is. Uh, uh, Polluted Delta still available and Flooded Strand still available. Okay. So, the three that go the first usually are still available. Man, I would love to know where Greg Chimpo is. Right? Yeah, just. I think he's in a ditch. Yeah, a guy's gotta be dead. I'd feel bad now if he's actually in a ditch. Uh, he could have called. <laughs> <laughs> it's fair. It's fair. So let's see here. Do we have any early favorites from you? Uh, Nate. I think the decks that... Oh, Nate, I, Sean, and Greg. All right, I'm going to name the four that I think are good, and I think the four that need some help. I think Nate, Greg Pelequin, Sean Collins, and Carl Jans are looking real spicy. Really? I think Carl's deck is all over the place. That's fair. You know what? I, yeah, I, there's a lot of good cards. I don't think it's a good deck. Uh, I, I, I like what Alex has done a lot. Yeah, Alex doesn't really have a deck yet, but we know where he's going. Right. Like, for me, like, uh, for me, I think Nate has the highest potential uh, of anybody. Um, I like Sean and Greg both a lot. They're going to have consistent decks. They're not going to get color screwed. They're, yep. you know, they have early good curves with powerful things to do quick. The um, and then Alex. I, I think Alex's deck is going to, it's going to get where he wanted it to. Um, the cards that he wants to draft... Mm -hmm for his clock are different than the mono red cards. Yeah. He doesn't want any burn cards. He wanted all creatures because he didn't want to play around spell pierce negate. Yeah. Things like that. So here's an interesting thing to talk about. Now if we look at Sean Collins and Alex West, I believe Sean Collins is gonna go into an aggro beat down kind of black deck. Yeah, with like Carnophage and stuff. Now these are two, you know, similar decks. They're both gonna be playing aggro, probably you know, low drop creatures. But Sean Collins is playing monocolor, whereas Alex West is playing three color, which means Sean Collins is going to get like ten to fifteen sideboard picks. Yes. Whereas mm -hmm. Alex West, we were talking to him, he he only has room for he said five sideboard. Yeah, five picks. sideboard cards. He plans on no basic lands, um, and that's kind of one of the the ways that this draft breaks down. Uh, because you don't have to draft your own basic lands, every card that you would play as a basic land in your deck, uh, you can translate that into a sideboard card yeah um so uh alex planning on drafting zero basics is only going to get five sideboard cards whereas sean is probably going to draft like 14 15 swamps mm -hmm. uh, uh actually he doesn't have uh wasteland port or strip mine so he's probably going to have the full like 16 17 swamps um but uh he's getting a lot more sideboard cards the trade-off on that is black cyber cards pretty weak yeah uh you know I mean, you, you, you get stuff like phyrexia that's about it uh, like, and you look at like how many people that's going to do anything against right now. It's going to do something against Corbett. It's going to do something against Carl. Cedric is actual cackling in the other room. Cedric has lost his mind yeah. in the other room. I don't know what's going on over there. I don't think Cedric knows what's going on over there. Uh, no. Yeah. So uh, someone in the chat is saying someone needs to pun uh, pu They would love to see Paltov Meeker punish Alex West with An Ankh of Mishra and uh, Price of Progress. Yeah, or uh, like Tunnel Ignis. Yeah, like how dare you, how dare you take my Goblin Guide. Yeah. <laughs> Let's just punish you. Yeah. Uh, I think Cedric took the tropical island from Greg, and Greg is mad. Is that what yeah? It's that's that's what happening? it looks like because yeah. we've got the old eat a dick from Greg Bellaquid yeah. on there. Yeah. Uh, uh, Sean just disrupting more. So and more. we've got a question from a new person. Yeah, let me read Jace it. the mind sculptor so, still on the board. Uh, sorry if I'm pronouncing this wrong. Versaire says so. Since I'm new here, would someone be able to tell me how much uh, how the match playing take place? Are we able to watch them? I imagine they use proxy cards. A little foreshadowing would be amazing. So. After the draft wraps up, and yep. we have the uh, all forty-five picks, they're all going to make their decks. We actually have a all the cards match set up. Yeah, we right. have all the cards. Well, most of the cards, cards that have all been drafted before, and some cards that we think will get drafted. We have like a big box of like two thousand cards. Um, so we will have the decks made, and we will be streaming the matches live. Uh, we'll you know we'll try to get everyone on camera at least once. We'll we'll show halfway through. We'll start moving towards the matches that are relevant, and then we'll you know we'll show a best of five finals match at the end. So is it poor form for me to just yell out Vamp Demonic right now? Yes. Okay. All right. So essentially, if you're if you know you're you're here with us, this is your first time. You know, buckle it might up. be worth getting banned for life. 
Sure. It might be worth it just to see Nate's deck. Sure. <laughs> but uh, if you're here for the first time, we're looking for we're looking towards about ten hours of magic here. We're gonna be here yeah, all day long. Here a while. Um, we're also giving out store credit to uh, Northwest Sports Cards online, so uh, you can uh, if you, you just hang it on the chat. You've got your name up in, in the uh, Twitch chat. You can win some money. So um, stay tuned, and uh, you know, thanks for joining us and all that. Absolutely. Happy to have you. Yeah. Um, so we've got crop rotation from Nate Heist, which is one of my favorite cards in this format. It's pretty yeah, sweet. Yeah, it's cool. Um, so he, can you... he can rotate for uh, Strip Mine and Wasteland uh, and Crucible Fast Bond the thing back into play. That's pretty cool. Yeah, another thing we're going to do uh, at 15 Picks is we're going to bring someone in here to talk about their deck. Yeah. Um, so let's uh, open up to the chat. If you guys want to start talking about who do you want us to come in here and interview? Uh, who do we want to, you know... You want to pick our brain about all these ridiculous cards Nate has, has, or do we want to talk about what the hell is Carl Jans doing with Natural Order? You know, uh, you know he's gonna put Painter Servant in play and then go get Worm Coil Engine. Uh, someone's asking where's our store located. It's actually not our store; they're just a sponsor. Yeah, uh, it's in Tacoma, Washington, but they have online ordering. So even if you win, you can order it. I think. Are we doing? Hey, Chris, are we doing free shipping this time? We may be doing free shipping. We'll know a little bit later when the store owner shows up. But um, at some point, you no matter if you win, you'll be able to use the credit. Um, let's see. I'm gonna go back to the chat here while things are a little slow. No one in the no one is fighting Sean at all for this strategy. He's man. What are we looking at? I'm just seeing what people are saying. Uh, people want to hear Nate. People want to hear Greg. Sean Collins, Carl Jans, Cedric. Every, so far, it's a little bit of everything. We may have to roll the old dice here. Um, so I think we got Mesmeric Fiend for Sean Collins. We also have a couple of rounds left. Right? Yeah, yeah. We're, we're going to stop at 15. Um, Jason Mind Sculptor is still live. Sylvan Library is still live. Both tutors still live. The, uh, Library of Alexandria, you mean, right? Library of Alexandria. Demonic Tutor, Vampiric Tutor, still live. All live. Uh, what's the other one? Like Cruel mm -hmm. Tutor? Yeah, Cruel Tutor um, goes pretty late. Okay. It's like three mana, what, which what's, is super oh, slow. Oh, no, what's the the like the vampiric one that uh, is black, uh, but vampiric? portal? No, no, portal that um, costs one and you lose two life. Uh, Imperial Seal. Imperial Seal. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's still available. So Nate could have four black lotuses in his deck. I don't know. Um. So one thing pointed out here from Joe Bono, we're getting, um, I'm on my, my old iPhone here, Joe Bono's in the room with the drafters. He's talking about, uh, should point out, no, no reanimator this time around. Yeah, uh, that, it seems like every other draft we have somebody reanimate. Um, I mean, still theoretically, like, Cedric could do it, right? Uh, someone in the chat's asking if the spreadsheet is open uh, to public view. I'm pretty sure, I'll have to check with Chris, he just walked out of the room, he's like, I'm running everything. But I think if you go below the stream, there should be a link to the spreadsheet. Yeah, um, there should be a button you can click, I think Yeah, it should said. say spreadsheet or something. Uh, go, uh, do we have the spreadsheet underneath, right? Ooh, Corbett. Is the, the, the link? Sniped. Is there a link to it? Yeah, yeah, okay. Karn Liberated <laughs> goes to Carl, not Corbett. Corbett Gray is going to try to cast some Imrakul, it looks like. Oh, Karn Liberated, one of my favorites. Well, Corbett can uh, can go infinite, right? Remember with power Yeah, 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 yeah. But you're right, they are fighting over critical pieces. Uh, Corbett really wants that Enlightened Tutor, I think. Um, and, uh, and uh, man, yeah, Carl would uh, Carl would love to natural order for Emrakul with Painter Servant in play. I would love to see it. Yeah. Uh, I, if we can go and request Corbett... Re Retract his pick. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so that, so you know that Carl I would be fine thing. if it was uh, a Kozilek or a sure, Ilmog. just anything. Yeah, Blight Dr Steel Colossus, a Draco. Like, yeah, yeah. Blight Steel would be nice. Natural order for Blight Steel. We got a show and tell from Corbett. All right, that, he loves that card. So we're gonna probably see a Blight Steel from Corbett. Then I would, I have to imagine he has to. Uh, he has probably to a Sundering it. Titan in there too somewhere. Maybe it's not that good in this draft. I don't think. Um, you know, I guess it's still a seven ten that kills a land or two when it comes into play. But like, yeah, uh, it's pretty good against Alex West. Yeah, I mean it's game over against Alex yeah, West. Yeah, which game over is generally pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I don't think it's going to be very good against Nate. I don't think it's going to be very good against Greg or Sean. <laughs> Excuse me. Um. <laughs> Excuse me. Sorry, stream. Bless you. I'm losing it over here. Yeah. All right. So Paul Tuff Meeker. Uh. 
Do you think there's any big impact cards, red cards, that we should see him from here? Like, I guess Wheel of Fortune got taken. Uh, yeah, Nate has Wheel. Not really. I think you just fill the curve, and, uh, you know, he might um, want to draft, like, an Armageddon or something. Yeah. Uh, yeah, red's just kind of boring. I mean, you gotta, you, you gotta take cards, like, uh... It's boring in the draft, but it's exciting when you play the match. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Uh, but I mean, like your card, your like your your you know, you kind of have your cards picked. Like you know, you know what all the best one drops are. You know yep. what all the best. Like we'll probably see like a you know Grim Lava Mancer and maybe you know maybe not. Uh, what's the two drop? What the levels up? Uh, Cargan Dragon Lord. Cargan Dragon Lord. Yeah, those there. are really slow. They're much better cube cards than they are in a format Yeah, like I guess this. Paul's not, since he's only playing base red, he can't interact very to much. To be fair, the, the Lava Mancer would be very good in this particular format. Um, Ooh, I don't like Vexing Devil. That card is just bad. People, stop playing Vexing Devil, please. Nah, yeah, dude. Keep this playing. This would be a PSA. Just, for the love of God, stop playing Vexing Devil. It's not good. <laughs> it, it, n never, ever give your opponent a choice. Unless it's, do you want to die this way or this way? Yeah. Uh, one card that Alex... Um, I don't want to say the card. Scalding Tarn's been picked, right? Uh, yeah, Scalding Tarn's been picked. All right, they're they're sort they it figured out. it out. The old uh, flashing light things work. That's out. pretty cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's yeah. nice. Uh, very smart. Yeah, I have a good idea. Paul Wade, genius. Oh, that's a stretch. No, it's official. I said it. I'll take it. All right. All right. So. Uh, moving on, Sean Collins. He still hasn't really shown us how he's gonna win. I, I imagine this he's got that that bitter blossom. GTA. Yeah, I mean <laughs> bitter blossom. I think that was Jesse Hamden's sole win condition last time. Uh, Ashiok. He had Ashiok. Well, he also had um, uh, Helm of Obedience, Leyline yeah, yeah. combo. He actually won a bunch of matches with that. Yeah, just out of nowhere too. Yeah, counter your thing, counter your thing, counter your thing, counter your thing, Dead. kill you. Yeah. Uh, so Sean Collins. I mean, he talked to me. He wanted to just play like all the aggressive black one drops. Yeah. I think that's a little weak. I think so, too. Um, the clock's not fast enough. I like to see out of this deck. Uh, th I, I think this is where, like, uh, uh, Dark Depths has a place. Okay. Because you get to play Hex Mage. You get to play... You can play a Thespian Stage. You know what makes that you, combo better? What? Vampiric and Demonic Tutor. That's very true. Yeah. Which are both still live. Uh, uh, Skull Tarn gets picked again. These guys... <laughs> Um, so we see another, uh, Journey Next card taken off the board, Brain Maggot. Brain Maggot. Which, uh, you know, he's got Brain Maggot and Mesmeric Fiend and Sinkhole and him and a so mask. And, like, what I'm interested to see Sean do is how he's going to keep people from top decking on him. That's the biggest right. weakness of the black deck is you strip their hand and you present a decent clock. But every opponent has cards like... Time Twister, Wheel of Fortune. Probably somebody's going to have a Time Spiral somewhere. Yeah. Uh, you know, Corbett could leave, like, just an Emrakul in his hand and peel a show and tell. And yep. then you're just dead, right? Uh, you uh, you could present a Bitter Blossom against Alex, but his board is a Wild Nakatl and a Tarmogoyf, right? Like, mm, you yeah. stripped his hand, but now his guys are 3-3s three and 5-6s, and you're in a lot of trouble. Um, so it'll be interesting to see how he presents a board. Uh, rather yeah. than just disrupting the opponent. Um, I, I didn't see this get picked up by uh, Alex West. Sitter Fire Drinker. Uh, it looks like they didn't type right, so it's not going to show up for us. It's the uh, Jackal Pup with Fire Breathing, right? Yes. Um, yep. It's okay. I'm a little surprised to see you can take that. It, but. The, it fire Breathes for two and deals one to you, I think. Yes. Yeah. So it's, yeah. it's just... Like a, it's two just, mana for one buff, right? right? Yeah. It's just Jackal Pup, really. Um, Nate passes yet again. On Vamptomon. I just don't think they're going to get drafted. Oh, man. God, it's so gross. Uh, so we see a Tundra out of Greg Peliquin, which I think we're going to see him move into uh, blue-white. Carl uh, Joe Bowen's been sitting here texting me just like nonstop about Greg's got to go blue-white. He's got to take Stoneforge Mystic, which, you know, I think is... That's the deck we saw uh, Josh and Shiro draft twice ago. Yeah, he did And very uh, well I think it. he got second, maybe second or third he with did it. He very well with He it. definitely qualified. Oh, that's another thing we should mention. Uh, kind of the structure of this is we, um, we're we doing uh, a draft of champions at the end of all these. Once we have eight unique winners, we're going to do a draft of champions at the very end. Yep. And um, But also what you can do by getting the top three of any of these drafts, you qualify for the next draft. So you'll get a so even if you get second or third and you don't earn that spot in the draft of champions, you get another shot at it. Right. So um, yep. Right now, 
Uh, if we want to go ahead and just move back to that, we, well, well, this is the movie. Oh, no, they're moving again here, so we'll, we'll slow down. My mic all messed up, Chris. Okay, so Thanks, Greg did take the batter skull, so he's probably going to Stoneforge soon. Yeah, we, took, we have a land grant out of Nate Heiss. Wasteland's been taken. Uh, so we're getting close to the break here. So uh, at the end of 15 picks... Uh, we well, again, we're going to do that raffle. The first one here is just for $10, but we're going to be bumping it up throughout the course of the yeah. day. Uh, but if you want to be uh, able to win here, we need you logged into the Twitch chat so that we can you know call out your name or whatever. If, you, if you're not logged into the Twitch chat, we won't know that you're here, and you won't be eligible to win. <coughs> Excuse me. So make sure you get logged in. And at the end of the 15 picks, we're gonna drink, we're gonna bring someone in here to interview, talk yep. about their deck so far, and then we're also going to be giving away that, that credit. Cool. So get logged in. So I'm going to open up this again. We didn't quite get a final answer on the last one. So, and if people can't we'll, uh, decide... Imps we'll, we'll decide Mischief? What is Imps Mischief? Uh, it's uh, it's two mana. Uh, change the target of a spell that targets only a player. Uh, and, uh, or, uh, no, you, I think you can change the target of anything. But you lose life equal to the card's converted mana cost. Okay. So, like, in Time Spiral Block... People would use that to redirect people's ancestral visions. Oh, okay, okay. Right. Um, so, anyway, we need to figure out who we're going to come and interview here. So, uh, go ahead and let us know who you guys would like to see. If we don't get a consensus, or we'll just pick one off. Yeah. For me right now, it's Nate Heiss. Yeah, same. Um, do, would you like to interview him? You want me to interview him? No, you do it. All right, cool. Yeah. Joe's going to come in after and do the middle section, and I'll sit out. So, I'll Sounds just good. let you. It'll Sounds be good. easier transition. Um, so... People have just forgotten about the tutors. And Jace. Like, and, and Jace. Library of Alexandria. And Library of Alexandria. There are four cards that are insane that have been completely forgotten about. Yep, absolutely. Uh, we've got Nate. Nate, people are, it looks like people are saying, uh, people are saying, don't interview Corbett. That's a good idea. <laughs> Which I can get behind that. It's bad for everybody. People are asking for Cedric as well. Uh, we will definitely, I mean, people love Cedric. We know people want to talk to Cedric. We'll definitely get Cedric in here I don't know point. why. Yeah, I, big, who knows? Big, uh, but we'll get. Dummy. I guarantee you, we're gonna draft at least. We're gonna interview at least three people during the course of the draft. We will for sure get Cedric in here at some point. Yeah. Um, currently, I think. Uh, uh, we could do Ced. First. We could do Ced first. We could do Ced first. What are you doing, man? That's yeah, nice oh, I don't know. If we do that, I'm gonna have you interview Cedric. Okay, and, I'll, and then I'll switch back in All or right. whatever because you know you guys have a certain demeanor. Sure. Yeah. Um, <laughs> muddle the mixture. Oh, I love this card. Uh, uh, that transmutes for power artifact. Is that correct? Correct. And it also transmutes for grim monolith. Is that correct? Correct. So it gets both halves of that combo. Is that it's correct? Pretty spicy. Okay. Right. Uh, also, it counters a spell. Why not? Yeah. You'd probably play it if it did. Counters a powerful. <laughs> yeah. If it was just three mana, search for a two drop. Yeah. You know, it's better than that. <laughs> Demonic. <two. laughs> I don't understand. <laughs> what are these people are doing? All right. So, it's going to be really hard for so me to not say anything. People. So. People are. Uh, it looks like we've got pretty much a contention here between Nate and Cedric. Uh, Cedric or Riot, people are saying. All right, all right. We'll get Cedric in here. Okay. All right, but Nate's getting... We're going to talk to Nate. Yeah, Nate's deck is nice. Because uh, I love his deck. I want... I, God, I want him to draft Vamp and Demonic so bad. He can't now because the Bayou's gone. I guess he could still take uh, Overgrown Tomb. But... Uh, Man, yeah, God, his deck is super nice. He has Lotus Petal, Fast Bond. His deck is so powerful. It really, and he hasn't even taken any of the business cards yet. I know. People don't know what he's doing yet. That's I know, the thing. Yeah. Like, um, let's, uh, They're going to get dead real fast is what's going to happen. So this is going to come down this way, swing back around, and we're going to take a break here. Yeah. Okay, so Corbett got the Academy super late. Yeah, that card's going to be super good in his deck. Um, he still doesn't have the Tezzeret, though. So are there any interesting matchups that we're looking for? Uh, no, probably not yet. Hey, Mana Confluence off the board. Look at that. There it is. All right, Sed, Sed is starting to get what he wanted, I think. I actually yeah. I like I like his deck. It yeah. Could, it could certainly be better. Yeah. he's uh, on, Like I said, like we said before, he's on the... I think I'm better than everyone in here. Yeah. I'm going to just take the cards that allow me to outplay people. Yeah. Um, 
We'll see how it works out for him. I mean, it doesn't matter how good you are if your opponent just nuts you on turn two with you right. know, with an infinite combo. Yeah. So and his only way to stop that is one duress. And then I guess I mean he has well, he's, he's, stuff, he has mental misstep, and you know yeah. he'll he'll probably have some more counter spells. His only way to proactively. I, I mean, I think counter literal counter spell is still live. Yeah, I think Greg should take it. Um, negate. Negate. Uh, we have Spell Snare, which is actually an all-star in this format. It just got taken. Oh, Spell Snare? Oh, well, there yeah, we go. Good, just good pick, it. Cedric Phillips. There you go. Um, also, some cards that people often forget about is, are the X spells. The, like, uh, Condescend yeah. and... Uh, uh, power Sync. Power Sync. Ones like that, which are also very powerful. Yep. Um, Who's Riot? Uh, people, people are saying if we don't... Cedric, uh, oh, they Cedric will riot. Cedric will riot. People will riot on us if they don't. Gotcha. Uh, which, you know, is fair. People, you know, he's the people's champ, kind of. Yeah. So, uh, we got a source of power from Greg signaling that he is looking like he's going to go into that blue-white control deck. Okay. So, we've got a blue-white and a blue... Uh, well, Cedric's not playing blue-white-black control, it looks like. Uh, yeah, I think he is. You think so? He's just playing yeah. hard control? Well, I mean, like, just his deck is going to be all one-for-ones and ways to get ahead a little bit on card advantage. And he's going to try to be, like... I, I think that's why he was... Uh, so, um, like, taken back a little bit by Sean's moving in on black so fast is that he wanted to be in that bug shell. Now, I like will say the this. way that the legacy deck plays out. I know that your buddies with Cedric. Yeah, you guys have been friends for a long time. Yeah, you better not tell him about Vampiric. I can't. Theater. No, I can't. <laughs> I'm not gonna. Okay. I, it's gonna be really hard though. It's God. It's gonna be really hard. Oh, shit. David Miller just points out, how late is Sean Collins going to float the mind twist? Oh, my God. <laughs> that, one's, that one's so floated, we didn't even notice. Yeah, yeah. Good good call from David Miller, our floor judge over there. Mind twist still available. I mean... Corbett should take that. Yeah. Corbett should take the vamp demonic and the mind twist, oh, and then his deck would be so, so good. At this point, we're still... Cool. Early enough in the draft, someone could just take those three cards and just start over. Yeah! It's so, <laughs> wow! Oh my god. If Corbett took those cards with all this fast mana he's got and the Tolarian Academy, woo lordy. Turn three, twist for six. Next turn, Get bam, ya. tinker, dead. All that, right, we got a Crypto Command from Greg Peliquin. Um... This is fun. We should start up a list, like a notepad, and put it on the side of just insane cards that people haven't no, that is something we No, that is something we should do for next time. We, yeah. should, we should just have a running list of the LOL, why yep. haven't these been yep. picked cards? Yep. Why does my, my screen my, keep changing? My 45th off? pick Skull Clamp, also still on the board, I guess. Lotus. <laughs> Max McCall is very, very yeah. amused. Yeah. He's just, oof, man. All right, so just one last warning here. We are getting very close to the first break, which is where we're giving away that uh, store credit. So get logged into the Twitch chat. Last chance here. Yeah. Um, you've got about, well, Cedric still has to pick, so you've got about 20 minutes. Chris, are you all queued up for that? You ready to go? Chris is uh, nice. all set. We've got a smallpox from Sean Collins. Ambitious. Not in love with it. I, I so I, I actually don't hate it. I don't hate uh, it. I mean, he's gonna probably have stuff like Bloodgast. I things. think there's still cards that he's, uh, he's fighting for here, and I don't really? think you think there's stuff he's fighting for. Well, I mean, like he's still fighting for demonic tutor, vampiric tutor, he's and, not, he and want the mind those. twist. The mind twist, yeah, but he doesn't want those other cards. Sure, sure. Um, he's got Liliana. He's got him. Um, is uh, yeah. I mean, he just wants to yeah. present a clock at this point and, get, and keep taking cards that. Disrupt the opponent. Yeah, um, I think some cards we're gonna see out of him are like hypnotic specter. We're gonna see some cards you can you can dark ritual to yep. turn one. So we've got yeah. Um, and you know a card we didn't see on our journey. The next thing that might make it in here, I think it's probably not a great card in general, but maybe in this format it works. Is that new? Uh, what is it? The something of the feast guy, the three mana five five flyer. No. Nah, the like at the beginning of your opponent's upkeep they draw a card. Oh okay. Or the uh, beginning of your upkeep your opponent's draw is a card. It black two. It's uh, black black one. Black black one. Um. This might be the format that it's good in. I, I, it's I mean, a pretty it's, huge drawback. It's pretty tough when you're sitting there trying to one for one discard them and then be like, oh, but you can draw two cards. Turn. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah, fun. yeah, yeah. Oh, but let's take five. Uh, someone's me. asking, uh, people are kind of asking how the draft's working. Uh, yeah, so uh, we have all the cards available. Um, 
So as soon as the drafts are or the, the, the people's decks are actually getting made as we go, we have someone in the room creating the decks as we go. They're pulling yep. the cards out of the box, making yep. the decks. So we'll be able to fire matches right away. So um, all the cards in Vintage are illegal picks. So if it hasn't been picked yet and it's a card you can play in, in Vintage, it's a live pick. Yep. Our uh, conspiracy is not out yet, right? Conspiracy is not out yet. That'll okay. be for next time. I'm excited to see if Dax Faden. I don't know what makes that it does. Dax Faden is the new planeswalker from Conspiracy. One red and a blue. No clue starting loyalty. Probably like three or four or something. No way. Uh, three mana planeswalker. That that way. Uh, I think it's minus two. Okay. Gain control of target artifact. Okay. Plus one or two. Draw two, discard two. Nice. And I don't know what its last ability is. Maybe it's take extra turns. I'm sure the chat can tell That's us here in a really second. That's really good. It's, uh, yeah, like, play my, like, just imagine turn two, like, play my mocks, play my Dax Faden, steal your Mac, mocks. All right, let's go. Let's continue. Like, also just being able to filter for cards, really good. Yeah. So, uh, so yeah, it is minus two, steal an artifact. Let's starts on three. starts on three. Okay. Um... Yeah. I, what is? Do people know what its last ability is? I think it's like take extra turns or something. I might be getting it confused with uh, Ral Zarek. That is, yeah, it's flip coins, take extra turns yeah. for Ral Zarek. I think he has maybe some other one. I never pay attention to ultimates. They're not relevant. What just happened to the stream? There we oh, go. Oh, there we go. Dak Faden. Whenever you cast a spell that targets one or more permanents, gain control of those permanents. Will. That is a spicy meme. I, I think oh, that card's got to get picked next draft. That's a pretty cool card. It is blue-red. Which, you know, we haven't seen a ton of blue red That's decks. That's a cool card, though. But it is a neat one. All right. Yep, Birds of Paradise. I told you. There told you go. You <laughs> did it. You did it. All right. Said um, with the probe. Patrick Sullivan would be proud. And just a shout out to Chris for just being on top of things there, getting us our Dax Faden. Yeah. The man mm -hmm. is a master of his craft. Like, he, he, he's got this, he does the whole setup for us. He's incredible. Like, he's, uh, we wouldn't be able to do it without him. So thanks again, Chris. Uh, we got a minor over matter from Corbett. So Temple Bell probably coming at some point. Yep. Uh, and uh, he, I think he's gonna try to end up drafting a deck that like what uh, Jesse Wilkie drafted uh, a couple drafts ago, where he had Oath, um, and uh, and my right. Matter Temple. Battle. So we are at the break here. Uh, why cool. don't you go ahead and do the raffle, Chris? I'm gonna go grab Cedric, and uh, then you wanna hang time. I'm, I'm actually gonna grab Cedric. Okay. Uh, I need to take a little tinkle break. Okay. Uh, you wanna take over the mic, Chris? All right, thanks everybody for watching. Uh, again, we cannot do this without you guys. So go ahead and click below the stream and uh, go ahead and uh, join our Facebook group. And you'll be able to get updates on what uh, on the Cube Satellites, any qualification tournaments you get into this. Also, you get a lot of information from us in the Files tab about uh, people's picks, all of their uh, the data from uh, the past um, streams that we've done and the past tournaments. So... Uh, right now, we'll be giving away some uh, $10 store credit to uh, Northwest Sports Cards. So thank you to Northwest Sports Cards for giving $120 of store credit today to us. So um, so thank you to uh, – and they're, and they're based in uh, University Place, Washington. Uh, they do a lot of pre-release tournaments. They have been doing magic for, um, I mean, ever since it started, you know, 1993, 94. And they've been doing it ever since. So – um, what I'll do is I'll go ahead and uh, give away a ten dollars to uh, their online store. Um, I'm not sure if they're actually doing the free shipping for this, but uh, I will get more information uh, later in the day. So let's go ahead and get this. I'm going to check everybody that's in the uh, chat right now and uh, let's see where we're going. And the winner is Strikeout 03, Strikeout 03, you win $10. Go ahead and personal message me on uh, on Twitch, uh, personal message Shotgun Lotus, and um, uh, give me your information. Uh, what you need to do to be able to claim these prizes is actually log on to Northwest Gamers Choice, nwgamerschoice.com. Here, I'll go ahead and put this in here. Um, nwgamerschoice.com. So go log into nwgamerschoice.com, create an account on there, and then... Uh, Personal message me with your first and last name and also with your email that you use to sign up. So we'll go ahead and get that to you uh, maybe probably by the end of this weekend uh, once I go ahead and talk to the gaming manager to go ahead and uh, hook that up for you. So we'll go ahead and take a little break real quick and we'll uh, be able to uh, do an interview for... Say welcome to uh, Cedric Phillips, everybody. Welcome to Cedric Phillips, everybody. Wow, I like that. That's, yeah, that's the good. We got, good. we got good sound The bites. applause is nice. Yeah. I like that. So, uh, the People's Choice 
Yeah, Senator yeah, Phillips. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, You're probably tired of this shit, now, aren't A you? little bit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. If if only they knew. Yeah, they don't know the truth. <laughs> they don't know the truth about me. I told everybody the extent of your preparation. Was, was, there was a lot of it. Yeah, we uh, we were searching for answers in the bottle of a uh, in the bottom of a sangria. Not sure if we night. found it. We found answers to different questions. We found a couple limes. Yeah, we did. There <laughs> were some lines in there, and uh, we found answers. Maybe not the questions for vintage rotisserie so much, but we no, found answers. Yeah, life, life answers. Yeah, that's, yeah. That, that's important. Sorting things out. You know? Yeah. So, uh, how do you feel? Um, I feel okay. Okay. So, the all right. So when I was prepping. I was talking with Tommy F. Shut up. I, was, <laughs> I actually tried really hard for like two hours. Today. I know you did. Right. Um, <laughs> you called me You called me at like 9.45 and you were like, how many, is it 60 card decks or 40 card decks? How yeah. Many? This is really important. Yeah, it was important actually. <laughs> yeah. So um, when I was prepping with Tommy Ash today and um, basically what I'm trying to draft is Miracle Grow. I'm mm -hmm. trying to draft a deck with like 10 lands in it. Okay. Um, the land. So oddly, the land grant. Getting yeah, so taken. that's actually yeah. really awkward. Yeah. Like, I wasn't like set on having land grant in my deck, but I but thought it was really it. funny that like yeah. he took it. Yeah. Um, but coming in this, like, uh, basically the decision was like, are we going to be blue black or are we going to be blue green? Okay. Because I didn't know what to expect as far as dark confidence goes. Like, basically, for my deck to function, mm -hmm. I need card yeah. drawing. Yeah. Like some sort of card drawer to give me consistent cards. Yep. Um, so like I didn't think that confidant would be a thing, and then like it was kind of their third pick. I liked how things were starting up, but I could also tell that Sean was going to be probably right. It's tough it. when he goes Jet thoughts he's ritual. Like it's tough to choose black as your second color. Yeah, yeah. So I, then I was like, okay, I'll just take confident on the splash. The thing that actually just really messed everything up is that Greg took Snapcaster third, right? Because that card is like super Insane in your important deck. Yeah, because you're just to like do. trying to like mental note almost. You know? Yeah, I'm just I'm just taking like I only want the spells in my deck to cost one or two mana. Yep. And like that's the perfect card for what I'm trying to do. Yep. So, like, the fact that he, and he even said before he took it, he's like, I'm taking this one way ahead of schedule. And he took it, and I'm just like, you got to be kidding me. <laughs> and it's like, dude, I gave you a time walk. Wait, wait get out of here with Yeah, that. you did just hand him a time walk. I did. I know. Like, yeah. I don't think the time walk is actually good in my deck for what I'm trying to do. Sure. Which is, like, a weird thing to say because it's time walk. But I don't think it's good in my deck. And my deck, I don't think, can function without Force of Will. Because I need a free counter spell. Okay. So that's why I took it so high. Okay. Um, like I looked where it went in other drafts, and like yeah, I it's could, it, a little early, but I could take the risk of it going. But like, if I don't have a force of will, then like I can't play the way that I want to play. Well, especially if you don't have a force of will, like you're especially weakened when the guy next to you is taking the thoughts he's in the Inquisition. Yeah. Right? Like those are the cards that you have to have. You have to have something to interact with their opening hand. Yeah. Yeah. So basically, what I'm trying to do, if like you guys know Magic history, there was a like there's Miracle Grow and Super Grow. Yeah. Um, like, Miracle Grow was, like, a 10 land deck, and yeah. Super Grow had, like, 12. Yeah. And they had, you know, they had four copies of Land Grant, but, like... That the, was, like, the Mystic Enforcer deck, right? Yeah, Super Grow's okay. Mystic Enforcer. Okay. The other one is, like, Queer and Dryad. Yep. Um, some of them had Werebear, um, mm -hmm. stuff like that. So, yep. like, that's basically what I'm trying to draft. I thought you were going to try to be Bug Shell. So, I was kind of going that way. Yeah. A little bit. Um, like, so, taking the Bob kind of messed up my draft a little bit, because, like, I just wanted to be Blue Green. Mm -hmm. And then I was like, well, Bob is so good mm -hmm. that I have to take it, so I'll, like... Just lightly splash Bob. And then I didn't realize that Alex was going on this like huge run of fetch lands until yeah. he went Catacombs Flats. And I'm like, okay, he's real serious about this, yep. I guess. So um, that kind of messes up my deck because like the bug shell, for it to work, I think I need Death Rite. Okay. And there are no more fetch lands. Right. Except for like Bad River. Right, you're not taking And that. I'm not taking those cards. Yeah. So now, after you I You only have... One fetch. Line, I've won, right? I've dealt it. That's it. Okay. And Greg, like when I like I took I took Tropical Island from him, but they don't know that I'm drafting that deck. Yeah. Like no one has a clue that like that's what I'm trying to do. It's like right. I'm taking like I'm masking it by taking like a bunch of blue cards, and then if yeah, you look and, at the previous ones, right. it's like Goyf and stuff go really late. Mm -hmm. So like I took Trop because I knew Greg was probably once Greg took Sylvan, I'm like okay, he's probably gonna take Trop now. Yeah. And so like I took Trop, and he's just like, what the heck are you doing? And then he ran off fetch lines that I was going to take. Right. So that kind of messed things up. So now we're switching. Yeah. There's a little bit of fighting going on between you and Greg and Carl and Corbett. Yeah. Um, and Tefmeeker and, and West. And West yeah. yeah. The only two people that seem uncontested are Sean and Nate. Yeah. Um, I mean, Sean's getting a little bit battled for you, but or battled with you for, like, duress and confidant and stuff, but it seems like he's getting everything he wants. Yeah, I'm off of those black cards yeah. for the most part. Like, there will be a couple black cards that I have to take to interact with the red decks. Okay. Um, Such like, as? Like a disfigure. Oh, okay. Or something like yeah. just something so I don't die right yeah. away. Yep. Um, but what I think I'm going to do now is I'm probably just going to abandon the trop because, like, if you look at my cards, I have no green cards. 
Okay. Um, I just have the tropical island and then like the delta to find the trop. Okay. And like I could take like a hinterland harbor and some other crap to make it work. Mm -hmm. Um, but I'm probably just going to abandon the trop, move into red. Um, okay. Because the volcanic is still left, which is probably my next pick, assuming it gets back to me. Okay. I'm going to take the volcanic and then I'm going to move into like farther down the road, pyroclasm and whip flare. Okay. To beat the red decks. Yeah, sure. Um, and like figure out like I can like take those cards. I have a trop, so I can flashback grudge, and no one's taking grudge yet. Mm -hmm. um, and so you still play the trop, but not prioritize. Yeah, really green mana. Yeah, sure. and then just kind of figure out where to go from there. Like right now, I'm. How also... would you plan on killing people? Um. Oh, so I looked at like the previous drafts. No one's taken Delver before. Okay. Yeah. So like I'm like I on my list of like on my list of creatures to kill people with when I was doing the blue green thing. It was like Delver, um, True Name, uh, Luder, True Name, yeah. Luder Ilcor, yep. um, um. Vidalcan Heretic. Do you know what that is? It's blue green. It's blue green one one when it hits him draw, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Not bad. Yeah. Not bad. Yeah. So like that, um, Trigon. Yeah. Um he took my Vendillion like super early. Yeah. Uh, which was like probably right because it's great. I actually really like where like Greg's first eight picks were. And yeah, I think the they're great. He got mana drain in the sixth round. So like I, um, Everyone just forgot, right? No, like I didn't forget about like I don't think drain is good for my strategy. Okay. Of just like I there's if you like look what I'm trying to do, like which is just all one and ma one mana and two mana spells, I can't yeah. use the mana from drain. Sure. So like drain is essentially just counterspell for me. Yeah. And so like I mean counterspell hasn't been taken yet and I can just take counterspell. So yeah. I knew that drain was gonna get like a late run. Like the thing about drain is like if I'm if I care just about my draft, it's not good in my deck and it's not good against me. Okay. So it's like, yeah, get an extra mana, dude. Yeah, That's sure. fine. Okay. Yeah. So, I mean, unless he counters, like, my gush. Like, that's a beating. Right. But that's about it. So, that's the... Uh, or your Force of Will or something. Yeah, that's yeah. the uh, that's the game plan. Like, there are some cards that I'm, uh, like, I'm assuming are going to not go very early. Like, or, like, I feel like there's cards that, because, like, I'm a small blue deck, like a fish deck, and Greg is a bigger blue deck, like, with the pick of, like, Batter Skull and some other things that are yeah. going on in Cryptic, like, because I have no interest in four and five mana spells, like, I assume that I'm going to get uh, a Null... I'm going to get Steel Sabotage. Yeah, okay. Um, some of, like, just the really cheap counters. Yeah, so basically what you're trying to do is, like, you're never trying to play a fourth land ever. Yeah. Right? Uh, you're trying to one-for-one, one, not on tempo, but one-for-one, one, like, trade this card for that card with mana tempo. Yeah. Right? And then, uh, and then recreate your card advantage via cards like Gush and Dark Confidant. Yeah. Okay. That's pretty much it. And I don't think this card is going to be good in my deck now. Um... But Winter Orb was like the card that I was actually just hell bent on taking forty fifth. <laughs> okay. Because uh, like that was like a lot of what the grow decks were built around. Yeah. Just like gushing and orbing, and I yeah. don't need mana to function, and my counter spells are free. Like I don't think that Winter Orb is a good. weird card because like ever the like all the fast mana gets so split. Yeah. And everyone has ways around it. Yeah. You know, you never you never draft up against some like control deck that's just like oh land go land go land go. Yeah, the closest thing to that I think is Greg's correct. deck. Yeah. yeah. So like I don't think that Winter Orb is going to be a thing. Um, but that being said, like I feel like I'm gonna be able to draw enough cards and stock my hand that like I can probably take foil forty uh, fifth. Okay. And have it be good. Yeah. Um, and I think I'm going to put Looter Ilcor in this deck. Like, I was going to draft Merfolk Looter, and then Tommy's just like, do Looter Ilcor is the same thing, except for it deals with points of damage. Yeah. Which is basically true. Right. Um, I mean, can't block, whatever. Like, it might be worse just because, like, there's a, there are two red decks. I can't block a Looter Maybe. Ilcor, so yeah. that might matter. Um, and I also have to decide, like, even though I talked about moving into blue, black, red, and then moving away from green, like, Goyf is insane against the two red decks. Yeah. And like my, I think my pyroclasm Even plan is insane good. against them. Yeah, yeah, like I think my pyroclasm plan is good. Um, and I don't think anyone's gonna stop me from doing that. Sure. But like, I think there's certainly some value just having like a three, four timer going against a red deck, and they're just like, I can't attack. Go. Yeah. Are there? I mean, do you have any like defensive creatures in mind if you do play red? <sighs> Not yet. I haven't thought of any yet. Okay. So. That's it's a, really hard to legit. like do these because I have cards in my head and I can't say. Anything. Yeah, you can't say anything. Yeah. Obviously, yeah. Like so, I I mean I'm racking my brain because like it's it's kind of interesting. Like a lot of the decks that are being drafted around me, I like I'm only splitting cards with Pelican, for the most part. Yeah, like not really. You don't want the same stuff Sean wants at this point in the draft. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So like I'm only splitting cards with him. So like you know for the last pick, for example, like for Gataxian Probe, I kind of tanked on it for a little while and I was just like, well, I kind of need a way to start actually killing people and playing a tempo game like a Delver Legacy deck would play. Yep. So like I thought about taking Delver then and I'm just like. Looking at like the people who are after me, which is like Carl, Tefmeeker, mm -hmm. Corbett, and uh, Alex, and it's like, okay, none of those guys can possibly take Delver. Right. And then like I'm looking at Sean's deck, it's okay, like, no. Right. Nate's deck, no. Yep. And it's like Pelican's deck, no. Like right. I just don't yeah, think he's he... taking that card. Yeah. So like I can take that, you know, in the 40th round or whatever. And, like that'll be like one of my engine cards to get the game going. Yep. 
So yeah, that's a that's kind of the overall strategy. I cool. I, I feel like they're drafting like some. So like I, I understand like what they're trying to do. Yeah. Which is like, it feels like they just want to, you know, play a little ramp, play a little ramp, play a huge spell. Yeah. That feels like what, like, not the red decks, but, like, some of the other decks. Mm -hmm. It's just, like, I'm doing, like, a bunch of big stuff. Like Corbett and Carl. And... Yeah, like, they're trying to do, like, really, Nate's deck, too. It's trying to do, like, a bunch of big stuff, and, like, I feel like that's the kind of deck that my deck preys on. Okay. I was, like, that's trying to do that. I feel like I kind of prey on Greg, too, because I'm just under the curve. Yeah. And get to do more. He, like, gets to play, he gets to play like, one spell a turn. Yep. I get to play multiple spells a turn, yeah. assuming everything's going right. Right, because he doesn't have much going on in terms of mana. Yeah. Right? But his spells are all going to be good. Yeah. But... So I get to play multiple spells a turn. So now it's just like the two red decks that are like actually scaring me right now because, yeah. I mean, like they're like the red cards suck or whatever, but they're good enough. Right. That like I'm they're just fast. Gonna be under the gun. Yep. And I have like probe and misstep. Right. Because you don't have any combo kills. Yeah. And I don't have a great way to gain life. Sure. That's the thing that yeah, I'm kind of concerned with. Yeah. Yeah. That kind of went earlier than I thought. Yeah. So yeah. There you go. All right. Well, uh, that is uh, break number one with Cedric Phillips and a uh, little insight. Into the wow. insider. Look at yeah. those claps. That's it's good claps. That was really good. It's applause. Applause. Like applause. Yeah. So uh, we're going to get uh, Paul Waite and uh, Joe Bono back into the uh, Z booth, and uh, they'll get you through picks uh, 16 through 30, and uh, we'll send Seth back in to uh, finish his masterpiece. Uh, it's not a masterpiece yet. Give it some time. We'll see what happens. <laughs> All, right. All right. Thanks for watching, everybody. It just controls the light in the other room. Okay. All right. Not the power to this? Nope. Oh, it does. That's why that keeps turning off. Because because this is plugged into that no, thing. That's fine. I can I can fix that later. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. So anyway, welcome back, everyone. Uh, we are about to start the draft off again here, uh, and we'll see the first pick out of I believe we're on Alex West. Yeah. So uh, anyway, I'm here with Joe Bono, hi, Paul. Our, our third commentator for the day. Uh, how's it going, Joe? Uh, it's great. I was I was out there watching people draft. Uh, the, the energy in the room is really interesting. Mm -hmm. um, this is very different from a lot of other sort of vintage rotisserie drafts uh, in that, like, you have a bunch of people that are fighting for a lot of the same cards. You have Alex and Paul Tef Meter Meeker fighting for the same cards. Um, and, like, those, those are aggressive archetypes that you usually see, like, zero to one people playing for. And so, like, that's interesting. And then Carl and Corbett were butting heads, and Cedric and Greg were, uh, Greg Peliquin were, were butting heads. Um, and so that's, like, that's a dynamic that you don't see in a lot of these drafts, usually. Um, and so they're, they're, and that's coming out, in, like, in the, the table talk in the room. Yeah, one kind of nice, fun thing about this draft is a lot of interesting drafts that happen are done online. People are never in the same room. Yeah. They're done over a course of a week or whatever. People just have the spreadsheet up and fill in picks as they end. But in this case, we have all the drafters sitting in a room together, yelling at each other, you know, ah, you took my card, blah, blah, blah. So it really, there's a tend to be a lot more hate drafting yeah. because of that. Yeah. Uh, so I know that there were, like, four or five cards that people were freaking out about not yeah. being picked yet. Was Vampiric Tutor one Vampiric Tutor was the top of the list. We're talking about uh, Vampiric mm -hmm. Tutor, Demonic Tutor, Mind Twist, Jace the Mind Sculptor, and Imperial Seal. Okay. Uh, oh, so, and Library of Alexander. And Library, yeah. So Library was definitely one that, like, there are a couple of people who are like, don't tell anybody that Library hasn't been drafted yet. Yeah. So Corbett's, like, trying to float that as long as possible. Uh, Alex West doesn't well. care about any of those cards, yeah. but he, he sent me a message and he was like, I can't believe no one's taking these cards. Yeah. What are people doing? <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, so one interesting thing that you see happen here is that Alex just picked Path to Exile, and that goes back to Greg's pick in the 14th round of Swords to Plowshares, mm -hmm. um, which... Like, Greg picked that card, and I think it was a mistake that he picked Swords instead of Path. I agree. Because Swords is a card that nobody else wants, but Path to Exile is a card that Alex could potentially want. Right. Um, and I think, like, Greg's Greg's done a good job of writing the ship here, but he he definitely, like, made a couple missteps, and, like, he's gotten into blue-white now, and I think he's going to be in like a more mid-rangey spot, so he's not fighting quite as much with Cedric as possible. But like, you see the pick of Sylvan Library, um, that was just really, really wrong for. Yeah, him. I totally agree. That seemed. Uh, I for, actually when he picked Sylvan Library, I thought he missed type Library of Alexandria, <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, oh, we got to stop the draft. And and, and uh, Berkeley was like, no, no, red light. I, I think that he, I think that he meant to take that. And I was yeah. like, oh, well, I can't say anything. Um, so anyway, let's get back to the draft here. We see yeah. Trinket Mage come off from Corbett Gray, uh, which I think would have been su better suited in Carl Jans' deck. So I think he's probably a little upset to see that go. Uh, Hellspark Elemental, unexciting, but totally fine card for Paul. And Carl picks up one of those cards we've been talking about, Vampiric Tutor. Yeah. Um, 
Carl's going to have a really tough mana base. I think that's like the biggest weakness in his deck. I think so. I was talking to him in between the round uh, while uh, Cedric was getting interviewed, and he said, I came into this draft with two decks. Yeah. And I decided, <laughs> you know what? Why don't I just draft both of them? Yeah. Which I think is what we're going to see. I think what we're going to end up seeing here is he's going to try to try to figure out, you know, is my, is my natural order plan better? Is my, you know, uh, Time Vault plan better, and then I think we're going to see him start moving his deck around more around one of those strategies or a couple of those strategies as opposed to the kind of smorgasbord of things he's got going on here. Yeah, I like. I think he came in here wanting to draft a lot of like mana elves and acceleration and do big like medium big things, not like super big broken things like you know Karn liberated size things, not Emrakul size yeah. things. Um, and that that shows in a couple of his picks, but like there's there's still just you know, he doesn't have enough focus going on. You know, he's got these white picks and these black picks and he's got these blue green things. And I think I think he would have benefited a lot from saying, Okay, I'm going to be a big blue green deck yep. or I'm going to be an artifact deck that has some tutoring. He I'm needs to make up black his black or blue, yeah. Um, so we do see him pick up Vampiric Tutor, which I think if he can wield demonic tutor here, decide, you know, I'm gonna, you know, end up playing black, maybe cut the green. And uh, he could have a pretty sweet combo deck yeah. in his hands. I'm really shocked that Sean Collins never like went for a combo-y thing. Yeah, you know, I, I, we were talking about, I was talking about with Berkeley, uh, the combo I like in that deck is Dark Depths. Sure, Because sure. you, you've got Hex Mage, you can play Urboard, you can play Thespian Stage. Yeah. Um, You're and, like, Hex Mage is just a very viable card in yeah. a black beatdown deck all, by itself. All the cards except for Dark Depths are fine on their own. Yeah. And it just kind of gives you this doomsday switch. Like, okay, I'm, I have my plan. I'm going to disrupt you. I'm going to kill you with little creatures. But if I need to, I might just kill you out of nowhere. Yeah. Which I think is a nice plan for that deck to have. Yeah. Um, did you guys talk at all about how just Reanimator is untouched here? We didn't talk about it much. We touched on it uh, when you sent me you sent me a text. You're like, I can't believe no one's drafting Reanimator. Yeah. Uh, do you want to talk about it a little bit? Um, so, like, that's that's one of the very, like, classic vintage rotisserie. Absolutely. I, it's archetypes. my favorite deck to draft. Yeah, and like the great thing about you know, so you're in black and blue, the colors of disruption, mm -hmm. and it's a very resilient deck because there are tons of reanimation effects, mm -hmm. and there are a lot of like looters and other discard There's just outlets, lots of redundancy, and so like entomb and dark ritual are like the hardest things to to replace really, mm -hmm. yep. and like uh, Grizzlebrand, as well. yeah, and Grizzlebrand, yeah, but you know. So th this this is an archetype that always gets drafted really heavily. I think mm. in the last one we saw Entomb go in the second round or the third yeah. round. Yeah, uh, I think I think when, uh, Mike Thompson took Black Lotus and then wheeled Entomb and I think maybe Dark Ritual. Yeah, uh, he definitely took Entomb second though. Yeah, yeah, um, and now nobody's touching it. Yeah. And like Black, like Sean, like putting his foot down and saying. I'm going to be the black drafter, and everybody stayed away from him. Like, Cedric had the Dark Confidant early on, but Cedric's been a very blue deck so far. Um, and, like, I don't think Sean has capitalized on the fact that, you know, he had black to himself, and, you know, he missed the three tutors, mm -hmm. and, you know, he, he had an opportunity to pick up Demonic Tutor here or uh, or Imperial Seal, and he chose Skull Clamp and Persecute. Um, and I think, like, Persecute you definitely don't need to get at this point. Um, Skull Clamp, you could probably wait a little bit for. Like, it's going to be decent in his deck because he has Bitter Blossom, and presumably he's going to get things like Bloodgast and uh, Gravecrawler later on, so that, you know, he's, he's going to have that as a draw engine, but he doesn't need to worry about that right now. He should be worried about getting some more consistency, at least with Demonic Tutor, where, you know, it's, it's going to get him the best card for the situation. You know, being able to Demonic Tutor for a Thought Seize is almost always going to be yeah. good. And if he has some of these like two cardish combos like Bitter Blossom and Skull Clamp, um, that's going to be fine. I also really don't understand this Imp's Mischief pick that he made. Yeah, and another 13. thing too, he takes Persecute over Mind Twist. Yeah, which means he's just clearly forgot that it exists. Yeah, very. That that's absolutely true. Um, you know, Sean, Sean, you know, had had a good plan of he wants to be disruptive and he wants to establish himself as a black drafter, but I don't think he did enough research for it. Yeah. So I'm going to take a second here while yeah. uh, picks are getting invoked off. Uh, if you're watching this, if this is your first time watching the stream and you're having a good time, you're liking what we're doing here, um, there's a link to our Facebook group down below, uh, right underneath the stream. Uh, if you join the Facebook group, uh, and you can follow along. We, we're doing these drafts about once a month. Yeah. Uh, this is actually kind of a big announcement here. We are tentatively planning the next one for the 14th. Um, and uh, I can't announce it yet. We're still waiting for confirmation, but we do have a pretty big name 
for this the next one as well. We uh, like we got Cedric for this one. Next one, I think we're gonna have someone. Also well, Cedric's gonna be in the next one because he's gonna top three it, right? We'll see. <laughs> we'll see. Uh, but anyway, join the Facebook group. Uh, there's uh, you can follow along with uh, you know when the next draft's gonna be. You know, we do some fun polls and type things. And the other thing that you could do if you are from the Seattle area, or you know if you're willing to you know kind of travel or whatever, um, we do cube draft satellites. Um, where that's how Carl Jans got in. Yep. Uh, uh, we, there was a lot of people who wanted to get involved, and you know we can only do eight drafters. It doesn't work with any more than that. And uh, so we do these cube. Dra- we do two cube draft slots now. Um, and if we do a cube draft, if you win, you get a spot in the draft. Um, so if you if you are interested in that, and you're you know in the Seattle area or whatever, go ahead and join the Facebook group. I'll be posting after this draft. I'm going to be posting uh, you know a, a thing that hey, if you guys are interested, let me know. We'll get you added to the list. We'll get you in a draft, and maybe we can get you on stream here. Yeah. Um, but anyway, let's go back to the draft. Uh, did we see anything sweet coming while we were talking there? Uh, so we're, we're seeing Alex and Paul just continue to be like on plan. Um, I think they've gotten past the point where they're really competing for cards. I know that Alex had a very focused list. Mm-hmm. and Very focused. He's, he's done an excellent job of defensively drafting the cards that Paul cares about. And you'll see, like if you look at the early picks that Paul had, Paul didn't really know what Alex was doing. And so he made some picks that were too early for his deck um, because he was worried that Alex wanted them, but they weren't actually things that Alex wanted. And like the biggest one of those is uh, is Figure of Destiny, which is a really, really important card for Paul because there yeah. are far fewer good red one drops. Um, but it was less important for Alex because he's going to have green mana in his deck. Yeah. He's going to try to be more mana efficient. And, like, that's that's hard to see. Like, it's hard to f- fault Paul for that. But that's some of what's going on. Like, Eidolon of the Great Revel, everybody was really surprised that it went as late as it did because it's a really fantastic card for Paul's deck. And mm-hmm. it looks like Alex might want that. Alex, I don't think, wanted that I don't card think he wants Because it the either. double red is is actually tough. And, like, I think Alex is trying to optimize for one drops and mana efficiency and making sure that all of his two drops are playable. And he just wants to say, I spend one mana, I spend two mana, I spend three mana, I spend four mana, you're dead. Yep. Um, so if we come back here, uh, some picks, let's move back a bit. It looks like Cedric Phillips saw, saw Vampiric Tutor get taken. He's like, oh, shit, damn, Demonic Tutor's a card. Yeah. So, and we see him take Demonic Tutor, and uh, we've got Divining Top from Corbett. Maybe we're going to see uh, a counterbalance out of him. Uh, it's possible. It's not great in this format. It's good yeah. against certain decks. It's not good against certain other decks. And Corbett doesn't have any fetch lands. He doesn't have any shovel, yeah. shuffle effects. So it doesn't seem fantastic. But um, he may be thinking that there are some tricky things he's going to do with some of the other artifacty things that he has that are going to allow him to make use of that. Honestly, like that would have been a better card in Carl Jantz's deck. Um, it works really well with Grindstone, yep. um, and there there's some other things that are going on in Carl's deck that, that are good. So that that is the artifact deck I would have expected it to, to go in. Um, one interesting thing I want to talk about with, with Cedric's pick of Demonic Tutor, mm-hmm. it's entirely possible that Cedric has been floating that for a long time because he's in a position where it's very hard for all three of the black tutor effects yeah. to go in one round. Because Imperial Seal is still alive. Yeah, so he said... I'm going to float it until somebody picks one of them, and then I'm going to pick the next best one of those. See, I, I agree with that to some degree, but so if you look at the way it went, he went Vamp- Vampiric Tutor got taken, yep. and then Volcanic Island, which, if, he, if that was his plan, Sean Collins could theoretically have taken Demonic Tutor and, and uh, the other one, Imperial Seal, before it got back to him. That's true. That's true. But, like, Sean, Sean may, he, he may have just said, you know, Sean doesn't care about these cards. It's Maybe possible. he's saying... You know, Sean is just like, all my cards do exactly the same thing, so why would I want to do card disadvantage for that? Yeah, I mean, that's kind of a thing about those cards is, like, when when I drafted uh, Blue Black Reanimator, and, yep. and I drafted in the one seat, um, people gave me a lot of crap for not taking Vampiric Demonic Tutor on the wheel, on the 2-3 wheel. Mm-hmm. And uh, I ended up taking, like, Entomb and something else, Entomb Reanimate. And my thought behind this, and what I think Sean's <laughs> thought behind this is, is... Uh, if all my cards do the same thing, why do I ever need to waste a turn looking for them? Yeah. Like, if you're drafting the reanimator deck, there's, like, you know, dozen, well not dozens, but there's, you know, at least six or seven great reanimation spells, at least six or seven great discard spells, there's at least six or seven good reanimation spells, or uh, reanimation targets. So, like, if you're just slowing yourself down by casting those cards. Yeah. Like, on a deck like Carl's deck, they're all-stars. Yeah. yeah two-card combo decks. Yeah, and I, like I kind of disagree with that philosophy That's with respect to the Reanimator deck mm-hmm. because that deck is about finding 
two cards of the or two or three cards of the exact right thing and like you need to get one from bucket a one from bucket b and one from bucket c um and so i like drafting tutors in reanimation decks i agree with your strategy yeah not with the haters i'm not (laughs) i i I mean i agree i I definitely see both sides but like you're right like in a deck that all the cards do the same thing they're all like discard spells and early Mm -hmm. aggressive creatures or disruptive spells and early aggressive creatures and you just want to have a certain number of them, maybe it doesn't make sense to have them. Um, so, interesting things that have happened here. Nate Heiss has drafted Gaia's Cradle, and like I think that's actually a card that kind of tips some of his strategy to everybody yeah, else. Yeah, yeah. Because before that, he's drafted Elvish Spirit Guide and Eternal Witness are the only creatures he had. <laughs> and so you're like, where is this coming from? But I think it clearly indicates that he he's going to go down the route of, I'm going to draft a whole bunch of elves. Yeah. And I'm going to use a lot of green mana acceleration. I don't know if anybody can actually do anything about that. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, props to Nate for floating that as long as he did. Mm. That like nobody's going to to have an idea of what his strategy is until it doesn't, you know, until they can't affect it. Yeah, and uh, like I'm pretty excited to see Nate's deck because uh, before the draft he sent us a list of a bunch of cards for us to have ready for him. Yeah, and it was like, oh, we've never had to have all these elves. Like, let's. I wonder if this works and. I, I gave him some crap. I, I actually work with him, and mm-hmm. I was giving him some crap at work the other day. And he's like, "No, no, 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 come over here." And he, and he, and he <laughs> put it up, pulled it up on Tapped Out. Yeah. And he was like, "Oh, let's just do some some quick gold fishing with this deck real quick." And I was like, "That nah, can't possibly be good. You're, you're crazy. Elves is not good." And he was just like basically t- pulling off turn two, turn three kills every single game. Uh, and I mean, sure, sick. that's gold fishing. He's not having to interact with his opponents, but uh, it's still pretty good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And he like aside from fighting over the lands. Mm. He's had free reign this entire draft. Yeah. Like, Nate Nate and Sean are the people that were positioned in terms of the archetypes that they were dra- uh, drafting that were positioned best in this draft, and Nate seems to have capitalized I think on so, it. too. You know, he had a plan, and he's really gotten it down. Yeah, I really think it, when it comes down to who is making the best of their picks, you know, you know, taking the right cards at the right time, I think Alex West and Nate are just really kind of miles ahead of rest of these guys at the moment uh all of their picks have made sense all of their picks have been you know reactive to what's going on in the draft as opposed to just going down a list and uh i think it's going to pay off for both of them yep yeah uh so oh okay so corbett has finally drafted melwar i've been i've been looking at his deck yeah yeah and ever since he drafted emrakul i've been saying to myself he needs to draft Metal Worker. He needs to draft Metal Worker. Carl's going to eventually see the Metal Worker, and he's going to take it. Um, and I think it's been incredibly greedy of him to float it as long as he did. I agree. Um, and like same thing with Library. You know, he he Library is a card that works really well in his deck. Um, that he's going to want at some point, and like he's not he's he probably isn't competing with Carl for that because Carl's mana is so bad that I don't know if Carl can afford any colorless lands. I but I really think Carl's going to end up abandoning some of those cards. I hope so. I mean, he's a little bit zany, so yeah. like I, who knows what he's going to do. Carl but. Carl is a greedy guy that likes to, you know, do the things that he likes to do. Yeah. Um so it it'll be interesting and we we can see now like he's starting to draft his mana base and it is a five color mana base. He's mm. he's invested in a city of brass and a mana confluence. Uh, he's got this flooded grove. Like he, he seems attached to the blue green stuff. Maybe he abandons the white for the enlightened tutor. Yeah. Um, but like it seems, it seems wrong where he got to for him to draft vampire tutor and then abandon that. So it feels like he's going to be in three colors at least. Yeah. Uh, a noble hierarch would help him out a lot with his mana. Yeah. Um. He's he's definitely in the tank here. Uh, let's see. Where's Sutter sitting here now? Uh, also, just a quick uh, reminder to people, we, we've had to scroll down on the sheets here, so you can't see picks one through eight, but if you want to go back and look at the rest of the draft, um, there's a, a link to the spreadsheet right below us. You can click on that, pull it up, and you can go through the whole, and you can you know peruse it however you like. Yeah, and you can you can find all of the links to all this draft and the other drafts that have been done before on the Facebook page. Did you see what Carl just took? What? <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Ha- is he the one that's audibling into Reanimator? Is that what happened? He just picked careful study careful and frantic study search. search, and like frantic search didn't make a whole lot of sense in his deck because he doesn't have any soul lands. He doesn't have any ways to abuse it so far. But like it, maybe he maybe like he sat down after you know the the break and said, 
nobody's drafting reanimator. I'm going to do that. I'm going to pick Vampiric Tutor and some discard outlets and Bazaar. Is that what happened? Entomb is still alive. Entomb, yeah. Reanimate is still alive. Grizzlebrand is still alive. All the fatties that you would want are still out there. You know, you, Grizzlebrand and Iona and Elish Norn are all still out there. You know, the only fatty that has been picked so far is Emrakul, and that's that's not that's, good. You don't he was actually talking about um, before the draft. He was trying to play Flash. Oh wow! Really? Yeah. Um, and that takes up a lot of slots in your deck, though. So, it, what version of it was he talking about? He was just talking about just like fl like just flash for value, not like necessarily combo flash. What what val? I mean, okay. So if you what what is the the quick kill with it now? So you've got you flash for uh, eggs and bacon, whatever that guy's name is. I didn't play that. And then I don't know. I think I, I'm like, not super familiar with Flash. Kill anymore. I think it's like a Revelark kill with body double. There, he was showing me some combo. There's some card from I think Journey to the Next that if you flash it in, it just blows up the world. It just um, oh yeah, the Bearer of the Heavens. Yeah, yeah. So he was like looking at stuff like that. Um, I hmm. I didn't tell him I thought it was a great idea. That's that's interesting. <laughs> but that's interesting. Uh. uh People are talking about is Jason Mind Sculpture no good here? That's a great card. I don't know why it hasn't been picked yet. Yeah, that, that seems like a card that Greg Pelquin should be snapping up at some point. You know, I think Carl can. Uh, sorry, I think Corbett can play that. Carl has an outside chance of playing it. Greg would want to play it. Um, Cedric probably like Cedric would probably take it. You know, in like the late thirties, early forties. Um, but you know, Cedric's strategy is so tempo based mm -hmm. and so cheap spell based that. It can't be a high pick for him. So we see Cedric take Counterspell. I know when he was in here talking to uh, Berkeley, he said, you know what, I didn't care about Mana Drain. I'm not going to do anything with that mana. I can float the Counterspell until well, way later. Yeah. And uh, just, you know, he gets to pick up powerful picks before then. Yeah. Honestly, I think Mana Leak might be a better spell in his deck. It's possible. Uh, because he's, he's looking to be, you know, three colors, it looks like. And he's not going to have the best mana because he only has... The one fetch land, I think he, I think he got the polluted delta. Yeah. Um, and you know he's he's got some other, you know he's got some shock lands and he's got the underground sea, but like his mana base isn't super. Can you good. flip? Can you flip the light? Path to exile got taken before. Uh, so we're we're gonna get that fixed. It looks like they're looks aware like they're of it. Yeah. Um, and like this this goes back to the comment I made earlier about you know how Greg should have taken path when he took swords. Um, All right, you can flip the light off. Yep. But you know we're 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 seeing Greg like sort of settle into this mid range setup. You know he's getting some of the really great vintage rotisserie counter spells with negate and steel sabotage. He might pick yeah. up a null. Th those really are all stars in this format yeah. that you wouldn't you wouldn't necessarily think are so great. But when everyone's on these like you know everyone's got moxes, everyone has ma artifact mana, uh, and then negate. No one. I mean we have two creature decks this time around. Yeah. But negate is just. Almost better than Counterspell in a lot of matchups. Yeah. Like, being, when when you have a two or three color deck, having lower color requirements actually matters a lot. This isn't Legacy where you have perfect mana bases, and the reason why you run basics is to you know, prevent Wasteland and make us to the moon from, from locking you it out. It, your, your mana base is not fantastic, and so, you know, Negate and Mana Leak are actually, like, Real decisions versus yeah, counter spell, and absolutely. even even mana drain. Yeah. Um, what was I going to say? I had a good point. <laughs> it's gone now. So I want I want to go back to Sean Collins' deck, and like this is this has been mentioned a couple times uh, in in the in the chat here. Sean just continues to take cards that are good for his deck, but nobody else wants. He took yep. the Drelf's Messenger. He took the Blood Gas. Like. He wants both of those cards, yep. but he should be picking those pretty late. Like he should. So the be question is, at, at some point with these decks, like Paul's and Sean's, you know, they're playing monocolor. A lot of people don't want their cards. Like, at some point, you do need to start doing that. What, yeah. what cards do you think he's? What cards do you think he's missing? Like, obviously, mind twist. Yeah. What so, cards do you think he should be fighting for right now? Um, honestly, like I, th <laughs> we got a Jesse Wilkie in the chat. Greetings from Las Vegas. Hey there, Jesse Wilkie. What's up, Jesse? Good to see you, buddy. So my mind twist is definitely there. Um, if he was willing to go a little bit bigger, he might want to take some of the Solangs. Nobody's taken Ancient Tomb. Yeah, absolutely. Um, he, you know, I think, you know, he, he could have considered Imperial Seal. 
Um, it, it depends on like whether he wants to go like really small aggro and disruption or whether he's willing to go a little bit bigger and have cards that are really good versus certain people. Mm -hmm. And you know, he's got so many free picks for things that don't go in his deck because he's going to run what, like twelve swamps, thirteen, fourteen swamps. Um, he's got a lot of space for his sideboard. And so I would be interested in looking for really strong sideboard cards that sure. he can use against specific strategies. And granted, like black is a hard color for that to for you to do that because you don't have artifact removal, you don't have enchantment removal. Um, some of the hosers aren't really fantastic, um, but you know he should be thinking about some of that and maybe picking some of that higher, maybe doing some hate drafting. He's got a lot of picks to work with sure. because he's only going to need to pick you know, maybe 26, 27 cards for his yeah. deck. Um, so I think the jig is officially up with Nate Heiss. <laughs> yeah. We've got court, concurrent, concur, I can't pronounce concordant it. Concordant Crossroads. Concordant Crossroads. Yeah. Gives all his creatures haste, right? Yep. And then we've got a Priest of Titania, which, like... All right, I think we pretty much tips the hand pretty hard. Yeah. Uh, we've got a lord here, so... We're, we're not picking Priest of Titania to make two mana with our Elvish Spirit Guide. We're picking it to go full-on Gaia's Cradle. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so this is going to be interesting. You know, we're, We expect him now to go for like Heritage Druid and Birchlore Rangers yep. um, and just a bunch of the mana elves, you know, Elvish Mystic and Llanowar Elves. Um, probably not Avacyn's Pilgrim because it's a human monk. Yeah. Um, but maybe like Elves of Deep Shadow. There's and, a bunch of them now. They yeah, really printed like Elvish Mystic, Llanowar Elves. Um, and Noble Hierarch isn't an elf. He's the, Noble Hierarch is not, a, is not an elf. Like, I think he actually, like, he would rather have Boreal Druid, which just yeah, has yeah, the yeah, colorless, yeah, absolutely. than the Noble Hierarch, yep. just because it's an elf. Um, and he's, he's probably going to care about that. And so, are we anticipating him getting like Craterhoof Behemoth and Regal Force and like those classic Elf Legacy cards? Um, I I don't know about Craterhoof. I think he did he did talk about um what's the draw spell one you just named? Uh, Regal Force. Regal Force. I think he did mention Regal Force. He was looking more for um there's the the Elf with like Kicker the Elf Lord with Kicker. Okay. Um, it costs like one mad Jiraga Tree Speaker. Oh, that guy's yeah. So that's that's the, his big one of his big kill mm -hmm. conditions is he's gonna like draw seven a bunch, play all my mana, make a huge guy, concordant crossroads, kill you. It's kind of like his plan. Sure. Uh, it sounds kind of bad on paper, but when you actually swatch him play it out, which I, I I've seen him do, it's like pretty impressive. Yeah. It works a lot better than it sounds. Does that mean that he's going to get the go for that elf lord that puts plus one plus one counters on warriors that you cast? Bramblewood Paragon? I think that's the guy. Um, I don't remember seeing it in his list, but I didn't look super closely. Yeah. Because the, that... I know he's looking for Elvish Archdruid. Yeah, the, the Jiraga... It's not Tree Speaker, it's Jiraga... Warcaller. Warcaller. War he just had it on like, screen, interacts actually. really well with that. Um, and Bram... Yeah, the, so, like, I remember back when Extended was double standard, there there was an aggressive elf deck that mm. focused on those guys yeah. and a lot of the other lords and generating... Not generating... 10 mana, but generating 5 mana on, like, turn 3, and then attacking your opponent on turn 4 for, like, 15 damage and just having lots and lots of stuff. So we've got a Guess Verdict from Sean Collins. Not super exciting, but it's a fine removal spell. Yeah, I, I, I think Sean actually does have to worry a bit about removal, um, given that there are two other there it is. Decks. There it is. Yes. Carl Jans moving into Reanimator like a man. Yeah. So now he's drafting three decks. Yeah, um, we'll see if he ends up with maybe maybe by the end of the draft he can get to five. We'll see, Carl. Carl, if there's somebody in the draft that can do it, it's going to be Carl. Um, uh, someone says guest verdict over diabolic. Yeah, so maybe maybe that one life is going to win him the game. Yeah, I mean, like it's not it's not like it's harder to cast. Yeah. Um, like I guess if you were if you're looking for other edicts, I would be thinking about maybe Chainer's edict. But honestly, like... I always get them all confused. Chainer's Edict is the one with Flashback? Yeah, Chainer's Edict yeah. has Flashback. Diabolic Edict is an instant yeah. uh, and has uh, one in black. Yeah. Or one, yeah, one color. Yeah, I think black. Guess Verdict is actually just better than Diabolic Edict yeah. in, this, in this case. Uh, so here's a card pe people may not be super familiar with. We've got Disrupting Shoal from Cedric. Yeah, more free spells for, for Cedric. Yeah. Do you think he's going to draft Snapback and Vapor Snack? It's possible. Yeah. Um, so another question for Cedric. Uh, about Cedric, how long do you think he's going to wait on Delver of Secrets? Do, like, is he going to go for it 45th? 
Is he just going to be like, this is essential for my deck, but none of you fools is going to take it? He's he's a little greedy. He, so... I, like, he is both greedy and he is the sort of guy that you know would like that little bit of flash there at the end and be like, suck it. Yeah, I, I am so excited about Carl, what Carl's doing right now. Yeah, that's it true. might be. I mean, I don't. I, he hasn't missed out on any of the big cards though. He's got to take Entomb here. He needs to get the Imperial Seal at some point too. If this yeah, is that's the, the card we're fighting down. for at this moment. Yeah, like I, it helps that n- nobody seems interested in it, but at some point, you know, somebody might take it. Uh, looks like like Corbett has jumped the gun a little bit with the dispel. You know, he know he knows him and Alex West are not fighting for any cards. That's true. He, uh, so we've we've already had spell pierce taken, I think, right? It's got to be, I yeah, agree. yeah. So, Just giving us the thumbs up, yeah. So we're 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 now covering, you know, between Corbett and Cedric and Greg, uh, we're covering all of those really cheap counter spells that are good for slowing down your opponent. Um, Corbett, you know, I think is is interested in the spell more as protection against Cedric and Greg than like trying to disrupt other people's plans. But Cedric and Greg are definitely. Um, you know they're they're interested in using tempo to uh, promote their plan uh, instead of sort of like the other way around. So um, people are asking us kind of. There's a couple people in the chat asking us kind of what's going on here. As people come in, they kind of see the spreadsheet. They don't quite know what's going on. So uh, I'm going to give them a quick rundown real quick. Um, we got our sweet graphics here. So uh, vintage rotisserie. First off, it's a rotisserie draft. Which, uh, well, we'll get into that. So essentially the way this works is all the drafters are in a room. They're in the room next to us. And they uh, are all drafting from every legal card in Vintage. So imagine the person in seat one gets past a pack with every legal Vintage card. Yeah. Just a gigantic booster pack. So you, you can't pick anti-cards, you can't pick Chaos Orb, you can't pick Falling Star, and you can't pick Shire Resolve. Every other Magic card is fair game. Absolutely. So uh, player in seat one takes a card, passes to the right. Then the next person takes a card and so on and so forth until all have picked, drafted 45 cards. Then we, we have all the cards on us. We're going to build the decks. Uh, the decks are getting built as players are going. This kind of We're pretty well organized at this point on these things. Um, and the players are going to build their decks, and then we're going to stream the matches live after the draft is over. Um, so stay tuned. We're, we're in for about you know 10 hours of magic here today. So you're, uh, if, you, if you're having a good time, stick with us. We're also giving away uh, free store credit to just uh, random viewers throughout the day to uh, Northwest Sports Cards. It's an online magic store, so... Uh, if you you know don't live in the area and you happen to be watching this and you win, you can absolutely redeem your store credit. Um, so interesting thing here, Cedric has picked True Name Nemesis, which is a card that Greg should have wanted, um, and I you know I wonder whether Greg has been floating that and has been cut off by Cedric, or whether he didn't realize you know that he he needed to do that he needed that card because he did have to transition from his plan of sort of like a blue green tempoy deck into more of a blue white equipment stone forge deck that is relying on a couple of resilient threats like true name nemesis and geist of saint traft and batter skull to win yeah um so it's it, it's interesting that cedric has picked that he's you know, up to this point, he's been saying, I just want all of the zero and one and maybe some two mana yeah. cards. And True Name Nemesis, you know, is is a good finisher for his deck, but it's not great in his deck because it's it's never going to get augmented by anything else. Um, so it's, you know, that may be like half hate draft and half like, okay, I know I'm going to have to actually beat all these creature decks. Because it's going to be really fantastic against Alex West and against Paul Tefmeeker. Yeah, absolutely. It's fantastic. I'm going to do a little bit more uh, shameless promotion here. Um, so if you think what we're doing here is cool and you've never checked this out before, uh, we have a link to the Facebook group down below. You can follow along when our drafts are. We're doing these once a month. Yep. Uh, at the end of at the end of eight drafts, once we have eight unique viewers, unless you know someone happens to win two or whatever. But once we have eight unique winners, we're going to do a draft of champions. We'll do it for bigger stakes. Uh, and... Speaking of the stakes, we haven't talked about this in a while. Uh, what are this we playing is, for? This is my favorite. What part. are we playing for today, Joe? This isn't your normal draft. This yeah. is this is a uh, an adult draft. Well, I the most important thing is the pride. The pr- right. well, pride. We have yeah. well, we have the trophy first off. That's true. That's well, true. actually, I think we should talk about the prize before we show the trophy because okay. it kind of goes hand in hand. 
Yeah. So the prizes for this is every drafter was asked to bring a bottle of booze to this. Somewhere in the 50-ish dollar range. And we got some tasty ones. Yeah, we've got some good ones. So the way it's going to work is after the draft is over and we have a winner, the person in the uh, the one first gets five bottles, the person who gets second gets two, and the person in third gets one. They're going to draft off the bottles. Yep. Uh, we also have our first place trophy, which uh, was uh, made by a local artist here. We've got this sweet black lotus on top of some booze bottles. This is our first place trophy made by Amanda Casperson, or actually Amanda Sharp now. Amanda Sharp. Married to uh, Lee Sharp of Watsy yeah. fame. I, I like to talk about them as Lee and Amanda Cat person. That's fair. Oh, we have uh, we actually have the prizes oh, here. Oh, very nice. Uh, yeah. So I if if I were in here, I'd be going for that Glen Levitt. The Glen Levitt seems like the clear choice for me. Ooh. Although I will say, like, uh, I'm a little embarrassed to admit this, but that chai tea vodka looks pretty tasty. Yeah, you know, it it would it would be up there. You know, I think I think I would be going down the you know the whiskey vodka or the the whiskey. Uh, bourbon route but and then almost more importantly we have the last place prize as well the way this works is if uh if you get last place you get made into a card in this case we have teddy vitro from our last draft and uh he tried to draft time vault deck didn't work out for him uh and so he is the vault scourge and the, the loser of this draft must display <laughs> the, the, the we're calling it the ted uh, in their house for one month until the next draft, and then they will get made into the next loser card, where the next person will have to display them in their house for a indeed, month. Indeed, indeed. Um, and he's, if you look here, he's actually holding the previous trophy, the Jed. Uh, maybe you can't see it that well. But we're going to kind of have this infinity thing going on where, you know, we have all the cards shown there. Anyway, so it's not your normal draft. We're having yeah. a little bit of fun with it. No, yeah, and like a, a lot of these guys know each other. You know, the Seattle Magic community is pretty tight-knit. Um, and so... The, the fact that you, you won, or more importantly, you're the loser, mm -hmm. is going to extend outside of this. You Absolutely. Know, you go to PTQs, and people have been making fun of Jed and Teddy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, you know, so th the pride lives on. It's very important. Absolutely. So, um, yeah, so if you think what we're doing is awesome, join the Facebook group. There's a link below. Um, you can get signed. You can follow along when the next draft is going to be, which we're tentatively doing the 14th at the moment. I'll get it confirmed in the next day or so. Um, you can also... Uh, put your name in the hat to get involved in one of these. We do some qualifier drafts and things like that. Uh, but yeah, that's what we're doing here. So if, let's get back to the draft. Yep. We see Sean Collins has picked up the Diabolic Edict, so you know he has both now. Yep. Uh, Wall of Omens from Greg Peliquin, just to stop those aggro decks. And uh, Trigon Predator and Bribery from Nate. Yeah, we so, so we, we have some interesting cards going on here. I like how Nate has continued to draft. Um, I like Cedric's choices of True Name Nemesis and Dark Slick Shores. Yeah, I do too. You know, he's he's clearing up his mana problems there. Um, Carl Overgrown Tomb, I guess is, f uh, I guess is fine. Like I I don't I don't know what direction he's planning on taking this Reanimator theme, um, and so. You know, it either could be very good or, or it could just be kind of mediocre. Um, Greg and Sean, like, I'm not super enthusiastic about what they're doing. We have uh, a couple comments here from our our, uh, our friend Jesse uh, in Vegas saying, you know, how does Corbett not have the Blight Steel Colossus uh, with, with the Tinker and the Show and Tell and the two Mysticals yet? Um, and, you know, I think Corbett's just continuing to be very, very greedy. He still hasn't gone for Library. He hasn't gone Blightsteel. He hasn't gone uh, the Mere Battle Sphere, you know, Battle Ball. Yep. Um, there are all these things that, like, he does care about at some point. And at this, and, like, Tangle Wire is probably not something that he should have been getting this yeah. highly. Divining Top, probably not as highly as it did. And then, like, Mind Over Matter was a, was a pick that he made. Uh, it was 15th. I, I was sitting next to him when he did that, and he picked it. And I was like, really? Yeah, really? Like, yeah. like maybe he thought Carl was going to take it. Like, it's going to be good in his deck. He's going to be able to use it to, to get a lot of mana, and, like, eventually he's going to pick Staff of Domination. But, like, if you're going to draft defensively, you should be getting Staff of Domination because that really matters, and you should be getting the really premium things that you're going to be tutoring for and show and telling into play or tinkering into play. Yeah. Um, so I kind of just like Corbett is drafting the right cards eventually for his deck, just but I disagree order. with the order that he's been yeah, going with and, it. And, 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 you know, we got Jesse Wilkie who's, you know, done a couple of these drafts with us now. He's like, oh, I can't believe Demonic Tutor and Vampiric Tutor are going to take it late. Well, Jesse, Mind Twist, T Library of Alexandria, and Jason the Mind Sculptor are all still viable picks at this point. So there's some crazy things happening here today. I think, uh, 
people maybe didn't have their lists quite filled out right. Yeah. Well, so this this is all a big cascade effect yeah. of the way people prepared for this. You know, we had we had a couple people that came in saying, "I've got my plan. Fuck all you guys. I'm going to go with my plan." Yeah. Yep. So Nate had that sort of in his mind, and Carl had that in his mind. I think probably Sean Collins did as well. Sean Collins very much. I was talking to Sean Collins. like, I'm going to draft Mono Black. I'm like, and what happens if you're fighting with someone? And he's like, I'm going to draft Mono Black. Yeah. And I was like, but your backup plan. What's your backup plan? He's like, draft other Mono Black cards. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, uh, but it's worked out for him. Yeah. I mean, I don't like, think. He, he's like, it turns out that Nate and Sean are in really good shape because nobody else chose those, those two things. But then, like, the thing that really cascaded into this and caused a lot of this is that, you know, Greg Shampo, uh, hopefully is alive and is not dead in a ditch somewhere, but we have <laughs> yeah. not heard from him. Uh, and so Paul Tefmeeker, you know, got called in at the last minute. We woke him up out of his bed, tumbled him down here and said, go draft something, <laughs> right? And he he's thrown a wrench into Alex West's plan, yeah. right? Because Alex had this really perfectly placed plan of saying, you know, nobody cares about creatures. I'm going to be the creature deck that is aggressive and punishing people for being inconsistent and having bad mana bases and being too cute. And I'm going to get all the things I care about um, really late. I'm not going to be contested. And so the fact that Paul was there kind of messed up Alex's plan a little bit. And then the fact that there are these two aggressive creature decks is messing everybody else up yeah. because they have to draft defensively around it. And you see Sean Collins taking ver you know, Geth's Verdict and Diabolic Eat and Gatekeeper of here, which are cards that are normally just so awful in this format, but yeah. actually maybe necessary. Yeah, it's pretty funny. I was actually telling this when Berkeley was in here before, is like you were saying about Paul, we, you know, we woke him up out of bed, like, hey, come on, we need you to come draft Greg's No Show. And he was like, all oh, right. And I was like, just draft Mono Red, don't worry about it. <laughs> and 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 then, and then and then Alex West third pick is Goblin guy <laughs> and I was oh. like and I was like oh my god <laughs> that was such a good pick yes yeah, so. everybody freaked out in the room yeah so uh, you know I think Paul's riding the ship he his deck's totally gonna be fine yeah um no and like ultimately the fact that Alex West was there drafting some of those cards impacted Paul less than it impacted Alex yeah. because. Like the things that Paul loses are Goblin Guide and Seder Fire Drinker and Rakdos Cackler and a couple of fetch lands. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that hurts. Like his one drops are not are, are definitely a lot worse because Alex is in the draft. But everything above one, he's not fighting with Alex yep, for. Absolutely. Um and his mana base is gonna be fine. He's actually going it looks like he's going mono red and not Boros. Yeah, I think I, I think we were talking about this with Berkeley, but the kind of interesting thing between like Paul and Alex's deck is they're both like hard aggro decks, right? But the way that they're building their decks, because Paul's mono red and Alex's is, you know, three color, Paul has I think room he's for four color, or actually. Four color at this yeah. point. But <laughs> Paul Paul has like 15, 20 sideboard slots, whereas Alex has five. Yeah. You know, so, you know, that might come into play here. Like Alex's power level is higher in general. But Paul's able to, you know, really maybe shore up games two and three a lot more than Alex is. Yeah. So it's interesting. I'm interested to see how that's going to play out. So one thing that I'm kind of curious about with Alex's deck is I think he has room to run some of his sideboard cards in the main deck. If I were him, I would be running Phyrexian Revoker in the main deck. Yes. Um, I would be running Thalia in the main deck. I would consider running... Uh, I would consider running that 2-1 from Kamigawa that... Hoses artifacts, um, Kataki. Oh, Kataki, Kataki, Kataki yeah, Wars yeah. Wage in the main deck. And I would consider running um, Smash to Smithereens in oh. the main deck. Delver of Secrets is off the board. Oh. He was not man enough. So not greedy. Well, good for you, Cedric. You you managed to you know screw Greg a little bit more with the true name nemesis, and then avoided the cross screwing with Delver. Um, so do you? How do you feel about Cedric's deck? Like. Do you do you like where he's at? I feel like he's made a lot of really good decisions for the archetype that he's trying to draft, and in terms of like where he's competing with other people. But like, do you think this is a valid archetype? Do you think this is a winning strategy? So I think we saw this with with Jesse Hampton last time. Yeah, it's kind of the same strategy. Is like you can you can tell that he's not as prepared as much as the other guys, but you can tell he's also very very good at magic. And as and as the draft's going on and he's kind of figuring out what's happening, what other people are doing, he's really starting to make use of his picks and really like attacking other decks with his picks. Yeah. And, and I, I I didn't like where he was at the beginning, but now as it's going on, 
I'm really starting to see how his deck's starting to line up, and he's having pretty good matchups across the board. And on a skill level basis, I mean, none of these guys in here are scrubs. Everyone in here no. is good. Everyone in here can play Magic. Anyone can beat anyone in this draft. But Cedric is probably the most accomplished. I mean, Nato is also very accomplished. So is Alex West and a couple of these other guys. But let's be real. Cedric is, is the favorite, probably, yep. on a skill level basis. Um, and if and his deck is the kind of deck that's going to get him there, I think. Yeah. I... I, so I've I've been I've been gushing about them both, but like Cedric and Alex, I think are the ones that have just been laser focused in the yeah. draft. They both came in here with a plan. It may not have been like the best plan, but they came in with a plan and then they executed that plan really really well. I think they are the most aware of how everybody else is drafting and where things are going relatively, and are making the best use of the sequencing of their picks here. We see a spicy card from Sean Collins in Lake of the Dead. Uh, so this is this is a fantastic card for a mono black deck. It provides acceleration. Uh, it's an old alliances card. This is actually a cycle of cards that they had, where uh, each of the colors got a super land that you had to sacrifice a land when it came into play um, of the appropriate type. And so Lake of the Dead turns each of your uh, swamps into a dark ritual. But again, this is this is a card that is great in his deck that nobody else wants, and he's he's just ordering things probably in the wrong way you know cedric has shown some interest in black um you should be think he should be thinking about what the cards are that cedric is going to want um Spe uh, so 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 i see a great pick out of sean from like of the dead but then i see him follow up with chains of mestopheles and this is a card i think you see people who aren't as familiar with the format draft because on paper you're like all right everyone's doing all these crazy draws and i think everyone that's ever drafted it i know that um that Berkeley talked about this the last time he drafted it is it just doesn't do what you want it to do it it's just it's a do nothing card like it, it doesn't it's, it accelerate your game plan in any yeah. way and I think I think Sean's gonna find out real quick that that card isn't gonna ever see play yeah this is this is a card that like became kind of like a little bit in vogue about a year and a half two years ago in Legacy as a sideboard card in Jun for all the brainstorm decks and the Jace the Mind Sculptor decks you know that like you're going to stop them from their plan uh, with this by preventing them from being able to draw a bunch of cards and it, it, the way it actually works out is that it comes down too late to affect a lot of the filtering cards like Brainstorm and Ponder and Preordain um, and Jace still has all these other modes and ultimately, you'd probably be happier with a Pithing Needle or a Phyrexian Revoker if that's what you want to, to combat. And, yeah. you know, there, there's some splash damage that it actually turns out that it's pretty darn good against uh, High Tide. Yeah. You know, and like some of these other sort of like random decks. But it's just, it's not good enough. And people just get entranced by the fact that it's a very expensive card with a lot of text on it from an old expansion and they're like oh nobody knows what this does it probably does something really awesome <laughs> yeah. and then like it just does nothing yeah absolutely um, uh i see Cedric put up to mirror charm which is a pretty spicy one this is a great yeah. card i does I'm everything actually just really shocked that this hasn't become a card in legacy because yeah. it does a lot of really good things yeah. it kills a small creature it counters a sorcery i believe um, and it lets you filter yeah. the top of your library or your opponent's library a little bit. So it's it's very versatile, and the power level for this card is even higher in Vintage Artistry than it would be in Legacy because sorceries are so much more important, yeah. and the creatures that you care about are, you know, it's like Dark, uh, dark Confidant. One thing I've noticed, have we not seen Tarmogoyf get drafted yet? We haven't. I... Is is that weird? Uh, not really. No, I, we've seen drafts where it just has gone undrafted. It's sometimes games are over before time of life is big enough to be relevant. Yeah, I mean not always, but I guess Alex is the only person who could possibly want it because Greg got forced out of green, um, and Paul's not. Okay, so maybe that's not weird. But like I, I said, oh, Dark Confidant is the thing that you want to kill, and then I was like, oh wait, there's another two drop that gets played a lot of le in Legacy and Vintage. And we haven't seen that yet, mm -hmm. um, but so I, I I'm interested to see where Demir Charm goes for Cedric. I think it's probably going to be a versatile part of his deck and probably a card that he main decks. Um, yeah. And I hope that we get a one good blowout on camera with it. So we see um, Paul starting to take some you know pretty powerful cards in some matchups. He's got Manic Vandal, Magus of the Moon. Uh, Corbett takes Blight Steel and Stroke of Genius, and we've got some powerful one drops out of Alex with Wild and Coddle Experiment One. Um, 
what? I, Carl, I, I feel like he's on some kind of reanimator natural order plan now, and is just abandoning the time vault, maybe? Um, I, he can just have that in there and, yeah. you know, hope to hope that they connect, maybe. And, you know, he does have the vampiric tutor, uh, which helps with the consistency of that. And he, like, if he wants to go that route, he can probably just wait till pick 45 to pick up Tezzeret the Seeker. Uh, yeah. yeah. So, you know, he's, he's, he's got enough things that, like, he could go down that route if he wanted to. Um, and so we, we see Corbett, like, finally picking up the, the great Tinker target that he wants, the ideal Tinker target that he wants. Blightsteel, yeah. Uh, with and, Blightsteel. And, he, and, he has, and he has the uh, Lightning Greaves as well. Yeah. So he's, he's got the, the immediate kill. Um, I'd imagine that he's, at some point, going to get Kaldotha Forge Master, which is another card that really fits into that strategy well. We've got Strikeout03 on the chat saying, uh, Tez is still open for Corbett. Still hasn't been taken. We yeah. were talking about that at, like, pick five. Yeah, <laughs> it's still up there. Yeah, Tezzeret the Seeker is going to be really good in Corbett's deck, um, and it's probably really good in Carl's deck because he's got both of the two card artifact kills mm -hmm. uh, with with both Time Vault Key and also Painter, Painter Grindstone. Grindstone yeah. um, so I th I think it's probably better in Carl's deck um, because Corbett, you know, tutoring for stuff is not as fantastic for Corbett, but it'd be really great in both of their decks. I want to see I want to see Carl win a game by reanimating a Painter Surfeit. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that would be sweet. In Tomb Reanimate, get you. Yeah, um, and so you'll one one thing you'll notice with Corbett's pick, he picks Stroke of Genius over Brainstorm or or not Brainstorm, Brain Geyser or Blue Sun Zenith uh, because it has a lowered color requirement and what his what he's ultimately going to do is he's going to try to generate infinite mana through power artifact um or uh with um with staff of domination hmm. um and that's going to be great for him but he's going to have infinite colorless mana yeah. uh and so there's a big difference between something costing uh having one blue in the mana cost versus blue blue in the mana cost so we are getting close to our next break, which is going to be at, at the end of pick 30. Um, so we're going to do another giveaway. We're going to give away another $10 on stream. And then after that, we're going to start bumping up the dollar amounts a bit. Um, so with the ring boot, we'll get to that in a second. <laughs> but <laughs> uh, so if you want to be a uh, win on this raffle here, what you're going to have to do is sign into your Twitch chat. Make sure that you're in. If we pull up, you know, the list of viewers or whatever, we'll be able to see your name. And then we'll randomly select someone from that list, and you'll get ten dollars Northwest Sports Cards, which is an online store. So you'll be able to do your ordering and get it sent out to you, no matter where you're watching us from. Um, so make sure you're, you're in. We'll do that at pick thirty, and then I think we're gonna get Nate Heisen here to talk about his deck a little bit and see where he's gonna go with this crazy elf deck. It's now, would you like to talk about Withering Boom? Uh, so this is this is an awesome, awesome like digging deep. Yeah, I've card. never I've never seen this card. Uh, so this is this is Mirage, and it is a black counter spell. It's one of like three or four mono black counter spells that have been yeah. printed and they're they're all much worse than the blue counter spell so this is uh this is essence scatter for black but you have to pay three life uh in addition to paying one in a black for it uh, i don't like this pick it's like like i i like it from an awesomeness perspective and yeah. digging <laughs> deep perspective but i hate this pick because the two decks that you want to play it against like it's a sideboard card you don't want to be paying three life. You don't want to be paying three life. And honestly, like, none of their in, no single creature matters that much for Paul and for Alex. Like, there's no one that you're like, ha ha, I stopped your five drop. It's like, well, I'd like to clean up the one and two drop that are killing me. Yeah. So I'd rather have things like Innocent Blood or. Uh, yeah, 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 maybe like snuff out. Or yeah, you're not so worried. Blade. You're not so worried about the creatures hitting play against those decks. You just want to deal with them before they can swing at you. Yeah. And you can do it for less mana. Yeah. Um, so, like, kudos for, for an awesome, obscure get. Yeah, I've never uh, seen it before. But some slops for, you know, choosing the right thing to worry about. Uh, so we see Greg, you know, is continuing with this sort of, like, mid-rangey, flashy thing. He's picked up Venser Shaper Savant uh, and Restoration Angel. He's got the Caracas. Um, at some point, maybe he goes and gets... Uh, gets the land that lets you bounce a wizard because he's got the Snapcaster Mage and he's got Venser and he's got uh, Vendillion Click. Um, so Riptide Lab could be pretty good in his deck. And like we see that he's he's looking to get sort of like to the mid-long game and disrupt his opponent. He probably doesn't have enough counter spells at this point to really... like I think he will have a hard time getting to 
getting to where he wants against like Corbett and Carl uh, and Nate because I don't think he has enough disruption to fight them at this point, but he's probably getting pretty decently set up against the aggressive red decks uh, in Paul and Alex and against Cedric. He probably wants to pick up a little bit more removal, maybe like Condemn, um, sure, so yeah. just cheap spells for, for dealing with them, and then he's going to want like at, we, at least one Wrath effect at some point, probably um, probably Supreme Verdict is the, is the best yeah, one for yeah. him. Um, but I'd like to see him look for maybe a couple more disruption counterspell th cards to deal with the decks that are sort of like going over the top of him. So we do. We just got an update from Greg Champo, the missing drafter. Uh, he actually did get in a car accident. Oh God, is he okay? So he's okay. Uh, he's got a couple broken toes apparently, but he'll live. So sorry to hear that, Greg. Um, but he's all right. Uh, he's great. okay. We'll try to get him in a future draft. Yeah, um, we, we should definitely like give him a spot in the next draft. Uh, after yeah, draft we'll, we'll, we'll we'll get him in as, what, as soon we'll as just, we can. Yeah, yeah. so I'm um, just glad to hear he's okay. Yeah. Uh, so we see you know some some interesting picks here. Sean picks Dark Blast. He's getting more removal that maybe isn't exactly the right removal. We see Cedric sort of continuing along the cheap spells and value and continuing things with Baleful Strix. I think that Baleful Strix and a little bit Dismember are nods to what Alex is doing, um, less what Paul is doing because Paul is more spell based yeah. uh, in his aggression, but like Alex actually needs to deal the full 20 through creatures. And so dismembering a creature that's eventually going to do eight to you um, for four life is fine for him. Yeah. And like having a cheap spell is good. And then Baleful Strix is actually really good against Alex's strategy because it keeps your tank full and trades with one of their guys. Um, and like, you know, Alex isn't going to have a ton of removal, so like turning on his removal is fine. And Cedric's already going to have some creatures out there, so I like I like the pick of Baleful Strix for him. Yeah, Carl is uh, shoring up his mana base a little bit with the Twilight Mire. Um, we see uh, Paul Tef Meeker kind of as we talked before. A lot of his one drops got sniped, so he had to yeah. kind of react and maybe play a suboptimal one. He takes Stormkirk Noble, which a Stormkirk Noble, which I actually think is totally a fine card. Yeah. No, uh, it can get out of hand pretty quickly. Yeah, and like a, a bunch of Alex's cards are going to be human, so that that helps a little bit. But in general, like this is a better card. This card is going to overperform your expectations in Vintage Rotisserie because there are fewer creatures to block it, and so it becomes a threat very quickly. Very by quickly. Itself. Yeah, it might honestly just be better than some of those other one drops. Yeah. So we've got some interesting picks from Corbett uh, with Time yeah, Spiral and the so. Leyline of Sanctity. What do you think is going through his head with these two? I can never pretend to understand what Corbett's thinking. Okay. Well, let, let's let's start out a little bit. The Leyline of Sanctity. Who do you think he's drafted that against? Against you know against Sean Collins. Mm -hmm. He doesn't want to get you know his cards ripped out of his hand against Paul Tuffmeager, obviously for yep. his his uh, removal or his uh, you know his, his burn. burn or whatever. Um, Beyond that, I don't see too many. Yeah. I mean, it's pretty good against those two guys. Yeah. No, I, I think it's fine against those guys. And, like, I I think in this format, like, I'm really excited to draft any, pretty much any sideboard card that I would bring in against three different decks. And then I'd be happy to, to get a really, really strong sideboard card against one or two decks. Like... You know, if you if Batter Skull was just a sideboard card for you, you didn't you weren't cheating in with Stoneforge Mystic, I would be really excited to to have it, even if there was just the one red aggressive deck, yeah. because that is a card that will will really help shut them down. Yeah. Um, if you get to that that point in the game, and like it's actually probably going to come in against a couple of other decks as well. Um, um so Time Spiral is really interesting. <sighs> The, like that that has to be kind of hurtful to Nate because I, I think he wanted that yeah. and was like looking for other draw sevens. I'm I, I wonder if Corbett thinks he's going to turbo that out a little bit sooner and if he's is he planning on just floating ancient tomb and city of traders yeah, but for the a really way, long time. Yeah, because because you're right because like he doesn't have the lands that are going to accelerate yeah. at the moment, so he's going to like play it early off his artifact mana and then he's going to pass the turn to an open seven on his opponent you know yeah i mean maybe he's just saying okay i'm actually going to cast this on like turn five or six and it's just draw seven cards for me and i plan on killing you that turn and so it's okay that you have it 
uh, you have more. You 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 get the mana too. Um, it's a it's a really interesting pick, and I'm again like I I don't understand his strategy of continuing to float the Soul Lands and Library of Alexandria. Like mm. this seems like the point that like these were not in super contention. He could have picked them at this point, yeah, and would have been okay with it. Uh, so Carl's deck is starting to very much look like an animate or a reanimator national yeah. order deck, which. We mean Berkeley talked about this before. I think my card might see some play here. Crew fixes insight, the newest card from Journey to Nyx. Oh, very nice. Uh, if we could get that pulled up, uh, it's pretty spicy in the green black reanimator deck, honestly, um, because you know it, it's three mana sorcery. Yep. Dig for six cards. Yep. Put any uh, enchantments in your hand. Put the rest in your graveyard, so you can Just fills up the graveyard. yeah fills up your graveyard, but it also gets animate dead, necromancy, possibly survival of the fittest. Oh yeah. Um, so it's be- in some ways it's better than buried alive because yeah. you're getting two parts of the combo. Yeah, and I've seen reanimator decks happily play compulsive research. Yeah, and this is kind of just better. It finds all the parts of your combo at once. Do you, do you think Carl like found that in his search? Uh I think that before Carl qualified for this tournament, uh, I also work with Carl. I work with a bunch of people, these guys, but. Uh, I, th- I I was talking. I've been brewing for around this card since since I saw it. Oh, nice! And uh, I I was talking to him about it before, and then he qualified, and I you know stopped talking to him because I'm not allowed to talk to the drafters yep. about cards. Um, but I think maybe that stuck with him, and, and when he saw a reanimator open, I have these green cards. He's like, oh, maybe maybe this is the time to do it. So maybe he'll take it. I hope he does. I think it's I think it's really good. Yeah. And survival in a deck full of elves too. Like I, that, just another enchantment for him to get. That's fantastic. Um, so we see that Nate uh, has drafted the memory jar. He may have, you know, taken Corbett's pick of the time spiral as just a wake up call. That's a card I, I, I need to get the rest of the draw. Sequence. I think Corbett should have taken memory jar. Yeah, memory jar is better spiral. than in his deck than time spiral is. Uh, you know, I, I, I think I'm I'm very interested in talking to Corbin after the draft and saying, sure. what were you thinking about all these picks? And we don't need to bring him on camera. I'll, I'll just like go <laughs> wait outside of this. We don't want to give him any extra. Like we don't want to reward him for his stupidity. Yeah. Um, but you know, I, I I sort of wanted like find out what what was going on with the ordering of his picks here and why why he's continuing to float these things. Um, anyway, so we we see Greg continue to just be like this very fair deck. You know, it's it's going to he's got Augur Bolas and Kitchen Finks, which are very nice against the red decks, the aggressive decks, and like this is feeling more like sort of like a dirtily modern deck than it's, anything else. Hey man, he won with it last time. That's yeah. what we were saying the whole time last time was like Greg's just playing fair. He's just playing fair, and he just fared his way into winning. Yeah, and you know to to be fair to the fair deck, you know. I'm not sure how consistent any of the unfair decks are. Like, yeah. there is not a monstrous reanimator deck that you have to worry about getting yeah. turned two on. And that's by. something we've seen in a lot of these drafts as things go on. People draft these crazy unfair decks, you know, Time Vault Key and all these things. And, like, they don't necessarily have a backup plan. If you if you can disrupt them just enough, yeah. their deck, they're just, oh, I guess I'll we'll play out the game, but the game's over, you know? Yeah. Um, and there there are three more fair decks that he is going to beat up on in the yes, draft. Absolutely. You know, he's he's positioned really well against the red and black decks. Um so Sean has picked sort of body of mind. What do you think um so I I think there 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 may be a little bit of a run on equipment now that like somebody has taken the first of the swords. Mm-hmm. Um how do you how do you rank and rate the various swords in this format um or in like creaturey formats like this? In this well, so I'm, I'm think, I haven't put a lot of thought on this. I'm going to say this off the top of my head. Yeah. Maybe I'm wrong. But I think just instinctively the first one I want in this particular draft is Sword of War and Peace. Okay. Um, because it's going to be really good against Paul. It's going to be really good against Alex. So far, Alex's only removal spell is a white spell. Yep. Um, it's going to be good against a lot of Greg's uh, removal spells. Mm-hmm. Um, and the other sword effects, like, I mean, a sword of fire and ice is always great. Yeah. But I think if you're, like, really looking for the protection side of things... And the card that's gonna like be great in matchups, I think it's War and Peace. Yeah, I haven't put like I said, I haven't thought about it a lot because you're just now mentioning this, but I, I think Body and Mind is wrong. Yeah. So I, you know, I I wasn't thinking of War and Peace at the top of my list, but now that you talk about it, like in addition to the protection effects being super relevant against mm-hmm. the two decks that you want equipment against, mm-hmm. um, the ability is super relevant. Not not the dealing damage part, but yeah. the gaining life because you at some point. You are going against Paul Tefmaker. You're going to say, "Oh crap! 
I'm at six life. I need to kill him before he draws two spells. Yep. Um, and so having a mechanism to get out of that situation is is really beneficial. Um, also, uh, Sean Cullen doesn't have Stoneforge Mystic. He already has uh, Jite and Skull Clamp. Yep. I don't think he needs any more equipment. Maybe, you know what, actually, you know what I think the best equipment his deck could use right now is, um, what is, there's the living weapon that, uh, with Phyrexian mana, uh, it's Lash Rithe. Oh, yeah, Lash Rithe. Well, so, La Lash Rithe will probably be very good in his deck, um, but it's not, definitely not a card he should be picking now. No, absolutely but you, not. But you're right that, like, that is the equipment he should want, and therefore, he shouldn't be picking sort of body and mind Yeah, I, I think Lash Rithe is the other equipment that might make his deck. Yeah. As opposed to sort of body of mind that's like, okay, it's a powerful card, but I feel like he just kind of took it because it's a sweet card, not because it fits his game plan necessarily. Yeah. Uh, so we see that Corbett Gray has picked Phyrexian Metamorph, which is another card that is really fantastic in his deck, um, but, you know, he, he continues to wait on these lands, um, mm -hmm. and now he's going for Brain Geyser. So, like, he's building up some redundancy around his... His, his kill plan, but you know, you see, he's very all in on this power artifact, generate infinite mana sort of plan. Yeah, and you know, he's he's got a bunch of ways to deal to to find that. Um, he has the muddle of the mixture, which is really really fantastic because it is both a counter spell and it lets him transmute for either side of that because it, it gets grim monolith and it gets power artifact. So that's a classic card for this, um, and he's got some some effects to like copy things and he's got tinker to go and search for stuff um honestly like he could probably use one more tutor effect that is sort of like generically good but you know it's fine so carl janice takes dance of the dead here which hmm. it's an enchantment so it's po I, I don't think he's, it's one of the better the tutor, i don't right? think it's one of the better removal sp or the reanimation spells i think life no. death is there um, I think Exhum, I don't even think he's taken Reanimate yet. Yeah. But it is an enchantment, which kind of puts my Crucifix's Insight plan still alive. I think so. I took this card two drafts ago when me and Wilkie were both fighting over the Reanimator deck. Yep. Um, it's not very good. I don't know. Everyone has started talking about this card like it's good. It's not very good uh, yeah. compared to the well, your other options. I So Dance of the Dead is... I think it's more than any other card. It's dependent on what fatties you're sure, getting. Sure, sure, sure. Um, I think it is. It's fine with Gristlebrand. Gristlebrand. It's really good with Sphinx of the Steel Wind, um, but it's not really great with Iona, um, and it's really bad with. Uh, or sorry, it's 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 okay with like Ashen Rider and Woodfall Primus and those cards. Like it's probably actually a little bit better with Ashen Rider than Animate Dead uh, is because it. Uh, doesn't reduce your clock with that spell as much, um, but it's you're right. It's definitely worse than reanimate and exhume. Yeah. So Jesse Wilk is giving me a little bit of crap. His deck was much better than mine. His reanimate deck was much better, and like that's what I'm saying. I had to play cards like Dance of the Dead because he took all the good ones, and I I, I don't know why you would pick it over the good ones that you that are available. But anyway, we're at the end here. We're taking a break. Um, so let's do a raffle. Uh, we'll do the raffle while that's going on. I'm gonna go grab. We're gonna get Nate Heisen here. I'm gonna chat him up. And then we'll keep this thing moving. So, last chance. Get into the, the, the Twitch chat as fast as you can if you want to, want to try to win this $10 to uh, Northwest Sports Cards. And then after that, we're going to bump it up. The next one will be 25 But anyway, let's uh, take a quick break. Hand it over to Chris here while we shuffle some things around. And uh, thanks for joining us. Yep. Okay. <clears throat> Again, thanks, guys, for uh, tuning in to our stream for the Northwest Vintage Rotisserie Draft. Um, Thanks to Northwest Sports Cards, our uh, sponsor for this and also the previous draft. We are going to be giving away $10 in store credit to their online store. Their online store is uh, nwgamerschoice.com. And I'll go ahead and put this in the chat for you guys. Um, so nwgamerschoice.com. Uh, they ship uh, worldwide. Uh, pretty sure worldwide, at least domestic. So... Um, you can use it online, you can hold it and use it in the store. It's good for any events, pre-release events, signings, anything. Um, and it does not expire, obviously. If you want to prepare to for, you can prepare for your winnings, you can actually go onto nwgamerschoice.com and sign up for uh, a free account on there. And uh, once we once you get an account, then we're able to uh, provide the store credit to you. So what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to give away some store credit. So 
Uh, anybody that's logged on to the chat, I'm going to go ahead and pick a name at random and uh, see if we can go ahead and get a uh, some free store credit for them. Okay, let's see if I can go in here. So you need to grab a couple things and uh, see what we can find out. Okay. Okay, so I've already picked the winner. So let's go into the drum roll. And the winner for the $10 star credit to Northwest uh, Gamers Choice is going to be... Sully403, I think I said that right, hopefully. Sully403. Uh, yeah, Sully403, you have won $10 to Northwest Gamers Choice. Northwest Gamers Choice is located in uh, uh, West Tacoma or University Place, Washington. They provide uh, pre-releases uh, for all of the new cards that come out. They also do signings uh, for any of the uh, sports signings. But more importantly, their pre-releases always have the uh, greatest magic artists like Mark uh, Tiden and RK Post and uh, Chris Ron, you name it. So, um, Sully403, go ahead and send me a, a personal message on uh, to uh, Shotgun Lotus. Uh, sign up on nwgamerschoice.com for a free account. Uh, and give me your first name, your last name, and also the email that you uh, signed up with. And I'll try and get that uh, store credit to you, hopefully in the next couple of days. If not, uh, just go ahead and ping me again. All right, so we'll go ahead and go to uh, Paul Waite and Nate Heiss. Uh, I'm joined in the booth here with Mr. Nate Heiss of uh, Pro Tour and Magic R&D fame. Uh, You've been been around Magic for quite a time, quite a while, haven't you? I've been around the block once or twice. Yeah, so uh, you're one of the more, uh, I guess, accomplished drafters in the draft, um, and I think that it really shows in kind of how you've been picking. We've been talking a lot about how you and Alex West, uh, particularly, have like really seemed to know like when to take the right cards. You guys seem to be really reactive. You guys are, uh, but basically. A lot of people still don't quite know what you're doing with your deck. I mean, <laughs> the elves have started coming off the board. We kind of figure it out. But why don't you go and go ahead and talk a little bit about your uh, picks and what you've been doing? Uh, yeah, I mean, I guess not knowing what I'm going to do next is one of my special powers. Because <laughs> uh, I, I, I came in with a, a plan that I thought nobody else would kind of uh, come down to. I, I was really hoping to get that time walk. Uh, I saw that. Was so close. Yeah, we've been I, talking about that. I, yeah. When I saw it get snapped off, I was like, oh. Uh, I mean, there's no way that I'm supposed to get it, but sure. uh, you know, I think my deck's like twice as good with time walking it. Yeah, but yeah, uh, I'm I'm drafting elves. <laughs> yeah. So I guess one thing I actually want to talk to you about is this is your second time here, mm -hmm. this is the second time you've drafted this. Yeah. And uh, it, it, you went into the first draft. You th I remember talking to you. You felt like okay, I've got a really good handle on this. And I think you, you learned some lessons in that first draft that you're applying today. Do you want to go into that a little bit? Yeah, so the first draft, I was like, oh, you know, Vintage Registry, that sounds fun. I'm going to draft, like, some kind of crazy combo deck. What's, what's it, where it's, like, a great two-card combo that I can get, like, lots of redundancy on mm -hmm. and just always have that uh, available. And I was like, oh, yeah, uh, Kiki Jiki, you know, that, that seemed like a really, uh, you know, reasonable choice at the time. Uh, however, I after drafting it and playing it, it was not good. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So it, the format isn't really about uh, tutors as much and redundancy. You, you're playing forty card decks, so you you get your pieces no matter what. Uh, and also, like, you kind of want all the cards you're playing to just be actively good and uh, gaining you advantage on on the board. Otherwise, you're you're just kind of twiddling your thumbs. I got beat down by a metal worker like for eight damage yeah. in, that, in that draft once. It's like. I, re I remember kind of uh, there was the first feature match that you were in, and I remember <laughs> it was it was I was Talk like time walk. it was like watching <laughs> it was like you just kind of like your mind opening up and being like oh okay I see what's going on here I think Charles Dupont cast time walk against you like five times in a row yeah he t he cast me he cast time walk four times in one game yeah uh, and you know obviously he only has one time walk in his deck. Mm -hmm. So uh, that was pretty strong. I was hoping to do a little bit of that here if I had it, because I mean, yeah. I, you know, I have the regrowth, I have the eternal mm -hmm. witness, uh, stuff like that. But that's okay. I'll be casting time twisters and fast bonding out tons of land and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, absolutely. So kind of, I guess. So we know that you're drafting elves, mm -hmm. but like, kind of, what's your plan? How do you plan on winning your games? How do you plan on closing things out? Um, how do you plan on interacting with the other decks? Uh, sure. So what what I'm hoping to do is uh, play, you know, cheap cards fast uh, and kind of empty my hand, then refill with the draw sevens mm -hmm. and just kind of rinse and repeat with that. Mm. Uh, the, the cards I'm going to be playing, uh, you know, are the type of cards that get explosive when they get on the board. So I'm, you know, spoiler alert, I'm going to be drafting a bunch of, like, Lanolore Elf type cards. Mm -hmm. uh, and so, you know, by the second or third turn, hopefully I got a nice uh, nice board going uh, and hopefully mm -hmm. they don't have any lands. Yeah. And hopefully I have, like, ten lands in play. 
Uh, the, the fast bond is really critical to this deck. Yeah. Uh, the, the whole like fast bond draw seven thing is kind of the engine. Sure. Um, I drafted Zernor, but I wasn't planning on drafting Zernor. But with the two burn, like, like I just wanted an out versus all these burn cards. You know, yeah. if fast bond so critical to my strategy, it's like okay, infinite life, fine. You know, with the Crucible. Sure. Uh, uh, are there any decks or any players that you're particularly worried about? Is uh, is there any deck you're like, oh, I have a bad matchup against them or? Anything like that going on? Uh, the mono black deck is terrifying. Yeah, <laughs> uh, I don't. You're 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 basically <laughs> a thought season away from your whole game plan going out the door, kind of, right? Uh, no, I just cast a draw seven. I'm fine. I mean, sure, sure. I actually actually don't think that I I'm like super disruptible. Uh, I, I'm not building the deck as a combo deck. It just has a lot of good okay. combos that can go off. Uh, you know, the, the deck can just kind of go like guy 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 guy, and that's fine. Mm -hmm. um, but. I don't know how he doesn't have Necropotence yet. Like Necropotence is live. It's um, crazy. Yeah. There's another card. There's another card that's live that he's missed that we can't. Yeah. I can't go into at yeah. the moment. But yeah, uh, no, I, I, I just I don't want to. I don't want to take the, those cards because I'm I'm not going to be playing them. Uh, you know, like Demonic Tutor and Vampire Tutor were just live forever. Mystical Tutor was live forever. Yep. I could have taken Mystical Tutor, but. I'm honestly not even sure if I'm going to be able to cast the bribery I took because it's double yeah, blue. Yeah, I thought that was a bit of a strange pick. Um, uh, speaking of double blue, though, uh, how upset were you to see Time Spiral go? Not that, not that. Uh, no. Yeah, I wasn't planning on taking because of the double blue. Sure. Um, okay. You know, I, who saw you took? I just saw you took Memory Jar, kind of in reaction it, to it. It, no, like. it just reminded me. I was like, oh right, I was supposed to take Memory Jar like a few picks back. Sure, sure. Uh, and because uh, that one is pretty easy for me to cast. Uh, the, the colored mana is going to be a lot tougher than I expected based on. Like all of the sack lands going, I did not get a single one, and that really hurts me because uh, yeah. with the fast bond crucible, that's put all my forests into yep, play. Yep. Uh, and not even getting one of those was pretty sad. <coughs> so, is there anyone in the draft? Let's let, let's let's maybe uh, poke some fun here for a second. Have some fun with this. Is there anyone in the draft that you think's just gone off the rails, doesn't know what they're doing? You think who who do you think is in contention for the, the TED? Well, I, so I'm pretty sure Carl has gone off the rails, but I think his deck still kind of holds up. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we're kind of saying the same thing. Yeah, like. I was really sad to see that he took natural order. I wanted that. Yeah, uh, yeah. That, that makes my deck so much better too. Mm. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I guess I, I have to say that like Corbett's using the strategy that never works, right? Yep. So, if well, I'm to some degree, I mean, I think the the thing we've seen with the workshop decks in the past is they've they've dumped out all their mana and then they don't have anything to do. In this case, it looks like he has some time spiral. He's got you yeah, know, yeah. I mean, I know he's trying to play, you do his brain geysers and stuff to kill people with, mm -hmm. but they do refill his hand as he needs it. Yeah. Um. So, it's another take it's, at the workshop deck. We've still have never seen the workshop do well. It's never had a winning yeah. record here, but. It's another t attempt at it. Let's see if it if it works. Yeah, I mean, it, and it might. I mean, uh, th there's a there's a couple decks that are very similar, right? Like mm. there's there's the uh, you know sort of just aggro aggro uh, McConnell deck. Yeah. Uh, Alex West deck. Yeah. Yeah, Alex West deck. Uh, and then you know Teft has got you know kind of like a little aggro burn thing going on. Yeah, yeah. And so like there's a bunch of decks that kind can kind of just get there. Mm. Um, I. I don't think we'll see uh, as big of a spread in records as we've, as we've seen in past rotisserie drafts where people are just like sitting at like you know 0 and 6 and, and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, because all these decks have threats and can get there. Yeah, I don't think uh, I was talking about this uh, on when Cedric was getting interviewed with some of the drafters. Is like I don't think there's anyone in this draft who you look you can look at their deck and say that person's going to lose. Yeah, I don't. I don't think so. I don't. I think there's people that you. Can point at and say that those that person's not going to win, <laughs> but you can point at there's no one that's like this person cannot win a game, which we, we, we've always there seems to have always been that person in the past. Yeah. Maybe um, if I had to name it, maybe it's Corbett just because it's the workshop deck. And it's Corbett. <laughs> it's Corbett. <laughs> all right. Well, uh, it looks like we have a, a question in the chat for you. Oh, you can right. respond to it if you want. It's from uh, BBK Poker, who is Jesse Wilkie. It says I have a question for Nate. If you could go back to the Pro Tour realm. Would you still play two Miri's Guile and one Vampiric, or would you find room for more Vampirics? Uh, I think I came in 13th place in that tournament, mm -hmm. so I was pretty happy with my list. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, uh, I think that worked out well. Two Miri's Guile is actually pretty sweet. Uh, mm -hmm. You could, because what I would do is uh, activate a Mir Miri's Guile, uh, take a look, uh, Sylvan Library, shuffle, look at another three cards. Mm. Uh, you, you actually got benefit out of having two Miri's Guiles, weirdly. Yeah. Uh, where, I don't know. I, I think it worked out all right. Uh, I, it's hard to say. Cool. All right. Well, I think we're going to get the graph back underway here. Um, so good luck. And we're going to get uh, Berklid and Joe Bono back in here. I'm going to take a break. And uh, good luck, buddy. It's getting ready to beat down. All right. <laughs> <laughs>
Oh, sure, yeah. Are we on, Chris? We are on. All right. Uh, break number two is uh, winding down. We're going to get this uh, this draft finished off here. It's very exciting stuff. Yeah. Uh, so I, I just talked to Corbett Gray. Okay. Uh, who Paul and I talked about uh, yep. a bunch. And he's got... He's got his last 15 picks figured out. Oh, okay. Uh, so he has some picks figured out. Yeah, yeah. So he's he's got some interesting ones there. Uh, he's got uh, he's got the staff of domination on yep. there. Mm -hmm. He's got consecrated sphinx on there. Okay. Um, he's got some other like big bluish cards on does there. He, or does he not have Jace the Mind Sculptor on there? He does not have Jace the Mind Sculptor. Okay. Right. He does not have Ancient Tomb. Okay. He doesn't have Library of Alexandra. He doesn't have City of Traders. He doesn't have City of Traders. Okay, right. So, big Corbett, well, ladies and gentlemen. Let, let let me ask you a question. What do you think the chances are that Library of Alexandria and Mind Twist don't get drafted? At this point, like even money? Even money? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. yeah. I it's 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 crazy. We're 30 deep. They've definitely forgotten about them. Yeah. Everyone has forgotten. Like I, like a bunch of people have just been like, "Oh yeah, Jace it must have been drafted. Or, Greg Pelequin's got that in his deck. I'm sure of it." Right, or they're just not it's not even on their radar, yeah. you know? Yeah. Uh yeah, cuz like uh Sean and his mono black preparation, right, is, is like, these are the first five picks that I wanted, right? And yeah. I want them in this order. And then, well, okay, my twist is going to be gone, so it's not even on my list. And he's just not going to take it. Oh. Uh, Alright, so uh, here we go. Can we get, uh, how do we get the scroll? Uh, back to the draft. Alright, here we are. And we have our first pick. Uh, so Nate has picked Lana Rells. Uh, we've we've been talking a bit about like how his strategy of building out elves was sort of like revealed to everybody when he yep. picked up a gay as cradle. You know, that's when sort of like the jig was up and everybody was like, Oh, he's not drafting Storm, he's drafting something really crazy. Yeah. Uh, the best was people actually still didn't even figure it out when he drafted the cradle yeah. in there. They were like, Why did you take cradle? Yeah. Well, that was <laughs> dumb. You only got you only got one creature. And then he was, and then he took priest of Titania, and they're yeah. just like, oh, yeah, right. Um, and so like his second fifteen picks are so different from his first. I know, I love, picks. I love it. It's deck. fantastic. It's so but cool. like they're gonna mesh really well yep. together. And mm -hmm. so like, you know, he's he's been doing a really good job of prioritizing all the mana making guys yep. and like the unique cards. Mm -hmm. And I think we're gonna see him just sort of run through now with yep. like. Elvish Mystic and Findhorn Elves and all those one drops. Absolutely. And then finish off with Elvish Arch Druid. Yeah. Another Priest of Titania. Uh, and um, finish off with like Regal Force and yep. maybe Crater Hoof. Yep. He was telling me uh, he prioritizes, or like the best things you can do in Magic are make fast mana and draw seven cards. And so that's that's what he is trying to do. He's trying to have broken mana and draw a lot of cards. Library of Alexandria for Cedric Phillips finally in the Jeez. 31st round. He has come out of the breaks with some good picks. Yeah, he took yeah. DT on the last one out. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, yep, that's pretty good. Library finally there. There yeah. it is. And, like, he... So, it's not a fantastic card in his, like, in his I strategy. Really, I think it's really good, actually. Yeah. Oh, you, you think I, it is? I think it's very good. So, like, I think it's an awesome card in general. Mm -hmm. And, like, you know, hands that you open with Library of Alexandria and that I think are, like... 20% higher to win yep. than other hands, but like you, you think this tempo -y deck is actually I think not going to empty his hand fast enough? I, I think it's easy. less of a tempo -y deck than uh, than it might appear to be, Okay, uh, because like, Delver decks in Legacy plan on playing a turn one Delver, yep. right? or like finding one real quick and putting it into play and then hoping it gets there. Keeping their opponent off balance enough just enough for the Delver to get home. Yep. Right? This deck, he gets one Delver. He gets one young pyromancer. Yep. Uh, one I dark confidant. Right. I think this deck nemesis. is a control deck okay. that kills with cheap, cheap threats. Mm. Uh, like the young pyromancer is just a source of card advantage for him. Uh, it's not necessarily like his clock. Yeah. Uh, and then Delver, like obviously, if he gets it on turn one, that's sweet. Um, but uh, I, th I think Cedric has something planned for us in round 32. <laughs> uh, he, he might be getting that mind twist. Uh, I, I like that he's he's playing to the crowd here. Um, yeah, he. Uh, I, I think the library is a great pick for him because his mana costs are all so low that he can just sit there and draw two cards a turn and then just like he play a one drop, yep. play a one drop, answer your threat with a one drop, and then that's how he creates tempo. It's all mana tempo. And not necessarily like you know temporal springing your land, right? Like, yeah. Um, so I th I think that card's going to be crucial for him to win a lot of games. That's great. 
Uh, so we see Paul Tefmaker uh, getting both of the colorless man lands here. Yep. Um, he's, you know, Alex West wasn't going to, to grab those. And so, you know, I think he was probably safe holding them as long as, as he did because yeah. there weren't other decks that, like, really, Corbett really might take them. them, right? And that's, yeah. that's a smart way to take it right into Corbett. Yeah. So take one and then take the other one on the way yeah. out. And we, sure. and we see Alex. Yo, there's knows. Jace the Mind Sculptor for Cedric in, oh, third, in round geez, 32. Cedric. He might get Mind Twist in round yeah. 33. Yeah. Do you, do you think he'll get, like, Ancient Tomb, too? Probably. Uh, he wouldn't want it, actually, I don't, I don't think. I guess not, yeah. Because Jace like, is the only card that, yeah. yeah. I, I don't think he really wants it. I, he, I actually asked him about Mana Drain during the break. Um, yeah, he, he thought he had that a he decent... was going to get it a little bit later, I think? No, he his logic was, I can't do anything with the mana, because um, I plan on having all one cast and cost cards. So in my deck, it's just Counterspell. And yeah. if I'm thinking about it, in terms of my draft only versus the field. Like, he doesn't care if somebody else gets value on Mana Drain because it's not that good against him. Approved, Sean! Yep, okay. <laughs> I don't understand how this happens. Like, we get into these deep, like, into the segments of 15 and nobody just takes these cards yeah. at all. And then we come back from break. Nobody says anything in there. Yeah, uh, I, well, they're, like, they're all on Magic Online, right. like, looking at cards and yeah. like, oh, I just remind myself of these cards that exist out right. there. But it's weird that, like, and then they it happens the at break time. Yeah. It's weird. Though that, that break gives them a chance to, like sit back and reflect and like they're not under the gun they don't feel like they have to have the right next pick on uh so sean sean has some spicy ones prepared for us they're not as spicy as like cedric getting jace and library of alexandria no 31 shit. 32 uh but they're they're pretty cool so like I'm, I'm glad to see that he finally took mind twist that was one of the cards that you know you yeah. kind of expected him to take over like the generic removal stuff over maybe ash and more gouger um <laughs> and, i mean like ash I actually don't hate the Ashenmore Gouger pick. No, I don't either, but that's a card that both Alex twist. and Paul right. should have picked. But like you know, taking getting it before Diabolic Edict or Gatekeeper of Malakir, which nobody wants. Right. Um Lake I, of the Dead. Yeah, Lake of the Dead. Chains of Mephistopheles. All of these things. Um so the the spicy card he picked before that is Forsaken Waste. Is uh, that black one or black two? It is black two. Okay. Uh, it is a card that uh, prevents people from gaining life, I think. No. Uh, yeah, prevents them from gaining life okay. and puts a clock on them uh, by making them lose a life every turn. And if you get rid of it, you lose five. Yeah. Uh, whenever it gets targeted. Yeah, okay. Um, so it's if he was actually worried about a life gain deck, like maybe this is a hedge against Greg Peliquin. Mm -hmm. um, that, that could be it there. There are some other interesting cards though, that you could use against Greg and against some of the other creature decks. But like the, I think, I think Sean is like very interested in like digging deep sure. and showing like this deep knowledge of cards that he's, that he's got. And so like well, toxic I, deluge, yeah. some people didn't know about. Right. Uh, but then Cedric was actually, boon was Cedric like, uh, was actually pretty upset that uh, Sean took toxic deluge. Yeah. Uh, Cause he really wanted that one for against Paul and Alex. Yeah. Um, but uh, the other thing that uh, uh, Paul Waite and I were talking about uh, with the black deck is that you just get so many different cyborg cards because you're going to have 17 basic lands in your deck yep. and you're one color and so your cyber cards just have to be kind of off the wall a yep. little bit um, and he's certainly showing that. Yeah. And so this is now we're seeing sort of like what Cedric is doing to move around the fact that he lost the Toxic Deluge. Yes. So he, he already he's established that he's got the red splash and so mm -hmm. he's taking Pyroplasm and he said that he was interested in taking Whip, Whip Flare, Flare as well. well. Yeah. And so that's going to that's going to help him a lot against Paul Tefmaker and it's going to help him a fair amount against Sean Collins. I don't know how much it's going to help against Alex West because there are a lot of three toughness creatures in his deck. He's that's true. He's got the he's got the uh, Kurt Ape, he's yep. got the Lone Lion. Yep. Um, so it's not going to be as good there. I wonder if Cedric maybe considers taking Fire Spout. Uh, he probably will. Uh, he probably, he definitely should. Yeah. Um, it's also those two cards are also insane against Nate's deck. This is true. And That's very kind of backdoored into a little bit yeah. of uh, splash damage there. So uh, also good against Sean Collins probably. Yeah. You know. And so we see Paul actually uh, counter drafting the the whip flare to make wow. sure it doesn't get used against him. So heads up play from Paul. Smart. Um, maybe and, C maybe Cedric should have taken whip flare first. Yeah. Because Paul probably isn't going to take pyroclasm. Because uh, he can actually 
I don't know if Paul oh, actually no, he's, has he, any artifact. Yeah, creatures. okay, fair enough. But I mean, Paul also is benef- going to benefit from that. You know, it's going to be good against Nate, like you mentioned. Yep. Um, and because Alex is much more creature intensive than him, he might need to bring it in against Alex. Yeah. Uh, so that's that's an interesting pick. Woo! Carl Jantz. Vampiric Tutor Bonfire of the Damned. Yeah. In your green, blue. I, I, maybe he's just giving he up on the colors. blue. Uh, uh, the only blue card he has is the um, Tinker-ish thing, right? Yeah, he's got Transmute Artifact. artifact. He didn't pick up Reshape yet. Yeah. Um, so that's that's interesting uh, that he's he's dipping into red at this point. Jund combo. Yeah. <laughs> I, he does have the two five color land, so you know he yep. he has the opening splash a lot of stuff and but, like gemstone mine available. Yeah, things yeah, like that. Even he could get tarnished citadel if he right. wants to pay ten, a ton of life. Tendo ice bridge. Yeah, is a good one. Uh, so lots lots of stuff going on there, uh, and we see that Corbett Gray. Um, so before before or sorry, right right after the break, he uh, decided to pick up a two card combo with Ice Conceptor and Orm's Chant. And now he's got another piece of that with silence. I don't know if he really needs silence there because he's he's already got the mystical tutor and the personal tutor. Uh, and the, well, personal tutor only gets sorcery. Oh, it only gets tinker. Okay. Yeah, um, but so like he he oh, already and, spiral. and brain geyser. Yeah. Um, so you know he, he he's got some options for that, but like the the silence maybe isn't as necessary there. What is Aegis of the Gods? I don't know what that one does. Uh, that is a 2-1 that gives you hexproof. It's an enchantment creature for one in a white. Okay. It's from Journey. All right. Not bad. Um, yep. Thank you, Chris. Uh, so this is this is sort of like an easier-to-cast true believer. Sure. Um, and so that works pretty decently in Greg's deck. Um, and you know, we, Is true believer, It's you can't be targeted by any spell, right? Yeah, so true you believer can't gives you yourself. shroud. You can't ancestral yeah. yourself, yeah. Uh, but it has Got two it. toughness, so it's yep. it's easier cast and it's actually better in his deck because yes. uh, you know he has time walk and I think he has ancestral visions already too. Yeah, vision and recall and recall. Yep. Um, so yeah, Leyline of Vitality. <laughs> so this is the one that gives toughness to all of your creatures. Uh, okay, and so, whenever a creature enters the battlefield, yeah, and, you gain a life. Yeah, so it's actually so like this is this was a sideboard card in the aggressive elves deck from the double standard yes. version of ex, of extended, mm-hmm. um, and it was actually really useful because there were a lot of pyroclasm right, and it would get your arch druid out of pyroclasm yeah. range, which gets your team out yeah. of pyroclasm range. So you get you get this and any of the lords. Yep, um, and it's it. it protects you yep uh and then we have umbral mantle yeah that's a spicy one which is a way to generate infinite mana if you have a big enough arch druid or, it only needs to be four yeah so, yeah arch, arch druid or priest of titania to tap for four does it yeah uh another card that theoretically could be on his radar is wirewood channeler mm-hmm. um and that would give him three ways to do that yeah um yeah uh nate's deck is uh he's going to be making a lot of mana and he's going to be drawing a lot of cards. Uh, I don't know if you saw the uh, the Edric Spiremaster. Uh, yeah, that's, that's, that's pretty sweet. And he's yeah. he's got the Concordant Crossroads to give all of his guys haste mm-hmm. as a as a really cheap win condition. Yeah, once absolutely. he's gone off, uh, so that's pretty sweet. And also, like, what is different with that versus uh, like a Crater Hoof Behemoth is that it also helps him continue going off Correct. because it makes all of his elves essentially yep. free because mm-hmm. they tap for mana. And uh, yeah, I actually really like where Nate like where Nate is positioned. Yep. Uh, given that this draft has three aggressive decks, uh, the other drafters are like counter drafting aggressive, like at aggressive decks yeah. a little bit more, and just kind of letting him be a combo deck. It's a little bit of a side effect that you know he's playing into some Wrath of Gods mm-hmm. style stuff with a bunch of elves, but he has a bunch of draw sevens to refuel. Yeah. And if they don't draw a whip flare, they're probably going to be dead. So, given how creature heavy this meta has become, mm-hmm. how many wraths should Greg have? Like he should he should take supreme verdict. He should definitely have one. He sh- uh, he should probably main it, and I think he should have a second in this yeah. side. Uh, that's my personal preference. If I were to draft a blue white deck, I would never do that. Yeah, uh, it's not my style. But uh, but like given where he's at, yeah, like, given where you he's think at, he should have supreme verdict mm-hmm. in the main and wrath in the side. Probably, yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, or maybe not wrath specifically. Maybe maybe he wants some like tricky style of wrath, like route or uh, maybe a route. Yeah, or, or a um, uh, hallowed burial. Hall- yeah, to get around the blightsteel colossus. 
Sure, sure. Um, Although I think Blight Seal Colossus is frequently going to kill you the the turn it comes out with the uh, uh, Lightning Greaves. Well, sure, but, but I mean, yeah, so, sometimes you know it's it's worth with the hedge. Yeah. Uh, so we see Sean Collins, you know, dig deeper into the enchantment backlog of uh, old magic sets with Gate to Phyrexia, which yeah. is the only way that Black has to get rid of artifacts. Yep. I'm kind of surprised that he didn't get this earlier. Like this is. If I were picking a card like Chains of Mephistopheles or Gate to Phyrexia or Forsaken Waste early on, Gate to Phyrexia is actually the one I would pick, especially because yep. he has Bitter Blossom. Right, especially because of that. And, like, granted, the specific draft has uh, sifted into uh, not too many artifact decks. Um, so, like, Alex has none. Paul has uh, none. Carl has a couple combo cards but yeah. his deck is clearly not uh dependent upon them cedric has none yeah uh, sean himself is obviously the one who's going to play the card greg has basically none nate has basically none well, so so it's good against corbett greg sure, greg but... has equipment which which is okay you know, something that he cares sure. about and it's going to be very good against corbett like i i want my sideboard cards to yep. either be you know, good and mm -hmm. applicable against a bunch of different people or to really be devastating yes. against one person. And yep. like I think this is I think this is the way that he is able to win against Corbett right. is to grind out all of his artifacts over time. I can agree with that completely. Because you know, he can't protect against Corbett's top decks with all of yeah. his disruption. Right. Um Yeah, he wants he wants to keep Corbett top decking six and seven mana spells after he kills the yeah. base hole model, after he kills the mana vault. Yeah. Um so So I want to go back to, to Greg's deck a little bit and talk a bit about uh, some of the things that he's picked. He picked up Timely Reinforcements, and he picked up a Sun Lance. What do you think um, of those as hedges against all the I actually uh, like Sun Lance decks? a lot. I like yeah. Sun Lance a lot. Uh, it's good against Nate. Uh, you know, It keeps tempo against his one-drop elves that he's yep. definitely going to be starting almost every game with because he has, I think, four or five of them. Yeah. Um, it's uh, it's a way to beat Cedric's Bob, uh, mm -hmm. beat Cedric's uh, Delver, beat yep. Cedric's Young Pyromancer, yep. all with mana tempo. Um, and it's probably pretty good against Alex and probably pretty good against Paul. Uh, you know, granted, Paul is a lot more on the burn aspect of things, mm -hmm. but like he still wants to get a one or a two drop down to deal four to six damage, yeah. right? And if you can just sunlance that away and then make him spend multiple turns trying to accumulate that clock and get it back, you get to make two or three land drops, and now you're at Cryptic Command. Now you're at Stoneforge plus Batter Skull. Yeah. Uh, sunlance is going to do a lot of work against those things. Uh, and no one else is drafting white, really, so yeah. the like downside of it is not really a thing. Yeah, no, I, I think Greg moving into white was a good heads up move yes, back absolutely. around pick like 10 or whatever mm -hmm. it was that he picked up the batter skull in the right. tundra. Yep. Um, and it sounds from your analysis, it sounds like this is probably a better choice than something like oust or condemn. You know, it would have been better if he yeah. had, had path to exile over this. Um, and was like, if he had picked Path to Exile over Swords to Plowshares and then picked up Swords to Plowshares now. Is Swords to Plowshares awesome. still on the board? No, he picked that very early okay. and then. Uh, Alex was able to get the the path, the path to exile, okay. and like I think if he had flopped them, flip flopped them, he would have been able to get both, maybe. Okay. Um, yeah, I think Sunlance is probably better than uh, than Oust uh, and um, and Condemn and Condemn. Uh, can, it's better than Condemn because it hits all of Nate's stuff, and yeah. it's gonna not going to be attacking with his elves on turn yeah. two. Um, also, like uh, the the Oust is not that good against Alex's deck because Alex is just all one mana creatures. And so like if he you oust it and then on turn three he's just gonna play three one mana creatures instead of a different three one mana creatures. Yeah. Um well so in that situation <coughs> it actually it sounds exactly the same Basically to me. The same thing. Um and the the fact that like Sunlands doesn't hit a couple of Alex's creatures, like the Lone Lion, mm -hmm. um, makes it... I, I think Aus is maybe actually slightly better against Alex okay. than Sunlance is. Um, but, like, this is very niggling detail. But, sure. you know, the fact that, like, he draws it again in two turns doesn't matter because he's going to be running 15 lands and he's going to be drawing creatures no matter on what. And what you might actually be better because he, he, uh, like, he's fetching too, right? Yeah. He's fetching a return. So if you oust something, it might just be gone forever. 
that's true so that's true um but yeah it, it definitely like i agree with you that like sunlance is overall the better pick especially because it's so much better against nate yeah um than than these other ones uh, uh so and let's... even carl too because it gets you know birds and uh yeah a deep shadow absolutely uh, it doesn't get carry a ted obviously but uh yeah, so we've seen Carl pick up a couple of reanimation targets in Elish Norn and Ashen Rider. We, I don't think we've seen Gristlebrand get picked yet. No kidding. Um, I'm pretty like in, unless it happened in like the last couple picks, um, I'm pretty sure Gristlebrand is still out there to be gotten. He definitely didn't get picked in the first fifteen. Um, so that's interesting. And then we see Kiora's follower get picked up, which is actually a pretty good pick for Carl because it enables the time vault. Yes. Um, part of it. And it also it helps accelerates him fix his mana with any dual lands yeah. or mana confluence. Yeah. So it's, that seems pretty sweet. And then Ashen Rider is another reanimation target kind of classic one. Yep. Um, given that Carl doesn't it's especially have... especially good if he's going to be going after like a recurring nightmare. Right? Yeah. 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 Uh, given that Carl doesn't have any tutoring yet, he probably wants to have slightly more fatties. Um, Possibly. Like maybe four. Yeah. He doesn't have five. the entomb yet. Yeah. Right? He has vampire. It's still open, it. though. Yes. Yeah. Um, I think I would want Sphinx of the Steel Wind in my set of fatties for this set of uh, opponents. Opponents. Yeah, I could see that. There's two. Well, Alex's removal is all going to be white. Uh, he has Path, he has Oblivion Ring and Banishing Light. Yeah. Um, so uh, I mean, you, you make him have to draw those. That's things. fair. You know, and the life gain is is relevant. Yeah. Um, I think I would want, uh, but against against a deck like Alex, like Elish Norn is probably going to be the same kind of thing, right? Yeah, maybe. Um, like I think Elish. So Elish Norn seems really great against Nate. Mm -hmm. Um, that's that's the person I want to target with yes. with that. Um, and like it doesn't it doesn't hurt to have some redundancy in things. Mm -hmm. And like I think. Sphinx is the card I want most against Paul, yep. and I think it's going to be pretty good against Alex, okay. um, but maybe not as good as Elish Norn is. Okay. Uh, so, let's see. Corbett uh, has continued to get... Um, he might want some green fatty, too, right, that he can get with natural Oh, order. sure. Or, like, to rast it Yeah, on like, he, he definitely he needs to get... probably needs one of those. Yeah. Um, maybe he... I don't know if he wants Progenitus or not, but um, that's a card that could be on his radar. Yeah. No, like he has to have at least one. He should be um, and, sh and shouldn't be progenitus because it'll get it gets shuffled in. So, right. um, yeah. Well, yeah, Woodfall Prime is probably really good if if he does end up picking Recurring Nightmare. Which you know, when we were talking outside before during the break, yep. you said that that was the card that you I would really taken, want in this yeah, deck. I would have taken that over when he took Dance of the Dead. I think uh, I would have taken a Recurring Nightmare at that spot. Yeah. Do you think that it's just not on his radar? It might not be um, at this point. I'm, although he's taking cards that are like really good on the way in and out, like Ashen Rider and Sundering Titan. Yeah, and it, it makes me think that like, and he's also not really building his mana base around dual lands. Mm -hmm. So like, because he has like Mana Confluence and City of Brass. Yeah, uh, you know, uh, Twilight Mire and Llanowar Waste and stuff. Yep. So I think, I think it's on his radar. Uh, I mean, it's certainly no one else is going to draft it, right? Yeah, yeah. So, I, the the chance there is that like. Paul um, or Sean decides to just hate draft it because they have picks yeah, open. Sure. And I mean, Sean could theoretically in the next couple picks go like Entomb, Reanimate, Grave Titan, Gristlebrand. Yep. Right? And then draft a recurring nightmare. I mean, he only has f six picks left, but like if that's his last six picks, like that's a pretty spicy last six picks. Um, uh, granted, they would obviously be better if he had like ways to tutor them and stuff but uh i know he, he and he has lake of the dead too yeah so like he can he can, he can cast now. grave titan and crystal brand quick yeah uh like i've done that in cube a lot <laughs> and it's it, it's powerful and nobody sees it coming mm -hmm. uh mm -hmm. you put lake of the dead into play on turn four and then all of a sudden bam you know you have a giant creature in play yeah um so going back to sean for a moment um we see that recently he's picked up appetite for brains and despise yeah he already had inquisition and yep. he had thought season yep. and had him to torak and yep. he had persecute yep. and we saw him pick up mind twist he has um, uh unmask also and unmask right yeah um so like the only discard spell he doesn't have really is duress, uh, duress. Yeah. uh do you like is this overboard is like appetite for brains or uh despise like too much uh, I think they're decent sideboard cards. Yeah. Because uh, against the control decks, um, yeah, wow, he takes another one. <laughs> Ostracize. Uh, 
I think against the control decks, like that's all you can do is just rip apart their hand mm -hmm. and like hope that your clock is fast enough. Uh, but then, like, do you want despise for that? Uh, that's it gets a creature or a planeswalker, right? Sure. I mean, it gets, I, I it, gets it's a Mystic, for... it gets a Stoneforge Mystic. It gets it gets Stoneforge Mystic, Kitchen Finks, a Restoration Angel, Venser. Uh, you know, like early curve stuff for like Greg's deck, right? Sure. Um, against uh, Cedric, it gets uh, it gets Young Pyromancer, which is going to be really annoying for Sean. Uh, it gets. But wouldn't you like all these things? Wouldn't you just rather have a removal spell so that it's live if you top deck it? Like, uh, wouldn't you rather have Doomblade? Yeah, I can't. I can't necessarily say that I wouldn't. Uh, yeah. I, you might be right there. Um, although Doomblade doesn't kill like Dark Confidant, right? But sure. Uh, some, but like that's some the, equivalent creature. Yeah, I mean, like if you're willing to be, spell. you know, less good against Crobat, then you can go for go for the throat. Right? Disfigure yeah. or something, right? Yeah, um, yeah, uh, yeah. You might have a point there. Um, I I just know that uh, in these black decks, you, you, also just having the information is is valuable. Yeah. Um, but uh, he does have a lot of discard. Yeah, and he, and, and there, there's a certain point that like you get a negative returns yes, on it because you've torn their hands apart. Sure. And, and then now you're top decking, top decking discard spells, and yeah. they're top decking cards that they're playing that they cast. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah if he doesn't it, like Sean's deck is a little bit um, s short on like ways to facilitate his own game plan. Mm -hmm. uh, he doesn't have uh, like if he doesn't draw a bitter blossom or blood gas skull clamp. Um, then, like, he's going to have a difficult time getting ahead, yeah. I think. Um, if if he does draw those things, then the discard is going to be really, really good. Um, and then because, like, if the opponent does, ever does draw a card that they don't play, right, like, he's just going to get it and then play this other thing. Yeah. But if he's only drawing one card a turn, like, he's just not going to have anything to do on his own. So I'm a little worried about that. So one thing I was thinking of, like, 10, 15 picks ago is maybe Sean Collins wanted to go down the route of like grave crawler mm -hmm. and the uh three uh, the four mana three three that draws you a card for each zombie that you have yeah and then get attrition Great as the moves, way that yeah. you go ahead and close out the creature decks yeah um, uh, and like that that synergizes like with what he's doing with uh with the uh with the blood ghast and with uh the skull clamp. Yep, I like trust that. me. I know all about those types. I, of I know you're yeah. like a huge attrition fan. Yeah, I'm a giant attrition fan. Like this is a cube deck for you. Yes, uh, and also both vintage rotisserie drafts that I have done. I drafted black white prison decks uh, that were basically board lockups, yep. and they started with Thoughtseize him, uh, you know, cards like that, and then would go into uh, cards like smokestack mm -hmm. and uh, braids. And, like, attrition was always on my radar, but I never ended up drafting it because I never had a draft like this where a bunch of people were in creature decks. Yeah. Um, all of my opponents were always, like, combo. Um, so I would end up not drafting the attrition, but it's definitely on the radar, and it's super, super powerful. Uh, again, when you have cards like uh, like Planeswalkers, mm -hmm. I had Soren and Elspeth and stuff, and... Uh, and lingering souls. Yeah, um, yeah, it's it's know. like really great in the black white. Yes, decks, it's right? super good in the black white decks. It's less good in the mono black decks unless you can make grave crawler a thing. Yeah, uh, and which it's actually harder to do than you would think because like there, there aren't, just aren't that, that many playable zombies. Right, there aren't many good zombies. Yeah, um, like the, the other really great one is uh, Tide Hollow Scholar, but you have yeah. to be in white for that, right? Right, Tide Hollow Scholar is good. Uh, the other like Graveborn Muse yeah. is, the, is the good one, but like by then like. If you stick a great poor muse, like you should be in pretty good shape anyway. Uh, Sean is like running out of cards to kill the opponent with. Like we're only we only have four rounds left in the draft, and he doesn't. He only has a few creatures. Yeah, he's got he's got like eight creatures. Barely, and none mm -hmm. of them are like super. Like if he doesn't have his bitter blossom, right? I and, don't know what's going on. And he he could like if he f realizes that bitter blossom is that important to him. And he needs to cast it on turn two. Uh, like, Imperial Seal is still available. Yeah. Yeah. Um, um, I, I so. guess, like, he does have the big fatty fatties of Phyraxian Negator and Obliterator. But, like, Negator, you, can't, you can't main deck that it, right. with these two red decks out right. there. Um, yeah. So, yeah, you're, you're right. He, he does not have a fantastic, uh, you know, a fantastic way of closing. He doesn't games. have a good board to I don't know what this card is. Mind Swords. Oh, I've seen this picture before, though. If you control a swamp, you may 
Sacrifice a creature instead of paying Mind Sword's mana cost. Each player removes two cards in his or her hand from the game. Okay. Huh. Uh, so I guess like you can you can cheat that in, but like it's it's really just. Um, I forget that card. He's got a lot of block. he's got a lot of things that are good when he has creatures in play, but he doesn't have really yeah, yeah enough ways to generate creatures. Um, uh, so we see the the Mike Thompson Memorial Bane of Progress yeah. come in for Carl Jantz. Uh, and like you were talking about, you know, he, he like he has to have recurring nightmare on his mind because he picked so. the Woodfall Primus, which is another one of those really great recurring mm -hmm. nightmare targets. Um and so let's talk a little bit about what uh Corbet Gray has been doing here. He Crobat. since we checked in with him last, he's picked Steel Hellkite, Mirror Bell, Sphere, Kildotha Forge Master. Temple Bell, Wake Thrasher, Energy Field, Inkwell Leviathan, Ancient Den, Dark Steel Citadel. So, so he has not taken the Soul Lands, and he and he has not taken Tezzeret the Seeker. That's true. Yeah. Those are both true. I don't think he has uh, Staff of Domination yet either. That's true. That's probably one of his last picks because you said it was on his radar, right? I th I thought it was. Okay. Um, but like, I I would pick that higher than Ancient Den and uh, certainly than Ancient Den. You know, because okay. like Ancient Den is enabling silence, and like you have replacements for other yeah land, you know, other artifact lands. Yep. Um, and like that that is a card that yeah, you, he doesn't you care about, and like you can't can afford play, right? some, yeah, it, silence yeah, chant. silence and Orum's chant, and like I guess you want to be able. To, I really don't like the silence and Orum's chant stuff though. Anyways, because like either. he wanted to be, I think he wanted to be mono blue and be able to run a bunch of colorless lands. Yeah. And you know what's funny is last draft we made. A lot, like probably too much fun of Teddy for taking uh, uh, Thopter Sword combo, yeah. like in the eighth, ninth round or whatever. Uh, it's probably going to go undrafted in this draft. I think Greg having that or Corbett having that, like if Corbett can cast the Thopter Foundry, like it's actually really good. Yeah, uh, it's insane against Sean. It's insane against Paul. It's insane against Alex. That's uh, like having that be a plan main deck against half the field yeah you know and greg has stoneforge to go get the sword of the meek if he wants yeah uh and, the, Cor and they're both like at the end so that they right. can just like wheel boom mm -hmm. boom and corbett has muddle which gets both halves yeah and he has tinker which gets both halves yeah so like i i actually think that he should be taking those types of cards right now um he's taking a lot of like really super high top end stuff yeah but he doesn't have a lot of affects the game in the first couple turns yeah well I mean, like um, he did get a lot of artifact acceleration in the beginning yeah true so like but he needs something to get to but and you, he's you're not right like draw he sort of like needs the midi stuff right. he's not going to draw those in every opening hand. that's true you know that's true um and so you know the, the wake thrasher is a combo with his basalt monolith yep. and some of the other stuff to get mm -hmm. an infinite kill um but it's also a way to go infinite with uh I guess Mind Over Matter Temple Bell is already infinite, but yeah. he can just do it for 20 instead of sure. the whole deck if he has less cards. Sure. Um, what do you think about the Inkwell Leviathan? Like, he already has Blight Steel Colossus, and he has uh, the Mirror Battle Sphere. Do I actually you need like a it. third Tinker target? I, th uh, I think for the it's, it's good in different such situations. Yeah, yeah like uh, against Greg, um, I would rather have uh, Inkwell than anything else mm -hmm. um, because Greg still doesn't have Wrath yet. Yep. Um and uh you know, he has cards like uh bounce spells and uh swords uh, to deal with um either of the other fatties, right? Sure. Four one ones from Battle Sphere isn't gonna do the job. It's it's yeah. gotta connect. So uh I, I, I do like the Inkwell pick, um, uh, but I think that uh he should be looking at like what the other decks are trying to do and then trying to mm -hmm build his strategy around those a little bit, uh, which is why I think the Thopter Sword would have been good for him. Yeah, no, I I, I think that's an excellent call. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I, I can't say that, like, I necessarily would have gone there because that is a very game-time call yeah. responding to what's going on around mm -hmm. you. You can't, like, it's really hard to plan unless you have, like, sheets and sheets and yep. books of plans. Um, but so having that, that as a heads-up uh, makes a lot of sense. Oh, we need to figure out who we're going to bring in for the interview because there's only one round yeah. left in this draft. Uh, so, so, chat, uh, let us know uh, which of these fine drafters. Come on, Alex, no! Ah, oh, he was he was going to draft Final Fortune in the last round, and he didn't do it. He didn't do it. 
uh, a shame. So uh, yeah, get Alex. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna get Alex West in here to talk about his not final fortune, and uh, and Joe's gonna do. Uh, do our interview uh so uh we're gonna give away uh 25 dollars is that correct i think i think that is the consensus we're bringing in uh, so get logged into the twitch chat here that's how you're gonna win uh when the draft is over uh chris is gonna go ahead and select somebody who is uh logged in at random uh and then uh go ahead and send him a, a private message once uh once you've been selected and you will be the proud recipient of uh, 25 store credit dollars to Northwest Sports Cards, uh, a fine store, uh, our partner affiliate in uh, Tacoma. So um, how much, uh, how many? We're, we're on the last couple of picks. Okay. I, I just wanted to go through, uh, Carl did not get Recurring Nightmare. Wow, all right. Um, and I'm pretty sure it went unpicked. Mm. Uh, nope, cool. Recurring Nightmare, unpicked. Uh, Ancient Tomb, Ancient Tomb, unpicked. City of Traders, City of Traders. Um, what was the other one? We got Library, we got Mind Twist, we got Jace. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Cedric Phillips, for making us <laughs> not look like complete and total chumps. Yeah, no kidding. Uh, and thank you, Corbat, for making us look like you know just regular chumps. Just regular chumps. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so Nate takes Necropotence as his last pick. Uh, Greg finally takes the Riptide Lab, which is going to be fantastic in his desk. He did not get Mangara, um, but you know he's got all the other wizards that are yep. pretty sweet. Uh, Sean Collins with another old enchantment, Withering Wisps. This is a Pestilence, but for three mana. Um, and you have to use Snow Basics to generate the black mana for okay. it. Okay, all right. Uh, so... You know, if you want a Pestilence, this is probably the best Pestilence you can get. That's fair point. Yeah. Uh, we see Carl. Okay, so we uh, we, we see, like, a little bit of why he's getting uh, the in the and flash. out creatures. He yep. got the Flash. Okay. Um, but, again, like, this would be better if he had the Flash and the Recurring Nightmare. nightmare. Yeah. Um, I think, also, we, we did not see Survival of the Fittest picked, right? That's correct. Yeah. Yep. And he didn't take uh, Crufix's Insight, either. Yeah. Um, yep. And so those those are all cards that would have been pretty sweet in Carl's deck because you know he's going to have this problem of like oh I drew my fatties early yeah. um, and not enough like accelerants or, right. or regular stuff or I drew my you know land or yeah elves and late. I think him flashing in stuff is just kind of it's cute it's cute but it doesn't actually do much you know? yeah like, like you can I'm spending two, two cards to, to vindicate destroy, you twice. Yeah, right. Um, um, that's I like does, that's pretty good. He can get the Elish Norn in, and then that does something, right? Or does it? Yeah, it, it, it will stick around okay. long enough. Uh, well, actually, is it a, mm, is it a trigger sacrifice it once it's in play, or is it a uh, a state based effect like Mox? Uh, it, you can get the thing. Well, so we we need to look at what Flash says right now. Hold yeah. on a sec, guys, because Chris is on it. I think. Well, so we we need the actual oracle wording, not what it says uh, on the card. Yep, we've got to pull that up. Okay, Uh, so you may put a creature card from your hand onto the battlefield if you do sacrifice it, unless you pay its mana cost. Uh, So that is not going to work well with Elish Norn. So, what happens with Elish Norn is that um, her her minus two minus two is a state based action. So. You know, it does it does take effect while she's on the battlefield, but the problem is that we don't check state based actions until, until somebody spell. would get priority. Yep. And so in the middle of the spell, you know, the, these creatures have their toughness drop down and their power drop down, but then it goes back up in time for them right. to never die. Makes sense. All right. Okay. Uh, yeah. So uh, we're gonna get Alex into the booth here to talk about his draft uh, with Joe, and then when we're done with that, uh, we're gonna have a round one feature match for you. Uh, Cedric Phillips uh, versus Nate Heiss is going to be our round one feature match. So, all right, uh, we're going to get Alex in here uh, as soon as he steps into the room, and uh, yeah. yeah. So, who's uh, who's your favorite deck? Um, hmm. I I so like Greg has the deck that like I'm most likely to draft okay. in a cube draft. Yeah. You know, that's blue white is the thing that like I end up drafting in pretty much yeah. all the formats. Um, but honestly, like I think it's either Nate or Alex. Like I like how consistent Alex is and what a plan he has. Yeah. Um, and I think it's a really interesting approach that we haven't seen 
in this exact form. Before, yeah, that was so what I was really excited about. But like preps, Nate so. is definitely like the most off the wall, awesome original deck. Yeah, totally. Uh, so it's it's going to be interesting. One last thing for you. Uh, what do you think for Cedric with his last pick making a statement to the world <laughs> with <laughs> delusions of delusions mediocrity? Of me. I will not be getting burned out is what he's trying to say. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, we're going to go ahead and get Alex in All the right, booth Alex, here for an interview. Uh, so hold on for one second, folks. Once again, we'll go ahead and do a giveaway for a twenty-five dollars to Northwest Sports Cards, and uh, uh, Northwest Sports Cards is our sponsor for this event and also with the last one. So um, you can visit them at nwgamerschoice.com, uh, set up an account on there, and we can go ahead and get you available to, well, make it easier for me to be able to give you your uh, store credit that you win. So our uh, our next winner is going to be, let me see if I can uh, really get this, try to do 10,000 things at once. Uh, so our winner for the $25 store credit to NW Gamers Choice is... Sam Patrick, Sam Patrick, go ahead and, uh, well, actually, I can give you a little bit of this. How about this? Sam Patrick, you win. You win. You win $25 uh, in store credit. So go ahead and uh, shoot me a, uh, a personal message on uh, on Twitch uh, at Shotgun Lotus and uh, sign up on nwgamerschoice.com. Uh, get an account on there. Give me your email you signed up with and also your first and last name. So I can go ahead and uh, put that onto your account in the next couple of days. So actually not me, but I will get somebody to do that for you. So uh, thanks again for all of you guys uh, uh, supporting us and checking out our channel and watching this and being on the Facebook group. Uh, we can't do this without you guys. So um, uh, thanks again. We'll go ahead and move to the uh, interview. Okay, uh, we are back now. Um, I have with me Alex West. Uh, Hello. You had you had the enviable enviable position of being on the wheel here. Lots right. Of people, you know, like the idea of being there almost more than being first. So, like, you're probably the the second best position in the draft. Um, oh, I, I actually don't agree. I think after uh, evaluating the draft, like the the thing I did to prepare. I mean, one of the things was to look at a draft of like average pick orders. Mm -hmm and then evaluate what was likely to be available in my seat. And it, it was pretty clear that like Mox Emerald and Mox Pearl are the best two cards that are gonna be available. Like the, the cards that, the first seven cards are like always the first seven cards that yeah. go. Maybe like Mana Crypt should also go in there. But uh, you know, so like sitting in that seat, um, it seems like there's a lot of flexibility, but I think people psychologically commit to what color they are based on like their first Mox pick or like Time Vault. So like, even if I want to go into like a black strategy, which uh, I, th I think is what I would like to do the most. Okay. Um, like I feel like I'm kind of relegated to like I don't think black supports more than like two drafters, and mm -hmm. I don't want to like fight two other people for it. So I feel like the eighth seat is actually incredibly submissive to the rest of the seats, and okay. <laughs> like you you only have a few strategies left by the time you're in that position. So so given that, like it, it seems like you've done a lot of thinking about the format and preparation for it for this yeah um, and so your seat position really like played a big part in the choice that you made in the strategy that you're making um, how do you how do you feel about that and like you know what why did you choose to go with the strategy sure so uh, you know I feel like there's always gonna be like kind of like two blue artifact combo decks and you know, there's gonna be like one black reanimator deck, and maybe like another black deck that actually like takes like uses card advantage mm -hmm. tools, and then probably like another blue deck that tries to go a more controlly route. Um, so I don't think that like I want to get into like the fight over black or blue. And when I have uh, Mox Emerald and Mox Pearl, the other card that I thought I might have here is uh, Time Spot uh, Time Walk. Um, and so at first I was like, what is the best Time Walk deck that I can make? Uh, and you know, time walk is best with like planeswalkers or creatures in play. And I was like, oh, I'll put a bunch of creatures in play and then I'll time walk people. Uh, and then I realized that like the moxes mathematically give you almost as much power on the table per turn uh, as like the time walk gets you the extra hit at the end. Sure, sure. Um, and then when I put that together, I was like, oh, I should just draft two moxes and draft final fortune at the end. <laughs> um, and then another thing that I did was uh, build a bunch of decks to test them. 
Uh, so like I'm like, all right, I have Mox Emerald, Mox Pearl, uh, all these sweet zoo creatures, because those go well with my time walk strategy. Uh, and then the, the more I uh, played it against other decks, the more uh, it became clear that lots of people have counter spells against uh, non-creature spells. Stuff and like negate and spell pierce. Yeah. Um, and even spells like uh, divert or like misdirection. So if you have like a burn spell or a spell like Final Fortune, uh, cards that might like be dead in their hand game one, like suddenly go live. Uh, and uh, like you don't actually need any spells. Like the basic math of like zoo in this format is it's really easy to get two power creatures. So by like turn three, you've seen nine cards. And if those cards are like three mana sources and six like two power creatures, on turn one, you can play two power. On turn two, you swing and put down another four power. Uh, and then on the third turn, you uh, put down six more power. And so they've taken two, uh, eight, and then 12 damage, which adds up to 20 perfectly. So like, basically, if nothing else happens, uh, you get to like kill people on turn four every time, mm -hmm. um, which was attractive to me. I'm like, that's pretty good. That's like comparable to what people are doing. And uh, actually, and as I tested more, uh, it seemed to me like the other decks were really inconsistent. Like I'd seen a lot of uh, two card combo decks that are like strung together by tutors and uh, rarely were they actually winning on turn four. Like only really bizarre decks like Peter Beckfield's deck or uh, Paul's deck from like the very first vintage draft. Right, the reanimator deck. That right, we're, we're able to- ritual and- Yeah, he just, he had like four or five different like reanimate effects yeah. and like six like really good fatties. Yeah. Uh, so like those were the only two decks that I saw that were consistently performing. And so, you know, I was like, I'm stuck with this Mox Emerald and this Mox Pearl. This lets me get at zoo creatures, like, you know, really fast. And uh, it's a consistent strategy. And uh, other people's strategies are, like, more inconsistent. So, like, this is something that's attractive to me. Okay. Uh, let's let's walk through the draft a little bit. Sure. So your first two picks, you were, you were saying, okay, I'm going to get two out of the three non-blue, non-black moxes. You're going to get Mox Ruby, Mox Pearl, Mox Emerald. That that was kind of like expecting to get two of those. Yeah. Um, so that that was already sort of like fixed. Then you get to your third pick, and you see that Paul Tefmaker uh, has moved in on red, having picked uh, Mox Ruby, Arid Mesa, and Rashad and Poor, right. um, and seems to be emulating the strategy that uh, Ventura had last time. Um, and so you make these picks of Goblin Guide and Plateau. Right. What was what was going through your head then? So part part of how I got here was that uh, Ventura's deck kind of inspired me. Like if he was able to go six one with Burn, mm -hmm. uh, I think that Zoo is more consistent uh, in dealing more damage than Burn is. So uh, I'd studied his strategy very closely, and I uh, realized like his next two picks are probably like Plateau, um, and uh, you know then like two power or you know two power uh, red creatures for one, and so. Uh, I absolutely need to put together a zoo mana base, and uh, if I lose like plateau, that's okay. There's a replacement, um, but like I kind of want to try and like nudge Paul off of it, and uh, but I also just want to pick up the plateau because eventually I'm going to have to play him, and I'd rather not take two damage. When, right, right, right. Um, but the the goblin guide, goblin guide is uh, like does two damage on turn one, so like. If you have variants in your hand where you don't draw the perfect mix of three lands and six creatures, it kind of buys you insurance. Like you could draw one less creature because the Goblin Guide hits on the first turn. Uh, so like Goblin Guide is actually crucial for my my plan. Mm -hmm. And um, basically, I know that most of the cards that I want, uh, no one else really wants with the same like intensity that I do. But now there's this drafter who is interested in the same cards. So I'm only drafting against him. Like I, I don't care what anyone else is doing. But like the Goblin Guide is a card that I know is like really high on his list, so I'm gonna yeah. take it. So, where where in your rating of the one drops is Goblin Guide? Like, is it at the top or is it like below Wild Nakadal? Right. Um, uh, Wild Nakadal and Experiment One, I would rate both above uh, Goblin Guide. Okay. Uh, and actually, uh, Cloudfin Raptor, I would, but I'm not playing blue. Sure. Uh, sure. But then, uh, but Gob because like nobody else wants those, you definitely want to right. take them instead. Uh, but uh, yeah, I, I'd put Goblin Guide like third. Okay. Okay. Uh, so moving along, uh, we get back to you, uh, and you take Wooded Foothills and Bloodstained Mire, um, and you know Paul, the only person you're really, really drafting against at this point, has taken Lightning Bolt and Figure of Destiny, uh, and we see that your next few picks are all lands. 
Right. Um, and it seems like we've sort of moved into like the second stage of the draft where you're saying, okay, there are some things that, you know, the other six people could want. Yeah. And that's the fetch lands. I'm because I only have to fight with Paul for the other like 38 cards in my deck. I'm going to just establish this stuff. Is that what was going on? Yeah. I mean, uh, kind of, we, 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 we pick up all the lands. Uh, you know, there's the Rakdos Cackler and the Seder Fire Drinker where, you know, like I'm fighting with Paul. Uh, and then, I, actually, like, it was, it was kind of I drafted those. And I'm like, maybe I should have drafted, like, Taiga um, and Bayou uh, because, like, uh, you know, it's clear that both Greg and Cedric were thinking about, like, black and green together. Yeah. And they start fighting over the lands, which means that, like, they might start moving into lands that they aren't prime for them but are, like, prime for me. And then, sure. so I need to get to it before them. And, of course, like, Nate chooses the taiga and so you know I, i'm like all right gotta lock down these lands because like right P uh greg peliquin might take the savannah because he's in white and he's still got that sylvan library and he might be looking to make it good um and then right people start taking uh removal and uh my experience is that like a lot of the really huge creatures uh you really need to exile them yep uh so uh when he takes uh swords to plowshares i kind of fist pump because i prefer path to exile yeah. my deck because i don't want people to gain life so, like, the Path to Exile is kind of great. It's also a really good card against me, so I'm pretty happy to draft it. Um, and then, right, and then I start drafting cards that hate on other people's strategies. Um, you know, like, the Revoker, I think, like, anyone else could realistically take. Deathrite Shaman, I think, like, you know, Cedric might be pretty interested sure. in. Sure. Um, and then, you know, kind of like the, the Burning Tree Emissary... Uh, is kind of like the last nod to another player at the table. Like I, you know, I don't know that Paul will move into it, but it's a, it's a really efficient card. Um, and then, and then you know, I just I'm just grabbing like all of the creatures from my list in terms of how efficient they are. Sure, but so at this point, you're like, all right, I don't have to I don't have to worry about other people drafting the cards I want for their decks. The only concern I have is that somebody might counter draft it to keep it away from me. Yeah, ex uh, yeah. Um, Right, like, I mean, part of the attraction of this deck is that I want cards that no one else yeah. wants. So, like, after I get out of the, you know, trouble with the lands, um, there's not really a lot that's problematic. Um, right, like, when I saw how the draft was going, I thought I might be interested in, like, Stoneforge Mystic and Jite, but I was still, like, putting together my lands, and, like, it was, sure. you know, and, like, gone. That was too, s the, the place that they went was a price too expensive for what you were willing to pay? Yes, exactly. Yeah. Um, so, kind of... The the one card that I drafted that I didn't expect to draft was the uh, the Sword of Light and Shadow. Mm -hmm. um, I wasn't expecting kind of the attrition-y mono black deck, uh, and uh, you know I thought maybe someone else would come and draft mono red, but I wasn't sure. Yeah. And I really wanted a card that was good against those decks, but would also uh, kind of give me a card advantage engine against the blue decks. Yep. Originally I thought I might get Dark Confidant third. Uh, but Cedric jumped on that in the third round, so I, I didn't get to move in on it. So uh, it kind of fulfilled kind of a bunch of missing spaces in my deck. Mm -hmm. Did you ever think of taking Sword of War and Peace? Yeah, I, th I thought about taking Sword of War and Peace. Um, I think that Sword of War and Peace would really only be good against Paul's deck, and it's very good against Paul's deck, but I think that Light and Shadow gains me enough life that you know it's about the same, yeah. while also giving me... Uh, right, like a tool against a different deck. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So we, we were thinking about sort of War and Peace throughout the draft, and we were saying to ourselves, actually, that's probably a really good card for Sean to have, but maybe not as good for you because you know it's it's good against it's good against Paul, but you're probably advantaged against Paul as it is, um, and where where other people are going to be concerned are going to really value that is against your deck it's going to be a really good card against you because yeah. you know it helps get them enough life to stabilize and it has protection from the removal types that you have yes. and it has protection against most of your creatures um, like so that was like a thing that we thought eh, maybe you might want but maybe you might want a counter draft right uh, but you probably don't have very many slots in your deck for counter draft right so, so one of the things about uh, aggressive decks is that they tend to mulligan very poorly you have very few card selection cards or card draw cards so you just kind of have to draw it naturally so when you're drafting a sideboard card it has to be a card that is good reactively and like that you're like if you top deck it which is why like something like an oblivion ring i like a little bit more than something like a negate uh because you know chances are like you know maybe they just drop their batter skull and like yeah 
right? Um, and it, it gives me another draw step to kind of make my sideboard card relevant. Um, uh, so does that play into why you picked uh, your, your, your removal suite? So you've got the yeah, Path Sean, to Exile, you, and then you've got like, uh, the Oblivion Ring, you've got the Banishing yeah, Light, and you've got the Vindicate. So you've got like these very these three mana, very generic things um, for like removal. And like, is the reason for that because you just need them to do work in, against a lot of different decks and you can't specialize too much? Yeah, exactly. Like uh, Because I'm going to play zero basics... Uh, my deck is like 40 cards, so, so I only get five cards surface. left for sideboard space. So the sideboard cards have to be very versatile. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, when I was initially designing my sideboard, I was trying to play like Durgar Hedgemage because it can destroy an artifact or an enchantment, <laughs> or both. Um, and eventually I realized, I was like, well, I want two artifact destruction things and two creature destruction things. And then uh, I thought about uh, Tommy Harasido, like back in Extended, used to... Uh, play uh, like a full set of Oblivion Rings in a 75 in his Zoo decks, and uh, it just it struck me that it was perfect, right? Like it answers everything. Uh, I was also thinking of drafting um, Maelstrom Pulse as the kind of like fourth destroy anything <laughs> spell. Um, yeah. Yeah, cool. Um, so are you disappointed that you didn't get Final Fortune, that you weren't able to fit it in? <laughs> Uh, well, so it's not a matter of fitting it in. Uh, the thing that was really interesting to me about this draft is uh, because Nate uh, drafts an elf-based deck and uh, Paul, you know, has like some aggressive creatures, uh, I feel like this draft, more than any of the vintage art histories that I've looked through in the past, has a lot of uh, creature interaction. Yeah. Um, so like a card that I meant, to, like I planned to draft and abandoned was like Tattermunge Maniac. Uh, right, it, it works really well with my John Hackblade. Yep. It works really well with the Burning Tree Emissary. Yep. Right, it's uh, efficient. Um, but like, there's all these lifelink creatures where it's like a huge liability. Uh, you know, there's a bunch of like, you know, two ones or you know, one threes uh, that it's just you know going like ram into. And uh, and so that kind of environment means that I'm going to have I think fewer creatures than I might against people who are just trying to combo and don't really have any creature on creature interaction so on an, an empty board like final fortune is amazing but you know against players who you know have like four or five elves in play or uh have you like you know been killing your creatures one to one uh the final fortune just isn't going to do the kind of damage that i need it to do okay so you, you would have liked it if the meadow was like four or five like combo -y decks like if there had been you know two big artifact decks and a storm deck and a couple reanimator decks yeah yeah exactly like i, I think that like Two artifact combo decks. Yeah, exactly what you say. Like the f the fewer creatures, the better, um, right? Likewise, like there's uh, people have a lot of life gain because Paul's also on a, a red deck. Yeah, so, yeah. So that also works out poorly. Okay. Uh, so overall, how do you feel about how you execute on your plan, and how do you feel like? Do you think your plan matches up well against what everybody else did? Um, so I feel like I executed my plan really well. Um, you know, I think that like. Uh, Chromox is a pretty good replacement for the uh, Arid Mesa that's missing in terms sure. of a versatile mana source. Um, I think that I'm a little afraid of uh, how deep some people's sideboards are against me. And uh, But, you know, the great thing about playing a fast deck is if you finish by turn four, right, they have to find the card in two or three turns. Sure. Or it's just not relevant. Sure, they don't. It's not like when you're playing, you know, a slow control deck that like they can have two sideboard cards because they will have time to find them. Yeah, like I figure any player has like around a twenty eight percent chance of finding one of their really great sideboard <laughs> cards in time to like sure. turn it into a game. Yeah, and then you know sometimes I just have a bunch of haste creatures. Excellent, excellent. Uh, so, do you have any final thoughts? Anything that you want to talk about with the draft? Um, I mean, I, I certainly. One thing I did not expect is just how much other players react to your game. Mm -hmm. um, like, I think a lot of my testing and thought uh, was kind of like, if I draft this deck and played it against any of the 32 decks that were built into Vintage Artistry before, uh, you know, this deck will perform very well against them. But of course, like, the seven people sitting in the room with you are, you know, all looking at you very closely and making choices just for yeah. you. Who do you think has adapted well against you here? Um, I feel like, uh, Cedric, um, I think that he has, uh, quite a few picks toward the end, which are, like, anti-red, anti-creature, mass removal, 
Um, right, and I think that's not just against me. That's also against Nate. Sure. And you know, probably okay against Paul. Like you um, picked up the pyroclasm and the maze of Ith and the disfigure and the dismember, and like he he's making sure that he has a way to stop your early creature rush and occasionally punish you. Yes, and then um, I know uh, Sean. I I don't know what plan he walked into the room with. Um, I mean, he clearly had a list of kind of obscure black cards, and I think has done <laughs> right with them. But, uh, like, the Toxic Deluge, Cedric, you know, kind of, like, tilted a little bit yeah. when Sean took it, because it's such a good card against both Nate and myself. So, I think those are the two decks that I see really having some cards that they might not have taken otherwise to deal with both the Elf deck and the Aggressive decks. How do you feel about your matchup against Greg Pelican? Uh, he's He drafted this sort of, like, blue-white mid rangey deck. It's got this wizard theme with... Uh, the uh, Riptide Lab and the Caracas for bouncing some stuff, but like it's kind of like Dirtly Guys and Spells. Um, yeah. Good stuff, white, blue. Yeah, so in testing, I played against a, a few control decks that I think are like the deck that Greg has. And in games where he gets... He has the Snapcaster Mage, right? Yeah, he has the Snapcaster, the Ancestral, yeah. and the Time Walk. So, yeah, in games where he finds like uh, his Snapcaster and like a removal spell like early... Uh, he can really like slow down my aggression, and I think uh, you know he's pretty favored to win in the games like that. And the fact that he has the Stoneforge Mystic package is also very good for him. Um, I think that uh, I'd probably be, I think I'd probably fighting uphill against him. Uh, like I think that maybe he's like maybe a sixty percent favorite. Okay. And, um, but like uh, if he doesn't draw the right cards in the right order, he can kind of fall apart. Okay. Uh... Well, thank you very much for coming to talk to us about your deck. Yeah, sure. Uh, we're excited to see you, you know, kill some people on turn four, maybe get a turn three kill in at some point. Cross uh, your fingers, eh? Yeah. <laughs> get some goblin guides out there. So thanks a lot, yeah. uh, and you know, hopefully see you in the finals. Sounds good. This really draft four is going to be joining us in the booth. And we're going to talk about blue white dirtles. Greg, Hello. welcome. How are you doing? Not too bad. Uh, so, <laughs> uh, oh, there we go. A beauty weight doesn't translate well, but anyway. Uh, so you had a rough start to your draft. I know that you came in with like three or four different plans, yep. and uh, you know you. Like the first two picks look pretty exciting because you got the ancestral recall and then you got the time walk, and I think like the time walk is probably a little bit better than you might have expected to get, fifteenth uh, pick. Um, but then it seemed like Cedric uh, kind of threw you for your loop and caused some problems. So why don't you talk to us a little bit about like those first like seven to ten picks for you and like how you felt about how you were able to adapt your plan? Okay, so so first of all, going into the draft, I want to make sure that. Recall, Time Walk, and Snapcaster Mage form the backbone of whatever deck I played, which is a pretty strong backbone, I think. Yeah, that, those are your first three picks. Right, so I so, so that's where I started from, and I was going to play blue, uh, I wanted to be blue-red, and I wanted to play, like, Lightning Bolts, uh, Burn Spells, Grim Lava Mancer, um, that, and I wanted Young Pyromancer, I wanted that, that was what I was going for going Okay. In. And then as soon as I saw two people taking aggressive cards, I'm like, well, oh, particularly Paul Tefmeeker, I'm like, well, that went out the window. Mm -hmm. So I just started taking blue cards, mono blue cards for a while that I was going to take regardless of what strategy I went for. Sure. It's so like Mana Drain, Vendillia, nothing too, you know, nothing, nothing too uh, out of the ordinary, I wouldn't think. And so I was going to look for a second color to pair it with for quite a while. And I, I moved in on green thinking I'd be okay, thinking I'd be okay. And all of a sudden Cedric just takes Tropical Island from me and I'm like, ugh. Awful. Yeah. Um, I'm, yeah, he takes Tropical Island, and then Nate Heist takes Breeding Pool. I'm like, well, we're, we got to move out. <laughs> we're, we're, we're done here. And so I just took the Flooded Strength as quickly as I could, and then, then transitioned into Blue-White, which is the white was fairly underdrafted. Yeah. So that was my second color. And I'm like, well, what am I going to do with it? I don't have the aggressive cards that I want for, like, the the like the Geist St. Trap kind of deck. Mm -hmm. So I moved into kind of a Dirtle plan because that was pretty much where I could go. That was, like, my plan D. Yeah. Well, like, Blue-Green was plan B. Aggressive blue white was plan C, and then this is plan D. Okay. Like I, I had to move around a lot in this draft. Like whereas the last draft, I got pretty much what I wanted when I wanted it. 
And this time around, I had to maneuver around a lot more and fight a lot more. So we're exercising a couple different magical muscles this time than last time, we're seeing how well you adapt. Yeah, I think it's important to have a plan, but also an escape plan, especially if you're in blue. Yeah, you you gotta be prepared to fight for that stuff. So like, I'm not I'm not su that surprised that that happened. But Cedric was kind of on the same like, wavelength I was going into this draft. In the sense that we both wanted to play aggressive blue base decks. Yeah. And as such, a lot of the cards I wanted ended up in Cedric's pile. Yeah, I think Cedric was initially thinking that he was going to have sort of like a buggy, miracle grow type deck, and that he was uh, maybe maybe he was going to leverage fast bomb, but you know, like he was going to get some additional aggression from some of the green creatures like Tarmogoyf and uh, and Quirion Dryad. Um, and then, like, he also had to abandon that when he saw that there were a bunch of people that were going blue-green here. Yeah, there's a lot more fighting in this draft than there was in the last draft. There's a lot, like, I, I joked uh, during the draft, I said there's there's four real drafters and four troll drafters. you got to find which ones are just trolls. So, it, sh it sure feels like there's a lot of people that were, were butting heads in this draft. Yeah. Did you establish who the four trolls were? Well, obviously not me. <laughs> so, so it's got to be, like, I'm going to go with Cedric, Carl... Paul, and well, I mean, Nate's decks, like, just, I don't know if he's trolling anybody in particular, but I, f I found at least three of them. Yeah. So, yeah, this this draft definitely felt very different from a lot of the other vintage rotisseries in that very early on, we had a lot of people competing for things, and it felt like a lot of people were competing head on. You know, so Alex and Paul were both drafting these very aggressive red decks, and you know, they, they both cared a lot about red one drops and about red fetch lands, and so there was some conflict there. And then Corbett and Carl both started fighting over the sort of like the artifact stuff, you know. Right. Uh, Corbett got all the artifact acceleration, and Carl got all the two card combos and artifact. And you and Cedric were fighting over like the blue, like good stuff and tempo y cards and aggressive right. blue stuff. Um, and so that, that, it, being in the room, it definitely felt like it had a different flavor from previous drafts. Um, do you think? Do you think that that has dramatically impacted how the draft turned out? Yeah. What, what's interesting is what's interesting is look at the number of fair decks in this draft. There's it's, a lot of fair decks. Yeah. Almost all of them are fair decks. Like I'd say, Corbett's probably not. Carl's probably not. Nate's not. So like, there's three that are unfair and four fair and like five fair decks. Yeah. And usually you expect it to be like maybe two or three fair decks. Right. Yeah. Um, I So we, when we were talking to Alex, you know, that was that was something that came out for him, you know, that he he saw people adapting to these things. And he was, like, some of the picks that he had been thinking about were really geared towards a meta that had five or six unfair decks and that there weren't going to be people blocking. Um, so he had to make some adjustments on the fly for that. Uh, it sounds like you made some of those adjustments as well. I did too, yeah. Um, there knows there's a lot of cards that are just down that we, you know, rotate. Like, like I said earlier, if, if you, if I woke up this morning and you told me I was going to draft like Wall of Omens and like Aegis of the Gods and think, and Augur of Bolas, I, I'd be like, what? <laughs> but, I don't want to go do that. Yeah, but in this draft, I f like, I could be completely wrong, but I feel like I'm reasonably well positioned for, for given all the fair, other fair decks. Mm -hmm. um, and I want to have, the idea is I, because I took the Ancestral Recall and I'm in the Ancestral Seat, I don't have the fast mana. Yeah. And so I want to make up for that by, well, Time Walk helps bridge that somewhat too. Sure. But what lots of one-mana spells to interact with them anyway. Yeah. And I, like lots and lots and lots of blue one-mana spells. And guess what? They also flash back with Snapcaster. Yeah. Uh, I also feel like both Recall and Vision and even like Wall Moments give me, put me, make me naturally advantage against like the Black Discard deck too. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Because you can you can top deck those and get back in the game, right? Um, Aegis of the Gods is also good against the black deck. Sure, it's good against the burn deck. It's okay against Alex. Like it, it's good. Against, it's just annoying against a lot of decks in this draft. So, are you planning on main decking that? No, no. Okay. It's gonna be in the board because okay. it's because it, otherwise I'm literally playing uh, what's the word goblin a like goblin piker against half the draft. Sure, and I mean. Maybe Goblin Piker will do some work in some of these matches, but I don't think it's good. I don't think it's where I want to be in the main deck. Okay, uh, so let's let's talk about some sort of like miss picks, uh, especially some things that the chat was like freaking out a little bit about. Sure. Uh, you got Mana Drain in the sixth round. Yep. Uh, that's pretty late. What like why why do you think that happened? Were you thinking about it earlier on, and you just felt that the Vendillion Click and the Ancestral Visions were just much more important and, and um, or 
you know, did you, th did you think that the mana drain was better, but you could just float it? What was going through your head with that? Um, it was good, but it's not, like, m most of my plans, my plans A and B didn't involve mana drain. Okay. Because I was, I was too fast. Like, I was playing decks that were, like, I wanted, like, the Delver deck. I wanted, like, Vapor Snag, Ancestral Time Walk, etc. And really, it's just Counterspell mana deck. Sure, you, you just have no use for the colorless mana. Right, and then I kind of figured out that I was going to have to, um, since I had Vendillion Click, um, one thing I, I love to do is to, is to like, if I have a creature out, like, mana, I got, I, I did get it, but mana drain something fairly expensive, slam sword on a creature in play, then just untap and say go. Yeah. Like, that's so huge. I think I'll do that. Um, I got Batter Skull to do that, and I have, um, you know, I, have, like, res I don't want to play my main phase, but I have Resto if I need it. Sure, sure. Yeah, so it, it it wasn't it wasn't as powerful in your deck as and that's why you weren't drafting it as heavily. Do you right. think that Corbett and Carl were making a mistake because they were the the decks that could use a lot of colorless mana and not trying to draft that highly like in the fourth round maybe? Well, yeah, particular Corbett. I wasn't really sure what what Carl was doing at that point. Yeah, and so Carl Carl was definitely kind of all over the draft and it's it's I, I'm sure it was very hard for you to try to figure out what was going on and how you want to adapt your plan to him, if if at all. Yeah. Um, let me get, let me continue on with another sort of card that uh, people were yeah. curious about how late it went. What was going on with Jace the Mind Sculptor? Um, Thirty two. Yeah. So I'm probably wrong on this one. I'm willing to concede that I was wrong. I knew it was there. Uh huh. And again, my plan was to play a, like a flash style deck, and. I already had a bunch of four drops and five drops. Sure. And so I just didn't want to... I want to keep my curve low. I want to keep my mana low. And I don't necessarily want to be tapping out for that when everything in my deck involves like flash and, and instance and that kind of thing. Um, I don't feel like I'm the best position for it. And again, I could be wrong. Okay. Like, my well, Berklitz after the draft is like, you know, it's a hell of a card to tap out for. And I'm like, well, you're not wrong. It's definitely a good card. And so... I, I think I, I can see I might be wrong. In library, I just screw up on it. I completely forgot about library. Okay. Uh, so library, you would have picked like if you had been aware of library, oh, where do you think you would have been getting it? Sorry. Uh, <laughs> yeah, is that Paul Wait? Might be Paul Wait. Maybe it's Chris Cohen. It's oh. cute, but anyways. Oh my! <laughs> no comment. Uh, so library of Alexandria. If you if you had, I guess it was Chris Cohen's cute, but um, oh my! If you had been aware of library of Alexandria, where would you have been picking it? Do you think eighth or ninth? Eighth or ninth? Okay. Um, so that that seems actually like heck with that like six or seven probably six or, or mana drain yeah okay um, and so that that probably means that Cedric ends up getting the ponder that you wanted and then the rest of the draft goes about the same more or less yeah, yeah. Um, then so with Jace let's let's say that Cedric doesn't pick that and no way picks it and it's mm. the forty fifth pick were were you at a stage in the draft that you were like. I just don't think this belongs in my deck, or would you have taken it at that point? Probably. Just take it. Okay. Yeah. I just didn't I just didn't think I just didn't think I was You just weren't prioritizing I think it I was kind of, heavily. Yeah, I think I was I didn't think I was the kind of deck that was gonna want it. Okay. Um you know what you know what's you know what interesting one that, that went late that uh, I like this I like a lot in Powered Cubes. It was never it was not drafted in this draft, Shell Dock Isle. That's true. Love uh, me a Shell Dock Isle. Pretty powerful card. Um I'm not sure. I, I guess there are some decks that could have used it. I don't know whether Carl is going to be playing blue, but like it seems like a card that Corbett would have been pretty happy to run um, that maybe you could have made use of, but you know it's not super great and like it actually is like it does have a drawback for you. Um, I'm not sure yeah. if Nate could have used it, but like it seems like a card that Corbett could have used. Yeah, uh, it's really powerful in like in like in cube in your powered un and unpowered. It's really good in cube drafts. Yeah, really powerful. Um, I, I guess it's highly dependent on like how how powerful the cards you have are. Yeah, you know, like if if it is just casting a vapor snag or a two two or something like that, then yeah, you know, sure, like that's that's great to get that for free, but it's not like as backbreaking as if like you hide an upheaval underneath it. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, all right. Well, I think it's about time to get started on the draft. Okay. Anything? I still, uh, I still have to finish building my deck, so. All right. Well, good luck with that. Uh, you know, congratulations on the draft. Congratulations on winning the next one. Uh, what do you what do you put your prediction on how you're going to finish today? Four, three, three, four. Middle of the middle of the pack. Okay. So no danger of getting the Teddy. 
I don't think so. I think I got enough inherently powerful cards where I can I can squeak out a couple matches. Okay. How lucky do you think you have to be to make it into the finals? I think like how, not, how well would you have to run? I think you, regardless, you have to run well. I mean, the last time all my matches went to three games except one, and and the, it just I was on the right side of variance the last time. And I actually think a lot of these decks in, the, in this format are close in power level. And assuming you don't screw it up too badly, you know there there is, you know it's. A lot can happen. Okay. That's why I said that's why I give myself middle of the road. So you think that you could win versus anybody and lose versus anybody? I think so. Yeah. Okay. Well, good luck. Thank you. Thanks for coming on. Uh and we'll see you on camera. Uh so we're going to take a brief break. Uh and we're just gonna get everything set up. Uh we'll be back in a few moments. Uh and you know, please hold on. All right, I think we are back. Hey, uh, welcome back, everybody. Yeah, so uh, we're just getting uh, Sed and Nate in here uh, to uh, start us off with the matches. Uh, so, Paul, who's your who's your favorite here in this match? Uh, well, no, I meant overall. Sorry. Overall, I mean, I it's hard to say. Like, there's a lot of decks that are like pretty close. Uh, I think Nate's deck, depending on if it, I know that he missed a lot of the fixing he was looking for. Yeah. And his deck was, he said it was the deck was going to be a lot better with Time Walk, uh, which he did not get. Uh, I I think Cedric on a skill level is obviously has to be one of the you know one of the ones we're talking about here. Uh, he's got a lot of really powerful cards. He's got a, you know he is playing blue spells, which he's not the most familiar with. Uh, he does it all the time in cube. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But uh, I think you know Paul Tef Meeker, the model red deck, always live. Okay. And uh, Alex West, I, I think uh, I'm interested to see how Carl built his deck. Sure. Uh, People, who, who are the people you think cannot win? <sighs> I don't think Sean Collins can win. I I agree. I think that he started he, off so good and I, then just didn't pick up any offense. I think he can qualify for the next draft. I think he can top three, but I don't like think four three on tiebreakers. Yeah, or like I I don't think that the the mono black deck can necessarily, you know, seven zero. Uh, sure, yeah, it doesn't have the power level to beat everybody, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but you know. If he gets lucky, if it's kind of deck that if he gets lucky, you know, he, he rips cards out of people's hands and he kind of gets to that point where he's like, uh, don't top deck, don't top deck, don't top deck, I'm going to beat you down with two twos. And he keeps being on the right side of that 55%. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and if he gets there, then, then he's going to win those matches. But, you know, that's kind of a stomach-turning place to be in for seven rounds, you know? For sure. Um, who, who do you like? I don't know. Uh, I, I, so, based on a combination of deck plus skill, mm -hmm. as I said, um, but... Uh, he he told me he is absolutely terrified of Alex's deck. Alex, uh, man, Alex was prepared. He's yeah. like clearly thought about this a lot. He's he, an incredibly he good. Absolutely player. crushed the preparation. He ended up in the right. Uh, he his preparation landed him in a spot that worked out well. Yeah, he uh, he also made the right picks at the right times. Mm -hmm. Very reactive. I mean, like just, if you look at something like I mean, I, I know we talked about this uh, when we were when we were interviewing him, but like the fact that Greg took uh, swords to plowshares. Yeah, and then. Alex was able to take that path to exile. That kind of shows, like, if Greg had taken that uh, path to exile there, then, like, does Alex West take shorts to Yes, shares? he for sure would. He, he does, but it's a lot worse all of a sudden. I, deck, right? I think it's better than path. No, I, I disagree. I think yeah. Alex Alex actually disagreed as well. Uh, he, um, 
he wants to kill people on turn four sure. by dealing 20 damage. And, you know, if gaining two or three might give them enough time to, you know, go off with their combo or whatever. Maybe. So um, we've got some questions. People are asking how we qualify for these. So I guess uh, while we're waiting for the matches to start, let's yeah. kind of talk about the format. Sure. We'll talk about, you know, what's going on here. And so um, first off, what we're doing here is a Vintage Rotisserie Draft. Um, basically how that works is uh, it's eight players in a draft. Uh, and the first player in seat one essentially gets handed a booster with every card that's legal and vintage to draft with, right? Yeah. So it's just a giant booster pack. Um, they don't actually get that. It's, you know, we all have to know what cards there are. Yeah. We um, do it on Google Docs. We do it on Google Docs. We have a spreadsheet. You can find the link to it beneath. Um, and essentially, they take a card, pass it, pass it. Next person takes a card, and so far. Um, and then uh, after, after they have 45 picks, they... Uh, draft. They make their decks, and then we're going to battle out the matches round robin style. And it goes, it goes snake style. So like, yeah, it yeah. doesn't go around the table. You don't get the first and the ninth pick. Yeah, right. It goes one through eight, and then eight starts round two, and it goes eight through one, then one through eight, then eight through one. Yeah, we have so most of the cards forth, on forth. hand, so we can just build the decks. We were actually building the decks as we're drafting. Yep. Um, and so. What are we What are we playing for today? Uh, we are playing for uh, sweet bottles of booze. Is the buy in? Yeah. Uh, every Every player uh, brings with them one bottle of self deemed sweet booze. Yeah. Uh, and uh, we actually did get a single malt in there. We did get a single yeah. malt. Yeah. Uh, oh. Alex West brought a Glenlivet twelve. Oh, so. I missed that. Um, right. And uh, we also have the first place trophy, which I don't yeah, know the first place trophy. Real quick, it was. Uh, uh, the, the Lotus part of the trophy was designed by a local artist, uh, Amanda Sharp. So here we have uh, the trophy. The base of the trophy is, uh, is it, there's five colors, the white, the blue, black, red, green. You can't really see them all too well on the camera. but uh, And then the pillars uh, of the trophy are mini bottles of alcohol. We have a, a bottle of Everclear, some Belvedere, uh, Milagro tequila, and a bottle of Jameson there. And uh, the ornament here uh, is a little Lotus thing. It lights up. Uh, it's, it looks really cool in the dark, uh, and uh, yeah, Lee Sharp's wife Amanda made this for us, and uh, yeah, we thank you very much for that. Uh, so we also have the last place trophy, uh, which yeah. uh, if you get last place, is kind of how it works. Yeah, you get a you get a trophy named after you. And then the person in the next draft that loses has to take that trophy home, display it prominently in their home for a month until we do our next draft. Uh, so here today we've got the Vault Scourge, Teddy Vitro last time. So but... actually because this the the last place trophy is a new creation every time, yeah. I think that you should just have to display it prominently, permanently. That might, that might yeah. for life. Don't lose. Yeah. You know? But anyway, so if you think what we're doing here is cool, you're enjoying it, you're having a good time watching it, uh, you can join the Facebook group below, uh, if, right below the stream down here, and uh, follow along. We announce when I do our drafts. We're doing it about once a month. Uh, you can also... We have a Twitter, too. Does anybody use that? The, the Twitter is made... I still actually don't know how to use Twitter. All right. So I've spent a couple days staring at a Twitter login screen, trying to figure out how tweets work. It's a little embarrassing, but... Uh, My grandma calls them twixts. Uh, I'm, I'm not far behind her. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, so uh, we right now, currently, we have the Facebook group. We're also working on making a website. Should be up yeah. for the next draft. That's Should be, be sweet. pretty sweet. But um, some people are asking, how do you qualify for these things? Yeah. So uh, this thing started out as just like friends being friends, and we were going to battle, and so we got eight people together. And uh, so we have the top three of each of these is earns a spot into the next one uh, that they're able to attend, right? So actually, like right now, we have a queue of like what, seven people who have invites but yeah. haven't been able to attend. Um, and then uh, we have, uh, so that leaves five spots. We have two cube draft qualifiers. Uh, yeah. So the way that that works is um, it's like a satellite event. Uh, we host a uh, cube draft. Uh, Paul runs one usually at his house. I run one at mine. And then uh, it's an eight-man draft. You draft it's single elimination. If you three the cube draft, you get a spot in the vintage rotisserie. Yeah, it's kind of um, a cool way. People were trying to get involved, and you know, we can only do eight people. At right, time. and I mean, so many people are like intrigued by yeah, this. Yeah, so, so if you happen to live in the Seattle area, uh, join the group and uh, go ahead and let us know that you want to get involved. We'll put you on the list. We'll get yep. you involved. Uh, if you don't live in the Seattle area, you want to get involved, and for some reason want to travel for this thing, well, I'm open to it. Totally open to it. But it, you know, we we don't. Yeah, uh, we actually have somebody from Portland. Yeah, Sean too, Collins so. drove up from Portland for this. For, yeah, uh, so, Salem, I guess. Um, so, actually, we're also, the other thing we're doing here, right before this match gets started, is we are um, giving away store credit on stream. Uh, so, Northwest Sports Card is uh, helping us out today. We're giving out some store credit. And um, so, essentially, the next the next giveaway we're going to do here, I'm changing it up a little bit from what we've done in the past. Okay. Okay, so this is exclusively to new members. People that haven't seen us before. All right. So if uh, if you go ahead, the next one's going to be for twenty five dollars. 
sign up bonus. And it's online credit. So if you don't live in the area, you can uh, you can you know do an online order. They'll ship it out to you. Whatever. So join the, if you join the Facebook group before the next time uh, we end the, before we do the raffle, we'll probably do it in a, in a, after this match or the next match. If you join the Facebook group and you're a new member, uh, we'll select one of those people, and you'll get twenty five dollars from sports cards. Nice. So uh, join the Facebook group if you haven't already. There you go. And uh, we'll have a couple more giveaways as the day goes on for people that have been around for a long time. We appreciate you guys. You know, we can't do this without you. Um, and also, a little more shameless plugging. If you're, if you're enjoying this, if you think this is awesome, tell your friends. Share the link. You know, yeah. the bigger we do this, the more we can give away. You know, the bigger, maybe the bigger names we can get. Uh, yeah. And, you know, just things got just going to grow. Got a couple queued grow. up for future drafts. Yeah, we've got, yeah, we've got a pretty big name for the next one. We've got Cedric this time. You know, a couple other people here are really good. Um, but, yeah, the bigger we do it better it is exactly so go big go home so i mean we're getting ready right here it looks like the drafters have their decks put together i think cedric has two different sets of sleeves yeah uh oops yeah it's fine oh well anyway what you gonna do so uh who do you like in this matchup uh i like said i'm not surprised yeah um so we've got nate heiss is drafting his or is playing his like kind of blue green crazy uh, I so I actually want Nate to win because just I want to see that deck be awesome. Yeah, but I think I think Seth's deck is uh, mana efficient enough uh, to deal with this stuff, and he has uh, he has demonic and pyroclasm. Yeah. So, but you know, Nate's deck might go off before he can do all that. Very true. Uh, but Seth also has um, like a lot of cheap counter spells and force. Yeah. So, uh, and he can demonic for force too. Um, yeah. So it's it, that those are cards that are going to be hard for Nate to beat because Nate doesn't have a lot of disruptive elements for himself, right? Mm -hmm. Like the best thing he can do is just like put a draw seven on the table with eight mana floating and hope it resolves. Um, yeah. Granted, that's very good. He also has Black Lotus that he can just kill. On, he could theoretically kill on turn one, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, nah, wait, no, wait, no, he has no. Concordant Crossroads. Okay. So I don't know if he could kill. I don't on think he has one. ways to untap all of his elves, but yeah, uh, I'd have to look at his deck. I mean, I guess we have his deck list here. He, he, he could like go land crossroads lotus time twister redraw the lotus and then start going off. Yeah, that's how he would have to do it. It's a stretch. I doubt it'll happen, but it's yeah, possible. sure. Yeah, um, I mean that's still a pretty solid opening, right? Get land concordant crossroads and make your opponent mulligan. Yeah, it's not bad. Um, but yes. I, I think Sed's uh, Sed's deck is very mana efficient, and he has a specific plan of what he wants to do. Yeah, absolutely. I, I think uh, he drafted pretty well. I so mean, he, he got he got demonic in the sixteenth, like <laughs> so library gross. in thirty one and Jason thirty two. It's like yeah, he on. he made he picked up some value picks. Everyone had forgotten about him, yeah. and uh, he really took advantage of that. I think yeah. So, and actually, he had known about mind twist also, and just like didn't really care because he doesn't have fast mana except for mocks. So so uh, we've gone gone went ahead and gave him the green light, so they are ready to go. All right. Um. So we're gonna get uh, started here. Um. Cedric checking the Twitter real quick. Yeah, it's, it looks like he's blowing up. He's yeah. a popular guy. He is. You know. Yeah. He has to be in touch with the outside world. Boo. What? I don't know, man. But he does. It's true. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, what uh, what kind of things do you think Nate needs to beat Zed? Do you think he can beat him in a long drawn out game? Do you think he needs? To no, have I think draw? I think Nate needs to go off early. But I think his deck is primed to do that often. Okay. Um. I still kind of like need to see how Nate's deck actually plays out against an opponent. I've yeah. seen him, I've seen him like goldfish it, but yeah. see like if my opponent, if his opponent counters one of his spells, like does his deck just fall apart? Sure. I don't know. Like maybe, probably. Yeah. It's sweet. His deck's super sweet. And he doesn't have a lot of ways to interact with his opponent's deck. He's gonna do his own thing. Hope you can't stop me, and hope you don't kill me before I kill you. That's kind of we're going. So. Right on. Uh. So. Yeah, we're just about right here. We're just waiting on these guys. Uh, and they, I don't think they've decided who's going first yet. So uh, Who do you I guess think someone in the die roll. <laughs> Nate Heiss is a strong die roller. I think so. Yeah, yeah, I know he was up all night practicing those rut die rolls. So said does love to love craps though. Well, He's true. all about that clackety clack. It's true. So, we'll so see I guess uh, just to remind everyone, this is a round uh, round robin. So everyone's going to play seven matches at the end. Yeah, everybody plays everybody. Yeah. So at the end, everyone's going to have seven matches filled. And what we do is we take the top two 
uh, finishers after the round robin, and then they play in a best of five finals match. All the round robin matches are best two out of three, um, and then any tiebreaker games uh, that need to be done. Uh, if we have time available, will be one game tiebreaker matches. If we are on a super time crunch, then we're just going to tell these guys to suck it up and high roll for it. So um, this is uh, we are playing for booze after all. We are not playing for any yeah. DCI points. Yeah, we're actually going to uh, do it. We're going to do a, a booze draft at the end. Yeah, it's gonna which, be fun. which as I mentioned before, the Glen Livet's got to go one. Like, it's got to, but that that is definitely my favorite part of the draft. Yeah, is with the, the alcohol draft. It's always the most ridiculous thing on Twitch for the couple minutes that mm -hmm. it happens. Yeah. Uh, yeah, someone says said he's editing a couple SCG articles real quick before the match. Yeah, probably. Luckily, nothing goes live tomorrow, so just cursory first read through. Yeah, you know? yeah. he's a busy guy. I'm, I'm happy a... that he was able to take some time out and come join us today, because we've been yeah, trying absolutely. to get him in here for one of these for a while now. Yeah. We, he certainly couldn't be bothered to prep for it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, I was talking to him, and he was like, yeah, I don't know, I'm going to draft some blue cards and crush everyone. Yeah. And uh, step one, done. Now well, he just needs to crush everyone. St step one, float library and Jace to the 31st and 32nd. He's a, power, he's a powerful magician. He just, he knew. Yeah. He had a read. Is this my water or your water? I don't know. It's not open yet. No, oh, now it's my water. All right. We can share. No, we cannot. No, we can't. No, that'd be weird. Uh, so I guess I can talk about this. We I haven't quite confirmed it yet, but the next draft should be on the 14th of next month. June 14th. June 14th. 614. Uh, we do have like a pretty big name for that one. Uh, I can't, it's not all confirmed yet, so I can't quite talk about it. It's, we're very likely going to do it on the 14th, and we will very likely have a big name there. Maybe a couple. Um, really just clarifying a lot of stuff right now. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you know, give something <laughs> for people to look forward to. Yeah. I, I was hoping to have be able to confirm it on stream today. This but is a Paul Wade carrot waiting. that's dangling yeah, in yeah, front of the stream. Out. But if you join the group, Ooh. you'll know for sure. There we go. Yeah. Join the Facebook group. Also, everybody. I guess follow a lot of sweet news comes the out there. Stream Twitch is that that's how Twitch works, right? You got to follow it. I think so. It, yeah. And then when we do stuff, it you don't know you. how Twitter works. I don't know how Twitch works. <sighs> I actually work at a. It's a good thing we do I, this. I work at a mobile game company, and I don't know how any of this stuff. Yes. Works. Yeah. But uh, you know. So we're probably uh, the best qualified people. Yeah, I think so. You've, you've got great hair, though. I it, do it have really out. good hair. Yeah. 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 All right. So we're finally getting this match underway. Here so it is. We can finally stop <laughs> bullshitting here. All right. I would rather just... Can we cancel the match and just bullshit some more? All right. I'm in. Yeah. So All right, guys. Good. We're going right. to do it. Let's open All up right, that we'll, Glenn we'll, Livet. We'll, <laughs> let's get it in here. We deserve it. That's actually... I think. That's actually not We can get thing. another one. Yeah. yeah. Pay him back. It's fine. All right. So uh, I didn't see who's going first here, but we are... Uh, Seth's looking at his hand first. It's probably him. All right. No, nope, here comes. Uh, we should library in the hand. Yeah, that's a spicy meatball. And I think that's a disfigure also. So uh, he's probably in pretty good shape. Uh, underground river, underground sea rather. Uh, Nate has. Oh, I forgot. Nate has fast bond strip crucible. Yeah. So he's got a lotus petal crucible time twister. Uh, fast fast bond. bond. Ooh, he has an explosive hand. Nah, he only hand? has two lands though. Okay. So, yeah, it said started on library turn one and uh he's holding a spell snare which is going to be probably pretty good this game i imagine eh, i'll counter the priest and that's pretty important yeah all right library in is that a steam vents that he drew i couldn't see no uh that's a delver, delver of secrets okay this could be a quick uh yeah that's a good hand so but if he if he plays Delver here, that's going to allow Nate to resolve his priest, which he is all right. So it looks like that's he's not true. Doing yeah, that. he's going to wait a turn, I think. Baleful Strix from set. Oh, he has the disfigure too, right? Yeah, is that temporal spring. temporal spring? Okay. Yeah. Uh, so we have Nate on the priest plan. Set looking to just get that library going. Uh, Create a, a lot of deck velocity and yeah. have the, you know Nate is just and unfortunately Nate hasn't been able to like really capitalize on Cedric basically setting himself back a turn to be up a bunch of cards yeah um this is not what Nate's deck is supposed to do disfigure well, to take down priest I mean he he can also just run a bunch of cards out there and like and then just cast time twister yeah, yeah you yeah. know um it's a regrowth in his hand so. Crucible, regrowth, uh, temporal yeah. spring, and his next twister. turn. His next turn is likely uh, just casting a time twister. But now said has a board, so it's kind of scary. Yeah. 
Uh, says got Chase the Mind Sculptor, Counterspell, Polluted Delta. Cedric's deck is really good. It got it got he got so much value in the middle rounds of the draft when everybody else was like fighting over like pretty inconsequential cards. He was getting to draft things like demonic. <laughs> tutor, yeah, Jace the Mind Sculptor. Yeah, like, we were, we were sitting. People in here. have taken Jace in the first or second round before. Like I don't yeah. think that's correct, but they've done it, and he got it in the thirty second round. So he's just he's on a different level. Yeah, he was. We were joking around about you know who's going to take these cards, and we didn't think it was going to be Cedric. And he was like, "Well, no one else is going to take them." Right. Like totally. And I and you know a lot of people went in there like, "Oh man, I can't believe he he was able to uh, get those cards." And I'm like, Cedric floated those cards. Yeah. Like he knew they were there. He knew everyone had forgotten about mm -hmm. them. And then eventually, after the break, I think he knew people were thinking more. And yeah, he right. He was off. a little worried that they might figure out what they had missed. Yeah. yeah. Always after we always you know we have a break at fifteen thirty and forty and then at the end and always. At those breaks where you start seeing people pick up those cards everyone forgot about because they've had yeah. time to sit back and think. So uh, Nate resolves his time twister here. Uh, well, off, off the Lotus Petal, right? Uh, that's correct. He sacked yeah. his Lotus Petal uh, and resolved his time twister. Uh, said had uh, just Spell Snare for a counter spell. So, um, but uh, now we'll get to see how good this Fast Bond is. Here we go. This is exciting stuff. Roll them bones. Uh, said redraws his spell snare. He has a disrupting shoulder and days. Wow. Uh, we've got concordant crossroads, wheel of fortune. Just a land from Nate. One land. That's unfortunate. Umbral mantle. Oh, he can land grant. Yeah. And he redrew the priest of Titania. Okay. So land grant reveals wheel of fortune, umbral mantle. Priest of Titania, Quirion Ranger, and uh, Concordant Crossroads, is that correct? Yeah. So it's getting a good look at him here. So Concordant Crossroads will give all of his creatures haste, uh, namely the Priest, and then uh, Quirion Ranger will let him untap the Priest. Yeah. Uh, so if Sed didn't have a couple of counterspells in his hand like he does, uh, Nate could theoretically, he can land grant for Taiga here, get that into play, and he mm -hmm. can go Priest, Quirion Ranger, uh, and then return the taiga to play that, and then get off the wheel of fortune. This what turn, counter spells so. is said holding? He hold he's holding days and spell snare. Okay, which are pretty good at this yeah, point. Good, yeah, good, good, good in this position. Um, he's probably going to spell snare the uh, the priest on the way down. I think is what's going to happen. Uh, or no, uh, Nate can't get the priest and the concordant crossroads into play. Yep. Okay, so he's. He is gonna have so to he might just, he might just, yeah he's gonna wait a turn. We shall see. So oh he might be spell snaring the land grant. That's what he was considering. Mm. I think. That's that's an interesting play. Uh, let's see. Ah, I said with the uh, the solid shoulder cam here. Yeah. <laughs> it's a really good hand he has. Of course. He doesn't want us to know. Yeah, it's fine. We don't need to know. Um, that Delver getting into play is actually a pretty big deal. Yeah. Um, oddly enough, uh, Nate's hand's still quite good, but uh, Seth's going to get to draw a new one with Library. He has Jason. Oh, he has Disrupting Shoal, too. Jeez. Can we pull up Quirion Dryad? Uh, Quirion Ranger. R R Ranger? Sorry. Yeah. Quirion Ranger is a one mana one one. Uh, you can return a forest you control to untap a creature, uh, and you get to only use the ability once per turn. So um, he gets to return lands to untap his mana creatures, tap them for more mana. Then he can replay the lands with fast bond and get up to a lot of mana really quickly. Um, but uh, we're gonna see uh, we're gonna see a couple of elves likely hit the, hit the table here. Oh, just the crossroads. Sure. I think it's going nice. to be crossroads pass. That's a good play, I think. Plays around days, plays around spell spare. Mm -hmm. Or spell snare, sorry. Oh, this is not going to end well. Mm, Riff. Dazu. Yeah, it's an interesting format because, like, Nate knows that Cedric is playing days, right? And Cedric, Nate knows every card Cedric drafted. Yep. It's almost like a Rochester in that fashion. Yeah. Um,. Uh, yeah, every every player in the draft knows 
uh, what? Set our kids brainstorm, flipping his. That's good. Delver of Secrets. And he has fetch land for it, too. <coughs> Draw that. Cedric pretty far in control of this game, I think. Yeah, um, it, unless he gets sloppy, which I don't see Cedric doing. Yeah, he wants to win really bad. Yeah, yeah, he really does. Like, w he really, really wants to win. Uh, and I was talking to him last night and this morning, and like, he just he, he didn't do a lot of prep, but he he said my preparation is I know how to play Magic, and. <laughs> yeah. uh, that's you know that's all he felt like he needed and uh, man oh, yeah, like he ended up finding the right seat in the draft and finding the right cards that nobody else was thinking about yeah and you know that he ended up with a really really good blue black deck and uh, yeah he has some powerful stuff going on it looks like we have our first uh, game finished uh, or not just first game Alex wins game one with a turn one Mox Esmeralda plus Goblin Guide. Turn two, Bushwhacker. Turn three, Flush Reaver. Turn four, you're dead. Uh, he was matched up against Corbett. So. Yep, turn four, present 20. Yep, so yep. Uh, Alex is currently up 1-0 against Corbett Gray. Corbett can't beat him. No way. Yeah. He doesn't have anything to beat him. Corbett, you know, we we, we should start thinking about a name for the trophy if Corbett wins. Uh, Dwayne, Dwayne suggested the head. Ooh, the head. Yeah. They they have to rhyme with they have to they have the Ed at the end of the thing because we started with the Jed here we have the Ted yeah. and uh, we were hoping hoping that Cedric would get last so that we could call it the Ced and also you know just make a lot of fun because <laughs> that's yeah. really what life is about is, yeah is poking fun at your friends but um, the head is is a good one the head is a good yeah. one we also like you said we also have two two candidates yep. for the red we have two candidates for the red and. Uh, that that's all I can think of, but uh, I think we're in pretty good shape with uh, with either Tefmeeker or Corbin. It here. looks like uh, Carl takes game one from Paul Tefmeeker off uh, Time Vault combo. Nice. Yeah, I mean Carl's like combos are. Uh, we may have underrated them a Carl's little bit. Carl's like might be really good. He because he has Vamp and Enlightened Tutor, and like yeah. we didn't even really you know just like oh he like I said, I, it's really going to come down to how he built his deck. Mm -hmm. He had a lot of ways to go. I'm interested to see how it turns out. Yeah, I it, he I think he's like black green splash just enlightened tutor. So it looks and like uh, we missed Priest of Titania. I believe it got uh, spell spell snared. snared. Yeah, uh, said brainstormed, then fetched, then uh, spell snared. So we have. Uh, you think Nate's going to just try to fire off that wheel of fortune? Has next turn? to. It's his only chance, I think. And uh, yeah, I think he. I don't. I can't tell if it's a disrupting shoal in his hand. It looks like Sed definitely has disrupting shoal. Uh, he has Doomblade, Jace, Gush, uh, and Demir Charm. I think, but he needs a three drop right for disrupting shoal to be good. Oh, to counter the um, the wheel of fortune. Yes, yes, that is true. Yeah, um, yeah, wheel oh, or the Demir Charm. Yeah, counters the sorcery. Right. Well, uh, I mean, I guess Nate has the Eternal Witness, but. It's just not enough. This time. is looking. This like, is looking like this. Uh, Set is hit you for three, draw two cards a turn. Hit you for three, draw two cards. I think a this turn. is magic we're all familiar with. Delver of Secrets getting the job done by itself. Yep. Um, I really wish these super awesome decks were like better in in these formats. You know, yeah, like, this, yeah, like yeah, Jesse's yeah. combo deck, the high tide combo deck from last time. They're yeah. so much fun to talk about and like think about what this deck could do and like. But you know when you. Get a guy who has library and Jace and demonic tutor. In his deck. <laughs> yeah, like, Cedric, uh, Cedric has a lot of cards. He just has no business having. That's he, true. <laughs> yeah, just absolutely no. Shouldn't business. have library. Shouldn't have Jace. Sh probably shouldn't have counterspell. Um, yeah, shouldn't have demonic tutor. Right. Like, uh, yeah. I I think I think Greg may have windfall. Here I we think, go. Nate is just trying to draw out of this. Here we go. I think Greg. Pelequin. I think Sed doesn't have a three drop, and this is going to resolve. Ooh. Is, uh, is looks that like an engineered explosive over there? It yeah. is. It's going to resolve. It looks like in the main. I guess it's pretty good in the main. Yeah, in it's this good. field. Yeah, yeah, it's really good. Because he also has f he can make four colors of mana because he has trop. So. Uh, Greg Pelequin takes game one versus Sean. And, uh, yeah, so it looks like this windfall is going to resolve. Everybody's going to draw six cards here. Um, and uh, maybe Nate can do something. Um, he's running out of time. Cedric's trying to figure out, I think. Oh, he could gush. Yeah. Uh, 
That doesn't work. Convert a mana cost X, right? Not X or less. I think he's just... Oh, trying he's to get just getting cards. less cards out less of his hand. hand. It's a nice heads-up play from Cedric. Okay, cool. He doesn't need any more cards. He can still target the spell. It just doesn't counter it. Yeah. So Nate only draws four instead. I like that play a lot. Smart. So we get a regrowth and a black lotus out of Nate. So Nate's not dead. Uh, it's land, land, regrowth, lotus. Yeah, this is that was actually a pretty good windfall for him. Uh, so Cedric, drew, Cedric drew force of will and mental misstep. Okay. Um. Does he have a third blue card? Can he have those both this turn? Uh, so here comes Lotus. Uh, we're going to get Regrowth on probably Time Twister. And that's going to get Force of Will. Then we got to imagine. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> I heard an audible <laughs> groan from Nate Heiss from the other room. <laughs> that is unfortunate. Uh, Joe Bono uh, has reported Carl wins 2 0, flashing in a fatty against uh, Paul Tef Meeker. All right. So it looks like Carl's deck. Uh, Takes down two he has very a, quick he games. He has a lot of angles. He, he took down two very quick games against the mono red deck. Yeah. So uh, To be fair, there are not going to be many long games against the mono red deck. Yeah, but normally you're losing those <laughs> short games, right? Well, maybe. Uh, I mean, his deck is not going to win a long game anyway, right? Like His deck is just assemble A plus B. If it's good enough, I yeah. win. So and the mono red deck doesn't have a lot of ways to stop that from happening. I think... Uh, Nate's almost out of draw sevens. I think he has memory jar left in his deck. Yeah, he has just jar left. And uh, no cards in hand? Is that where we're at? Uh, yeah. And he's going to scoop him up. Right, because Cedric fate sealed him and kept one on top. Ah, all right. Yeah. So, all right. Uh, Cedric takes game one. We have, uh, so Carl is our first match victor. Yeah. Uh, and Greg is up again. The draft winner, by the way. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Cube draft winner. It's proving yet again that they're real. Yeah, last time Colin uh, Colin McCune went uh, four and three, um, and uh, he lost the tiebreaker for third place to yeah. Jesse Hampton. Um, but uh, his blue white deck was quite good. Yeah, very very good. Um, Carl, uh, yeah, proven he can play, hang with the big boys here, and uh, gets uh, match match number one. You know, I'm, I'm actually pretty excited to see Carl's deck on stream. That's true. We should probably get him in relatively quickly. I agree. Uh, do we have? Can we pull up the the deck lists uh, yeah. to show? What? I can't pull them up on stream. Okay. One oh second. shoot! I need a password from Joe Bono. It's fine. We can pull it up here, right? Um, here. Carl Jans. How do you pronounce his last name? Jans. I like to say Yawns. Okay. Because I think it annoys him. Okay. So Carl Yawns. Okay. Uh, all right, so he main decks, Worm Coil, Soul Ring, Coiling Oracle, obviously. Uh, birds, Sylvan Caryatid, Elves of Deep Shadow, Natural Order, Enlightened Tutor, Commune with the Gods, Carnal Liberated. What is his sideboard? He's sideboarding Time Vault Voltaic Key. Interesting. And but he took game one with oh, Time Oh, no, wait. Vault no, this is, this is not correct. Because he has Enlightened Tutor in the main deck and the sideboard listed here. All right. So who knows what he's playing? Yeah. All right. This did not work out as we had planned. Well, uh, we're just as bad off as we were before. So do you think uh, there's any sideboard cards coming in here for either player? Uh, yeah. Uh, Seth's probably bringing in that Whip Flare. Yep. Or the Pyroclasm or whatever he has. Um, and then uh, what does Nate have? Nate has, uh, let's see. Leyline of Vitality. Uh, forced Fruition? Forced Fruition is a neat one. Uh, uh, three mana enchantment. No, is it three mana? I thought it was six. Oh, maybe it's six. I thought it was four blue blue. Maybe you're right. Yeah. But uh, whenever an opponent casts a spell, they have to draw seven cards, right? So you yes. just very quickly deck your opponent. It's a dangerous card to play, but yep. it's pretty spicy when it works. Yeah. Uh, Set has no enchantment removal. Okay. Um, I don't think he has any bounce spells either. So uh, uh, I think he has steel sabotage, but that only which bounces is artifacts. artifacts. Yeah. So I think uh, I think if Nate does stick the force fruition, it's probably good. Um, but I think that's about it. Yeah, I don't think that. Uh... Oh, this is sweet. Um, I don't think. That I forgot what I don't think. I don't think very much. That's true. 
Yeah. I don't think anything clearly <laughs> because I have nothing on my brain. Again, I'm going to remind people if you're new to new to Northwest Vintage Rotisserie Draft, uh, we're doing a giveaway right now. Uh, join our group. The link's down below. If you join Giveaway's our group, not happening right now. Yeah, yeah. If you join, it's happening later. No, nah, it's happening later. But if you join our group on don't Facebook, mean to you. Uh, if if you're a new member, uh, we will we're giving away twenty five dollars to Northwest Sports Cards. So go ahead and join the group, and probably at the end of this match, or maybe yeah. probably more likely the next match, uh, we're gonna go ahead. and... Yeah, we don't want to blow our load a little early. <laughs> yeah, uh, we don't want to, uh, and we're gonna go ahead and raffle off that twenty five dollars Northwest Best Sports Cards. Sure. Their online store. Sure. So no matter where you're at, you can redeem it. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Nice. <laughs> the soundboard is such a nice touch. It's true. We need yeah. to, you know, in, in our preparation for the next draft, we need to just, like, spend six hours finding sicko sound bites. Yeah. I think. And At this then, point, we're pretty prepared. That's yeah. Th I think mm -hmm. the, where our, you know, resources We've got this go. down to an exact science. Yeah, as you can tell, we're just very We're professionals <laughs> here. We take ourselves very not seriously. Even, not, even, not even a little bit. Can we get that Glenn Levitt in here? <laughs> no? I got a bottle Fine. of Jack, like, literally right there. Oh, well. Speak my language. Uh, so looks like set on the mulligan, Nate on the mulligan. Uh, I did not see their opening hands here, but well, uh, apparently they, they were shitty. They were not good. Yeah, yeah. bad. Yeah, bad. bad, bad good. Hands. Um, so mulligans probably favor Nate. I would think. Um, granted, he's trying to assemble many, many pieces, but some of those pieces are draw sevens, uh, so he can get out of that a little bit better. I think. Uh, said. Obviously, is trying to one for one uh, and really wants a library. Um, so his library is obviously worse on the mulligan, but uh, he is going to be on the draw. So mm -hmm. that makes it fine if he does draw it here. Um, uh, we've got a match update from uh, Joe Bono. Apparently, Corbett Gray and Alex West are facing off to uh, Mox Experiment One Goblin Guide versus Turn One Metalworker. Okay. So that game is going to looks like it's going to get interesting. What do we got here? We got a Black Lotus from Nate and a Curian Ranger. That's not super good. But that is not super good. Yeah. And uh, said has uh, f five lands, brainstorm one of which is library. So both players have. Said's hand is insane. <laughs> yeah, said's hand's very good. Uh, Nate does mulligan to five here. Uh, it's not going to be good enough with just Lotus Go. So. Um, Looks like we have an update from the side tables here. Uh, Corbett's turn two consecrated sphinx uh, may may stabilize versus may, a, may be good versus enough. Alex's all creature no removal deck. Yeah, um, I guess he has path and oblivion ring and banishing light. So yeah, he has a couple of one time spells. deal. Oh, and a vindicate. He has a vindicate too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, I misspoke. Um, so uh, Nate really back against the wall here. Yeah, this um, is a this is a bad way to start out your your tournament. You know. Hey, get the bad one out the way first, you know? It's all People always it's, say it's that. It's all downhill I, from here. I never, never feel that no, way. No, absolutely not. <laughs> it's better in a round robin than, like, in a PTQ where you, like, lose once and then you're just like, oh, now I have to 10-0 to yeah. win the tournament, right? Uh, you know, because 4-3 is good enough to get you into a tiebreaker at minimum for the next draft here. Uh, and 5-2 um, has been good enough to win the tournament before. Mm. So um, the last couple right. have been all 6-1s, though, right? The last three have been six ones. Charles won at six one. Peter won at yeah. six one. Greg won at six one. Yeah. So uh, it looks like we've got no lands from Nate here, unfortunately. Umbral mantle. Oh, Do he has elvish spirit guide. So maybe Lanor maybe Elf. he goes elvish spirit guide into land or He has to. And then and then peel a land for priest. I think. It's, I think he has to I do it. I think he has to. I don't. I can't tell what that third card is. Uh, it's umbral mantle. I think. Umbral mantle. Yeah. The fourth card is Edric. But uh, he certainly can't mulligan this hand to four, I don't think. No, the deck just can't win. I mean, I, like, he can mulligan into Lotus Draw 7, right? Like, it's just very much a thing. What do we have going on in the chat? Uh, <laughs> Someone says, Nate Heiss has really manly arms. I can't disagree. Yeah, he's a lumberjack. Uh... Uh, he kept it. Here we go. All right. He's a he's man. What if that it. got mental misstepped? Ooh. Oh. Cedric says, well, Cedric's hand is bad, right? No. Or did he mulligan? He mulliganed but has library. So oh. next turn he's going to drop to seven and just activate library and just be all in. All right. The beats start. Yep. Cedric Philip goes to 19 off of Lanowar Elves. Bink. And f we have a force of will and a dismember. This dismember is coming down, and that's yeah. going to be, I think. Will. Uh... 
Unfortunate. And Nate Heistrust. Got, got, he has to strip the library. <laughs> he absolutely has to strip the library. It's just so... Oh, like, this is disgusting. This is actually, like, is honestly a, a really good draw. Like, it's really awkward that he has to do this. <laughs> but, like, now said, now said's engine is down. Uh, he just draws Jace, but yeah, yeah. fine. Uh... Um, with someone on stream, Brian Wong's evil twin says, "If if we combine our outfits, we might look okay." I don't know about that. See, <laughs> you know, I, yeah. I had the bow tie last time. I got this. Yeah, one. yeah. You, you know, yeah. I think next time I'll bust out the bolo. I just have no style. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's really the short answer. Yeah. Um, Brian Wong's evil twin. Um, so is Brian Wong's evil twin Brian Wong? We'll never know. <laughs> Brian Wong is probably Brian Wong's evil. Are they, yeah, I mean, like, both, is it, shouldn't, both, Brian, shouldn't Brian Wong have a good twin? No, they're both evil. Oh, okay. Right? Yeah, so, no, like, it doesn't matter which one's which. They're both the evil twin. All right, that's fair. Yeah. Dissing on my tie. Please. Oh, turn four Jace against no perms. Let's see. Got some more updates. Uh... What do we have? Uh, can't quite tell. Oh. Sounded like we're going to have Carl versus someone in the next match. Okay. What was exciting. the update on the Alex Corbett match? I couldn't quite make... Uh, we got... And turn three, Scepter Chant with Kicker. Uh, Alex needs Corbett's Man of the Crypt to do 12 damage quick, according to Joe Bono. Okay. So, uh... Oh, someone, someone, uh, great. I love this. Uh, we don't really need to worry about this match because it's basically over. Uh, someone's asking what is the format. Nah, see, we need to analyze this game state. Yeah. Oh, it really looks like Nate's going to come back. No. Anyway, so what's happening here? This is a vintage rotisserie draft. So, um, imagine it's a draft, first off. Yep. And imagine, uh, the person in seat one gets to pass a booster pack with every vintage legal card. So it's yeah. just a giant booster pack. Not actually, it's all in our head. We use a spreadsheet to do it to make it easy, but imagine it. A giant. Product. It's all in our head, which is why cards like Jason. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I go yeah, some yeah. People so, just forget about them. So then, uh, starting in seat one, the first person takes a card and passes it to the. Then seat two picks a card, and then it snakes around like a fantasy football draft until forty-five cards are picked. Yep. Each player constructs a deck. Then we battle round robin style, and whoever wins gets a whole bunch of liquor. Yes. So a whole uh, bunch. If you want to see how the draft Stock went, that, there's Jack. a uh, link below to the uh, to the spreadsheet. You can analyze all the picks, see how uh, things went. Yeah. Uh, you can. There's also deck lists are getting filled out in there too. So if you want to see how people built their decks, I don't think everyone's quite updated it yet. But uh, you can check it out as the draft goes on. Yeah, join the Facebook group that's uh, linked to uh, on the stream as well, uh, and you can uh, ask questions of the drafters uh, and you know us commentators. Uh, and we uh, in between drafts we do one of these every month. Yeah. Um, in in between drafts we do a lot of conversation about you know hey why did this guy pick that thing there and. We, what do you think of this deck and all sorts of you know we we want to explore the format as deep as we can and we have a lot of decks in this draft that are new yeah and uh, and nobody's drafted them before you know Alex's uh, Alex's zoo deck is is new is fresh and uh, and Nate's deck is also new and fresh. Someone's asking why is Cedric Phillips there? Why not? Yeah, uh, absolutely. So this is happening in Northwest in Seattle. Cedric lives in Seattle. We're all friends with Cedric. He's a good guy. He's been itching to do this, but he's a busy guy, and this is finally the first time we've been able to get him in here. So yeah. uh, as time goes on, we're gonna get you know we're gonna get you know good people in here. So yeah. Nate Heiss is also known to scoff at. We've also have Alex West. Mm -hmm. We've got some pretty big names here. So yeah. Um, but yeah. Uh, so also for the new guys, I'm gonna keep bringing this up so that everyone can get involved. If you're new, if you've never been here before. Uh, we're actually doing a special giveaway right now to Northwest Sports Cards. If you join our Facebook group, which the link is down below, if you click there, uh, ask us to, uh, ask to join, we're going to do a raffle in about mm, a match or so after this, and uh, we're going to give away $25 in Northwest Sports Cards if you're yeah. a new member. So uh, go ahead and join the group. And also, once you join the group, you can uh, follow along when the next draft's going to be. Uh, we do all kinds of fun stuff. So yeah, yeah, a lot of cool things going on here. Looks like we've got some more updates. Um... Let's see. Yeah, we had a tough time getting Cedric up off my couch for this weekend, so he had a, <laughs> yeah. he had a tough time getting here. There's nothing too interesting going on yet. All right, okay. Uh, Ced casting a uh, turn 87 Demonic Tutor against just a Wasteland. Uh, Nate, gamely gaming on. I, I you know, I got to respect Nate for uh, continuing this game. Uh, I mean, he, he, he could run a runner. Uh, a Lotus and a draw seven. Well, like, I mean, we're sitting here holding mental misstep days and force of will 
Um, so this is really just a great chance for us to just talk. I don't. So we we did just cancel the match and we get the bullshit for half an hour. Yeah, which is yeah, perfect. Exactly. Uh, we can grab that bottle of Jack and yeah, really have some fun over and here. And we got a big one and a little one. This is cool. Yeah. All right. Uh, As a matter of fact, yeah. Let's, let's do that. Yeah. I'll be right back. You right, keep yeah. chatting it up. So uh, <laughs> Paul's gonna spice this up a little bit here. Uh, we're gonna get things uh, get this party started, as it were. Um, and uh, we have uh, Cedric is uh, letting Nate have whatever he wants, and uh, <laughs> the match is is now officially over. Um, Cedric still had all these for uh, counter spell, disrupting shoal, mental misstep days, and force of will. Uh, they probably not resolving too many spells from here on out. So, Cedric Phillips one and zero uh, in the match score. Uh, Nate Heiss zero and one. Um, we have, uh, we, I believe, we're going to get a second match uh, after the first round finishes up. Here, we're going to get somebody on screen for you. Uh, do we want to do an interview with another one of the drafters before the matches finish? Uh, how much time do we have? Uh, is there someone ready? Match just finished, and there's no one else ready. Uh, one thing I will mention while we're uh, checking stuff out is uh, uh, is Northwest uh, Sports Cards or NorthwestGamersChoice.com, NWGamersChoice.com is actually putting out a coupon code for 20% off all of their singles, any single, no exceptions, Hey-o. through Memorial Day. For And the coupon code is Vintage20. Um, I'll put it on the chat, and uh, anybody that can sign up on there, you don't have to win anything. You just go on there, type in Vintage20 at checkout, and get 20% off your entire singles order. You, and you also get free shipping over $25, so go and hit that up. Gotta love free money. So our next match is going to be Carl Jans versus uh, Nate Heiss. We're going to get that on stream here pretty quick. Me and uh, me and uh, this guy here. Oh yeah, <laughs> Stephen Berkland. We're going to join in the fun with. Uh, this is what I've been waiting for all day. It's uh, we're doing we're playing for liquor. The announcers have to have a little bit of fun. So there you go. Bottoms up. Buddy. It up. <sighs> so good, so good. <laughs> I love it. You know, whiskey's just best. Jack's really underappreciated. I mean, it's it not is. underappreciated, but people scoff at it. No, they it's do. Great. Yeah, great. Jack. Jack is a uh, Jack is the Jason Mind sculptor of this draft. I think. Ooh, because I mean, okay, it's not as good. As <laughs> but it goes <laughs> in the thirty second round. All right. You shouldn't take. You got to take it before that. That's a joke. Come on. All right. So, um, do we have anything sweet we can talk about while these guys are getting ready? Uh, Nate's, deck, Nate's deck is sweet. Nate's set enough. Carl's, Carl's deck, deck, is, deck sweet. is sweet. Somebody's going to be sweet <laughs> yeah. in these games. This is an exciting match. Yeah. We're going to see something cool happen. So uh, we're not quite sure how Carl built his deck, but he has Time Vault combo in his deck. Yep. He possibly has Painter Servant combo in his yep. deck. He has, he has Flash for He has a Flash in his deck. He has Natural Order. He has some reanimation <laughs> spells. Yep. yep. So, that he can Enlighten Tutor for. Uh, so yeah, he's got an enlightened tutor for yep. shits and giggles. Like, uh, oh, so warm. Oh, yeah, it feels good. Mm. Um, how about Cedric? How, how, Cedric looks strong there. I mean, Nate I basically didn't play. It's him or Alex is my pick. You for think this so? Thing. Yeah. It, Alex, his deck is super streamlined. He got everything that he wanted really. Uh, and Cedric's kind of in the same spot. And he got a lot of stuff he didn't even want. Like he, didn't, like, <laughs> yeah, he was, like, just a joke bunch of cards, you know. Like imagine if uh, Greg had had started the draft with Ancestral Time Walk, Snapcaster, like Mana Drain, and then also ended up with the Library and the Jace and the yeah, Demonic yeah. Tutor and stuff. Like his, you combine their two decks and they're just wow. Yeah, but um, I, I like I like where Cedric is, and like I said, when he really wants to win, and he's not playing against like the best players in the world. Well, you can tell when Cedric wants to win because he decide he he will actually play blue cards. Yeah. Right. Uh, which he refuses to do. He actually, yep. for his slide, player slide for this, he was like, make sure you put on there I don't play blue cards. Yeah. And then he first picked Mock Sapphire. And I was right. like, oh, okay, Cedric. Yeah. But uh, he, uh, can he... we change the names up on top? Uh, oh, it's oh, sorry. Nate's on the left and uh, Carl Jans is on your right. Jans. Carl Jans. Uh, we should start calling Oh, him someone's Jans, asking uh, about, are these going to be streamed on this account? Yes. Uh, moving forward, we are going to be using the Shotgun Lotus account. We're kind of rebranding. Uh, there will also be a website coming, yeah. uh, ShotgunLotus.com. Shotgun Lotus presents Northwest Vintage Rotisserie Draft Series. Exactly. So uh, the draft, uh, the website we was- just snip that out, and that should be the sound bite. I feel like I did that really well. <laughs> I just want to <laughs> prop myself up a little bit. I think that was really good. I, yeah. 
Good thanks. Job. All right. Uh, thanks, me. So we're started here. Uh, let's get started. But anyway, yeah, Shotgun Lotus will be shotgunlotus.com will be a website soon. We have the, the domain. We're just building it. Carl's on Soul Ring. Turn one Soul Ring off of Lana War Waste for. Uh, He's got that coil. Carl Oracle. His favorite card. I know. It is his actual favorite game. It's really good natural order sacrificial target. Uh, we've got a Finhorn Elves okay. from Nate Heist. Nate keeping up. He's got uh, a Elvish Arch Druid, Elvish Spirit Guide, Strip Mine, Lotus Petal, Imperious Perfect Temporal Spring. That is not a bad hand. Uh, I mean, it's not lacking explosive. He's lacking blue mana. Uh, but it's uh, it's going to be a pretty decently fast clock. Carl 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 Jans loves coiling oracle. It's a good card, anything. dude. Yeah, it's good card. The guy like if players have spirit animals, yeah, coiling oracle is Carl Jans. Carl animal. actually showed up to this draft with a foil coiling oracle. He's like, I'm going to draft this. I don't care what my deck is. I'm yep. going to be playing. Coiling I'm not oracle. sure if you guys I have one. I don't care if I'm, I'm red. Have it because it's foil and it's mine. Yeah. Uh, we have a strip mine. It's got to hit the flooded grove. I got to imagine. Uh, yeah, and then there we have goes. a spirit guide putting down an arch. So, so let's probably. see what kind of stuff Carl's got going on here. He's got compulsive uh, research. Mm, He's got uh, ashen rider, and I can't quite make out those other cars. Uh, is that a Sylvan Carriad? Natural, Natural order. order. Ooh, boy, that's, oh, that's gonna is be Oracle good. Well, it turns out it is a green creature. Boom. All right, so you can actually natural has, order has, for it too. He has Woodfall Primus, right? I think that's the only yeah. green creature. No, no, he has he has a World Spine Worm. Ooh, I don't know if that's he's a good flash card. Yeah, there it is. A World Spine Worm. Uh, Nate's got to read this one. I think this card came out after he stopped working for Wizards. Yep. Uh, he's like, I had nothing to do with this. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, for people that and don't if know, I had, it would have gotten killed. For people that don't know, Nate is kind of partially responsible for uh, fairies. He was very involved in Morrowind block. True, but so, uh, to his credit, he tried to get Bitter Blossom nerfed a little bit. Yeah. And but they, people want to root for a bad guy. They just wouldn't listen. No, I'm just kidding. Nate's I, a great Blossom's guy. Awesome. Nate's a great guy. I love Nate's that card. But, uh, I, I can sacrifice so many tokens to smokestack. Whew. <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you. All right, so we've got uh, Nate starting to make some mana. Did he end up drawing so anything to do with it? Uh, Not really. No. So he needs to draw a draw seven next turn, and uh, and he kill. can temporal spring the world spine worm. Oh here, my right? god! Because I think the world spine worm only triggers off when it dies, not yep, when it leaves play. That's true. Uh, so can he can tap that for three to get the perfect into play, and then yeah, this is going to be a nice little turn for him. And then so it looks like we've got a mana confluence, a sylvan Keratid, an ashen rider, and a compulsive research in Carl Jans' hand. So. Uh, Carl Jones is only going to basically be able to compulsive research after this. Yep. Um, so Nate's right back in it. Yeah, and then he gets to put this Lord into play. He's got, what, how much damage is that? 12? He's got 12 damage in play already. Uh, that was a good, that was a good turn three. So Carl is on, it is a Sylvan carry it in his hand, I think. He's on Ashen Rider, Compulsive Research, World Spine Worm. Mana confluence, uh, so he really needs to compulsive research into some way to reanimate that. I'll Ashen tell you what. Rider, right? I'll tell you what. That compulsive research should be a crew fix's insight. I'm pretty salty about it. I talked about it. He drafted the perfect deck for it, and then he didn't take it. I don't know. I don't know why he wasn't watching the stream. Because <laughs> it's against the rules. Oh right. That you made. You made the rules. <laughs> And uh, he's abiding by them like a good, good. Well, that's man. fair. That's fair. So, uh, yeah. So Nate uh, showing what the elves can do uh, on the first couple turns. People here. asking what uh, got exiled. Nothing got exiled. Um, temporal temporal spring returns a card to the top of a deck. So yeah, he did that target to permanent permanent. blue uh, apocalypse common. Uh, very good in the block constructed format back in the day. Bravo to Chris for getting this whole card image. Yeah, set I'm up. actually super happy about this. I like was... message Chris on Facebook. It was like, hey, could you like set up a thing where we can show off cards? And he's like, yeah, sure. And now it works. Yep. Yeah, that was the so... big problem we had with the last one. But uh, every every time we do this, we get a little bit a better. little bit fancier. Yeah. So uh, imagine. And yeah, that's another thing. Uh, if you guys are in the group or whatever, and you have any suggestions to make this more awesome or whatever, feel free. We're totally open to it. We're by no means experts. I mean, I know the setup Speak looks pretty yourself. fancy, but like we're doing this in my in my garage in my basement. Yeah. Uh, but uh, we are trying to get it pretty legit. So if you have any ideas to make it better, let us know. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So uh, we probably won't listen to you. Yeah. Because we're stubborn. Yeah. Yeah. 
egomaniacs. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so we've got some guys coming in. I, uh, they're Nine. all two twos, right? Nine. Uh, no, they're all three threes. Oh, Imperius Perfect is also yeah. a play. Which he was hiding over there on the side. Elf, so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Does Nate have any cards in his hand? No, he drew Guy's Cradle for the turn. Okay. Well, Guy's Cradle can make a lot of mana. That's true. Uh, what's he going to do with it? People are asking if uh, Temporal Spring is just a bad boomerang. It's not. It returns the card to the top of... I mean, I guess it's on stream so you guys can see what it is. Yeah. Uh, it's any permanent as well. Uh, so I guess so boomerang is too. But, but boomerang only costs... Or boomerang costs two blue. Temporal yeah. Spring is a green card. Yeah. That you know, you uh, Nate can splash in his green deck, so uh, it's a lot easier on his mana. I guess theoretically, you could play something like Regress, right, which is blue to colorless. But yeah. it essentially, in Nate's deck, Temporal Spring is blue to colorless, and it puts it on top of the deck for an extra. Yeah, turn. yeah, like so like it's people, a little bit of a time walk for him. Yeah, people may underestimate the, how powerful putting something on top of a deck is. Like for yeah, instance, denying somebody a draw, denying a turn, putting putting Carl's World Spine Worm on top of his deck, which he definitely can't cast ever, right. is like. Pretty powerful. He's essentially making Carl just miss a turn. There. Right. Um, so it's pretty good. Carl looks like he's vampiric tutoring on upkeep. Uh, I'm not sure what he's going to get here. Probably that worm coil engine, or does he have a way to get it? Sorry, I missed. He's vamp tutoring. Yeah, he's vamping. On does upkeep. he have any parts of the combo? Uh, no, I think he just has. I think he just has the uh, Ashen Rider in in the graveyard. So Carl needs an answer here because he's dead next turn. Yes, because he's going to make a guy. He's so at four. Block three. Or block four. He's going to go to three to cast the thing that he casts to get yeah. the at, to get the worm coil back. Yeah, it's not going to be enough. Um, so essentially, I don't. I think Carl's dead here. I don't think he has. Uh, Chris, can you pull up uh, Crufix's insight uh, in just a second? Uh, I have, I got a text message asking that one. So we if we can get that on stream. Mm -hmm. Uh, so Crufix's insight. This is like my pet card from, yeah, the, from uh, the text. Actually said what is. What what Paul what card is Paul going off on? <laughs> what is Pruf, Prufix Insight? So <laughs> Crufix's Insight is a card from Journey to Nyx, and you know if just a quick glance at it, it probably looks like a really shitty card. But in a green black reanimator deck, it does some pretty interesting things. Yeah. It, it uh, digs six deep, which is like which is double all, thirst, double compulsive yeah, research. Yeah, and yeah. so it puts obviously puts fatties in your yard, which is exactly what you want to do. But, but it doesn't put them into your yard from your hand. That's, sure, that's a little bit of a thing. It, that is a thing. But what it does do is since it gets enchantments, it can get animate dead, mm -hmm. necromancy, mm -hmm. uh, dance of the dead. Yep. So it can also like if you're playing survival in that deck, recurring it survival, nightmare. It, recurring nightmare, yeah. like. I think there's some development space around this card in this format. I think it. I think it is actually very powerful, especially a deck like Carl's happily playing compulsive research in his deck. Yeah. And I think, in this deck, Kruvix's insight's probably better. Uh, it's better at doing one specific thing. Sure. Right? I mean, maybe not because he's playing like the time vault combo or whatever, and he doesn't yeah, want to put and, those in his yard. And also, I mean, maybe you just want to draw a worm coil engine. Yeah. 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 So. Sure. It, there, there's definitely some give and some take. It's really powerful at doing one specific thing. Yeah, maybe not in his deck specifically, but like a, a dedicated green-black reanimator deck. Yeah, that card has a space. That in is going to have recurring nightmare and, sur and survival in it, so you're always going to hit. Yeah, with yeah. The, with the insight, yeah, sure. Also, there's um, like random other random good enchantments. Um, uh, it looks like Corbett takes two. Uh, the uh, uh, wins two one over Alex. Wow. Uh, Greg wins wow. two one over Sean. Um, Corbett wow. defeated Alex. I'm surprised by that. Unexpected. Yeah. I guess, I mean, Consecrated Sphinx and Mere Battlesphere on turns two and three are pretty good. And it looks like uh, Corbett, took, Corbett took it down by uh, making Alex draw infinite cards off infinite mana, off Stroke of Genius. Wow. That's cool. So, uh, we didn't expect that. No. Yeah. I... God, what if Alex West gets in this place? Yeah, he won't. That's not, we don't need to worry no. about that. His deck's really good. That's not possible. Yeah. Corbett hype. Ah, Corbett Gray. Woo. Um. Let's see. So uh, Nate Nate did in fact win that first game uh, by attacking with uh, a lethal army of elves. Carl was unable to uh, put a stop to it. Uh, he's definitely getting that elish norn into the into yeah, the deck. At this I, you point. know, I didn't even see he drafted that. That's a nice one. Yeah, he definitely drafted elish norn. Uh, it looks like we've got some more matches coming up. Uh, Cedric is playing Corbet. Or Corbett, for those who don't know. Uh, Crobat. Greg yeah. Peliquin is playing against Paul Tef Meeker, and Alex is playing Sean. All right, round two. Um, so so yeah. uh, what What kind of uh, draw do you think Carl needs to defeat Nate here? Uh, I think Carl's got a lot of game. Like, 
Carl could just Who go knows? off. Yeah, like yeah. Carl could go off with you know Time Vault. He could go off with uh, a painter, painter servant. He could reanimate a, a Elish Norn. Sure. Like, I I think this is probably like a pretty good matchup for Carl. Yeah. Okay. But I, it's hard to say. It's probably even honestly. It's, like. Yeah, I I actually like the way the first game played out is kind of indicative of what Nate's deck can do. Yeah, absolutely. Like, put a lot of power into play really quickly and disrupt you just a little bit, right? And then, like, you did one thing and I disrupted it and now you don't have anything else to do. Yep. Uh, and, you know, like you saw, like, after Temporal Spring, Carl's hand was just like, uh, I have a lot of eight drops and <laughs> yeah. impulsive research. Yeah. Uh, right? Um, like, his, his hand looked pretty good until then, but he, uh, you know, we were saying during the draft, right? Carl's deck is assemble A plus B deal. Yep. And Nate dealt. So yeah, absolutely. Um, With I think like the only card in his deck that could. Uh, maybe I mean he could also like he can combo around the world spine worm. Yeah, 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 for sure. Um, and uh, so we'll we'll see what uh, what kind of draw Nate gets in this. In the he did draw double lord. All right, so, game, so. Uh, looks like we're getting game two started here. Um, uh, and Andy in the chat is asking uh, what Sean's record is. I believe he lost his first round to Greg. Is that correct? Greg Pelequin defeated Sean Collins. Uh, Greg, yes, Sean is 0-1. Yeah. So Carl starts off with a, with a joining the next card, Mana, Mana Confluence. Confluence. And we've got a Fenhorn Elves from Nate. His hand is a bunch of Elves and a Time Twister. Which is basically ideal for him if he can cast the Time Twister. Ooh, Carl, what the coil Coiling Oracle. Oracle! His favorite card. It's really good. <laughs> <laughs> what is happening? What is happening? All right, so we've got a Lanor Elf and a Pass. Ooh, no second oh, line. Yeah. Okay. And uh, that's a Tiger in play for Nate, right? That's correct. Yeah. Yeah, so Carl, uh, I can't see any of the cards in Carl's hand. We'll see what he's got here. Natural order. Natural order again. I'm going to go get my world spine worm. Is what he's saying. I don't know why he's saying that. Maybe that one shot of Jax is starting to kick in. You are a lightweight. I don't drink much anymore, man. Man, that's a mistake. Ooh, a Palaka worm can't possibly be right. No, that's perfect. I was kind of surprised to see he maybe that. Maybe he boarded out the world spine worm. All right, well, we've got a Palaka worm. Uh, you pull up Palaka Worm? Yeah, he's on it. Chris is all uh, over it's it. It's gain seven life when it comes into play, I believe, and when it dies, draw a card. Yeah. yeah. Uh, plus big tramps. Uh, so, man, not even Woodfall Primus to get rid of the forest. Yeah. Here comes, uh, so Nate draws a memory jar. So next turn, he's going to have some mana soon. Yeah. He can take three hits, or he can take two hits from the... I think Carl is at 27, up. right? Yeah, that's correct. Or he's taking some damage. Uh, one, two 26. from... Yeah. He's taking two damage. Okay. Confluence twice. Uh, he's going to compulsive research here, refill up. Thirst. I got to imagine that, that uh, Plock Worm is going to crack in. Yeah, Thirst for Knowledge Ooh, to play Elish Nord into his hand. Is, uh, does he have a way to reanimate it? Uh, I'm not sure. Can't see doesn't look like it uh discards worm coil so yeah he doesn't have a way to reanimate the yep. Norn for sure so uh, however he's getting close to casting it because he can play birds this turn um oh well yeah and uh a lance so he's actually one turn away from casting elish norn uh looks like greg or greg peliquin uh plays kitchen finks Bounces or blinks it with Restoration Angel against Paul Tef Meeker's Mono Red deck. That's going to bring you just about any game against Mono Red, I imagine. It's be, yeah. You um, probably got a card with each half of the yeah, kitchen face. That's... And probably blocked something with Restoration Angel, too. Okay. All right. All so right here we have a turn. You know, put this down a little bit. <laughs> uh, Quirion Ranger, the card drawn by <laughs> Nate Heiss. So he can make a lot of mana. Well, Nate Heiss's hand is a spicy meatball. So that was unnecessary. I apologize. The Archer is going to make four. Yeah, I'm not even going to acknowledge anything that happened. All right. Archer makes four mana. We have five, six from the elves. Uh, returning a forest untaps the Archdruid. Makes ten plus the Taiga land drop makes eleven. Uh, Jar leaves him six floating. Um, so uh, if he can get perfect 
he can perfect and have three floating. Um, that's pretty good. Maybe he doesn't want to use the land drop first. Or maybe he just wants to jar first so that he can draw blue. Oh, but the time twister's already in his hand. Um, Is he going to just pass? No, he can't do that. Okay, I was going to say, he was, he was, his hand was booty for I was like, there's no way he passes No, he's here. absolutely casting something. In fact, I think he should be casting the Imperius Perfect. Um, and I would... I would probably play... I would probably just play Imperius Perfect, Jar, and Izuri. Um, and then pass. And leave the Jar. Um, for next turn. Uh... This will give him, um, or let's see, he has six, he has one floating right now, so he can play Azuri and then have, uh, he can have, he can play Azuri and have Overrun, um, which is really powerful. And then while Nate's sitting here thinking, uh, just a reminder, if you're new to the stream, uh, join our Facebook group below in the next little bit here, and, uh, you'll be entered for a chance to win, uh, $25 worth of store credit to uh, Northwest Sports Cards. Yeah. Also, uh, Northwest Sports Cards is giving, it has a coupon code for Vintage20. That you get 20% off your entire singles order uh, until Memorial Day. And you get free shipping over orders over $25. And that can, you can use the credit with that, too, right? Absolutely. Yeah. So that's combo. Yeah. Wombo combo. <laughs> Wombo combo. <laughs> that ain't Falco. And now, that's, like, a pretty good deal. It's not bad. It's not bad. We're about to see Nate Heiss put together a lot of turns. Like. Yeah. Uh, I'm pretty sure Carl's dead. I'm not quite sure how we're going to get there. The perfect is in play, so uh, the Elish Norn no longer kills everything. Yep. Uh, everything is a 3-3 three, three at the moment. So um, Nate gets to... Uh, so now, now he has five mana. Uh after tapping this thing, he can put the jar into play, and then he can play Azuri, and next turn, um, Carl is just dead. Yeah. Nate's deck is really cool when it's going off. Let me tell yeah. you. Uh, maybe he's not even going to cast the jar. That's interesting. Um, he's got Regrowth, Time Twister, Edric. Um, yeah, I think, uh, I think he might just leave up Overrun. Um, because he can query and ranger during Carl's turn to untap his arch druid to activate overrun. Mm. Um, you can you can play <coughs> you can overrun multiple times, right? Yes. Mm. Uh, so next turn he can overrun twice. All right. I think I think resolving the jar is probably correct here. Okay, he is resolving the jar. I thought he might attack for six instead uh, to just make sure that he has lethal next turn. Yeah. Um, Carl draws a land. So he's going to put Elish Norn into play. Take a damage going to twenty three, and uh, but it's not going to kill anything. It's not going to kill anything. He is going to get in for nine with Palaka Worm, uh, and then so Nate can activate uh, Overrun twice to make all of his guys seven sevens. Um, he's actually, yeah, he does have enough. He has five attackers, so uh, Carl can't attack with the uh, with the Palaka Worm. Wow. All right, well here we go. This is gonna be this is gonna be an exciting turn of magic, I think. I mean, yeah. This is what this is what people are tuned in for. For when you when you hear vintage rotisserie draft, the few of you who know what the fuck we're talking about, uh, <laughs> are, this is what you tune in for. It's a turn like this. Like, oh wow! Oh, he drew fast bond. Fast bond memory. Right. That is. <laughs> Did you just rub your belly? No, I slapped my belly. Mm. <laughs> belly slaps. The sound bite literally gets me every time. Yeah, I, I, it That's always good. catches me by surprise, and I love it. Is this like up to date? Yeah. Oh, maybe not. I don't know. All right. So Nate's got an attack. If he wants it, he can attack with everyone, and then untap his arch druid, and then activate it for overrun. Or he can just activate it, and then untap it and activate it again. So for two overruns, that make all of his guys are. Missouri is a 2-2. Two, two. All the other guys are 1-1s. One, is that correct? Yes. Uh, so he has five attackers, and he's going to give them plus six, plus six each. So that's 35 total damage. And uh, Carl has 12 toughness, 14 toughness. Uh, so he could theoretically live this turn. Um, 
Oh, he has 14 total toughness because a uh, Polaka Worm is a 9-9. So it wouldn't actually even die. Uh, the Elish Norn would die. But, um, oh, I probably have some match updates. Do we see what's in Carl's hand at the moment? No. Okay. I'll be right back, actually. All right. So we have Nate trying to figure out uh, if he has lethal this turn. Uh, I don't think he does. Uh, he doesn't quite get to. Th he needs to beat. Uh, he needs to beat 16 toughness, so he needs 39 attacking damage, and I think he only has uh, 35. Um, so he might be going to uh, fast bond into memory jar here to see what else he can do with his mana instead of attacking. Um, uh, so we have uh, Nate starts off, uh, taps his taiga, and. Uh, well, Carl's hand looks like uh, looks like three lands: City of Brass Island and uh, Twilight Mire, I think. Uh, so we have a, a fast bond, and Jar is activated. Um, so All right, I'm back. Nate gets to draw seven new cards with his fifteen mana available to him, plus whatever he can play off fast bond. Um, what did he draw? He drew a bribery. Um, Ooh. He drew. Doesn't need it. A forest, an island? Is that an island? In it looks game? like an island, yeah. Uh, too bad it's not a breeding pool, so that he can return it with Kree and Dryad. Uh, he drew a Crucible of Worlds. And is that a strip mine? We shall see. Uh, Carl's deck looks uh, decently... Uh, like set up for a one punch, you know. Yeah. And uh, Nate's deck seems like it's a lot more engine-y. And uh, once the engine gets humming, uh, it doesn't seem like there's a lot that can stop it. So um, we've got. He's trying to figure out he can he can strip uh, Crucible Carl down to no lands mm -hmm. this turn. Um, he can attack for thirty this turn. Uh. He can leave back all of his guys on defense and keep Carl from attacking. Mm -hmm. um, it looks like, uh, or he can just attack with a couple guys. Eh, that's probably bad. Attacking with a couple guys, yeah, is probably I don't bad. like that at all. Because um, he can't kill the Palaka Worm with an activation. So, um, and if he like waits a turn, he can make another guy with the Imperius Perfect, which will live through the Elish Norn anyway. Um, so I think. Uh, I think he's got a, a pretty good uh, setup here. Uh, he's just trying to find find the right uh, find the right way through. Do we find the? Do you figure out the stream or the chat? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, there wasn't updating. I need a drink. Well, I have this right here. Bring it on. I'm. I, I was. I'm, I was referring to water. Oh, I know what you were talking. This about. This is the closest. I knew what you were talking about. I have. I actually have a water bottle here too, but I. Touched yeah, that's that's yours. I don't want yeah, that. I would rather. I don't want. Don't don't leave me out of this. Pour your own drink. Ooh, nice one. Yeah, good work. All right, the vintage Cheers. history draft, sir. There we go. All right. <laughs> Shots fired. All right. Match over. Elves win. Elves win. That was a lot of damage. Azuri is powerful. Yeah, I forgot that card existed. Just toss it. Comes <laughs> to me. I got it. Hey it All right, I'll be right back. I'm going to get another match on stream. We might need to join someone in game two or three. Okay. Uh, King of bullshit. Can you bullshit for a second? I was born to. Or maybe you, you could talk to Chris. I don't know. You guys can work it out. Chris, where do you find all these sweet sound bites? Uh, I make them. Nice. I actually, um, I have a, there, there's no YouTube downloader for Google Chrome. Okay. So I have Firefox and I have YouTube okay. downloader and I use Adobe Audition and uh, I uh, rip them out, slap them on my little digital soundboard and I'm going to have to uh, get dumb. Yeah. I'm going to have to, do you know how to like upload clips of other videos that are on the internet yes. to YouTube? Other like to create it as your own video? I've never done it before. But. Okay, I was trying to find a video the other day. I found the video, but it wasn't on YouTube, and I was trying to like link to like a seven-second clip of, oh. the, of the video. Well, you know, with our broadcasting software, we can if you can play it on your computer, we can capture it. All right, very so. good. 
I'll make your dreams come true. So we are going to be joining uh, Paul Tef Meeker on the right and uh, Greg Peliquin on the left. Uh, they're going into game three. Paul Tef Meeker is playing mono red and Greg Peliquin is playing blue white control. Uh, do have these guys both finished their second match, or we're joining round two, game three? This is, is that, round two, okay, game three. round two, game three. Do we happen to know who's on the play? Nope. Is that information that we have freely available? Nope. Jeez. <laughs> All right. Hello, hello. Is my am I on? I think you're. Oh, on. there we go. I just wasn't turned up. All right. All right. So. Paul Tef Meeker, uh, let's go back into this. So our, we had a uh, QGraph qualifier, uh, Greg Pellic or Greg Shampoo uh, was supposed to join us today. Shampoo he, and shampoo. conditioner. Unfortunately, he got into a little bit of a fender bender on the way in today, so uh, Paul Tef Meeker had to step in for him. So um, Paul Tef He's Meeker, okay, though. Don't Paul worry. Te Paul Tef Meeker didn't... Uh, I'm not going to hell for my comment that he was in a ditch earlier. Yeah, I mean, the car maybe rolled into a ditch. You're still kind of a dick. But, um, hey, you said he should have called. <laughs> That's fair. <laughs> um, Don't put this on me. Don't anyway, put this Paul on Tef me. Paul came in here. He didn't have very much prep, but he's a really good player. Uh, he's a competitive guy from around these parts. Uh, also just, known as the Meefin Man. Meefin Man. Meef Teaker. We all know the Meefin Man. Yeah. Do, yeah. yeah. Uh, he lives in Paul's Paul house. Wade's house. Yeah. On Meef Lane. I don't know, man. Anyway, so we're going to get started here. Uh, so Paul ended up, uh, he did not end up splashing white, is that correct? He did not. Okay, so he is strict mono red spells. Yes. <sighs> Burn you. Yep, yeah. absolutely. Light him up, light him up. Can you get that Fall Out Boy song? Light him up, light him up. I don't know the name of the song. I bet you Cedric Phillips does. I think it's Phoenix. I think it's Phoenix. We can get this. This one's this one's for you, Meef Teaker. I feel like our Twitch chat's not working. But maybe no one's talking to us. Maybe no one likes us. I don't know. That's likely. We're not very likable. Probable. Yeah. Um, so, all right. Here we go. We go. Greg Pelequin, Tundra into Mother of Ruins. Powerful gonna start. going to be very powerful against Paul Tefinger. Yeah. <laughs> Chris Cowan is a master of his craft. It's a good start. All right. We've got an Ancestral uh, Visions and then a uh, Hollow Fountain. Ooh, he doesn't try to sneak the point in with the Mother No, I wouldn't either. <laughs> all right. On D. See a Flames of the Blood Hand and a uh, Hellspark Elemental coming in. Yep. Mother Bruin jumps in damage. front, saves two. Saves one. So we got Greg down to uh, 18 life points. Uh, Paul is 10% of the way there. Uh, someone asked, did R&D just make a typo and they uh, made Imperius perfect? It, it should totally be Prefect, right? I don't know. Let's ask Nate Heiss. He worked on yeah, that I set. Tend, I tend and to he's in the draft. With Shadowhawk 9. I agree. I get, are there eight other Shadowhawks? Like, we gotta... I gotta... Yeah, Shadowhawk, what's the word there? Were you like Shadowhawk 1? Nope. Shadowhawk 2? Also, nope. Junta DNA 102. There can't have been 101 other Junta DNAs, right? <laughs> we can't... <laughs> yeah, that's a great way to get viewers, is to make fun of people's <laughs> I'm names. just saying. Nate, uh, you we were we were just asking, was uh, yeah. Imperius perfect? Is that a Was that a typo? Is it supposed to be prefect, or...? He doesn't know. He doesn't know either. I, 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 just, I just put the name of the card in. I copy-pasted it from somewhere. All right. No, no, we're asking. You You worked on Lorwyn. Oh, perfect. There's a microphone Lorwyn. behind you. There's a, there's a microphone right there. Side interview. Everything was intentional. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm a company man. I... <laughs> All right. So we've got a vapor snag on the um, unearthed Hellspark Elemental. Ooh, value. Ancestral Vision sticks down to two. And... Uh, Greg Pelican sitting in a healthy 18 life with uh, on turn four, which is not where Paul wants him to be. No. Yeah, cryptic up, ancestral ticking down, batter skull in hand, reman going. Mother of runes in play. This is it looks bad. It looks bad. We haven't had too many close games so yeah. far. We're zero for four, I think, on close games. Uh, I guess the closest game was game one of uh, Nate and Carl when uh, the World Spine Worm got put into play. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. Uh, Nate just had the temporal spring going. So, so we have a cough uh, getting remanded. Yep. I it looking. It's looking like Greg's going to take this game home. And then, uh, yeah, he's got Batter Skull coming down next turn. Does he have Batter Skull in his hand? I can't. You, yeah, he, he has Batter Skull and he drew the fifth mana. Um, this should so, be like way closer here. Yeah. 
There we go. That, that that makes everything work. There we go. If you guys think of my uh, five line keeper or five card no hand keeper, we we think, thought you had to do it. I, I don't yeah. think is your mic on. Is is Nate's mic on? Click it up. There it is. What did you think of my five card no land keeper? I said uh, I loved it. Actually. Yeah, we thought you had to do it. Yeah. yeah. Did you uh, win that game? No. <laughs> that, was, that was the one he got. It, it got dismembered. His elf got dismembered, and then he never drew. The first lane he drew a strip mine. <laughs> then the second lane he drew his wasteland. Yeah. Uh, it was uh, troublesome. Ooh. Yeah. So Meef Teeker's Schmish. Meef Teeker's back in it. He smashed the smithereens. The, can't, can't mother of ruins that. Out of school. Yeah. Suck it, mother of ruins. Ancestral's going off for Greg Pelican here. Yep. Well, Smash keeps ahead. him in the game, though. Uh, so Ancestral happens. That's one. That's and two. Greg is at 14. Yeah, he drew a Misdirection. Is that a card that he drew? Misdirection, Swords, Augur of Bolas, Cryptic Command, Vendillion, Click, uh, all in Greg's hand. So uh, after this game, we're going to do the raffle. Or it's, uh, it's a raffle, I guess. Uh, so if you aren't already a member of the Facebook group, join the link below. Add yourself to the Facebook group and... Uh, You'll be eligible to win twenty five dollars for Northwest Sports Cards, uh, Hola. which is an online shop, as I keep mentioning. Uh, so you'll, no matter pa no ma pa paper, <laughs> so no matter where you're at, you'll be able to redeem it. Um, and I guess we're like doing free shipping and twenty percent off singles or something like that. Yeah. What if I was just like? I guess what if I was just like stuff. fifty percent off singles? Like, is that just locked in stone? No. No, I'm getting a thumbs down. Sorry, guys, I tried. We work for you, the people. <laughs> There we go. We we all right. We have a new raffle that'll happen later. Uh, we, it is a raffle for fifty percent off any one single. That's even if it's like a black lotus. Any one single. She, we got fifty percent yes. off. Nodding it up. All right. All right. We'll do that. All right. That's going to be the the last giveaway. See, we work we work for you guys. We That's work right. for the people. Yeah. It's good. We did it. No one's going to use it. Yeah. Just uh, whatever. All right. So Meef Teeker resolves that cough again. No, he doesn't. Instantly gets cryptic commands. No, he didn't. He didn't resolve Paul's it. Paul's F. Beaker is at seven. How? I don't, I don't know how that happened. Is, is Paul actually at 19? He's just not changing his life. I think I think Greg's at seven. And Paul's no, Greg, at Greg's got to be at 14. How did he get? Liz is on it. Searing Blaze happened. Smash happened. We should probably pay attention to the game at some point. I've, you know, life totals aren't important. All right, seven to nineteen. All right, so we've got an auger. Uh, auger whiffs. And whiffs. But you know what it does? It blocks stuff, which is what's really important. And Greg has a whole bunch of cards in his hand. He well, has a resto angel. Resto angel. Set a detention sphere in his hand too. Timely reinforcements. Let's gain six. Yeah, but he doesn't get the guys. Uh, that's true. No, but, yeah, yeah. I mean, he has V click. So well, I think my line here would probably just be V click. Do you know what's up? So, so who's the crowd favorite right now? Who, who does? Uh, well, I think Cedric Phillips is the crowd favorite wherever yeah. he goes. He's, he's my favorite. He's too. a likable yeah. guy. Um, I don't know. Let's ask the we, uh, we, let's ask the stream. Who who do people think is going to take this whole thing down? Uh, let's uh, let's see some. Uh, you're, you're actually my favorite, Nate. That's, uh, you're like a sweet. I don't know. I, I it's fun. I don't know that you're my pick to win, but you definitely I, have the sweetest deck. I don't know if I'd be my pick to win. Either. Yeah, you won enough. us over. You won us over with your last turn on Canberra. Yeah, we oh, were yeah. like, this is gonna be a spicy one. Yeah. When the deck starts going, it can do a lot of yep. things. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. When Priest of Titania does not get removed, it's uh, it's Ooh. a powerful thing. All rips a Storm Breath Dragon off the top. Oh no, which, he pyroblasted. Uh, uh, he, he, I think he drew the card that his. In his hand currently, he pyroblasted the Vendillion Click to protect Stormbreath Dragon, mm -hmm. uh, and it is now in puts play. Greg Peliquin to three life, and uh, he cannot detention sphere that. He cannot block it with uh, Resto Angel. Oh boy! Uh, and uh, he did not. Oh, you know what he could have done was uh, Riptide. He could have misdirected the pyroblast over to his misdirection. Uh, as expected, Seti is the favorite. Everyone loves Cedric Phillips. Yep. <laughs> Corbett seven zero. We have a. We have a, a request. <laughs> who is who is Solsuk? That's got to be Corbett. Yeah, he's just <laughs> Corbett's just in the chat. Corbett. Yeah, Corbett's gonna seven zero. I can't be real. No one wants Corbett to win. All right, Pel All right yeah. Pelican getting in for one. Yeah, we, we a little harsh on Corbett. Yeah, yeah, here. no Corbett's uh, Corbett's gas. Corbett is a fire, powerful magician. He's very good. That's he's just, all right. <laughs> <laughs> he can he can do some big stuff early, but uh, okay. Timely. So Pelican. 
timely reinforces his life total. A timely, timely reinforcement. Yes. That joke has never been made. That's surprising by to anyone. Me. That's surprising to me. Because when just I said it, it I thought for sure right it had been made before. Mm, see, you're wrong. <laughs> and uh, Stormbreath Dragon bringing Greg to five. Uh, uh, it could get monsterified pretty quick yep, here. One, uh, one more land. And uh, <laughs> so Rift Bolt is on the stack. Uh, Greg has misdirection. And that's about all he's got. We, we got to vote for G. Pelly, but I believe mm -hmm. it is uh, his uh, lady. Well, <laughs> that, that's probably a good thing, then. Yeah, yeah. Well, she just wants the boost. He took it down last time, uh, and I think she really capitalized on it. Yep. I don't know. All right, so Misdirection goes uh, for, sends the Rift Bolt back at its master. Uh, Paul down to 15 life points. And uh, Storm Breath is threatening Monstrous uh, with one more land. And or just two hits will kill. Uh, right here, Flying so. Grizzly Bears is asking, "What is a vintage draft with storm breaths? It's a vintage rotisserie draft, which is a little different. Uh, we'll, we'll explain it a little bit later. Yeah. Um, not and, everybody gets a lotus. Not everybody gets a mox. Not everybody gets an ancestral. So you, if if somebody ooh, takes the ancestral, ooh, Greg you don't is get holding any. flame, or Paul is holding flame rift. So okay. um, so he, I think Greg has, has Snapcaster Mage in his hand, which is very powerful with a Riptide Lab in play. But Swords is doing nothing. I wish I knew it was in his graveyard." Can he survive? Uh, he has a remand. He has a cryptic. Okay. Um, remand is not good enough. Cryptic is cryptic is good enough because he can cryptic. He can cast yeah, it. he okay. can cryptic storm breath. Like I mean, if Paul, Paul's obviously not going to flame rift first, but if he did, he could snapcaster and cryptic to counter the thing and bounce the storm breath and get him. Yeah. So Greg's actually looking all right here now. If Paul draws another burn spell, I don't know about all right. He's really. I mean, close he's to looking dead. better than he could. And He's not. What dead. is that he drew? What is that he drew? A spell. It's a Chandra's Phoenix. So counter that. Bounce. Storm, Storm breath. breath. But then he's dead. No, he's not. Oh, he goes to one. Yeah, he goes to one. And then Paul will go to ten. And I mean, he has to Snapcaster here, right? Otherwise, he's dead. Apparently, people were saying Vapor Snag. Yeah, he has Vapor Snag as an option. Someone's like, this I like, Ferris Vintage. Well, you know, you miss the deck with Time Vault, Voltaic Key, Painter Servant, Grindstone, yeah. Natural Order. Uh, so, you know, some decks are more fair than others. Or the deck that made 35 mana on turn three and attacked with Azuri and Double Overrun yeah. after activating Memory Jar. That was a good yeah. Memory Jar. That was, yeah. I almost just strip mined his whole, all his lands instead. I considered yeah. that from you as well, yeah. Uh, all right, so Cryptic is getting uh, Snapcastered here. Um, Greg's got to try to win this game like pretty quickly, I think. Um, yeah, counterbounce, uh, and uh, and then next turn he can Riptide Snapcaster Remand. So you gotta you gotta fire off the Flame Rift here, right? Uh, probably. Uh, but uh, next turn, uh, Greg can can Riptide Snapcaster Remand. I think uh, if he draws a land, Ugh. he needs a land. Oh, uh, even if he doesn't have a land, he Ooh, can he I can rest like not. I mean, I guess he he maybe he's afraid that. Greg kills him if he casts Flame Rift, but I don't think I think that's being a little too cautious. Um, perhaps uh, he could also he could also like be just like Storm Breath you, and then Greg might let it resolve because he's not dead, and then the Flame Rift is lethal. Yeah. So, but if he draw if he Flame Rifts him there, and then he draws like Lightning Bolt. Yeah, there's a lot of outs. I, I think he's just limiting himself here quite a bit by not casting that Flame Rift. Draws a Mox Ruby, which is enough to get the Storm Breath Monstrous next turn, and to be able to cast. I mean, yeah, spells. It's, it's not going to resolve, but I, like I probably would have cast the Flame Rift myself, but uh, I can I can understand like trying to leave the guy at five and then because like Lightning Bolt doesn't matter when you have seven mana, yeah. so maybe he's just like I'm going to try. Yeah, see this happened right. Um, he Storm Breath and. Uh, so he's got, got to attack. Oh, he's he, resto. He got to do what I th what he thought. The snapcaster. Yeah, snapcaster's the vapor snag, and then vapor snags it back to his hand. So Paul's now uh, Paul's now down to ten, facing six damage. Uh, Greg also has a swords backup in his hand for the Bob Mara trick of swords my creature in response to lethal. So, um, how much sword credit have we given away so far? I don't know. Is yeah. this our is this our last twenty five? Forty five. 10, 10, 25. We've okay. given away. It's really great to see all these creatures in vintage. Yeah, it's yeah. cool. 
but I wasn't expecting all the creature removal also. I don't think anybody was. Yeah, well, I mean, it's reactionary, right? Like, you right. get to see the creatures getting drafted, right. so then you get to prioritize. For those of you who can't see, we have Nate Heiss uh, off camera uh, on the microphone for us. So. Spooky. Just, <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, I, uh, I was talking about that during the draft, actually, because I, I thought that your deck was going to be really well positioned because you were, like, super combo, and all these other aggro decks had popped up in this draft, uh, whereas that hadn't really been a thing in previous drafts. Mm -hmm. And so all the control decks were drafting creature removal <laughs> and so, as opposed to, like, uh, combo hate. I need to set someone in the, in, the, in, the, in the chat straight. People say, why are mox, moxes worth so much when they are literally just basic lands that can be destroyed more easily? That is could not be further from the truth. <laughs> uh, moxes accelerate you. You can play as many as you want in a turn. Um, and, be, and they stay in play. So yeah, I mean, if you draw a mox on like turn twelve, like all right, yeah, it's fine. It's a mountain. But yeah, yeah. If you draw it in your opening hand, then you can play like Eidolon of the Great Rebel on turn it's, one, and it's then like every a turn mark almost, yeah, right? yeah, you're exactly. a turn ahead for the rest of the game. Yep. Oh, oh lord, he's gonna swords. Huh. What happened? Uh, Paul went for uh, lethal on the. And he swords his own guy. Yeah. I imagine. Okay. Yeah. So it looks like Greg Pelican takes it down. Yeah. But uh, yes, uh, Moxes are insanely powerful. Oh, Paul actually went for the draw with the Flame Rift. Oh. He was at four. Uh, he went for the draw. And I respect Greg, that. And Greg swords his own guy. I that would have been fun that. to get a game four on camera. <laughs> so, um, yeah, but uh, I, I thought that your deck was really well positioned, Nate, uh, being combo uh, against all these control deck drafting creature removal. But then I was like, ah, well, he has elves, too. Right, the, um, the creature removal kind of works against me, though. A little bit, but you have a bunch of draw sevens. Yeah. And so, like, if you can stick, like, one or two mana guys, you know, uh, they're all threatening really powerful. Yeah. All right, so um, we're going to get the next match in here. According to my phone, it says it's going to be Sean Collins versus Corbett Gray, and we are gonna, I'm going to tag out. I'm going to get uh, Joe Bono back in the booth here. Okay. I probably got uh, a match to play as well. Yeah, Nate, you should go play some matches. Um, all right, I I'll be back. I'll see you guys later. I'm going to grab Joe Bono, and we'll keep going. Joe Bono. Joe Bono. Do you, are you keeping track of the, of the uh, results? Do we know who our match is? You already said that. I'm just dumb. Can anyone... Is my mic live? I bet it's live. It's probably live. I love that. I think it's Sean versus Corbett. Sean versus Corbett. Okay. We get to see the artifact... Deck. Did, did Corbett win his second match, or is this okay? So he's two zero. Wow. Yeah, so Corbett defeated Cedric Phillips in the second round. Uh, apparently, it was a a slaughter, uh, according to one Joe Bono. So Corbett's on our right, and uh, Sean is on our left here. Yeah, on paper, the the Cedric versus Corbett match. Sounded pretty even. Um, oh, we, we need to do our giveaway? We need to do our giveaway. We're not doing our giveaway. I don't... Are we doing our giveaway? We are doing our giveaway! Yay! Yay! We figured it out! All right, so... Anybody <laughs> who joined the Facebook group within the last giveaway to this giveaway... Uh, today. Oh, today? Yeah. Anybody who joined the Facebook group today, we have our shit together, as you can tell. Uh, <laughs> so uh, we're going to be pulling a random name from that uh, that pool of names, and you will receive twenty five bones of store credit uh, to uh, to Northwest Sports Cards, uh, the gamer's choice in uh, in Tacoma, Washington. So uh, that can be used uh, anywhere in the country. Even if you don't live in Seattle, you can get stuff shipped to you. Uh, free shipping on twenty five dollars or more, and uh, twenty five. 20%, sorry, 20% off your entire order. Then you can use your store credit. It's a hell of a deal. Chris Cowan, who's our winner? Uh, <clears throat> our winner is Tanner Maxwell. Tanner Maxwell. Woo! Tanner Maxwell is our winner. Come on down. Congratulations, Tanner. Um, I want you to uh, to make an account on nwgamerschoice.com, and then I want you to uh, uh, personal message uh, Shotgun Lotus. And give me your uh, obviously your first name, last name, because I still need it because I'm gonna forget first name, last name, and the uh, email that you use to sign up with your account. That's all I need. Boom. Very nice. Boom. Is there a time limit on when he needs to respond? Uh, yes. By the end of the by the end of this 
thing I mean, yeah, that we're doing. Just just do it, please. Soon, please. <laughs> Thank you, Chris, for, for coordinating this and Absolutely. making all this possible. Chris is hardest working man in the room, I guess. Probably probably the building. Definitely the building. <laughs> there are only there are a lot there of, are three of us people in the, room, in the yeah. building. <laughs> there are three men in the room. He probably works harder than you and me. Yeah, so that's true. That by default, you're Chris not a man. Yeah. Hardest working man in the room was. Jeez. All right, we'd rolled uh, five d sixes here, and that's uh, 14, 17, 19. What's Sean's last name? Collins. C o l l i n s. Yeah. So Corbett with a good old nineteen. Come on, Sean. Big numbers. That looks good. Nineteen. Nineteen. All right. The they both rolled nineteen. Yeah. The, the. Oh, they were doing best poker hand pair. Pair for Sean pair of sixes how exciting uh so sean is the one with the mono black disruption deck lots of thought seizes and other discards. <laughs> he's mono disruption yeah uh, uh <laughs> and corbett is one of the two like really broke i guess three really broken decks yeah the artifact uh one. his deck carl's deck and uh, uh nate's deck right yeah 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 um and so when yeah, the, I was watching the match that Corbett had against Cedric, yep. and in game two, Cedric cast a taxing probe on turn one on Corbett. And then conceded? Uh, no, no. <laughs> Corbett had uh, Silence, and Emrakul, and Mana Vault, and Dispel, and three lands that don't produce any white mana. Okay. Uh, then he top-decked uh, a Plains that uh, forced Cedric to take away the Silence, and then he top-decked Tinker. All right. Uh, yeah. And tinker for Blight Seed. Or no, Boom. Tinker for Inkwell Leviathan. Yep. That, that'll do it against yeah. Sed. Uh, Mike sounds like it's back We're on, on. yeah. Okay, yeah. we just had to put in our Zell's order real quick. Um, Feels good. It does. I'm excited to have that coming my way. Yeah. Um, so we have the turn one Academy into Grin Monolith versus a turn two him to Torak. Getting, looks like... Uh, it got Blightsteel and Consecrated Sphinx. Oh, Blightsteel's getting shuffled in. Yep. That's kind of where you want the Blightsteel, though, yes. in your deck for the Tinker. Yep. You don't really. He he did hit Consecrated Sphinx, though, which was coming down next turn. Yeah, that's true. Because Corbett has six mana on turn one. Uh, and actually, he was going to have some more because he's got an Artifact Land Yeah. Uh, and a Mana Vault. Oh, he has hand. Mystical. Oh, or wow. So he it. can now upkeep Mystical for the Tinker. Cast the Tinker for the Blight Steel. Now that's now in his deck. Yeah, that seems pretty good. Uh, Sean Sean does have the Toxic Deluge, so you could play a land, spend eleven life to kill the Blight Steel. That is worth it. I would, I would do that. <laughs> uh, I would say that is worth it. And then yeah, his follow up is uh, Phyrexian uh, Obliterator, so that's not bad. Uh, oddly enough, if the um, if the Blight Steel had not gotten taken, Corbett still had the option to Mystical for Show and Tell to yeah. put it into play. Let's see. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. He was actually one off from hard casting the Blight Steel. Wow. So, you know, a little wow. column A, a little column B. But yeah, Sean kind of unlucky in his him hitting those particular cards. Yeah. Well, Corbett had like three gas gas cards in his hand. Oh. Hmm. I guess we're just going to draw a ton of cards. That's smart. Actually, yeah. this is really smart. This is a good play by Corbett. Um, he's going to just maximize his card drawing, fill, yeah. refill his hand against the deck that's trying to one-for-one one discard. Yeah. And, um, and yeah, and that way he doesn't put all his eggs in one basket because if he tinkers for Blightsteel and it dies, yeah, uh, he's and And Sean does have a number of edicts and yep. stuff. Uh, so maybe I misread Corbett's hand. I thought that he had a mana vault, but he would have played that. Oh uh, no! Yeah, it. he just had uh, his hand was mystical dark. Uh, okay, uh, dark still said it also. Um, so that taps for two, three, four, five, six, seven. So he brain geyser for five. five. Yeah. 
Uh, so we've got the Mana Crypt, Island, Crypt, Mind, Mind Matter, Over Matter, and the Blight for, Steel, yeah. and, uh, and the Hellkite. Steel, Steel Hellkite. Hellkite. Yeah. So, pretty good. And from Sean, Pain Seer. Pain Seer. That's not really what he wanted. He wanted to have more disruption. Is in that him. a Kildoth of Forge Master? Yeah. Okay. So I, Corbett, Corbett is going to be presenting threats mm -hmm. for the rest of the game yep. uh, that Sean is just going to have to deal with. And you know, Can I, he get to 11 this turn? He can play Mind Over Matter and then discard like two cards to get to 11 to cast Blightsteel, right? Like if he wanted to? Yes. He definitely has enough blue mana. Four, five, six, that means two. Uh, that taps for four each time. Yeah. He would need to discard three cards. Eh, so he cast mine. Oh, he has island. Yeah, yeah no, he's, he's, he's got can... enough cards in hand. Yeah. Uh, so you cast mind over matter. Uh, you discard. Maybe instead of casting the blight steel, he casts Forge Master and Hellkite. Yeah. I, I kind of like that better. I, I just want to put, put a two whole things bunch of threats on the yeah. board. Um, and you just don't worry about the mind over matter. Right. But, nah. So discard that yep. top tap academy. Yep. So four, five, six. six. Yeah, he's going to cast the Hellkite, it looks like. Who he's trying to decide. Yep, okay. Cast the Hellkite, discard Blightsteel to cast. Oh, wow, interesting. That's a huge bitch! <laughs> mm. I, like, I kind of agree with like conserving the resources and not... <laughs> That's uh, a huge piece. <laughs> not throwing away cards, but I think I I just prefer to you know see yeah like that's that's a big reason to why you want one the... turn. Right, uh, I guess like this is this he's is the wait, reason why you don't. Oh, uh, maybe he's drawing out the he's drawing out the removal spell. Yeah, then get blight steel into yeah, play. Yeah, yeah, like rushing to get blight steel into play isn't a problem. You know, you just would like to get the forge master out next and yep. hellkite and so on and so forth. Sure. Um. So yeah, now he can tap that for four. Uh, oh yeah, they have to uh, mana crypt going on. Corbett likes to not take damage on two. That's this is like standard call. Okay. And blight steel. All right. And we got rid of the edict from yep. Sean and That's like. A huge bitch. That is a huge bitch. Presumably, Sean would have cast his Geth's Verdict before he would have cast Diabolic Edict, so this Blight Steel is pretty safe. Sort of. Uh, we don't. Corbett doesn't know that Sean has a Phyrexian Obliterator in his hand. I mean, <laughs> okay, I sacrifice five permanents. Non Blight Steel permanents. Yes, yeah. Like, so. it kills him over two turns. Yeah, it's not the worst. Corbett does have more permanents in play now than he would have when he tinkered for it. Yeah, that's true. So, that's true. Um, yeah, no, the, the tinker plan was actually, would have would have resulted in a loss because of the Diabolic Edict that Sean had. Yeah. Forgetting that Mana Crypt. Yeah. Corbett's trying to cheat. I mean, he's just going to roll even every time. So. Yeah, that's fair. It's it's a free right Soul Ring, man. Ooh, tap that. Ooh, shh. Uh, I guess we're going to put two toughness in front of yeah. it. I know matter is a good card. Yeah. I like casting that and then that's untapping a, my candle operas. That's a good card. All right. So Sean is probably dead. Toxic Deluge. I don't uh, think that's oh, Toxic Are you deluge. sure? I think that was it. Really? Oh, it's Bloodgast. Yeah. Okay. Very sexy Bloodgast. Corbett is looking nice with this deck yeah. actually uh yeah we, i don't think we've ever had anybody who drafted them like mud deck uh and also get the tinker uh i don't think anybody has been able to put all the mana together with a tinker yeah and he has three tinkers he has mystical tutor he has personal tutor and he has tinker um we we did a little laughing at him uh, when he didn't take vampiric and demonic and was like i should have taken vampiric and demonic yeah. man uh which is true yeah uh, but he didn't, and his his deck is still pretty nice. Yeah, it turns he, out. Um, uh, we didn't like it a lot during the draft, really, right? Well, no. So the problem we had during the draft was just like he kept on passing up stuff that it turns out he had forgotten about. Yeah. But we didn't we didn't have objections to the like cards he was picking. Sure. It was just that we thought he should be picking them later and yeah. picking other cards okay. over them. Um, 
And it, it really did turn out that he forgot about a bunch of cards. Right. He didn't remember about Staff of Domination. He didn't remember Ancient Tomb and right. City of Traitors. Um, he, you know, he, he remembered Tezzeret the Seeker, but said, oh, well, I don't have the really cheap artifact combos, so maybe that's not worth it. But it probably still is just to, like, get some mana out and, uh, you know, like help you sort out whatever cards you sure. have in your hand to the right combos. Yeah. But he still has drafted a very powerful deck, and one of the nice things about it is that it's almost mono blue, so the mana is really consistent, yep. mm -hmm. and he has these very powerful blue and, cards. And oddly out. enough, too, this draft ended up with fewer like control-style decks. Yeah. There are a lot more beatdown decks, and I think this style of deck is a lot more uh, like well set up to deal with uh, decks that are just trying to clock. Yeah, um, you know, because what you do on your powerful turn is really, really good, and if the if the aggressive decks don't have like say an ancient grudge in their deck, or say a uh, seal of cleansing, like nobody, you know, I, did disenchant get drafted? I don't think so. Uh, so serenity didn't get yeah, drafted. Or of silence. None of the Pulverize artifact. Hate, yeah, get, none of the yeah. artifact hate stuff got taken. So um, I think Corbett ended up a little bit better positioned than we might have thought yeah. uh, initially. So. Um, kudos for him. Yeah, and I think I think he actually is going to benefit a lot from Sean sort of like amassing all of the hand disruption. Absolutely. That one to rest. Yes, absolutely. Because especially if he can beat him. Yeah. yeah. I mean, so like it's it's better to just like have an auto loss to him, but have nobody else have that disruption. Right. But the fact that Sean doesn't have a really fast clock mm -hmm. means that that disruption is going to be less effective against him. Right. And so he has a pretty good chance of beating Sean anyways. Right. And two of his tutors are really good against discard. Yeah. Mystical and, and yeah, personal, personal tutor are yeah. like, what is Sean going to do? Oh, I thought he uh, doesn't do anything. Yeah. Yeah. I just mystical and then cast Tinker the next turn and deal. Yeah. So, um, so one interesting thing is uh, Corbett is not, does not have the battle. Ball I started. just was thinking the same thing. And that seems really weird to me. So, like, especially against a deck with Guess Verdict and Diabolic Edict, right? Yeah. So I, he should bring it in. Yeah. But I think it would have been really good to have in the main deck for the whole mm -hmm. field. He lost game one against Alex uh, West when he could have tinkered on turn two or three, and if he had Battle Ball in, in his deck, he would have been able to chump block enough and probably survive. But sure. he didn't have it there, um, and I think. You know, it's it's good in this matchup where it gives you protection from edicts and it's hard sort of. To I mean, it, only against a tapped out opponent, right? Because it's a trigger. So, like when it comes into play, sure, you can cast sure. it with the trigger on sack. Um, you know, but like it, it there's helps, a window. Yeah, and like having four one ones is not, and mm -hmm. your opponent being down a card is not like an awful thing either. Right. You know, it helps protect your other cards. It's good at blocking against the two other aggressive decks. Yep. And, you know, it's a decent clock against mm -hmm. the other decks. And it's also super castable. Right. He can cast it on turn three, like, yeah. every game. Yeah. Um, and, you know, there are a fair number of games where he's going to be able to cast it on turn two. Like, if he had had it in his hand instead of Blightsteel that game, he would have been able to cast it on turn mm -hmm. two. Um, whereas Blightsteel is, like... It's actually surprisingly castable in his deck. Well, if he'd had it instead of Blightsteel, it would have gotten discarded to him to turn up. Sure, <laughs> sure, sure. Um, but, you know, it's not it's not something that you cast on turn two or turn three. Yep. Blightsteel isn't that. Right. Um, so, but Corbett has a very high power deck. Yeah. It's going to be fairly consistent because it has a good mana base and all of the things it does are, you know, like kind of semi-redundant mm -hmm. and are all like two-card things. You know, he's got the show and tell yep. and he's got the tinker and yep. lots of broken stuff. That and all the, t the tutors are really good in his deck, actually. Yeah. So, um, yeah, he has, he has three tinkers and three show and tells. Yeah. And uh, that's that's pretty powerful. Um, and he even like made good use of the uh, Scepter Chant, which I was kind of upset about. He won one of the games against Alex West by getting... Uh, Orm's chant on a scepter and, and he like drawing one of his yeah. like two planes or whatever. Yeah. Uh, and Alex was just like, "Well, that what are you gonna do? Uh, yeah. What can yeah. you do when your opponent is the luckiest man uh, <laughs> in the world? That's Charles Nothing. Wong. That's true. That's true. Um, all right, so we're getting ready to go for game two here. Uh, do you think? Did you? See, I thought I saw Corbett not sideboarding the battle ball. Uh, he I, was thumbing around in yeah, a non sleeve I wasn't paying so. quite close enough attention. Uh, so he he's got Tinker. He does have a Tinker, and, and he's, a, he's a turn two Tinker. What is that last card in his hand? Uh, Basalt Monolith Sensei's okay. Divining Top Mox Diamond. Three Islands. And Sean is mulliganing. Yeah. Um, do you so, tinker uh, away the mana there, or do you tinker away the, uh, the, the top? top? 
Uh, I would tinker away the mana. Um, top is really powerful uh, against a deck with a bunch of discard. That's true. You know, That's you just true. draw your best card, or you can hide stuff until you're ready to play it. Mm -hmm. uh, also, like if he goes, uh, the fact that he's discarding Mox Diamond or like sacrificing Mox Diamond to the Tinker uh, isn't crazy relevant because he just has uh, Basalt Monolith to follow it up. Yeah, and then he's like back on the mana plan. Yeah. Um, so if if his threat gets dealt with, he doesn't really care. Um, so I I would I would get rid of the top. Uh, well, now it's an easy choice. Yeah. Uh, so Sean has smallpox, uh, which is pretty nice uh, in this situation. Yeah, that it's, is true. It's going to slow down Corbett. Uh, and He's going to bitter blossom first. Yeah. Oh, I don't know if I agree with that. I mean, he doesn't know what's coming, right? Uh, does Sean not have a third land? If I, I, it seems reasonable if he doesn't have a third land. Uh, uh, he's got the gate to Phyrexia too. Okay, this makes more. He sense. He does have a third land. Yeah. But he also has Liliana. Yeah, he he probably uh, wants to smallpox like later. He can also smallpox the tinker target, right? Yeah, like get it for more value. So, oh boy. Uh oh. Yeah, Corbett is not going to let smallpox kill a creature. <laughs> well, he just he put, he, <laughs> Sean's is going to be dead. Yeah, lightning greaves game game. Gate yeah, two fire exit. See, like this this would have been really exciting if. You know, Sean had had a hand disruption in his spell. Like, yep. if he had had a thought seize to go along with this... How does he not have one in his, in his it's deck? It's ridiculous. Like seven in his own. Yeah. That's crazy. Uh, Top, and looks like Corbett's just going to tinker for Blightsteel next turn, and it's going to be over. So over. Because uh, Sean does not have the Dismember, and there are no instant speed, one mana edicts. Is that yeah. correct? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And, and he like, only has one tough... blood is the right. only edict. And he only has one toughness speed. in play. So uh, it's going to be pretty rough. Corbett, Corbett with a little slow roll here. Um, hmm. What could he possibly be playing around? He knows where the dismember is. Right. I guess I guess it could be a disfigure. Uh, sure. No, Sed has that too. Sed has that? Okay. Yeah. Uh, right. Corbett also, you know, might not think about those things, right? That's true. That's true. Um. So, Might as well like be safe and you know yeah. play around I mean, with he's things gonna, that he's going to get it and it's going to be he's a forgetful man. There it is. And Boom. There is the hand. Lightning Greaves, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. That's a good that's a sweet one. That was good. Tinker turns out pretty powerful card. Yeah, it's it's good. I was I was a little surprised that uh, Corbett didn't go for uh, a non-creature uh Tinker plan. Hmm. Not like in addition to because like he can tinker for three different fatties yeah right um but i was surprised that he didn't take a non-creature way to tinker in case of maybe i have to play around anita yeah. this turn no or uh, uh you know he could he could have gone for uh painter servant grindstone or well, the doctor he, sword that we were talking about the painter servant grindstone got picked up pretty quickly uh, I, I think, think it was, it was in the like, first ten picks. Yeah, I, I would yeah. I would have expected him to take it in the uh, like seven to eight range. Yeah, I think I think he was just very focused on on taking all the accelerating mana at that we point. We can pull up the draft um, actually here. But one of the, one of the things that uh, Paul and I talked about during the draft was that um, Corbett made this pick of Time Spiral when. Uh, instead of memory jar, instead of memory jar, yeah. and jar was still out there, and like that prompted Nate Heist to take the memory jar because he was like, "Oh well, I lost one of my draw sevens. Yep. I better get them all." Yeah. So Painter Servant went in six seven, uh, right after Corbett had taken all of his mana, and then he took Power Artifact. Yeah. Uh, it, where I actually, this is the spot where he took Power Artifact, where I would have taken Painter Servant in that spot, because no one is going to take your Power Artifact from you, yep. and you get to signal. A super powerful combination. Yeah, so um, he could have he could have taken it instead of the basalt monolith. Um, I he could actually just have taken painter servant at power artifact grindstone at workshop if he wanted, or he could float the grindstone like five picks because no yeah. one's going to take it from him. Uh, and then like he could still have taken he could have gone power artifact after you know or whatever. Uh, he probably could have taken muddle earlier than he did. And then still ended up with all these cards, and instead of say, uh, instead of say like, the workshop, 
Um, yeah, you, you float know. you float the workshop and you know part two of mm -hmm. either power artifact or right. grindstone a little bit longer. Yep. You get the tutors, uh, the mox diamond. So he took the mox diamond in reaction to Alex taking the chrome mox because he was afraid um, of losing correct more. Which is more was a really that smart play. Yeah. Um, so it's it's just yeah. I was actually workshop. surprised that Alex took uh, chrome mox instead of mox diamond, which is typically more of a like you you would rather. As, as the aggressive creature deck, you would rather discard a land than a spell, Yeah. Um, usually. And it fixes his mana better than tapping for one color, taps for every color. Sure. Yeah, so when talking to Alex, you know, he was replacing the Arid Mesa mm -hmm. with that with that card, and so I think he was thinking along the lines of, okay. I want this to take a land slot. Sure. Um, and I still want to be playing 15 right, lands. Right, because so. Paul took Arid Mesa in the yeah. second round. Um, and it's not even 15 lands that he's he's playing, it's 15 mana sources. Two of them okay. are already moxes, so yep. uh, the mox the mox diamond is actually kind of rough for okay. that. Okay, totally makes sense. You don't have yep. a whole bunch absolutely of lands, makes but. sense after that. Uh, Corbett is playing against uh, in this match. Who is that? Uh, Carl. Yes. Okay. Uh, yeah, Corbett versus Carl. So we finally get two, two pair like unfair decks. Yes, two unfair decks. Very nice. Uh, and so Carl at this point is one and two, uh, whereas Corbett Gray, the Crobat, the Crobat is three zero. Crobat cast Tinker. It was very effective. <laughs> uh, so, who do you like in this matchup? I like uh, I like Cro Corbett's deck. I think. Okay. Um, I think maybe not actually in this in this uh, specific matchup because he doesn't have a lot of interactive stuff, and Carl has like broken broken stuff he can yeah. do too. Carl like Carl's combos are actually a little bit faster. Yeah. Um, he doesn't, and uh, I guess like he has some acceleration with the elves and stuff. Yeah, and he can he can reanimate Bane of Progress too. Yeah, yeah. Um, um, like they're both doing a lot of unfair things. I think Carl is going to be much less consistent. Yep. Than Corbett is. Yep. But the speed might help out. Uh, I think Carl's deck is capable of faster draws, but on average is slightly slower. Yeah. Yeah. So Carl has a Necromancy and a Lightning Tutor. tutor. An island, Lanor Waste. An interesting card that Carl could have taken, uh, like, because he it's very like clearly structured his deck around Enlightened Tutor, right? Yes. Like all of his stuff that he wanted to be doing, he also wanted to happen to be an artifact or an enchantment so that he could get it with Enlightened Tutor. A cool card, like maybe instead of the compulsive research that he drafted, that he could have taken uh, is Attunement uh, for uh, to get with the Enlightened Tutor. Yeah. Um, but. Uh, Obviously, he didn't go that direction. So uh, potentially, Serenity would have been a good pick here yeah. for for this particular matchup. I think Bane of Progress is probably probably a better pick um, if you're looking at dedicated. You can also just, just one cast it, right? Slot. Like it's just six. Yeah, it's yeah. just six. Like it's 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 pretty reasonable. Um, but if you want a second one, Serenity is probably the way to go. Yeah. So Corbett's hand is uh, looks to be a couple of lands. Uh, a um, there's a Tinker, a Mind Over Matter, a Show and Tell. A oh, one land. One uh, land, Grim Monolith. Model mixture, Grim Monolith yep. and the Temple Bell. So he has a, a Tinker and a Show and Tell and a couple infinite combos. Yeah, he's like he's in very good shape if he draws another land. Yeah. Um, but so Is we that have a the Cure as follower. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so no land from Corbett. Yeah. So what do we do? I guess Carl just wins if he gets to untap right because he tutors and light tutors for, for Time Vault. Time Vault. And then cast it, tap on tap, yep. Yeah. That'll do it. So Turn three kill. Turn three kill. And I am that's something that we're probably gonna say at least one more time this match. Jeej. How does it feel? <laughs> Tell me how does it feel? We need we need Lee Sharp in here for these. Oh god. <laughs> Just have karaoke we can have karaoke halftime. There you go. Yep. <laughs> with the sharps. Yeah, jeez. We actually had a at the at their wedding. We had a prop bet on the number of karaoke performances that Lee and Amanda would would present. Okay. And uh, Dwayne That's... set the line at six and a half. I hope you took the over. I did take the over. You, the, did you smash it. The final number was seven. 
Wow. Yeah. Good job, uh, Dwayne St. Arnold. Yeah, it was a good line. Nice line. Uh, he did not get rewarded for his good line. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. So Lee and Amanda like he, started it off with a duet, and I was just like... <laughs> and then uh, after that, they didn't perform for like an hour and a half. Actually, maybe not a good line, because like, you would have gone over on like eight and a half, right? I'm not sure. Really? Yeah, I, it's tough, because like, there were a lot of people there, and we think that, you know, like... They're going to let a bunch of people do this, and like the line's going to be pretty long, and it'll circle through, right? I knew that they would perform like every time they got a chance to, but I thought it would be a while. Also, to be fair, we knew that the event, like they had to leave the event hall at like 1130, oh. right? So like it's going to be a little bit lower in general, but six and a half, the perfect line, uh, and uh, me being the... Uh, Genius Perfect that I am, play. yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah. So that was uh, that was fun. Uh, we had, Dwayne and I did a, a solid amount of prop betting at the at the wedding. It was Very good. nice. We Very had a, nice. we had a bet on the the number of viewers that uh, watched <laughs> on stream. The Lee and Amanda had uh, streamed their wedding, and uh, I <laughs> I set the line and then just let anyone who wanted to take the over or under against me uh, pick either side, and I would take the other side. So. Oh well, you you did the Vegas thing. Yeah, I bookied it. Well, I yeah. didn't even charge. But you didn't you didn't have I just, the yeah, Vegas. Oh let them no! Uh, so yeah, we did that. That was fun. And then we the my favorite prop bet actually at that at that event was um, the KJ. Um, oh, I forget it. Ivan, I think is his name. Mm -hmm. uh, he had a just magnificent pair of black and white plaid pants, and I wanted them. I wanted, and so we set a line on. I was going to ask him, "Hey, Ivan." How many dollars would you need from me to give me your pants right now? <laughs> and then we set the line on not how much I would have to pay to get actually get the pants, but what, but he would say. what his response would yeah, be. Yeah, yeah. You right? laudened it. Yeah. And so, uh, yeah, we, we – Dwayne set the line at $200, and I just instantly took the over and went and asked him. Uh, and uh, he, he, he settled on $1 million yeah. was the number uh, that he settled on. So I won that bet too. That seems like a good bet for you. Like, yeah. The, the fact that he has to give them up If he had said $200, I would have bought them. Also, they wouldn't have fit me. I don't care. That's fine. Yeah. He's like a 28, yeah. 27. And like, I'm just, $200, like, that is worthwhile for the story. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. So, uh, yeah. Anytime you can get a good prop bet in, man, you know, got to do it. We, Me and Paul bet on when uh, managering was going to go. We bet after, like, the fifth round. We're like, when is this managering going to go? And I took the over on eight and a half. I lost. I lost it when the sixth. That's sad. Yeah. Yeah. It turns it turns out that like, you know, two of the blue drafters were trying to draft tempo decks mm -hmm. that didn't really want the colorless ban and didn't particularly right. want that expensive of a counter spell. Yeah. And Corbett didn't shocked, remember that. Yeah, Manager shocked Corbett didn't was take it. A yeah. card. Right. Yeah. He actually could have taken it in the sixth round when he took power artifact. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so may, actually, I probably wouldn't have taken painter server in that spot. I would take a mana drain in that spot. Sure. Think, yeah. Sure. Uh, Carl like on the mulligan here for, for Corbett. Corbett has an Isochron Scepter, a Silence, and mana vault, a Mana Vault. An so island, he has workshop. one land. Oh, his Workshop. So yeah. he can go. And he's got a Brain Geyser. Uh, but he doesn't have. So he has no. He has one blue mana, and he does not have a second source of like permanent mana that yeah, he can activate but like, the Scepter with. Right? You know, turn one, you get to go Workshop into. Uh, Workshop into Scepter. Plus Scepter, Silence, Mana Vault, go. Mana Vault, yeah. yeah. Um, and then, you know, like, if you draw a land, you can just silence him with the Mana Vault mana um, and just silence him the rest of the game. Yeah. That seems pretty reasonable. Yep. Carl's on five now, too. Yeah. So, so we're likely going to go to a game of three here, yeah. but... We'll see what happens. Are there any interesting sideboard cards for either of these boys? Uh, Here, I'm going to look at Carl. You look at Corbett. All right. Uh, Corbett did not enter his sideboard. Okay. This is interesting. So Carl has some, some cards in the sideboard. This can't be right. He's got Painter Servant Grindstone in the sideboard. He's got Karn Liberated in the sideboard. Twice. He has Channel Karn Liberated in the sideboard twice. In the sideboard. Uh, Cure, no, this can't be accurate because he's got Cure's follower listed in the sideboard. And he played that game one. Yeah. Right. Yeah. He, yeah. He also had uh, Time Vault and 
uh, Voltaic Key listed in the sideboard earlier after you reported that he won game one with that combination. So uh, I'm not. I, this is just not accurate. Yeah, he must have not entered it correctly. Hmm. But uh, all right, yeah. Workshop, Mana Vault, and. Uh, that's exactly the play that we discussed. Boom, so boom. We've got draw, I've got two lands, and Lion Tutor, Vampiric Tutor, Bizarre, and what's that last card in Carl's hand? The Transmute Artifact, I think. Okay. I could be wrong, but it looks like a blue card. So, Corbetry Stroke. Hmm. We can't is, really stroke for that much. Yeah, I think he's just going to wait. What's the uh, last card in his hand? Uh, Muddle the Ringster. I think he's just going to wait. I don't think he wants to silence off of that Mana Vault mana and use it now. Yeah. Yeah, that seems reasonable. And, like, a lot of what Carl is doing is he, he's got the two top deck tutors. Mm -hmm. And so you're, you're going to have some chance to respond to things. Especially Interesting. Corbin strokes for one. Hmm. Just really wants to draw that island. Uh, Mox Diamond is not an island. That's true. Be really good if you could bounce your Misha's workshop. Yep, that is true. Um, so Carl is vampiriking. Let's see what he gets. Yeah, oddly enough, the workshop just really not that good in these decks. Yeah, no, like everybody gets really excited about it, tries to mm -hmm. like drafts it in the first five picks. Yeah, and then it just doesn't do enough and like the kinds of things that it's doing in busted formats like actual vintage right like it's reliably coming down on the first turn and then reliably casting cards that keep your opponent from doing anything yeah right and like in this format it's like well maybe i'll draw it and maybe i'll use it on turn three to put a mirror battle sphere into play maybe um but uh yeah he's not doing a whole lot and um so we've got uh carl carl casts uh vampire tutor on upkeep uh, he, he actually casts it. Or on end step, I'm sorry, yeah. And then, um, so he's got a... Uh, ooh. So, oh, he's got the Flash? He drew the Tinker. Yeah. What is? What did he get with it? Uh, did he not get oh, the Oh, he's bizarre? got the Bane of Progress. Okay. So he's got Bane of Progress, which is going to be pretty good here. Um, although if Corbett draws, like... A land he can tinker, so. Um. Hmm. Carl's hand is I now. So having the flash plus the bane of progress uh, means that he's got protection from Anything whatever at any against point. Corbett has. Sure. And like he can beat the silence because he can do it in Yeah, speed. that's a good point. Um, so Corbett is kind of. Uh, well, he might so he's get crushed here. Yeah. Like Corbett's drawn the the island, so he probably thinks he's in good shape with the with the scepter. But yeah. Carl is set up. He could also just like theoretically just like now just sit on silence, right? Because Carl's represented that he's not doing a whole lot. Sure. So he could just say go silence, go silence, go silence, and like uh, force Carl to use the bane of progress. And then now if Cor if Corbett draws a land, then he can put the mox diamond in a play and tinker it away, right? Yeah. Um, but so here we, yeah. So it dies. Silence is removed. That's fine. Put some counters on this thing. Oh no, it's in the graveyard. Can't have to do that. But right. So Corbett stuff. now gets to just wait for a land, yep. and then tinker at his heart's content. Yeah, I'm well. Carl just has some mana guys. It's gonna take him a little while to rebuild. He discarded the natural order to his uh, bazaar as well, right? Yeah. Yeah, so uh, Carl's in a little bit of trouble at this point. Um, he does have, like, pretty good mana at the moment, uh, but he's empty-handed, and yeah. uh, and Corbett did just draw land, so he's going to get to tinker uh, this turn. And it has perfect information that Carl is, is empty, so. Yep. And he's also got this Orm's Chant, so he can... Oh, I guess he's losing his white mana, though. Yeah. So I think he just he could take her for ancient right? time. Just true. <laughs> That's true. Get rid of this mox diamond. Yeah, I think it has to been. be blight steel. Um, yeah. And this just puts Carl on a two-turn clock. Mm -hmm. Yep. And uh, yeah, he doesn't even get to activate Bazaar. Um, he's in. Uh, he's in some some serious hurt right now. Yep. And now. Corbett has muddle up as well. Yeah. 
This is just a very tough position to get back from. There's the power artifact. We're going to block, yep. put some toughness in block front of it. Block so we're not dead. Eight poison. And then probably dead. But we're, we're going to keep track of how much poison. Absolutely. It's important to enforce the game state. And oh, now we get an activation of Bazaar to try to peel. Yeah. All right. Did not get there. That's it. All right, All right. I'm going to step out for just a second. Okay. I'm Brooklyn was seeing yellow there. All right, so we're shuffling up. Uh, we'll see if there are any changes that are made. Looks like Carl has Sundering Titan still in his deck. He is maybe thinking... Oh, no, this is his sideboard he's thumbing through. So he's got, he's got a Cyclonic Rift that he's looking at bringing in. What is he thinking about taking out? Might want to just... Like, it's not crazy to take out Worm Coil Engine. It actually isn't that great against Corbett's deck because it's just sort of like a slow thing that doesn't impact the board and, you know, only kills your opponent in four turns or whatever. Um, that's that's an option. Uh, he doesn't have, like... He doesn't have the best cards to really crush Corbett, um, to, to disrupt him. Uh, you know, he's got... The Bane of Progress, he's got an Ashen Rider. Those are those are both pretty good. The Karn Liberated should be in the deck. Um, and, you know, Painter Grindstone should, should be in there too. You know, I think Carl just needs to say, oh, you know, let's, let's make sure that we uh, have a chance to just luck sack into a two-card combo and, and win the game right outright. All right, and we're back. Yeah. So Carl has cited in a Cyclonic Rift. Uh, that's the only change that's been made okay. between Game 2 and Game 3. And now what is Corbett doing? Oh, he's bringing in Phyrexian Metamorph. Uh, or maybe he broke a sleeve. I think he maybe he broke a sleeve. Okay. Yeah, he has uh, to start the Metamorph, right? Yeah, yeah. That, that card seems insane in his deck. And, like, he, he already has Sculpting Steel, so why wouldn't you have Metamorph first? Right. Yeah. Um, but so look, looking over Carl's deck, like, he's got... You know, he's got the two-card combos, um, but none of his fatties are super, super good to be reanimated. Yeah, the reanimation package does not seem all that well uh, well set up for, for this particular matchup. Yeah. Uh, granted, like, I guess if he can, like, just draw... The, the reanimation part is it seems, like, a little difficult to set up yeah. and time-consuming. But if he can just draw, like, a flash and a fatty, that's probably good uh, without, like, trying to work to get it. Because, um, like, if he can... Uh, That's like, only really good with like the Bane and the the Ashen Rider, though. Yes, Willful Primus, same thing. Sure, but right. like that's just destroying two lands. It's uh, not destroying any of the threats that Corbett can put sure, out. Sure, okay. It's not, right. a good, it's not as good of an answer card as right. the other cards are. I just meant like he could uh, use it to attack Corbett's mana. Sure, right. And then like uh, if his hand is slightly slower, you know, like uh, he can go like turn one bird, turn two, flash in, kill your two permanents. And then next turn, like, vamp for Time Vault to yeah. do something, right? So we're seeing here in Corbett's hand how uh, Workshop is not actually that great because he doesn't really have any artifacts that he's going to get out with it, I think. Uh, he's is got, that a Metamorph in the back of his hand? I think uh, it yeah, it's the Metamorph. He's got a Metamorph. He's got a Sphinx. He's got some lands. Um, what else does he have? Uh, chant kept seven here yeah he's got a mana crypt and a chant sphinx and yeah mana, is it a mana crypt i think i'm pretty sure that artifact in his hand is a mana crypt it cannot be a mana crypt because if it was a mana crypt he would have played uh crypt and uh metamorphed crypt, his crypt, crypt right sure and then have sphinx on turn two does he not have a second blue oh he has island uh ancient den in his hand you're right and yeah. yeah well well then well i guess we're going to go get something disgusting and big uh so that's tinker drawn for the turn yeah uh, if it's if it, the glare is too strong for you guys so on the stream. he can go he can tinker and then chant on upkeep sure oh now he can't why did he do that oh because he can he's gonna make metamorph. a copy of it yeah okay 
is reasonable. Two blight steel claws. Blight steel, blight steel on turn two. Two turn. That's that's fair. Com okay, that's an interesting setup. All right, that's probably better, right? Um, has to I be. kind of like chanting better on upkeep okay. because like Carl. Well, so you have to wonder what Carl is doing that he played a turn one elf that didn't attack with it, didn't tap any of his lands. Yeah. Um. Because like theoretically, yeah, this this play is dead to uh, vault key, right? Yeah. Because that takes four mana. Yes. Yeah. So this that's... is dead to vault key. Um, granted, Carl doesn't have that. Um, so Carl is vamping, and he's got. Uh, He's got if that's animate, flash. dead, worm coil engine, and flash. Yeah. So, but he doesn't have an island. Right. So, what can he do here? Maybe he's not vamping. And you have to vamp. What? What would possibly get him out of this? Uh, that's a good question. I can't think of anything. We've got Carl's deck list in front of us. Yeah. I think he's just dead, but like natural order, yeah. Is the only thing that he could do this turn is kill Corbett with time vault key. Yeah. Um, or get <coughs> bane of progress into play. But bane of progress isn't going to be big. Oh, they're indestructible, and they're also yeah, they're indestructible. Yeah. Yeah. You you need something that like shuffles them in when it comes into play. Yep. Cyclonic yeah, rift does yeah. I think. So yeah, um, I guess so. Like Corbett's play, Corbett plays around Cyclonic Rift by copying. Yeah, uh, but he doesn't play around Vault Key. Right. Plays into Vault Key. Plays around Cyclonic yeah. Rift. I think I'd. I think I'd rather play around Vault Key. I would also. Uh, Just like, you 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 actually lose to that instead of getting reset. Mm -hmm. Um, you still have, you still have the uh, metamorph in your hand. Yeah, and like you're not losing much by using up a silence. Yeah, I think I agree with that, but we'll see. So he's not completely dead. And like, if he's somehow trying to play around an edict effect, well, Carl could have cast an edict in response to the blight steel or in response to the metamorph. Right, because he had all the mana up, and you should know that Carl doesn't have any edict effects. Right. Yep. Um, so theoretically, Carl, if Carl has a blue mana in his hand, which he doesn't, right? He doesn't. Okay. If he did, he could vamp for uh, frantic search, and that would be the only way he could win. Sure. That uh, that would also and then work. peel perfect, perfect. Um. He. Yeah, the, none of his. No, no, he could. He could also vamp for Ashen Rider, uh, because he has Flash in his hand. And he could Flash in oh. Ashen Rider and exile them both. Okay. We we doing big Chief Cheatums and like getting I'm not, multiple I'm not cards. Sure what's happening right now. Uh, yeah, he's he's getting an island and. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. So if he, yeah, if he had, we're, the we're, we're playing around and say, yeah. So we would have gone there if we had had our blue source. Yep. If that elves of. Uh, and the funny Deep thing Shadow. is actually, uh, the chant doesn't even play around that. That's true. Uh, because like it keeps him from casting the flash on his own turn. Yeah. But then when he yep. untaps, he can just do it on upkeep. So. Um, yeah, Corbett uh, takes game two, right? That was game yeah, two. That was game two. Uh, that was game no, three. it was game that three. Was game, game three, three. No. right? Because Carl Mulligan's the five in the five second in the game. second game. Yep. And Corbett just had like a turn two tinker or something. Yeah. Some ridiculous thing. So all right, Corbett Gray four and zero. God, he's going to be so deck. insufferable it's if he true. wins this all. It's really true. What are we going to do about that? I don't know. Cancel the whole thing. Yeah. It's all over. Just abort. Yep. Paul, uh, round seven, we're just going to have to abort the whole thing. Shut it down. Cause what? Corbett might win. Corbett's 4-0. Oh. Um, uh, Nolan Boyd? I don't know. Yeah. yeah. It's, uh, Just, like, pull the fire alarm. Yeah, I agree. Due to technical difficulties. Yeah, due to, due to Corbett winning, uh, this draft has been canceled. <laughs> uh, uh, sorry to everyone, especially Corbett. Not to Corbett, actually. This, 
so I mean, one like you know I'll be a little bit sad if Corbett wins but two I think I'll be a little bit sad because this was a really exciting draft where there were a bunch of fair decks mm -hmm. I was like oh this could be like a different way of approaching the meta of vintage rich history and no like, broken the deck. most unfair deck just, <laughs> just seven o's yeah you know, that's that's just gonna be it's fun. so like, the reason that I ended up liking Nate's deck was like you know there are beatdown decks and all the control decks are drafting anti creature cards right yeah like I actually should just apply that logic to Corbett's deck yeah uh, because uh, no one drafted any artifact hate no one drafted any like anything that screws his deck up at all yeah um there's no even mind sensor to beat up his tinker or his personal tutor his mystical tutor there's no uh, his forge master yeah there's only one guy who has all the edicts he has yeah. diabolic geths and liliana all in one deck and he just and beat all the hand that, disruption and he just beat that yeah. guy uh corbett's deck is looking it looks really powerful um four and zero, four, oh, zero. corbett is four and zero plus win that final match he does. He yes. He could go seven zero and not win. That is true. Um, so uh, we're uh, we're gonna try to get another match on I'm camera here. Match, what? Yeah. Um, and then uh, mm. so yeah, we're gonna we're gonna <laughs> get a, another couple come up, players on here. Look, man, it's chicken time. Uh, it is chicken time. The chicken has arrived. It's very exciting times. Yep. Uh, right, so, so Corbin, well on his way to the uh, Shotgun Lotus trophy. You know, I have this trophy's growing on me, actually. I, I made this trophy, uh, and I, th I thought it looked pretty stupid. I, I was but told Amanda made that. No, I, I made, I constructed the trophy. Amanda built the, the Lotus uh, oh. the, the Lotus ornament. She did the only artistic part? Yeah, and then okay. I, you know, made this You glued some stuff together. Of, yeah. Um, so, yeah, hmm, there you go. Yeah. Um, Do you, for the next round, because we now have ShotgunLotus.com and all this stuff. Do we need to add a miniature shotgun to it? No, I don't think so because we're taking shots. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That works. Yeah. And then, uh, who do we? Uh, Carl. Carl looks to be the leader for the uh, the TED right now. Uh. He, he did win his first match. Did uh, Cedric win his first match? Cedric won his first match. Okay. Yeah. And I know he lost to Corbett, but I don't know what happened after that. Yeah. So, hmm. um, if we can get our our floor reporter, uh, chicken consumer. Not uh, sure how. Paul Alex Wade. might not be doing that well. Really, man. I yeah. thought Paul, or I thought uh, Alex and Sed would would smash this thing. But, and uh, Sean, Sean has lost at least two. Okay. I don't know. Can you get uh, like a floor report on records? I can do records. All right, cool. Uh, we have Carl Jans on the right battling Alex West on the left. That's not true. Carl Jans. Is Alex on West. West is on the right battling <laughs> Carl Jans on the left. There you go. Uh, so, do we know what their records are? I guess we'll you're gonna out. figure it out. Okay. Yeah. So Carl is one and three. Uh, Alex. Alex is probably the same. Maybe two and two. Alex is two and one. I think I heard one. Okay. So Alex is the one that drafted the zoo deck, yes. the sort of beat down deck. Uh, really excellent curve. He is playing Jungle Lion, which okay. yep. uh, I will remind you cannot intercept. It cannot intercept. <laughs> hey guys, I have some uh, records here for you. Oh, fantastic! Carl Jans, is my mic on? Yeah, yeah. All right, it's super on. I just want to make sure people know that it's Paul Waite talking. Uh, we have Carl Jans uh, at one and three, battling Alex West at two and one. Cool. Is is that all the records you have for us? Currently, yes. <laughs> Thank you, intrepid eat, floor reporter. I'm trying to eat my fried chicken. Give me a second. <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh man! All right, so uh, yeah, Fun Alex stuff. is the uh, put twenty in play on four. Yeah, deck and uh, it's it's really impressive. Like the when when he was playing against Corbett, you know he he's got three moxen. He's got the pearl, the emerald, and he's got. Uh, Chrome Mox. Okay. Um, and so, you know, there there are a lot of games that he has one of those in his initial hand. Yep. And so just putting four power in play on turn one and then four to six more on turn two has been really, really good for yeah. him. Um, it's it's an impressive deck. And so, like, the only – he lost to he lost to Corbett. Um, and, you know, he took close the match, first – though. He took the first yeah, game. Close match. It was really disgusting, like – he killed Corbett on turn four. Yep. Um, and Corbett had to draw a 
pretty well in the third game uh, to get out of it. You know, uh, Alex Alex had like a little bit of a slow draw, but Corbett also had a slow draw. Um, and then Corbett, I think, top decked into uh, Tinker for Battle Ball, and that stabilized him. Okay. But it stabilized him at like eight life. Yeah. And if it hadn't been Battle Ball, you know, Alex had like five two power creatures. Right. So. So a couple uh, of uh, hand cam amateurs, it looks like here. <laughs> yeah. So we got Swamp Island. Are we sure that's Carl? I don't think that's Carl. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's Carl. Yeah, that's an Enlightened Tutor in the middle of his hand. That's okay. Carl. So Swamp Island, Enlightened Tutor, a green card. Compulsive probably Research, I think. Compulsive re Yeah, Compulsive Research in the middle. Birds Two Swamps. Paradise? Birds of Paradise? In the probably. Uh, and then what is... So Alex is starting on... Uh, what's my piece for, for stomping ground here? Uh, I did not see a mox in his opener, so it looks like he's going to be playing fair, uh, um, and uh, just just going two four six and and trying to be uh, killing him that way. So it's a cure's follower. Uh, so Alex does have his Phyrexian Revoker in his hand, okay, uh, which is actually really good in Super this matchup. Key. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it looks like he's got uh, Quarter Paladin, and what is that red card? Something exciting. Uh, Carl is short on green mana, actually. does not have green mana for his uh, Elv Elves of Deep Shadow. Ooh. Um, I think I would have led with the island there so that if you do draw a green, you can cast the Curator's Follower the next turn. Yeah. Maybe that's, that's uh, wrong. I think you're probably right there. Um, so a quarter paladin pumps up the uh, experiment one, and uh, the clock begins. Tick tock, tick tock. Yeah, so Alex, when I was talking to him, he said that you know while he drafted Goblin Guide third mm -hmm. uh, overall in the, in the draft, he it, it was actually not one of the two best uh, one drops in his deck. Wild Nacatl yep. is up at the top, but yeah. Experiment One is actually the second card mm -hmm. for him. Uh, it was just that you know he picked Goblin Guide because uh, it was the card that most was contested. most in danger yep. of getting drafted. Uh, so this is, you know, for a non-mock start, this is a really good one for him. Yeah. Uh, and so now he has a choice of Wooly Thoktar or two dudes. I don't think he has a third mana. Uh, oh, he's Chrome Mox. I, yeah, he's, he's got something in his Okay, so right. he can Chrome Mox. Um, can he Chrome Mox? He can Chrome Mox away Tin Street Hooligan if he wants. Sure. That would let him cast Thoktar. Yeah. Or he could cast the Revoker because there is this key out. Um, I'm not sure if that's that's really what he wants. The RFG, to do. the Thoktar? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It's going to produce all the colors of mana, and now he's going to be able to play two guys this turn. And like, Is that a Dryad Militant on the right side of his hand? Oh, yeah. So we're so going to kill that, and then we're going to play the Dryad Militant. For six. Yeah. And the, the Quarter Paladin actually makes it better to get your... Uh, your creature, your yeah. power out in, in chunks. So that's lethal next turn. Yeah, Carl's yeah. on 12, and he's got 12 damage in play. Yeah, so this is this is exactly how Alex drew it up. Mm -hmm. He's got slightly disruptive creatures uh, and is just putting on a fast clock and punishing his opponents for their inconsistent mana bases. Yep. Yeah, and that's exactly what happened. Yep. Uh Carl, I don't, I don't think has done the math. Doesn't realize yeah. he's dead on board here. I got twelve, but if you want to show me an additional card that you, yeah, you know, that's all right. Uh, yeah, no, Carl did draw the three cards and did not discard to the compulsive research to uh, try to conceal as much information yeah. as possible. Uh, uh, yeah, it's true. Uh, so Carl does have one spicy one in the sideboard for this matchup. Palaka worm. Oh, yeah, that's pretty good, too. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I hope that the Elish Norn is in the main. I don't think it is. Really? I it. Yeah. <sighs> that's weird. Yeah, I think he sideboarded that. Um, I would have. I think I would have mained it also because it's good against at min half the field. Yeah. So. it's It seems like a pretty powerful card. Um, so one thing that may be influencing that is the interaction with Flash in that it doesn't have an interaction with Flash. Sure. When he was drafting, he didn't actually realize that. Uh, he said, you know, when, when we talked about it afterwards, he said, oh, I wish I had drafted Massacre Worm. Yeah. Uh, that would have been a better better 
for me and that like it would have been easier for me to cast and it would have had this favorable interaction with yep. flash uh so i guess that makes sense um so as alex goes to his five card sideboard yeah. uh he has uh vindicate banishing light oblivion ring sword of light and sword shadow of light, shadow and path to exile yeah that's his sideboard um so uh i would imagine he brings in vindicate in the oblivion rings probably it does up the curve slightly yeah um, and so he's, he's definitely not bringing in the sword of light and shadow and he's not bringing in uh the path to exile right um but i would imagine i don't know if i bring in all three of them okay Maybe let's, just let's, one? let's take a look at what is going on. What does he have that he could that he would want to take out? Uh, so you know, I would I, like Willy Thoctar. The Thoctar, yeah. It's it, like if the game gets that long, it's it's probably not that great. Um, maybe Spirit of the Labyrinth. Spirit of the Labyrinth doesn't. Uh, I guess it's a three power guy for two mana. Carl has. I guess Carl only has one Drag elf that would, actually has power. The Dreg Mangler. Yeah, that's pretty reasonable. I to would get board out the. I would board out those two three drops for two three drop removal spells. I think. Yeah. That's, that way you don't even up the curve. That's pretty reasonable. Yeah. Maybe like, you don't bring it, in the third one, but. I yeah, like know. if you're taking out cards, you're getting rid of two and three drops. Mm -hmm. You're not. You're not getting rid of any of your one drops, yep. and you know you at most you're taking out one two drop. Totally. Um, Maybe you like, <coughs> maybe you target Gore Clan Rampager because it the the body doesn't matter and you don't need the trick to get past things. Right. Um, but yeah, like three drops and and the Gore Clan are the things that you would think about. I think that makes sense. What about for what else does Carl have? Uh, we so, don't know if his deck list is accurate. Or yeah, not. I mean, so he's he's definitely going to bring in the Plocka Worm and probably Cyclonic uh, Rift. Do you think? <sighs> Paul's Paul's coming in on the side mic here. Uh, I have standings. Okay. Uh, okay. People are interested. I don't know if we've done this recently. Uh, at the top of the board, we've got Corbett Gray at 4-0. Oh. Yep. We have, coming in next, we have Cedric Phillips at 3-1. and one. Okay. Nice. Only yeah. losses Corbett, right? Yep. yep. Uh, next up, we've got Alex and Nate tied up at 2-1 and one each. Okay. Carl is at 1-3. and three. And then in contention for the TED, we've got Paul at 0-3 oh and, and Sean Collins at 0-4. Oh Wow. So we're going to have to start coming up what with some names for Sean Collins. We don't have a record for G-Pelly. Well, he's in the room, so let's ask him. G-Pelly, what's your record? I'm 2-1. G-Pelly is 2-1. and one, Still in contention to hold down the, the championship. There you go. I just lost to Nate. I cracked my fetch land, and the, the card that would have got me the, the Snapcaster to Cryptic to kill him was on top, and I pushed Ooh. instead. Rough. It's technically correct. But yeah. currently, we're looking at a Corbett and possibly Cedric finals. Very they exciting. Are the, the leaders of the contention right now. Yeah. But although, if Alex wins this game, then he'll be tied with Cedric. So. Absolutely. I mean, we yeah. still got a lot of magic to play. Oh, Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. We've got three to four rounds, depending on who you're talking about. Still to go. Lots of exciting decks. I'd really like it if some of the fair decks made it into the end. I think so. I think one will. Yeah. At least. Well, there's so many of them that it's hard not to. Yeah, that's true. There's, I mean, there's three broken and five fairs, five right? Fair. So, yeah. um, but uh, so far we have. Uh, it was Nate, uh, Carl. Carl's one and three. So yeah. uh, there's that. That means there's only two broken decks in yeah. contention. So somebody's yeah. gonna get in there. So I haven't seen Nate's deck on camera yet. It was dope. It's dope. Yeah, yeah it was dope. Did, he, I mean, he got like steamrolled by Sed, but Sed had library in both games. Okay. Um, <laughs> and then like yeah, uh, and then he played against Carl, uh, and Carl, uh, or and and he like, he went like turn one elf, turn two arch druid. Turn three, uh, query and ranger, like archdruid tap untap archdruid play imperious perfect and Azuri go, and then oh. like next turn double activate for overrun is gross. And this is all off one land, like. So it looks like Alex has a uh, turn one burning tree into wild nakatal hand if he wants it, and he's got an oblivion ring. I don't know if he has a lot of pressure followed up with what's that. Is that a Banishing Light in the far left-hand side? I believe it is, yes. Yeah, so he's got three mana sources, two creatures, and two removal spells. So he has to just sort of hope to uh, to get there um, on more threats or that these are sufficient. But, you know, Carl, 
Carl is prone to stumbling. Uh, so on Carl's side, we have a turn one, uh, careful study, discarding an island, and was it, what was the other card? I did, did not see? see the other card. Okay. I was actually trying to look, and I, the way he was holding his hand, I didn't see it. Um, so he does have, Carl does have a Dance of the Dead in his hand, but no black mana. Um, so if he did discard okay. a fatty, then he's... It could happen soon. It could happen soon. All right. So Alex drew a Loam Lion, uh, decided to play that uh, on turn one along with the Nakatl instead yep. so of... So next turn he's going to have Burning Tree into yeah. uh, Spike Jester. Sure. Um, so... Uh, and then he does have an Oblivion Ring in his hand. Oh, so he had a, there's the Mana Confluence. Drew Black Mana. Okay. And it was a Worm Coil Engine that got right. discarded. So okay, it's not going to be Burning Tree into Spike Jester. It's going to be Oblivion Ring on this turn. Burning right. Tree into Oblivion Ring. <laughs> That's still pretty good. Uh, matches up well against this particular threat. And... I wonder if Alex is thinking about whether he needs to Oblivion Ring the Necromancy or the Worm Coil. Alex, it's the Worm Coil you want to Oblivion Ring. Yeah. If if the Necromancy gets removed, the creature dies, right? Yeah, and yeah. then he gets, like, two little baby worms. Yeah. Oh, that's funny. I'm pretty sure Alex was going to search for a stomping ground this turn, and he just drew it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I mean, that's fine. It's not, like, the most ideal thing to draw. But, you know, Alex has enough gas to probably take this home as long as Carl doesn't have a haymaker to follow it up with. Yeah, and Carl's hand is land, land, dance of the dead. So. Yeah. Carl's a little bit mana flooded. You know, he discarded a land. Burning tree emissary here. And uh, here's the oblivion the ring. The oblivion ring. And the Nakata is fully powered now. Also, the Lone Lion just got turned on. Yep. So uh, we're hitting for five this turn. And uh, it's going to be Kaboosh. 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 next turn. Right, right, because we've got the 3-1 yep. uh, Spike Jester. So Carl is under a lot of pressure. Carl's turn 2 Worm Coil Engine, no good. Yep. On the play, no less. On the play. Turn 2 Worm Coil on the play, no yeah. good. So I like Alex's strategy, um, his sideboard strategy of, of drafting kind of expensive but very generic answers yeah in the vanishing light and the oblivion ring and the vindicate absolutely um we talked a little bit i know you were a bit disappointed that he didn't get the final I, yeah i really wanted him to um, i don't know if it was the like he probably made the right pick but i don't care i wanted him so to we, fortune. when we had the interview we talked about that and he said oh you know the final fortune the reason why i wanted that was to be able to accelerate my clock against the broken decks but the problem is you know, there were so many fair decks that were drafted. They're going to be able to block me, and the Final Fortune isn't going to be dealing 10 damage. It's right. going to be dealing, like, 2 or 4, yeah. and therefore it doesn't get you there. Yeah, that's a fair point. Um, um, so Alex does take down the match here. Uh, we're going to get, uh, I believe our next match is uh, Greg versus Cedric. Versus Cedric, yeah. Very so, uh, exciting. 2-1 versus a 3-1, and uh, yeah. Alex moves to three and one to put himself into second place, uh, tied there. So I'm going to step out here and uh, and let Paul and Joe take you guys through the next couple matches, and uh, I'll get my chicken in my belly and be back for the home stretch. So I'll see you guys in a bit. Hey everybody, uh, I'm back and we're here with Joe Bono. We're about to sit down and watch uh, Greg uh, Peliquin on the left side battle against Cedric Phillips on the right. Um, 
So yeah, this is uh shaken up. It looks like Cedric is in contention to take the whole thing down. I uh, think they both are. Yeah. They both have just one loss. Uh, this is going to be an interesting match because they, they both came in wanting to draft very similar decks. They both said, I want to be the blue aggressive deck, the, the tempo-y blue deck that gets all the best spells in the start, in the beginning, um, but is able to push an advantage and make use of whatever counter spells I have, what taxing spells I have. Um, and so they, they both sort of like ran into each other and those similar strategies and they both had to make adjustments. Yeah. Um, they both abandoned green because that was being drafted by the rest of the crowd pretty heavily. And so it's going to be interesting to see who made the better adjustments. Yeah, I mean, I, mean, I think Cedric picked up some uh, powerful cards late that Greg could have got. That's well, true. Uh, like he picked up the, you know, the Jace, the Library of Alexandria. Um, we'll see if it ends up mattering. Uh, I... I think Dexter, Greg's definitely one of those cards. Yeah. Well, so I talked to Greg uh, after after the draft, and he said that he was very much aware of Jace, but he had been choosing not to pick it. Um, and he said, you know, I probably would have picked it if I had had a shot at it, like, in the 40s. Um, but he didn't feel like he needed any more four drops. He already had a bunch of stuff. <laughs> and he wanted to, Hold he, on. Greg was like, if I can get Jace the Mind Sculptor in the 40s, I'll well, take it. He, he was saying, it was, he was saying <laughs> you know, I'm going to be playing this reactive game sure, where sure. I'm playing a bunch of Flash creatures on my opponent's turn. I've got the Snapcaster Mage. I've got the, uh, I've got the Restoration Angel. I've got the Vendillion Click. Uh, I have all these sort of tricksy things I, I can do. I don't really want to tap out on my turn. And so that's what he was thinking there. And then when I asked him about library, he was like, yeah, I forgot that was a card. Uh, that, yeah. was, that, was, that was my mistake. I think a lot of people forgot that was a card. Uh, Cedric Phillips did not forget that Cedric was a Phillips card. Did not. So uh, it looks like Cedric Phillips won the die roll here. So he's going to be going first. Uh, we do still have, uh, while we're waiting for these guys to get started, we do still have two giveaways left. Um, we are giving away any one single 50% off. That's happening. Okay, we're doing that. That applies to everything I've been told. So uh, we're going to do that one next. And then at the end here, we're going to do our big our big one for $50 during our finals. So if I get that 50% off and I go to Northwest... Northwest uh, it's on the screen. <laughs> Northwest Sports Cards, <laughs> the gamer's choice. Uh, I can I can get 50% off of like all my hookers and blow that I buy through their website? Well... Only one. Only, anyway, oh, it's only one item. Yeah, so only one hooker uh, or only one blow. Okay. Uh, I'll have to think <laughs> about that real careful. All right, so we've got Cedric Phillips leading off uh, with a Dark Slick Shores into Preordain. Um, I didn't quite see what he did with the scry there because you were making jokes at me. Yep. Um, so Greg uh, has a Stoneforge Mystic in his hand with a misdirection to protect it as along with uh, some lands. and There's some white card in the middle of his hand. Um, someone's saying they couldn't register on the website. Liz, could you look into that? Or someone? Uh, could you, uh, who is it? CybexMTG, if you could uh, send Shotgun Lotus a message, we'll get that sorted out for you. Um, looks like Greg Peliquin uh, lands a Stoneforge Mystic. I think it's still on the stack at this okay. point, actually. And it's Force of Will. Yeah. And this is, this is actually a pretty good sign for Greg that it's not a taxing counter that's coming out. But it's the force of will. Even, you know, even if he goes three for three with the misdirection, that's not like awful, awful. Um, and you know, it it shows that like future cards are probably going to resolve. Oh, he did. Did he not force a will? I guess he showed it. Is this gamesmanship by Cedric? Is it like is it a bluff that well, he doesn't have a blue card in his hand? I don't know. Uh, so he lets the Stoneforge resolve, gets Batter Skull, and then he's D Demir Charms. Interesting. The Mystic. Yeah. So he he said, "Oh, Greg actually doesn't have anything other than Batter Skull to get. I can beat Batter Skull uh, mm -hmm. because I can just force a will that." And so he, it was it was actually a misplay on Cedric's part to show the force of will. Yeah. We think. I think so. Maybe maybe he wants Greg to play he's around. Capable. I don't, I don't he's think. capable. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, so Sunlands. we have the Sunlance for the Night Vale Spectre. I like that pick, by the way. The Sunlance? Yeah. Yeah. So uh, Berkeley and I talked a bit about that uh, on the air because, like, we were wondering whether it would have been better to get, like, an Oust or a Condemn. And given the meta that, that showed up, um, Berkeley made a really strong argument for Sunlance being the right pick. The only place you possibly get punished is, like, if 
he's playing against Alex, and Alex has like a lone lion draw, uh, like lone lion a quarter pelt and yeah. Thalia or something like that. And like that's that's pretty unlikely. So unfortunately, it looks like here Greg is something that's got mental misstepped. Um, and uh, <laughs> Cedric flips over a Snapcaster Mage and seems to be pleased. That's uh, that's a good one, right? Yeah. Uh, I think so. That was actually the card that Cedric was most upset that Greg took from him. And now it, he has it. It wasn't like you know they got ancestral recall or time walk. You know he was Cedric was you know ready to let those cards go. But yeah. Snapcaster Mage, oh screw you, guy! Snapcaster Mage is just an insanely powerful card, and people are going to have to get used to having to pick it early. Yeah. I mean, it went in the third round this time, and I don't think I didn't bat an eye when it happened. <sighs> Ooh, DT. Resolve Demonic Tutor for Cedric. Let's go see what he gets. That might be a nice one to Snapcast back. It's not a bad one. Yep. Looking around, looking around. Do we going to be able to see? Uh, we've yeah. got a... Uh, Greg's hand is not bad. Um, he's got the Batter Skull. He's got the Misdirection. He's got a Remand. Okay. He has Time Walk. So those those are and all good draws cards. Restoration Angel. I think he's if you Land have... Angel. You know something out. They're not very good if your opponent is the one that has a board presence. Though. Absolutely. Uh, so getting the Restoration Angel is is potentially very good yeah, though. It's gonna be able to step in front here. Yeah. Um, we do need. Uh, it'd be great if we get Cedric's camera adjusted. Uh, if possible. Yeah, well, and Cedric likes to play it close to the chest. He's got a Library of Alexandria. Uh, that might be what he tutored for. Force of Will. He may not have enough cards in hand to Flips over make a Tundra. It worthwhile. Throws it into play. Yeah. And it looks like we're at the end of turn. Greg is fetching. Getting an island, and he's going to cast the Restoration Angel, and then try to defend it, I guess. So, do you think Cedric's going to force this here? Um, I don't. I don't think I would bother if I were him. I think there there are better things to use your force on, and it's like the Restoration Angel doesn't threaten him at all because it's better on blocking duty for the the Night Vale Specter. Mm -hmm. So I think it kind of just doesn't matter. And, like, Cedric does have removal. He'll have things to do at a later point in time. Uh, I think he'd rather just save the force for some point that's more useful. Maybe to defend the Demonic Tutor when you uh, snap it back with Snapcaster. Like, I, I think I would have Force a Willed if the Resto came down to block the Night Vale Spectre. Yeah. Yeah. Here we go. We're going to DT. Oh. Is he gonna... He's going to remand the Snapcaster to get it back into Greg's Ooh. hand. This is, this is like super spicy. Yeah, it's it's like This is when you want the Force of Will. Yeah. But now we're going to be able to... Ooh, what is that? Cedric is like, here's the stack. Is what that opt? Get? But so now... Oh, does Cedric have another land in his hand? Oh, he no, it's Counterspell. So... Interesting. So we've got the Snapcaster on the stack. Uh, this means that the Snapcaster is going to get the Preordain if it goes through. Well, uh, he can still play another land, right? Oh, that's true. And, that's true. Uh, if he and, still yeah, and, he, and he has the library, library in hand. So, yep. And so we're going to misdirect. Greg is th I mean, so Greg's blue card in hand is Time Walk, which is a big thing to sacrifice here. But you know, Cedric is getting a lot of value out of that Snapcaster, and getting the remand through generates a lot of value for yeah. Greg. So he's going to misdirect. I got an answer. He's going to misdirect the counterspell to misdirection. Yeah, he doesn't want to misdirect it to the Snapcaster Mage because then the remand isn't going to resolve, mm -hmm. and he's not going to draw a card. And he's not going to get the Snapcaster back. And he's just hoping that Cedric doesn't have a blue card in his hand. Because he knows he has that force of will. Yeah. And I think we're clarifying here what the misdirection is targeting, and then we're trying to figure out if the misdirection is resolving. Um, so Cedric may, may have asked, what are you misdirecting it to? And if he says that, that, that you know, in a normal competitive environment would say, oh, I'm letting this resolve. But 
you know, this is this is a environment that like is very serious, but also like is take back friendly. Right? Yeah, we call it we call it uh, don't be a dick enforcement. Sure, sure. Yeah. So why why is Corbett allowed to play? He snuck in. <sighs> he gave a fake name. Corbet. Corbet Gray. <laughs> All right, uh, so, so the stack resolves. Uh, we got the snap. Ca- so, so Cedric won the counter war. Good old-fashioned counter war right Yeah, there. complicated stack, things getting redirected around, and it looks like he's going to be doing the demonic two. Oh, no, he's preordaining. Cool, all right. Interesting. Well, why, do you, why do you think he did that? Why do you think he preordained instead of DTA? I honestly couldn't tell you. It doesn't make a lot of sense to me. Um, so we get a sword, supply shows, and the Nightfell Spectre, and now all of a sudden Greg's on the offensive. Yeah. And this is this is what Greg needs to do to win this game. He needs to put some pressure on before Cedric's able to close it out because Cedric just has so a card fan. quality advantage right now. Uh, so slide of hand for Cedric. He's... Trying to dig, find. I, I think so. They're basically out of gas, right? Uh, unknown. He's got at least one card in his hand, and he preordained. Did he preordain two to the bottom? I think he. I think he did. Uh, he's got two in hand. He's got a Gitaxian probe and a black card. It looks like. Oh no, that was sorry. That was what he was looking at on the top of his deck. So. Oh, Cedric, you play your cards so close to your vest. <laughs> I'm going to shoot David a message, see yeah. if we can get him just on top of that hand So we cannon. got a trop. And so C- Cedric is definitely holding cards in his hand to maybe someday get library back up. I really don't understand not demonic tutoring there. He must And, like, Cedric is much smarter when it comes to magic than I am. So I'm sure he had his reasons for doing it, but it's unclear what they were. So Mox Sapphire, is it a uh, no, Dismember? Dismember and Trump, a Tropical Island. And there's one other card there. So I keep missing it every time he riffles. What is that card? Hmm. So if you had Demonic Tutor there, what would you get? So the, the board state looked like, you know, it was Restoration Angel for Greg, and you had a Snap, and Cedric had a Snapcaster and the Night Veil vale Spectre. I don't know. Did we have, did Cedric recorded his deck list yet? No, of course not. Um, I'm not sure. Like, you could get True Name Nemesis. You could get But that's Bob. not good. But True Name Nemesis isn't going to help. Is You're going to lose that race, right? Yeah. You could just go get another Counterspell. Um, let's see. He, actually, I guess he might not have anything, like, super effective. Um... All right, it looks like Cedric is picking him up. Yeah. All right, so Greg takes game one. That was a weird game. So Greg just... I played he, he did, in dumb, fact, have Black at the time. Huh? Greg just played two dumb creatures with three power, and that was good enough. Yeah. Uh, the counter war... Greg lost the counter war, but yep. he ended up winning the game. Good for Greg. <laughs> uh, so let's see what kind of adjustments that Greg, that uh, Cedric makes. He's going through. He's taking out. It looks is like that that engineer, engineer explosives? explosives coming yeah. out, and uh, we've got a notion thief coming in. Sure, that's a spicy one when your opponent's playing ancestral. Yeah, two ancestrals, as a matter of fact, is ancestral recall and vision. Yeah, yeah, now oh, very good there. It could have been good against Crobat, uh, but uh, <laughs> Corbett, you know, never never stroked himself at the right time. So uh, I haven't done this in a while. Uh, if uh, let's do a quick tidbit about what's going on here. Sure. Uh, we are currently in the middle of a vintage rotisserie draft for anyone joining us. Um, this is a format where it's a, a draft where every legal vintage card is available. The first person, the person in the one seat, basically it's past a booster pack with every legal vintage card in it. Yep. Not an actual physical booster pack, but um, they, we have a spreadsheet we use to track it all. And then everyone drafts 45 cards, uh, and uh, we build some decks and we battle it out. Yep. Um, everyone here is playing for. Everyone showed up with a bottle of about fifty dollars booze, and that's Some what we're playing nice for stuff, today. Yeah. So we've got basically first place gets a mini bar, mm-hmm. not even a mini bar, basically a full bar. Um, if you think what we're doing here is awesome, if you think it's cool, you enjoy it, uh, join the Facebook group. There's a link right down below. 
and uh, you can follow along. We're doing these about once a month. If you want to get involved, if you want to, you know, try to try to you know earn a spot into one of these, there's where we we, we do qualifier tournaments, and uh, just get involved in the Facebook group and you know just kind of see what we're about. Yep. Uh, and we also want to thank our partners, uh, Northwest Sports Cards, the Gamer's Choice, who has been you know kindly providing some uh, some discounts and and winnings for people, so some store credit. Uh, and also the MTG commentary guys, Chris Cohen, is here at the controls. He's the one who makes all this video magic possible. Yep. Uh, and he's he's just really awesome, and is willing to give himself a hand. Yeah. Also. You know, you, you mentioned the prizes for winning yes. and the booze, which Absolutely. is very exciting. Uh, we have this nice little trophy that goes with it, too. Oh, yes. This is the, this uh, is so the, the first time we've had off. the trophy. So it's a, a Black Lotus created by uh, Amanda Sharp, who's a local artist here. And we've got uh, it pr- propped up on some booze bottles. Yep. And uh, first place gets to take that home. But then there's also a trophy that you don't want to take home, and that is the TED. Uh, every every draft, we do uh, the last place person gets made into a trophy. In this case, Teddy Vitro drafted Time Vault and didn't do so great with it last time, so he is the Vault Scourge. The loser of this draft gets to take home the Ted, to spray it prominently in their home, and then they get made into the next last place trophy. Very cool. So Very cool. currently, that's looking like Sean Collins. Uh, yeah, he's he's the front runner right now. Yeah, but... so we're gonna have to come up with a Ted Jed type name. For Sean Collins, I'm. Is there a Portland theme we can fit in here? Is there something about him being? I don't know. You know what? Let's open it up to the stream. If anyone can come, yeah. Up, if anyone can come up with a great name for our, you know, he might not lose, but we should have a name ready if he does. So, uh, if Sean Collins loses, we should have a name in that same vein. For instance, if Cedric Phillips was to lose this, which he's not going to, but we would have called it the said. If it was Paul Tef Meeker or Greg, we'd call it the Red, and so on and so forth. Yep. Uh, I'd also like to mention, uh, the as we said, Amanda Sharp uh, is the person who made this beautiful Black Lotus that we have kind of defiled with all these <laughs> uh, booze bottles. Uh, if you want to check out some of her art, uh, she has a lot of stuff available on her DeviantArt webpage. It's Petricora, P-E-T-R-I-C-H-O-R-A. Dot deviantart.com uh, she has uh, she does some commission stuff it's really beautiful things um, she's very into like a lot of nerdy things in magic mm-hmm. uh, and she's the creator of MTG googly eyes as well yeah uh, so fantastic person go ahead and check her out so uh, we're gonna come back to the game here it looks like Cedric Phillips leaves off, leads off on a preordain Greg show, uh, gets uh, suspended ancestral Cedric fires back with a duress getting rid of the source of plowshares and now Greg is playing like a gentleman with his hand revealed. Um, and he's going to play a Misty. And preordain himself. Uh, ponder, actually. Ponder, yes. Yeah, it's the fishy ponder. I don't blame you for getting it wrong. It's... Oh, people are saying Sean's from Salem. Uh, that's Oregon. It's all the same place to us. Um, <laughs> they, I mean, like they have strippers and hipsters in Salem too. I'm sure. I'm sure they do. Yeah. Um, just kind of like Tacoma is Seattle. Well, we, let, let's not get too technical yeah. with it. So Cedric has a Night Vale Spectre on turn three. Uh, I think that's probably one of the best cards Cedric has in this match. Oh, absolutely. It's a threat that gets some card advantage that Greg just has to deal with. Yeah, because he can cast basically any card. Yeah. Um, and like their decks want their decks want to do about the same thing, and so it's all about landing a singular threat and then protecting it um, and keeping your opponent off balance for these guys. Um, and, you know, so that, that provides a threat from, for Cedric. Greg, however, you know, has this ticking time bomb of the Ancestral Vision that was suspended on turn one. And he, you know, has a decent chance of being able to win a counter war over that with the negate already in his hand. Uh... To troll proof, we will absolutely show the uh, the bottles in a little bit here. Uh, also, at the end, they're going to draft them, so yeah. stay tuned for that. So, what do you think about? I, I think Cedric has the force of will in his hand. What do you think about? Yeah, him, it's a force and a counter spell. Uh, not fighting at that point um, over over his Night Vale Specter. Um, is he just like, oh well, it's going to get negated anyways? I need I need to save the force to threaten the negate. 
Well, I think he had Dark Confidant, so he still has a way to generate some card advantage. Okay. So he's probably like, oh, I'll let this one go. I'll just keep getting card advantage off my my uh, uh, Dark Confidant. I don't think Greg Beyond the Sunlance has very many ways to deal with it. He's already played Swords, or he's got his Swords to Rest and, sure. and Sunlance. So I think he just didn't care. Yeah. Okay. That's that's reasonable. And uh, Cedric now has a Counterspell and a Force of Will, so he can basically deal with anything. Okay. So are we going to see a counter war here over the ancestral? I think he definitely plays like the counter spell, right? Oh, notion. Oh, he doesn't have no, a fourth Demir mana. Charm. Okay. Oh, I thought we were going to see a notion thief. I got so excited. Yeah. So Demir Charm counters a sorcery. Uh, that's the mode that was that was played, and so he gets the negate out of uh, Greg's hand, makes him use some of his mana. Um, but Greg has hit his Stoneforge Mystic. And that's going to get forced. So I love this. The, the stream is far more concerned about how the booze is paid out, what the booze is, than the actual game between Cedric Phillips and Greg Peliquin. Well, so they have their priorities right, is what you're saying? Yeah, absolutely. We, we have a very smart and We have our stream. priorities right. <laughs> um, so I'm glad to see the stream does as well. Uh, so the way that the booze is distributed, first place gets five, second place gets two, and third place gets one. They'll go ahead and draft it off. Um, and, uh, and we'll also note that Lee Sharp, Amanda's boyfriend, uh, now husband, husband now husband, uh, is in the stream. Thanks for coming out, Lee. Uh, he works at Wizards of the Coast and helps bring this fantastic game that we all love to us. Absolutely. So we've got a Dusk Mantle, or not a Dusk Mantle, a <laughs> um, Baleful Strix and a Delver of Secrets for Cedric. Robot Owl. And that's going to empty his hand, I believe. Oh, no, nope, I was totally wrong about that. Still got some. That's that's what happens when you draw two cards a turn. Yeah, Your you never run out. I think he has Notion Thief and Counterspell. Yeah, Cedric looks like he's in, in pretty good shape here. Greg is a little bit hamstrung uh, by only having the one white source. He doesn't have, he's not going to be able to cast this Kitchen Finks that's in his hand. Mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. So while Cedric has not had a ton of disruption, you know, he's had just enough for the threats that Greg has been able to present. Looks like Cedric wants to figure out which cards of Greg's he's already dealt with. He doesn't have to worry about them anymore. You know, and so Greg... Greg is still at a pretty healthy life total, but that's going to go down fairly quickly here. Um, and, you know, he's going to need to top deck something pretty soon in order to deal with all of this. Uh, so rest rate? Nope, it's a Vincer. Ooh. Getting counterspelled. Into the garbage with you, Vincer. Man, I think Zedrick's going to be really upset if he doesn't get a Notion Thief Ancestral. I mean, this is this is the time that he's going to do it, uh, if if he has a chance. So I guess game three is when he's going to have to do it. Yep. And if he lands that, then he he's going to be pretty excited because he's going to steal a bunch of cards and he's going to win the match. <laughs> yes. So, actually, one of the better cards that Greg could have top decked here is this uh, Agent of Bolas. It blocks the Dark Confidant. It gets him a card. Uh, and it's going to go get him an Ancestral Recall, presumably. Looks like he draws a Mox Sapphire off Cracking the Relic there. Yeah, and a little bit of uh, showmanship there from Cedric uh, to, to say, oh, I'm going to crack the Relic in order to find a way to deal with this terrible thing that you're getting, when in fact Cedric just really wants him to cast the Ancestral so that he can Notion Thief it. Absolutely, yep. Uh, and so we have the flip of the Delver of Secrets off of the Doomblade, uh, after we revealed, I think it was a land uh, to the Dark Confidant. Lots of upkeep triggers going on here, and presumably Cedric's going to get in there with his flyers. Do you, and I don't think he's going to Doomblade because he wants to leave up the Notion Thief. Yeah, I agree. Uh, and so oh it's, oh he has uh, oh he needs double black. Yeah. Um, so while they're passing the turn here, we have someone in the chat. What format is this? Uh, this is Vintage Rotisserie Draft. It's kind of crazy. We'll uh, go over it after the game is over here. It's uh, We'll do a good exp explanation. Of Maybe the chat can handle it for us. Yep. Uh, so here is the Ancestral. Ancestral, and here it is. <sighs> How erect are you right now? Uh, at least three quarters. <laughs> it takes a lot to, these days. Yeah, I, we, are, we are both getting old. Uh, <laughs> I'm... I think I'm fully there. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah, uh, I'm going to go ahead and crack is, into this now. This is exciting stuff. Like, <laughs> and there they go. All right. Would you like to join uh, me in this? Or are we good? Uh, sure. <laughs> 
So I, I have seen brainstorms get notion thief. We're gonna we're gonna have a shot for uh, the notion thief ancestral. It happened. <laughs> Woo! So uh, we're gonna move on to game three here. Uh, I think <laughs> Senator <laughs> Philip or uh, Steve Brooklyn comes in thrusting. Uh, so why don't you tell people what vintage rotisserie is all about? Vintage oh, rotisserie for the eight hundredth time today, but that's fine. I love introducing people to the format because I think it's the best format. I think a lot of people here would agree with me. Um, essentially, what it is, as I've explained every time, is uh, eight players draft. You get um, the player in seat one. Essentially, uh, gets handed a booster pack with every vintage legal card in it. They choose a card. Pass it to the next person. They choose a card, and it goes back and forth like a vintage, or like a fantasy football draft. So it's like a snake draft. It goes back and forth. Um, obviously, we don't actually have a physical booster pack of all the cards. Um, we do it on a spreadsheet to track it all. You can find the spreadsheet and how the draft went below uh, uh, below the stream here. And then uh, it's a round robin style. Everyone plays everyone. At the end, we do a finals match with the top two players. And uh, yeah, we're drinking some Jack Daniels. Uh, uh, we, we, we had to take a shot for the Notion Thief Ancestral oh, Recall. Yeah. It had to happen. Um, so anyway, so it's a great format. Uh, it's really fun because uh, the way the Rich History Draft works is you can kind of see what your uh, opponents are drafting, yeah. react to it, you know. I know my opponents are playing a creature deck. Maybe I'll draft some Wraths, that kind of thing. It's, it's a very skill-intensive format, and it's a format that really rewards people that do research and do some planning ahead of time. For a long time, we thought that, like, drafting a Storm deck just wasn't possible. The last one of these, Jesse Wilkie, came in and made a valiant attempt at uh, drafting a high tide story. Yeah, that was a cool deck. Oh my god. Uh, it didn't work out, but it was a cool deck. Yeah, and like, it wasn't totally his fault that it didn't work out because there were some unpredictable things that happened. Mm -hmm. But like, we we thought, you know, is it possible for, you know, we, we, we didn't think like beat down decks were really a thing. And the last time Josh Ventura came in, drafted a mono red deck, mm -hmm. uh, went, what, 5-2 with it? Yeah. Um, and this time we had Alex West come in, draft a zoo deck, a really sweet, like, four-color zoo deck, and he's got one loss right now. Yeah. So, so um, just a reminder, too, if you, think, if you think this format is sweet, if you're enjoying watching, you think you want to get more involved, you want to try to qualify for one of these things, uh, join the Facebook group. There's a link to it down below the stream. Uh, also, we're going to be giving, doing some more uh, giveaways and such like that during the course of the draft here. Yeah. Uh, uh, if you want to see a link to the spreadsheet for the last draft or any, any of the drafts we've had before, this is our fifth one. Uh, join the Facebook group. At the top of the Facebook group, it's very hard to see because Facebook's awful. There's a, a link that you can click that says uh, Files. Clink that, and you can see all, all the, the press drafts. Clink that? Look, man, I've, I've been drinking Jack Daniels all day. That's true. That's true. If I get one Good. word wrong. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we're going to go ahead and get back to the draft here. Uh, just a reminder. Uh, we are about to um, give away another giveaway. Fifty percent off any one single. It's ridiculous how many things you give away. Actually, it's not you. It's Liz. It's not me. It's Thank Liz. you, Liz. Thank it's you, Liz. Northwest Sports Cards. All I do is just kind of ring around and get as much as I can out there <laughs> to give on stream. But uh, so we've got a hollowed fountain from Greg Peliquin. Uh, Senator Phillips fires off a Cataxian probe, taking he two damage. He likes having that early on. He just wants to know what's going on, man. Yeah. Uh, so we have the Riptide Lab Venser combo here, along with the Kitchen Finks and a couple other lands for Greg. You know, some resilient cards, some things that will happen, but a very slow hand, um, which isn't surprising for a, a mulligan to six. Whereas Cedric has True Name Nemesis in his hand, some lands Ooh. to back it up, and a Force of Will. So, you know, he's he's probably got the long game kind of locked with that uh, with that threat that. Greg really doesn't have a way to deal with. Um, and now we have Dark Confidant for Cedric. So Cedric's going to have a pretty nice curve out of two into three of things that Greg really needs to uh, answer pretty does quickly. Does Greg have a way to deal with your name? I don't think he does. Um, he doesn't have any black, so he doesn't have Zealous Persecution. Um, and I'm pretty sure he didn't draft Hallowed Burial. He may just have no answers to it and have to race it. Someone says it sounds like a lot of fun. I'd love to try it with my friends. I highly recommend it. It's uh, There's a bit of logistics that needs to go into it. And if anyone has any questions, I'm more than happy uh, to answer any questions. Uh, I'm Paul Waite. 
Uh, I'm on the Facebook group. If you join the Facebook group, shoot me a message. I'll help you guys set it up. Yep. So, uh, the, I, I trying to get the word out about Vintage Rotisserie. It is the absolute funnest format to play. Yeah. Uh, rotisserie drafts in, in general are a lot of fun, though. Yeah. So if, if you don't feel ambitious enough to jump right into the whole Vintage Rotisserie, one of the great things you can do is if you have a cube, especially a slightly larger cube, rotisserie that with your friends, and you'll get a lot of the feel for this. Yeah, so what you can uh, do is you can just lay your whole cube out on a table and then just do your picks that way. That's a way easier way to get into it and start. We have a collection of about 2,000 cards that we're still adding to um, that uh, – so that when someone takes a pick, we can we can have a card ready. So that's kind of hard to do for the average person. So a cube is a good place to start with it. Yeah. So we saw that Greg top decked a sword's plowshares in order to deal with the dark confidant that Cedric had. Uh, but this true name nemesis has landed successfully. And like we said, we do not believe that Greg has an answer in it, his deck to it. Which so. kind of shows Greg maybe should have thought of that when he was drafting. That's true, but you can't you can't always draft everything at, around every potential. Mm -hmm threat for for each of your opponents and you know this is this is one card that greg has to deal with that he sort of has answers for in counter spells um and it's also really tough to answer in blue and white like mm -hmm. it's it's much easier to deal with if you have black in your deck well i mean he could have taken supreme verdict uh supreme verdict doesn't uh oh yeah supreme verdict yeah doesn't. absolutely kills it, right? oh you're right well, so that's it's probably just a mis misplay for Greg to not have Supreme Verdict. I think so. How We've been talking about that are. quite a bit yeah. today. Um, and actually, po possibly a bigger mispick is um, Balance did not get drafted. Yeah. Um, and that, that, is, <laughs> that is both just normally an insane card, but it's particularly good in, in this meta where you have a bunch of creature decks out there that are looking to vomit a bunch of cards onto the battlefield, and you need to play catch-up. Um, I think I think balance is probably good against every deck except for Corbett's. And even there, like, it's probably not bad. Sorry, I wasn't paying attention. Uh, <laughs> just... I'm sure what you said was very poignant and factual. That, okay. Okay. Anyway. Were, were you just staring at my mouth? <laughs> I was staring at this Twitch stream. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. Um, uh, so the true name nemesis continues to beat down. Greg is at 11. Uh, Cedric is at 19. We had, uh, I believe last turn, Greg bounced one of Cedric's lands. Uh, so Cedric does not have many lands in play because he drew two with Gush, uh, returning two islands. And then at the end of one of his turns, Greg bounced uh, the Dark Slick Shores with the Venser. And so Greg is kind of disrupting Cedric, but it's a little bit too late because Cedric has established a threat on the board that Greg is not able to deal with. And so yeah. Greg is going to just have to get a ton of power out there and race. He might, be able to, he might be able to slow him down with the Kitchen Finks or something just to gain enough life to maybe start racing. Maybe. But it's uh, not looking great for Greg here. Yeah, and like you see how there there is a lot of staying power here. So Greg is recurring the Venser with mm -hmm. Caracas, recasting every turn, keeping Cedric locked down on two mana. But there goes that plan. But, you know, Cedric just needs to draw some disruptive spell in order to stop that and even if he doesn't you know the true name that nemesis might go the whole way because greg wasn't drawing an answer to it so in case people missed it it was a disfigure that took out the vincer there yeah um got that pretty late it's pr it's a pretty good card disfigure uh in for this for this draft here yeah um it actually sees a fair amount of legacy play uh because it kills a lot of the the threat the early threats at mana parity or even the mana advantage um, it doesn't look like much, but you know, it kills Bob, it kills uh, Delver of Secrets, it sometimes kills Tarmogoyf, not frequently, but it helps your Tarmogoyf win in a fight against their Tarmogoyf, it kills Mother of Runes, it kills Deathrite Shaman, um, so it's surprisingly versatile in yeah. Legacy and here. There we go, we see the handshake, Cedric takes it down, Cedric's going to move to 5-1, and one. he's looking like he's going to be in that finals match. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> Are we sure that he was at 4-1 and one going into this and not 3-1? and one? We can confirm. Uh, no one knows. Yeah. Who knows? Oh, so, I mean, like, Cedric is definitely, like, on the glide path to get into the finals with yeah. this win. And the question is, like, is he just, like, one he win been away? One. Or is he two? He's four okay. and one now. Yeah. Right, sorry for the confusion there. Can we get another match going? Okay. Um, okay, so, hey, could you put up a, do we have a, a shot of the bottles? Chris? We had a live feed earlier, right? Uh, okay, we didn't get a picture. You know what? I'm going to go fix this right now. Get on it. So the 
last match is going to be, or the next match is going to be uh, Carl uh, against Derek Ray. Okay, so uh, while, jo while Joe's dealing with that, and we're getting another match ready here, um, we are going to I'm gonna, uh, talk about our last giveaway. So we actually have two more giveaways, but our the last giveaway of the day. So what we're going to do is our last giveaway will be a bit, will be open to anyone that's in the Facebook group and currently watching the stream. So what we'll do is we will uh, randomly select someone from that is currently in the Facebook group. So a new member, an old member, it's totally fine. Um, and then we're going to have like a password. We'll say something. We'll message you on Facebook. And if you can tell us what the password is or whatever, then you'll, you'll get the $50 or whatever. So you need to be watching the stream and be a member of the Facebook group. So go ahead and join the Facebook group below if you haven't already. It's right down below, right down there. And uh, $50 Northwest Sports Card, which they're also currently doing a deal. Uh, Chris, could you tell us what the deal is again? Uh, the deal with uh, Northwest Sports Cards is if you actually use the coupon code VINTAGE20 at checkout, you'll get 20% off of your entire singles order. No exceptions. Nothing is off the table for it. You can get anything, and it's good through Memorial Day, and you get free shipping if the order is more than $25. And that so. also applies if you earn store credit here today, uh, that you can still get the 20% off or whatever. Correct. Um, so, yeah. Uh, so who, who do we have on stream? Mr. Bono. Mr. Bono. We have a. I have it up on the screen. It's a Greg Pelican versus a Carl. Oh, Chris is all over it. Fantastic. And then, like I said, our next giveaway that we're going to do here is uh, fifty percent off for any one single uh, to Northwest Sports Cards. So if you want to get your Black Lotus half off, now's the time. Apparently, I I confirmed that that's okay. So they've got like a blue hurricane too, or whatever. Like so, go nuts. Um, if we could, we will. Uh, people are asking about. Uh, standings. We'll get that here in a second. Um, yeah, but uh, does anyone else have any questions or anything I can answer while waiting here? Um, actually, we're about to start the match here. If we get someone in the booth, Paul, how did you feel about uh, uh, Corbett's deck before he started? Um, one second. Uh, I wasn't in love with it. Uh, I didn't think it was that great. I think he, he did a good job towards the end of his draft, kind of bringing it back. Um, I mean, he drafted a lot of powerful cards early, and it was just kind of gonna, kind of. I wasn't sure how he was going to use them. But uh, I think we're kind of seeing what happens when everyone starts drafting fair decks and everyone starts reacting to the fair decks by taking all kinds of removal. And Corbett's like, screw that. I'm just going to play a bunch of artifacts and big mana and just infinite combo you out. And uh, I think he's just on you know the good end of that. So here's what we're currently playing for. There's a, a pan of oh, mostly gone Azel's spicy strips. So if you don't, if you're not from the Seattle area, and you're ever in town. Oh my god! Highly recommend going to Azel's fried chicken. I think like Oprah comes to town for it. That's true, she right? Has it flown directly to her. Oh, Oprah has it flown directly to her, and it's just down the street from my house, which is fantastic. So we've got some uh, dry fly, some Bushmills Irish honey, some chai tea vodka, some kind of really fancy vodka, some Glen Livet, and uh, some Maker's Mark. As well as something else hiding back there. I'll, I'll do this one. Okay. All right. So, oh, the match has started. We have a City of Brass for Carl into Birds of Paradise. Greg preordained on turn one and is now casting a Mother of Ruins. Uh, Carl's deck is pretty sweet. Yeah, it's it's very powerful. That he's been punished a couple times by the mana base for this deck. Um, it didn't really come together, and we had we had a big scrum of people trying to get. Um, to try to get blue green lands and fetch lands sort of like in the mid picks around like 8 to 12 8 to 15 um, Alex West really like pushed that conversation by picking up a bunch of fetch lands which you know his his deck really needs but that put pressure on a lot of the other decks um, and you know I think we're one of the things that we're seeing is you know the decks that have more conservative color requirements are maybe doing a little bit better um, as a result of that, you know, Carl is a little bit down. Greg is a little bit down, but you know, the mono black deck. Uh, oh, actually, the mono black deck's doing really badly. And Very so the mono badly. red. So yeah, maybe forget all the things I just said. Um, yeah, he's full of shit. Full of <laughs> BS. So that's a bizarre of Baghdad for people that can't tell for um, Carl Jans. Uh, he looks like he's just did he discard anything spicy? He discarded uh, Ashen, Ashen Rider, Rider. Yeah. which is the definition of spicy. And I see an animate dead in his graveyard. He's going to get Vendillion clicked, but he also has necromancy so i think that ashen rider is coming into play 
It's true. Unless Greg, uh, could he? No, no, Greg's Yeah, like Greg's he's, he's not going to be able to get both of these. Um, so I guess you take the necromancy. Maybe you don't even do that. No, you. So you take the necromancy because, like, if you somehow manage to kill the Ashen Rider, you'd rather him not be able to, you know, uh, screw with it too. Uh, so be able to get back a second time and. The animate dead is slightly better for your opponent to have on it because it's a slower clock, right? Yep. Um, but that's that's really unfortunate for Greg. You know, he had a good plan for what he was going to do here, um, and you know now now Carl just had the backup. Um, on the plus side, though, the Mother of Runes does protect um, you know the Vendillion Click or itself or a land. Well, the Vendillion Click or itself from the Ashen Rider. And he can sort of block it infinitely with that. Uh, combo. Mother of Ruins only works on your guys, correct? Right. Okay. But yeah, so you can't use it to make the the animate dead fall off of the Ashen Rider. Uh, so it looks like we're gonna play Soul Ring, and uh, what is the card that was drawn for this? It was game? an island. It's an island. So maybe we're gonna frantic search now. Okay. So we have uh, standings here as this gets. Well, let's let's finish this line of play and we'll we'll talk about them. Yeah. All right, Animate Dead comes into play, blows up uh, on Ash Rider, blows up the planes, yeah. and we're going to ship it back. So it looks like currently standings are Nate is at 3-1, and one, Greg Pelican is 2-2, two and two, Sean Collins at 0-6 oh and, and looking to lock up the, uh, the last place trophy, Cedric's at 4-1, and one, Carl is 2-4, and four, Paul Tuff Meeker 1-3, and three, Corbett 4-1, and, and Alex West 3-1. and one. So sort of Feast and Famine from Greg. So, it's not a bad deal. He now really kind of doesn't want this Ashen Rider to to die because he would mm. lose the sword to it. I and don't... He can sort of infinitely block right now. I don't like what Carl is doing right now. I don't know why he played that island. Yeah, you, you want to have that in reserve for the Frantic Yeah, search, he right? should have he should have just tapped tapped his his uh, blue black land Sol ring and Frantic search that yeah. way. I would say I think he's trying to get all the value off on tapping those lands, but I don't think he needs it. No, he's he's got plenty of mana for it, and so you're you're really just casting it as a free careful Ooh, study. He draws flash. Can we have flash on screen? I think it's a pretty sweet one. Yeah, so he he used this to really good effect earlier with Bane of uh, Bane of the Living uh, no not Bane of the Living Bane of whatever artifacts the green thing that destroys all artifacts and enchantments Bane of Progress, progress uh, against Corbett um, to get an instant speed uh, Shatterstorm yep um, but you know it doesn't it doesn't do him a lot of good right now when he doesn't have fatties in his hand yep what is going on here so we've equipped the sword we're attacking with it uh, untap our lands. We have a cryptic in our hand for Greg, so if he has another land, he's looking to eat. Yeah, and like if he wants to, he can cast the cryptic in his own combat phase by attacking floating mana with untap on the on the stack, and then you know spending the one extra mana. I don't know what he would want to do with that. I guess he could bounce the Ashen Rider. Uh, I believe Ashen Rider only triggers when it dies, not when it leaves play. So. That's yes. a kind of way to, to get out of it, although Carl is getting pretty close to being able to hard cast it. He's only one mana away. So, if the Stormforge Mystic Resolve, you got to imagine it's going to get some Batter Skull action. Yeah. Or possibly just a shuffle effect. Has Greg drawn the Batter Skull, or did he side it? Uh, this is the first game, right? Yeah. Oh, he's drawn the Batter Skull. He, so, he's just trying to get the Batter Skull in play, is what ha is happening yeah. here. He's cheating it in. Making use of his mana that you know he's going to get to untap, and he's just racing, 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 and he's winning this race right now, yep. uh, partially because he took the necromancy and not the animate dead, and the minus one power is actually having an effect. Yeah. Uh, so Greg, you know, despite his opponent reanimating a big fat fatty, uh, is in decent shape right now, and Carl's going to need to rip. Something. Carl just decided to just tap his uh, bazaar to throw two yard two cards in the yard. Yeah, he decided that he didn't want the flash in his hand. What happened to the flash? I don't know. I guess it, I guess it's in the graveyard too. It must be that third card down. He just 
I don't know why milling himself would be helpful. Yeah, he doesn't have um, unburial rights in his deck, which would be the only reason I could think of, right? Yeah, maybe he's got some flashback spell that we're not aware of. Luckily, we have all of the decks in front of us. And Carl. Or Carl actually filled his out. What a guy. Yeah. Whoa, it sounds different when I'm this close. So, again, we're, we're getting some mana usage out of our pre-combat main phase as Greg casting the uh, Augur Bolas. I can't figure it out. Tapping. I don't know, maybe he's got, like, World Gorger combo somewhere. <laughs> That'd be exciting. Somehow we just didn't notice he drafted it. Yeah. All yeah. right, all right. There, there's Ambassador Loquatus and uh, World Gorger Dragon in there. Let's give there's... something away. All right. Okay. All right. Um, so we're going to give people till the end of the next game here. Get logged into the Twitch into the Twitch chat so that we can see you. And we're going to go ahead and do a roll off, and uh, we whoever wins will earn 50% 50, 50 off any one single from Northwest Sports Cards. And that works on anything you could possibly want. If you want a Black Lotus, if you want you know not to use all the value and get a Moodle Vault, that's up to you. Uh, you could uh, maybe they have the special. Promo Muta Vault, the Ooh. full thing. That's, that thing's super duper expensive. Yeah. Uh, maybe they have a promo judge force of will. I hope they don't have. I hope they don't have any of the cards we're talking about. They probably. Do. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're, we're I think they some do. Really they, random they, expensive they, they, they cards. Uh, I hope they have a. Um, <laughs> what's the the world championship card? Oh yeah, 1996 <laughs> yeah. world champion. Yeah. Do you, Oh, just, uh, <laughs> you have to like drill out the card to get at it. Okay, right. good to know. Good to know. Uh, uh, so yeah, so that that match, you know, it it highlighted, you know, some of the the resiliency of Greg's deck. That like it's a very tricky deck uh, with a lot of sort of enter the battlefield effects, and the Mother of Ruins gives it some some extra ways to to mess around with stuff and you know gives him some ways to sort of deal with these board stalls um and it's kind of interesting that like he was able to to take down greg was able to take down carl in that game but wasn't able to handle the sort of more fair matchup with cedric mm -hmm. um but you know carl carl well destroying a land is is pretty good and getting a four or five flyer that wasn't the most unfair thing that could happen yeah um and a lot of that has to do with the the reanimation targets that carl has chosen for his deck uh he's not starting the elish nor he doesn't have a gristle brand um the things that he is doing is getting like a slightly large guy and destroying a permanent which is fine mm. but it's not like super broken it's not yeah, like yeah. Iona lock you out of the game it's not draw 14 cards and have a big life link yeah because he wanted to be able to have uh, natural order he wanted to be able to natural order in his targets yep. and reanimate his targets so and he, he wanted the flash to have yeah. value so yeah. there's lots of things with enter the battlefield effect so he really had to like he had a very small subsection of reanimation targets he had to use and oh i think it's I think it's cute. I'm not sure it's the best way he could have gone about it, but I, I, I think his deck is really sweet. Um, yeah, and like he got he got into a pretty decent spot given how late he audibled into to reanimator. And you know, if there's if there's anything, you know, I would fault him for it's not audibling a little bit earlier. Like I was really shocked in you know the first 15 picks that none of the reanimation stuff got picked. Yeah. Um, and we I mean, I am. Love reanimator. <laughs> you you do. You are a man that likes zombifying stuff. Ooh, I don't know if I've ever actually cast zombify. But you like the idea. I like. It, I can it get sounds behind good it. coming off the top. I can get behind it. Yeah. Um, I've resurrection something. Is that okay. the, the, the white? Yeah, zombify, that's the white yeah? one. Yeah. yeah. Uh, a little, little bit more color intense. Yeah. It's white, white too, instead of yeah. black and three, I believe. Um, yeah. So. Do you have an update for stuff? us, David? Or are you just hanging out? Huh? Yeah. Yeah. Would have been a good one. Yeah. So we didn't we didn't get any of like the really sweet uh four mana blue cards. Gifts or factor Gifts fiction. Or factor fiction. Somehow people always forget about factor fiction. I I don't know. Yeah. Well it's is not a card in legacy. Yeah. And so that that affects things. I guess it's it's not really a card in vintage either. Gifts used to be a card in vintage before it got restricted yeah. um but it being restricted like sort of limited the amount of insane stuff you can do all right so greg has a hand of lands uh a stoneforge mystic a uh i think that's um 
the white grave purge or coffin purge and a mana drain in his hand so he's he's actually set up to put down a clock and then disrupt what carl is doing pretty well uh, and on carl's side he has some lands he's got an enlightened tutor he's got a compulsive research and he's got a black card that maybe is a reanimation card. I'm not sure what that is. Uh, let me see if I can it's get it. It's second from the right. It is uh, oh, vampiric. vampiric so, so it is, in a way, yeah. a uh, reanimation or spell. Um, and so Greg is going to be able to get Carl pretty badly uh, if he does go the reanimation route because he does have uh, this white coffin purge whose name escapes me right now. Oh, Purify the Grave. Purify is the, the Grave. Yeah, and so he's got, he's got the double white for it right now. Um, so you can hit it both ways uh, and you know smartly leaves up a planes here um, because he was reanimate er, he was uh, suspending this ancestral visions uh, citrus guy there is a link to the Facebook group right below us uh, yeah. if you just scroll down a little bit you'll see it there uh, so here comes the vampiric tutor did you see what he got with it I did not. All right. It's probably something exciting. My favorite thing to do with Vampiric Tutor and Demonic Tutor is to go get a land because, like, sometimes people try to get too smart and they're like, oh, I, I'm not going to counterspell that Vampiric Tutor yeah. uh, because I can just counter whatever they get. And then you're like, oh, Library of Ex Alexandria. Yeah. Draw two cards to one for every one that you have. Or Bizarre Baghdad, start reanimating stuff. So this is a flash. What's it going to flash in? Flash is an exciting card. Yeah, it's an Ashen, Ashen Rider. Rider. Woo! Woo! -hoo 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 -hoo. Goodbye, Lance. All right. I'm going to fuck mm. you <laughs> softly. <laughs> I'm going to screw you. Chris on point with the sound clips as usual. Yeah. Uh, so this would be a really, really great setup if Carl had a reanimation spell. Uh, you know, that, that would be how he would draw the, or put this together. Hey, Liz. Someone's asking if the fifty percent off works on the fifty thousand dollar blue hur or fifteen thousand dollar blue hurricane. Actually, the blue hurricane is on its way to Vegas for an episode, potentially for an episode of uh, Hunters. Oh. So the blue hurricane, we're not allowed to sell it until they decide whether they want to feature it on the show. So apparently, the blue hurricane is on its way to Las Vegas to be on an episode of Pawn Stars. So currently, no. Maybe Possibly in the, in the future, depending on how that all works out. They signed an agreement that we won't sell it. They signed a legally binding agreement. But even if it wasn't legally binding, we would we would follow through on our agreements. Well, we wouldn't because we're a bunch of jerks. But yeah. Northwest Sports Cards, the gamer's choice, follows through on all of its legal. Yeah, I have no morals, but they do. Yes. So. Uh, so here comes the necromancy. And Greg is finally going to be able to use his sideboard card of Purify the Grave uh, to get rid of that Ashen Rider. Oh, actually, I guess it's it's not coming yet. It's going to the top of Carl's deck. And he draws it for the turn. And Kaboosh. I would like to exile that, says Greg. Greg, exile it. Floating in white. Get out of here, Ashen Get him out of here, he says. Nobody likes you. Oh, and I... I like Ashen Rider. I think he exiled two things. Uh, no, no, he didn't. That's his That's his graveyard pile. It's weird. Greg has his graveyard in the orientation. I usually assume the exile. I actually, I actually like to um, do it that way. Yeah. I like to do it backwards just to annoy people. Okay. I don't go as far as the lands in front of spells because those people are terrible. Do you, do you rotate your cards so that they're facing your opponent so they can read them? No, but I do do the, the Mike Thompson encroachment thing. <laughs> where you just like take over the yeah every time every every time you swing with your guys you just bring them a little bit further into your uh -huh. opponent's zone and then eventually you just try to get their cards off the table yeah well yeah. you gotta show them what's up yeah yeah, yeah. all right <laughs> we're necromancying again what happened how do we get the necromancy back is it exiled i'm very confused oh uh no i i, I forgot how necromancy is weird and it comes into play as an enchantment and then yeah turns into an aura that's that's strange uh, stuff. James Dykes in the chat is quoting me as saying, I have no morals, Paul Waite 2014. If you think 2014 is the first time I've said that, you don't know me very well. <laughs> but uh, that's all right. Yeah. Uh, so Greg gets to deploy his threat in Stoneforge Mystic. He's going to have that Ancestral Visions going off very soon. 
uh, and he's going to have the mana drain up. So I think this is really Carl's last chance to do something yep. broken uh, before Greg kind of um, takes over the game. He's got a Nash Order and a uh, bah, 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 Woodfall Primus in his hand. Mm. But no green creature. Is there a... Uh, is there any green creature you could natural order for that tutors up an artifact that he could have put in this sweet deck? Probably not. I don't think so. I don't know. There, like, any time I watch one of these matches, I'm like, ooh, is there is there some magic card yeah. that's a corner case that you I can know, use? You know, they, 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 they develop cards for Vintage, for EDH, for, you know, Draft, for all these things. They need to start thinking about cards for Vintage Rotis 3. When, Absolutely. When they're developing Absolutely. cards. I'm going to talk to some people about that. Yeah. Lee Sharp in the stream, talk to some people about that. When you print Conspiracy 2, you know, put some cards in here. Speaking of Conspiracy, I know we were talking about this before. Oh, Dax wait. Faden. Dax Faden? Dax Faden, Dax, 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 I don't know what his name is. But Are you talking about the greatest thief in the multiverse? I certainly am. <laughs> uh, so that I guy, have no clue what he's talking about. That guy likes to steal some artifacts. Yeah. Yeah. So that card will be exciting in the next draft. I, I got to imagine someone's going to take it. Three mana, steal an artifact with some other abilities. Yeah. Got to uh, be good. Conspiracy is pretty exciting for Q. Oh, so, I know. You know like you're, you're like, oh, all these things I've always wanted to do where like I want to be able to just draft this pack. Yeah, they've literally, literally printed the card we've all uh, wanted our entire life where we've all joked around and been like, man, I just wish I could take this whole pack. They made that a card. I wish I could take two cards out of this pack. It's so good. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. Uh, yeah, some, some, uh, some friendly listener um, twittered me last night saying, Hey, if I get this combo going with Cogwork Librarian and the card that lets you draft the entirety of a pack and this other card that cares about what place it got drafted because you get plus one plus one yeah, counters yeah, yeah. for the number of places like how many how many counters do I get? It's like twenty two counters <laughs> that this four mana guy comes in with. That card's so awesome. there's some there's some sweet interactions that you can build there. So uh, Greg Pelquin's looking like he's he's on his way to, to take this one down and move on to three two, stay in contention. Yep. He's got this extra safety of a ratchet bomb out that he's gonna be able to use to Blow up the key or blow up a, so, blow up a vault. Yeah, I was going to say, if, if Charles, uh, Carl draws Time Vault this turn, I can't tell if uh, Greg has any counters in his hand. Uh, I think he still has the mana drain in his hand. Uh, so, yeah. Oh, wait, no, maybe it got used. Is that it third down? I see a negate. Um, I see a negate. So I think I think Carl's dead to right yeah. here, no matter what he's got. Yeah, there's there are a lot of blue cards in Greg's hand, and uh, the Ratchet Bomb gives him protection. That's going to scoop anyways. him up. All right. So uh, Greg Peloquin takes it down to move on to 3-2 and stay in contention. Yep. Carl Jans is uh, going to 2-5 and five and looking like his day is just about over. Actually, his day is over. Uh, yeah. 2-5 and five, uh, puts him out of it. That's uh, his, all of his matches. But luckily, not in contention for the Teddy. The Ted. The Ted. Yeah. yeah. So um, if you could... Uh, Bullshit with Chris for a second. I'm going to go get our next match and grab Berkeley. Yeah, yeah. Bring right. it on. So, Joe, what was the one, like, when you were watching the, the draft happen, what was the one deck that they were building that you really thought was going to, was just going to straight win that it, that maybe, well, isn't doing very well now? Um, I, I really thought that Nate was, was going to run away with it. Mm. I thought that like he wasn't conflicting with anybody to start off. He was getting to pick whatever cards he wanted. Like The only things that he was missing out on a little bit were, were some fetch lands. But like, otherwise, his plan was going you know, just exactly the way he drew it up. And uh, you know, I, I kept on hearing from Paul, oh my god, this deck look, it looks kind of crappy, but it's amazing. And honestly, like I'm a big fan of Elves and Legacy as it is. I think that's a really powerful deck that um, is is even a little bit underrated, even though like people think it's pretty good. Um, but I think it's underrated because it takes a lot of play skill to play really well. Um, and so you don't see the results that it actually deserves. And so to see an Elf deck um, with all these broken degenerate draw sevens uh, in vintage rotisserie sounded really really good um, and like I said like he was he was getting to do whatever the heck he wanted with it um, so he's I, I believe he's X and one right now uh, so you know definitely a contender for for the final spot 
um, and definitely my favorite coming in. Um, I really thought that uh, Alex and Cedric were doing a fantastic job navigating the draft, though, even though um, they they ran into some like conflicting problems and some unexpectedness in terms of other people wanting the same archetypes as them. Yeah, Nate uh, Nate just defeated Alex. Actually, uh, oh, wow. they were they were both uh, X and one and. Uh, Nate, I believe combo killed on in game one, and then in game two, uh, Alex like bullet get to four or something. Had a bunch yeah. of guys. Yeah. All right, I am going to tap out for Paul Wait, uh, and I'm going to go <laughs> eat my Azel's chicken. All right. If time Paul for Wait joins me. <laughs> <laughs> so what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to give away the fifty percent off coupon, right now. So uh, um, let's go ahead and look at see you got here fifty percent off one single. From NorthwestGamersChoice.com, and the winner is Outlaw Runner. Outlaw Runner. I've seen you on and off. Outlaw Runner. Let's get back online. Actually, you just uh, personal message me at um, uh, Shotgun Lotus, and uh, go ahead and log on to NW Gamers Choice. Make an account. And uh, we'll go ahead and uh, set that up because we're not going to make a coupon code. We'll go ahead and uh, hook you up a little bit later. So, Outlaw Runner, congratulations. Yay, Outlaw Runner, yay. Okay, so. All right. Are, are, are mics on? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, okay, so uh, that means we have one giveaway left. And. Uh, <sighs> sorry, I'm getting my breath here. So, anyway, uh, we have one more Walk, giveaway left. Walking from that side of the room to this side of the room. It's, it's a long yeah, room. It's true. That's fair. She's calling me out. Anyway, uh, so our last giveaway is going to go on during the finals, and uh, it's for $50 to Northwest Sports Cards. Yep. Now, the way you're going to have to win that one, um, you have to be a member of the Facebook group. Okay. Uh, you have to be a member of the Facebook group, and you have to be watching the stream. We're going to give, like, a password out on stream, and uh, we'll message you in, on Facebook chat. If uh, you answer with the password in, like, five minutes or whatever, you'll win that $50. So make sure... That you are a part of our Facebook group, which uh, you need to join right below us. And then you'll also make sure you're logged in Twitch chat so that we can see your name. Word. And make Don't sure you're listening that. so that you can hear the password. Yep. Uh, so uh, I was just past uh, current standings here. Uh, we have uh, Nate Heiss at 4-1, and one, Greg Pelican 3-2, and two. Sean Collins uh, is... Uh, God, what, what is a creature that has that power and toughness? I can't think of one. I can't think of one. It's 0 and 6 creature? He's an 0 and 6 creature from Magic the Gathering. Um, and then uh, <laughs> he, uh, yeah. He, Cedric is uh, 4 and 1. Carl is 2 and 5. And uh, and Paul uh, Meefteaker is uh, 1 and 4. Corbett 5 and 1. Alex West 3 and 2. So it looks like we have Nate, Cedric, and Corbett are our, uh, our front runners at the moment. So if Corbett wins this one, he locks up a spot in the finals, right? Uh, no, actually, uh, because oh. there could theoretically be a three-way tie um, for uh, things. For going to get interesting. Yeah, uh, theoretically, uh, odds of that are unlikely, but possible. Thanks, thank the chat's amazing. By the way, we've got Living Wall, Junk Troller, mm. Guardians of um, Junk Troller. No, it's definitely Junk, junk Troller. troller. It's Sean Collins junk is troller. Junk Troller. Yep, he, he did draft a lot of junk. <laughs> <laughs> there were there he was trolling the bottoms. The depths of that one, but uh, All yeah. Right. So Thanks, uh, we have a uh, this match has begun. Uh, just so you know, uh, Chris over there, Cor Corbett is five and one at the moment, and, and his record is yeah. Um, so Corbett starts off with a top, and then uh, a couple artifact lands. Pelican leads on planes uh, into a, I believe a double mulligan, I think, uh, and he has a turn two Mother of Runes pass. With Hover that barrier. Hand, so. That's the one I was thinking mm -hmm. of. Thanks, I'm a shark. I'm a shark. I'm a shark. Couldn't think of. I knew what the picture was like, but I couldn't remember yeah. what it was called. So, uh, Corbett, uh, what does he have in his hand? It looks like a tinker, and uh, some other cards. A lightning greaves. So we're. I think, so he's. Wow. Greg's gonna die very quickly. I think. Interestingly, did not uh, <clears throat> just cast the lightning greaves here. Uh, I thought he might have done. That's that. what I would have done too. Uh, but he, if he finds a land in the top three, which he did, he could put it, flip the top, put the land into play. Then play the Greaves, then have mana for yep. Tinker. So, uh, Corbett just playing playing uh, the percentages a little bit um, and uh, trying to get uh, a, a very lethal clock into play very quickly. I like it. I like yeah. it. Um, and so he is uh, presenting with Tinker next turn, unless Greg draws blue mana. Then Corbett probably has to respect a counterspell. Greg looks like he drew an island. So, I and he has a time walk and an ancestral, and I think that 
a mana drain, so I think that's going to be game here. No, I mean, he doesn't have two blue for the counter spell. No, I know. I'm saying uh, I think I think Corbus going to tinker in a blight steel, equip up that lightning greaves. Well, so he uh, he has to respect blue untapped blue mana. You know, uh, I guess he could be afraid of remand. That's yeah. true. That's true. Uh, also, I believe Greg has the steel sabotage, uh, so he okay. can bounce a thing. Um, so maybe Corbett goes and gets Inkwell instead of Dark Steel. That's right? fair. And then Greg has a little bit of time, perhaps. But no. oh, now he's tapped out. Well, so. he's going to play that Stone Forge, which means. Um, uh, the Blight Seal actually doesn't just win the game because Not it can lethal. block with enough guys. But I yeah. think it's still probably correct here. Yeah. I don't think Greg has any edict effects or any way. Once that Lightning Gears is on that Blight Steel, that's going to just be means Greg dead, is dead pretty quick. Yeah. Uh, we got a shout out from DGS Nook. Hey, props to you guys for a solid product and great commentators. Thanks, man. Uh, we're yeah, trying to have, cool. Yeah, we're trying to have some fun with it. Glad you guys are enjoying it. Um, like we you know, I'll drink to that. Let's drink to that. I'll drink to that. This one's for you, DG's Nook. Wee. Um, but yeah, if you're if you're enjoying it, we do these about once a month. The next one is tentatively set for the 14th. If you want to know for sure, join the Facebook group down below us, and uh, we do all kinds of polls and fun stuff. Uh, you can also qualify to be in one of these. Uh, so yeah, yeah, uh, join the Facebook know. group. All right, cheers, DG's Nook. Shots fired. So, so there's the blight steel as we expected. Greg on nine poison. Yeah, so, Greg, uh... Oh, this is most welcome. So I brought, like, a 24-pack of water, and mm. it was gone in an hour and a half. Was it? Yeah. This is all gone. All my Gatorade's gone, too. I have, I have. I actually have one of your waters and one of your Gatorades right here, so you can suck it. Oh, my God. <laughs> this is the worst. Um, all right, so game one to uh, Crobat. Crobat cast Tinker. It was very effective. Uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, Corbett's deck is... Freaking sweet, I guess. Uh, he's. The, I was telling Joe this. He's the first time that the mud deck has had Tinker. That's true. It's the first time that the artifact mana deck has had a Tinker. Um, and uh, that might just be what it has to be. Yeah. You know, uh, you you need a tutor, something to consistently bring your draws together. Um, Trollproof so. is asking us: Is your store available to watch in person? I don't quite understand what you mean, but. Northwest Sports Cards is actually not our store. Uh, they're just helping us uh, throw this event. Uh, we're actually throwing this in my house. Yeah. Um, but they're great. They're an awesome store. They're in Tacoma, Washington, or like near Tacoma. Yeah. Washington. We don't. We don't have any like live spectators here. Uh, it's a pretty small area. So yeah. Uh, we're we're a little crammed in a basement, and we have a garage here too. So but. yeah. But uh, watch the stream, and uh, yeah, maybe we'll be playing in the uh, Tacoma Dome in a couple of years. You know, <laughs> a couple of years, maybe like. Couple weeks. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. June fourteenth. to June fourteenth. Look, look it up. Yeah. Um. So, uh, what kind of stuff does Greg have uh, to sideboard in against? You got it right here. The monster Corbett Gray. My uh, my laptop's not hooked up to the internet. Oh, there we go. Here we go. Uh, Greg has a stifle, a ratchet bomb, and envelop. Uh, envelop counters sorcery. Yeah. Yep. I believe so. Uh, detention sphere. A. Four spike probably not very good. Eh. Uh, nah. I don't know. Corbin makes a lot of mana. Although, just, like he has been casting Tinker as soon as he's up to three. Yeah, he hasn't been playing around that stuff. So but he Corbett, might get him. Corbett, I mean, if he's paying attention, should know that four spike is there. Nah, so. Corbin doesn't pay attention to that stuff. It's true. Corbin pay, plays around stuff, uh, like really well once he sees it. Yeah, that's fair. Uh, if it's not like in front of his face, it's not necessarily on his radar. If he hasn't played around it before, like if he hasn't played this matchup before. Like, he plays around stuff really well in Legacy when he plays, like, the Sneak and Show deck. He knows how to play around Spell Pierce and all that stuff because yeah, he yeah. knows that they have it in their deck for sure. Um, but he's not necessarily, like, Force Spike's not really on his radar, I think. Yeah, but, sure, sure. So we probably are going to see Hercules Recall come in from Greg also. Ah, that's a good one. Yeah. Um, I didn't see much uh, in Corbett's sideboard, but, um, yeah. They're playing with some tokens here. I'm not quite sure what's going on. So who do you want to see in the finals? What kind of finals matchup would you like to see? So, like... I want to see Nate's deck, I want to see Corbett's deck, and I want to see Cedric's deck. And I also want to see Alex's deck, but, like, uh, I don't think that... I think that the most interesting matchup would be Alex and Cedric. Yeah. Uh, that would be the most interesting magic. That would be the best for viewers, I think. Yeah. Um, you know, like, we saw what happened when Cedric played against Nate. 
uh, yeah. in the first round, right? And I mean, Nate has rattled off a bunch in a row, so maybe he just got a couple bad draws. I think he really did. Um, um, he like he had the game where he had to uh, keep no lands, Elvish Spirit, going yeah. to land anywhere else. But there's also not a lot of like their decks aren't inherently interactive, and so they just kind of play into the counter spells. And if you have them, you have them, and you yep. just crush, right? Absolutely. Yeah. And I mean, granted, said had library both games, so uh, Nate's hand was forced a little bit. He couldn't just sit there and try to sculpt. Yeah. Uh, because he's just not going to do it as efficiently. But uh, I think, like, any of those four decks I would be happy to see in the finals, which is, like, about where we're at. Yeah, yeah. Um, I did not expect Corbett to be succeeding the way that he's succeeding. Uh, but, like, after the draft, you know? Yeah, like, yeah, we, yeah, yeah, We were just like, oh, mud deck, blah, blah, blah. But, like, after, like, seeing the tinker in that deck in action and the fact that he has three of them. Yep. Uh, and he has show and tell. Uh, also, in yeah. case he just draws yeah. his fatties, right? So, uh, show and tell probably the weakest of his plans. Um, but and then we also saw him put. Uh, we didn't see it on stream, but he put together an infinite mana combo and then stroke brain geysered somebody out. So, yeah, his deck is sweet. Uh, yeah, he definitely has a lot of powerful stuff he can do. Uh, but I don't. I don't. I mean, he beat Cedric, I guess. Just Cedric kind of drew bad, I think. Uh, I th I would like to see Cedric and Alex play in the finals. I think that would be a cool yeah. matchup. There'd be a lot of back and forth and trading of cards. And, you know, those are two guys who really love to grind out any sort of advantage they can I get. Agree. I agree. I, I think that's what I would be. A, I think that would be a really cool matchup. However, I want to see Corbett's deck do busted stuff. And I want to see Nate's deck do busted stuff. And yeah. that's really cool to me. Yeah. So uh, I think we're going to be in for a good five-game finals. Uh, yeah. Hopefully it goes all five because, you know, watching some sweet magic, right? Absolutely. So, uh... I don't think Greg Mulligan this game, um, and uh, he's got a couple of lands. Uh, oh, it looks like he did Mulligan. He, he, he did Mulligan. He did yes. Mulligan, and Corbett is on. Uh, Corbett kept his seven and has uh, not a lot. Uh, uh, he might. He might just have a turn three tinker. He's got a couple of lands. Island, island planes. Yeah, we need someone to adjust uh, cams again. Just adjust Corbett. <laughs> yeah, just move Corbett. Yeah. I know that's hard. The cam is in a totally fine place. Yeah. Yeah, you cannot move an ogre gate crasher. So white faces here is talking about mud. So uh, white face, jeez, <laughs> white faces. I don't know. I don't make up the names, but uh, yeah. So it seems like that's really good. But uh, people have done that in the past in this particular format. Like I'm not arguing that that's good in vintage, but uh, in this particular format, vintage rotisserie draft. Um, this is the first time the deck with yeah. Mistress Workshop has had a winning record. Yeah, and it's it's. I mean, Corbett's deck is not mud. No, it's not. Uh, it, it is a big blue. It's accelerated blue. Yeah. Uh, it, like, it, the the mud decks are decks that rely on cards like Lodestone Golem, undrafted. Trinisphere, undrafted. Chalice of the Void, undrafted. Yeah. Sphere of Resistance, undrafted. They... Thorn of Amethyst, undrafted. Because the artifact, like, tax you deck isn't consistent enough in a singleton format to... Uh, reliably present the same board on the first couple turns. So maybe what you need to do is um, explain explain what's actually happening here. So Corbin has cast a turn for uh, Consecrated Sphinx uh, with a couple mana up. Uh, Greg is a little stalled on lands. Uh, he's going to try to remand. And uh, muddle the mixture. Yeah, Corbett, Corbett s held the Sphinx to play around a counterspell so that he could muddle. Um, so S Corbett's Accelerated Blue deck is a lot like the Urza's Legacy uh standard deck that would play yeah. turn two grim monolith turn three morphling with a mana up so uh, uh corbett currently has uh a, it looks like uh isochron scepter and mystical tutor so he could go does he have Orm, he has orms chant right yeah his chant in silence so he could go get orms chant and then imprint it and uh call it a day no nah, that's not even good against greg actually is it not no greg's oh because he has so many flash greg's creatures. creatures all have flash yeah yeah um and he has like he has venser that he can just bounce this, yep, the, yep, the scepter yep. with. So a scepter is actually actively bad against Greg. I think he doesn't have anything that he really wants to be doing proactively on his own turn. Um, he can just sit there and draw land, draw land, draw land, draw land, and then you know start playing flash creatures. Yep. Um, so uh, I think Corbett is going to want a mystical for a tinker uh, type spell here. Um, we'll see what he does, but uh, uh, thanks for the clarification, white faces. Uh, I just uh, wanted to make sure you weren't, uh, you know, black facing it out there. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> Moving on. 
<laughs> All right, so we have a musical tutor on a Corbett Gray. What's he gonna go get? <laughs> Thanks, Chris. Thanks, yeah. Chris. He goes and gets the tinker. Applause. Uh, yeah, mystical for Tinker. Uh, present some giant threat. Hope that Greg's Mulligan has him in a position that he well, can't do much. Well, let's see what he's got. It's like uh, we've got David Miller uh, coming in here to tell us some stuff, possibly. Uh, no new news. No, no he, new news. We are being informed that there's no new news, which in a way is its own news. Is there a link to all the profiles? There is not a link to all the pro player profiles, but that's something we could put up eventually. And by profiles, we mean slides. And not all of them even have relevant information. That's true. But they're great. Yeah, there's a lot of uh, cat facts on, uh, <laughs> on one of the slides. We weren't supposed to talk about it. We were supposed no, to put them up and yet. just be cool about it. But anyway, so we have a tinker uh, coming down. I, don't, I didn't see what happened because we were joking around. Uh, I believe. Oh, it's okay. It's it resolving. resolving. Uh, people are asking, "What's Greg's win con?" He's got like uh, batter skull and some and some uh, uh, sword and just random dirtles. Vendillion he's, click. He's got Vendillion click and Vincer and like kitchen things. Restoration just, angel. Basically, his whole plan was kind of get people off their plan and then just kill some, kill them with like a random creature. Yeah, which has been working out for him. Okay. We so see an inkwell we, this time. Inkwell. Corbin has a personal tutor and a metal worker. It looks like Greg is uh, probably toast here. Yeah. He's got three turns. But Two there's turns. A... He's at 18. Right? Oh, yeah, three turns. Yeah. Oh, there's left. <laughs> Drink to that. Are we drinking to your poor math skills now? Yeah. So we're just... That's, like, going to compound pretty quickly. How many drinks is this? Two. Oh, no, better drink to that. <laughs> All right. So we have uh, a personal tutor for a brain geyser. Okay. Uh, uh, Hercules Recall returns the Inkwell Leviathan. Good stuff. To the hand. Good stuff. Yeah. You know, Chris's soundbite has two shots in it. All right. <laughs> you, can't, you can't just fire one That's shot. That's called peer pressure, folks. Yeah. Effective peer pressure. There we go. Adios. Right. So whatever I said that spawned this. That was like tw six shots. Nice. We're way behind. Better catch up. <laughs> <laughs> God, I'm so sad that I'm out of game. This is such a blowout. Mm, you paid for it too. That's the best part. I know. Part. Um... All right. So Corbett's uh, Corbett's Tolarian Academy has been turned off, but now it's back on. Oh, here's the, here's the uh, see the sign on. Brain guys are for three. Is Brain guys are an instant. When is this getting cast? Sorcery. Oh. Sorcery. Oh. Yeah. Personal tutor can only get sorceries. RTFC. Corbett's hand fully stocked. Uh, he can actually just cast that Inkle Leviathan like decently soon. Um. You need some artifacts to do that. But I mean, I guess he, had, he has, he has some. metal worker. He has top. He has lightning. Oh, beams. he has all of he them. He has Icecrown scepter. His hand is all artifacts. Well then, so yeah, I apologize. Should we take a shot? <laughs> <laughs> this way is, slow down. is that the new game? Is this any time we make we're just anytime horrible. we make a mistake? Yeah, we make a, a shot, mistake. Yeah. We take a shot, and then the, yeah, the shots we get more shots because ooh, this is fun. Okay, yeah, all right. This could be a new game. I'm still excited for the dr the, the booze draft. Mm -hmm. For those of you jo joining us, kind of the reason we're drinking on stream here is this is all booze related. Um, the All the players showed up with a bottle of booze, and they're going to go ahead and uh, first place gets five, second place gets two, and third place gets one. They're going to draft them off. Yeah. Um, it should be pretty great. It's going to be fun. Uh, there's, a, there's a bottle of Glenlivet. I'm excited to see. I mean, whoever wins is getting that. <laughs> the Glenlivet is nice. Yeah, it's the best one, for show. Sure. Uh, so, uh, Pelican, uh, Merchant Scrolls for Mana Drain here. Do you think... Uh, uh, to defend. What's the, so He has a Sun Lance. It looks like a Negate, a Ratchet Bomb, a Restoration Angel. Corbett's got a Show and Tell. Okay. And I see. I think he's going to Metal Worker. Yeah, that seems like the right setup here. So now, if you're Corbett in the in this shoes, do you, do you Show and Tell? Uh, do I cast the Show and Tell right now? Yeah. 
Probably not. I agree. Yeah. I mean, I guess he can. Like, I, Greaves would probably be my follow-up to show and tell. This is a pretty spicy uh, series of events we've got going on I guess he can here. just, yeah. Oh, he can equip. Or they cast can that, yeah. Make some more mana. How much can he make? Uh, Four, five, six? Are we not? Are we not? He can. He can actually just cast in Golaviathan this turn. Yeah. Yeah. He didn't need to wait long. Yeah, I was totally wrong. I was yeah. like super wrong. Yeah. And he's got f four, three artifacts now. Uh. So he gets to play top for free because then the mana comes back via Academy. Uh. So he's tapped four mana. So he's gonna have three colorless. And that makes for seven, eight. Ooh, he's one short. Corbett dropped the inkwell on the table. So. He's one know. short of inkwell. So I was right. He's one short. Yes. Yeah. I mean, yes, you were right. Good job. <laughs> Thank you, Joe Bono. You were right. No shots. Yeah, dodged a bullet. No, it's Jack Daniels. Oh, um, yeah. I liked that joke. Okay. That one was for me. No rim shot. Don't give him the rim <laughs> shot. No rim shot. It's because bullet is also a kind of alcohol. It's true. Bourbon, as it were. Um... But anyway, let's get back to some magic here. We've got Corbett's um, slow. He's not doing. That's much. not very nice to say. No, <laughs> yeah, in the head. Uh, <laughs> he's, he's, this play is taking a while. Uh, he has looked at the top three of his top, and he is figuring out that he does not have any qual mana, and he has nothing to put on his uh, ice crown scepter. So, shroud is actually not basically hexproof. Shroud means that you can't interact with it either. Yeah, so he can't actually equip to lightning greaves. Yeah, you can't lightning greaves or it. equip lightning greaves to the inkwell. Um, but it's close. Yeah, the I mean, for most intents and purposes, right? Not yeah, all, it, but it, Shroud is just a worse version of Hexproof. Yeah. I would say a fixed version, but Hexproof came out after Shroud. So, you know. They had it right the first time. They, in fact, did. Yeah. Uh, so, Augur of Bolas from Greg. Uh, now he can get an engine going here a little bit with Riptide Lab and Augur. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, kind of forced Corbett's hand just a little bit. Uh, Corbett's a little f obviously knows that Greg has mana drain, so he's kind of scared to play his Inkwell Leviathan um, into that. Uh, and uh, what he doesn't know is that Greg also has negate. Uh, I believe I'm pretty sure he has negate over there on the left of his hand. So, um, oh yeah, I keep forgetting that hand cam's down there because this can't. This is in the way. I'll just do it this way. So Corbett can make all the mana in the world. Just going to keep topping. Try to sculpt something, but uh, he's going to have to do something de relatively quick because uh, Greg is going to get that two-card per turn engine going. So, um, And he has to only commit two mana on his, on his main phase. <laughs> I think this is the first miss for me as far as some music choices go. I can't, I can't get behind this one. <laughs> You're too Chris bad. is denying me. He says, too bad. It's happening. All right, that's fine. That's fine. The man's allowed to listen to what he, what he wants. There's like 400 tracks on this, and this <laughs> yeah. is the one. <laughs> I don't, I've, 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 I'm, you've been doing a good job. Can we get Careless Whisper? Is that, do I, we, can, I can get anything. We can take requests. This is, the internet Do you want uh, Total Eclipse of the Heart? No, nah, I want Careless Whisper. I want the Sexy Sax Man. <laughs> have, you seen, <laughs> have you seen that YouTube video? Which one? Anybody who hasn't seen it, go, you, go to YouTube and type in Sexy Sax Man. It's oh, I have playing the that. same riff of Careless Whisper <laughs> over and over in public forums. But but you good. should watch that after our stream. Oh yes, well you know uh, side screen, split screen. Ooh, there you go. Uh, someone's asking, if we've done all the giveaways already. No, we have our last There's big giveaway. One, one more. We have the fifty dollars credit uh, is still coming up, and in order to uh, be viable for that one, you need to join our Facebook group. You also need to be watching the stream. So what we're going to do is we're going to randomly select someone from the Facebook group, and then uh, we're going to give out a password on the stream. Uh, we'll message you on Facebook, and if you can give us the password, which means you're listening or whatever, uh, you will uh, get $50. There you go. Hopefully that makes sense. We've been drinking a lot of Jack Daniels. A lot. A little. We need more. I mean, I was also drinking with Joe. Oh, fair. I don't know if you were drinking with Joe. Uh, no, we didn't get any in. Mm, yeah. Lame. All right, here comes Inkwell. We're metalworking for a lot. Metalworking for eight. Revealing all the info. Uh, so negate countered show and tell, leaving Greg's defenses a little bit, a little bit down. Uh, 
Corbett can now cast the Inkwell. Uh, oh, interesting. He's leading on on Steel Hellkite. Okay. So he's got two mana floating, it looks like. Uh, someone says, they, hey, Chris, could you just do a description of how we're giving away that 50 in the chat real quick? Because uh, people apparently can't hear or whatever. We got you, uh, Tayakim Ghetto, or whatever your name is. We got you covered. We'll let you know what's up. Also, just, like, thanks to the stream. You guys have been awesome. Like, uh, just a great stream overall. Or You guys are great. Yeah, it's cool. Not too many uh, people hating. Yeah. Everyone seems to be enjoying themselves. Yeah, just having a good time. I like it. Over some sweet magic. <laughs> White Face says, uh, he said if your name isn't Taki Megeto, then you're the chance to win a million dollars. Sure, why not? Everyone has a chance to win a million dollars at the end of this. Everyone in the stream has a chance. It's a 0% chance, but it's, it's yeah. a chance. Yeah. Yeah. Anyone in here could win the lottery tomorrow. They might. That's you don't true. know. So, Steel Hulkite got it Whiting Greaves. It actually resolved. Hold on it. Okay. And attacked and put Greg to five. Greg negated the show and tell. The show and tell. And then did not mana drain the Steel Hulkite, I believe, because he knew. Thought something wish was coming? Uh, I, I think he knew that uh, Corbett could ink well. I believe. Yeah. So. Greg searching for some answers with a ponder. Uh, not a lot he can do against a shroud creature um given that his deck has no wrath um, yeah which this is again it's just back, it's coming back uh, to haunt basically every time bit. we've seen greg on camera there's been a situation where he's yep. like i need a wrath and just didn't draft one yep oh people are asking if we ever found out if uh greg Sh uh, shampoo uh who was our second cube draft qualifier he was alive, alive. Or dead. he he is alive uh, he was a no-show for the draft, and he like we were joking about it. He actually got in a car accident on it's the true. way. Yeah. Um, he's okay. He has uh, some broken toes. He's beat I'm up. certainly going to hell. Uh, yeah, but he's yeah. gonna be okay. Um, and we're gonna get him in a future draft. Yep. Um, so yeah. he will he will make an appearance. I know he has some sweet bruise, and it was sad not to see him. Uh, but he'll he'll be all right. We'll get him properly conditioned, and uh, yeah, get him back in here. Yeah, absolutely. So he can rinse and repeat. Uh, yeah, so anyway, uh, also if people are like checking out this out and think it's sweet and join the Facebook group and everything, uh, I can't com officially confirm the date because we're still working on some people's schedules and stuff, but, um, the next one of these we're planning is for June 14th. Yeah, that's the tentative, like, 95% in. Right. Yeah. So, uh, we're going to do a cube draft qualifier with the names we're already set for, uh, next Sunday, not this, not tomorrow, but the Sunday yeah. after, and then we have another one after that. Uh, the following Saturday. I don't know all the dates off the top of my head, but uh, that one the names haven't been filled yet for. So if you live in the Seattle area or are crazy and want to travel for a cube draft qual single elimination tournament, it's a cube sweep. I, I won't stop you, but I wouldn't recommend it. But if you are interested, uh, I'm going to do a send out a thing on the Facebook group that says, yeah. "Hey, if you guys want to get involved, let me know. I'll, I'll, I've got a list of everyone that's interested, yeah. and we'll get you we'll get you involved. Uh, so people you can qualify in for this. Uh, so sweet. Right on. Uh, so Greg's last turn, he found a Sun Lance for the uh, Metal Worker, and that, that was uh, about all he had. Um, he's going to be in chump mode relatively soon. Uh, Greg also at 9, not 6. Uh, we had that wrong. Okay. Um, he has a... Uh, yeah. And then, so his hand is Mana Drain and, uh, and Resto Angel, I think. Um, and then a couple cards that aren't crazy relevant at the moment. What do we got here? Restoration has a ratchet bomb. Jump in front. It's all fine. Uh, uh, Brando says he, he's on my iPad, so I can't click the link. Um, I think if you go to you if you go to Facebook at some point and you just like search Vintage Rotisserie Draft, if you can it's, spell uh, you the Facebook group is named Northwest Vintage Rotisserie Draft Series. Yeah, so yeah. just search Northwest Vintage Rotisserie Draft Series. Got to spell rotisserie right, which is. It's cool. tough. Cool. Yeah. Uh, we also have a website on the way. Uh, it's going to be shotgunlotus.com. Uh, 
we have the site. It's just not up yet. So eventually uh, you'll be able to go to shotgunlotus.com and uh, you'll have all the relevant information there. Yeah, as well. we'll have links to past drafts. We'll have uh, like all the player profiles of people who've competed. Yeah. Uh, you know, maybe um, maybe some That's articles from bitch. people. <laughs> <laughs> Inkwell gets steel sabotaged. Every time. Oh, man. Oh, it's every time. Uh, yeah, there's going to be a lot of sweet content on the on the website. We'll have links to all the uh, past. Uh, yeah, a lot of that stuff's on the stuff. Facebook group now, but it's yeah. kind of hard to navigate. Yeah, it's not, and it's also not pretty. You know, yeah, yeah. We yeah. need to make it pretty. Yeah. So everybody likes pretty. Yeah, yeah. Cheer. So I want to know what's going on with Nate Heiss and Alex West's matches because uh, I want to know how they're yeah, doing. And Cedric same. Phillips. Uh, For those so of you that are just joining us, Cedric Phillips is in this draft. If anyone cares, which I think people do. Uh, it looks like we actually have some matches. you want to grab the mic? Sure. David Miller is here. He is uh, our floor judge, and he's going to let us know. It looks like some matches have wrapped up. Corbett As game match win. Corbett 6-1. and one. Corbett will be in the finals, it looks like. Nope. Maybe no, not. Maybe possibly not. not. We might find out now. All right, so uh, did you Did you flip that up? Yep. Okay. All that has changed is that uh, Cedric is now 5-1, defeating Teftmeeker, who's now 1-5. Okay. Right. Okay. And now Nate is going to be battling Cedric. All right, That's great. information we have now. Uh, All right. No, Nate already battled Cedric. That was the first match. Yeah. That was the first match we had on camera. Alex is battling Cedric. There that we go. should be our next feature yes. match. Yes. They're right. going to go on camera, right? All right. I'll yeah. go put them on okay. right now. Cool. Uh, we're going to use the light. Actually, uh, we're going to talk for a minute before that happens. Um, is it possible? Oh, shit. Can you put in your password, Joe? Uh, can we switch to the, the slides for a second? Is that is that doable without being too hard? Just kidding. We're not going to do that. Yeah, you can sort me all you want, Chris. This isn't like run by anyone important. <laughs> We're not going to get in trouble. Yeah. I think Twitch is like lawless country, right? We can it basically do whatever basically, we want. Yeah, you can do whatever you want. Yeah. Yeah. Like it's Drake like Jack Daniels on stream. It's like a Swiss bank account. Uh... I'm going to have to agree with the sentiment that EDH is not as good as other formats. So how much EDH have you played? I actually used to play EDH a lot. Okay. And it's a great format to, like, learn how crazy combos work and, mm -hmm. like, learn old cards and stuff like that. But at some point... Good to find some brews for a vintage rotisserie. Yeah, game. but at yeah. some point, you, you, I feel like you, you got to move on. Okay. And that's when, that's when you find Cube Draft. And yeah. Cube Draft is, like... The pinnacle of magic. Yeah. But then some crazy guys come along and are like, check out this vintage rotisserie draft yeah. thing. And I think this is the current best format. Um, but it's super hard. I think cube draft is my favorite. Easily to play. Super fun format. It's a lot. Uh, there's a lot less logistics involved. Make seven phone calls and yeah. you're done, right? Yeah. This this takes a little bit longer to yeah. set up. It takes, but, takes a full day. Cube draft takes two and a half hours. Yeah. And if anyone yeah. has any questions how to set one of these up or whatever, go ahead and shoot me a message on Facebook. I'm Paul Way. You can find me in the Facebook group. Word. And uh, I will help you set it up. It's, you don't have to do it quite as intense as we do, but you could just get seven of your, or eight of your friends, or I guess seven of your friends. All you need is a Google Doc. Yeah. And you can do it all on Google Doc. You can do it over the course of a week or whatever. You don't have to do it all in one day like us where it's crazy and takes 12 hours or whatever. But anyway, uh, we're going to have, it looks like Cedric Phillips on the left, Alex West on the right. What's up? Uh, just tell me when they can start. They can start now, I think. All right, yeah, I think we're good. Here's, here's just some good magic. Cedric is 5-1. and, one. and... I can get behind EDH being better than Block. I can get behind you on that one. Actually, Block's pretty sweet. Some Blocks. I mean, are we talking like... Are we talking like 1v1 EDH? Because 1v1 EDH is hot. Yeah, I think multiplayer EDH is... I think multiplayer magic... I mean, conspiracy is sweet. Case for some reason was yeah. the sponsor us, but um, uh, I just multiplayer is just not what I like. I don't like like king making and stuff like that. Yeah, or like uh, what's the um, what's the format the emperor where it's like yeah. two three player teams or whatever. Yeah, uh, yeah. All the all the multiplayer formats. Are, I would just I would just rather be cubing if I had a group of people to play magic. But yeah, that's pers personal preference. That's fine. Anybody wants to play? No, I'm not ragging on anyone who no. likes EDH. It's a great format. I played it for years. Yeah. But uh, 
the multiplayer, I just I, at some point it's just I, I guess I, I guess I'm, I like competitive play a little bit more, and yeah. multiplayer is just not really streamlined for that. Yeah. Although conspiracy looks sweet, I've, there's some sweet cards I'm excited to put in from conspiracy for the cube. Yeah, for the cube, the cube. Uh, Cogwork librarian. Cogwork librarian. Yeah. Did you see the the one they just spoiled where it's like uh, two mana or it's like a whatever? It's like two mana two two, and you just draft the whole pack. Yeah, that's gas. It's the card we've always wanted. Yeah, the everyone's made a joke. I wish I could just take this whole pack, goof grab or whatever. And uh, they made a card, and it's going in the cube. So, yep, we got some die rolls. Cease. Looks like six for Alex West, and doubled fives for Cedric Phillips. That's a, they call that a hard ten. People are asking if uh, conspiracy will be legal in the next Vintage World History draft. It will. Oh really? Um, I haven't seen too many cards. I do expect not to the see... whole set, right? Because only some of the cards are vintage and legacy. Yeah, you can't play the conspiracies or whatever, but um, so you can. Those should be legal. But Dax Faden, I expect to see cards powerful. Yeah. Is, are you talking about Dax Faden, the greatest thief in the multiverse? Dax Faden, the greatest thief in the multiverse, Joe? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know anything about that stuff. Here we go. We have an island from Cedric Phillips, a Mock Sapphire, and a Delver of Secrets. That's a good start. It's a good start. Uh, Alex also has a Mox. Uh, it looks like his, uh, does he have one or two moxes? I thought I saw two. Alex West? I thought I saw two. Let's take a gander. Um, it looks like we got Sib MTG set up. Set up. Boom. All right, so Sweet. it is a mox pearl. So we got moxes all over the place for these guys. Yep. Weird that the fast mana is successful. Strange. Uh, all right, so Alex is uh, setting up. Uh, this is the finals match. This is the finals match you wanted to see. Yeah, actually. it's not possible. Actually, it's not possible. Oh, because yeah. uh, Alex West lost. They both can't have one loss, and Alex, no, yeah, Alex yeah, has yeah, two yeah, losses. Yeah. So they, it can't happen now. But. but you're getting your match anyway. I get to see it anyway. This is going to be some good magic, I think. Alex with uh, a couple of a couple of one drops here. Um, it looks like Cedric, respond, Cedric is responding to Isamaru, uh, potentially looking for a daze or a mental misstep. I, I got to imagine it's mental misstep because he can pay for it with daze, right? Uh, yeah, but he might, like, the way that Alex went for his second land to, like, play another creature. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe Sed is just like, Actually, I, 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 I think, I think Sed has daze in his hand. He does have daze he in does. his hand. He does, and so he decided not to. He, cause he's going to daze this, right? Yeah. And then now he's set up his Delver with Brainstorm, too. Shazam! Yeah, and it's Demir Charm, so I think he can kill the Isamaru. Uh, yeah, so he's w he's well on his way. This is definitely the kind of start that said needs. Oh, he doesn't have black mana. Okay. Um. <clears throat> he has Demir Charm and some Islands and a Baleful Strix. And what is that blue card in his hand? I can't quite make it out. Uh, spell Snare, I think. I could be wrong, actually. I don't know. I definitely want to see Cedric in our finals. I'm rooting for him pretty hard here. I mean, I love Alex, but Ced just wants it, man. He like, wants it so. He wants I want to see to Cedric. Fight. I want to see Cedric in our in our <clears throat> draft of champions. Yeah, I mean that's another thing that we're doing here that people uh, we haven't really talked about at all is uh, at, once we have eight unique winners, we're gonna do a draft of champions where all the winners of each draft get together. Yeah, and then there's gonna be a, just a sweet, sweet plaque. Yeah, maybe we'll play. We, you made the joke last time we were playing for kegs. I don't hate it. Yeah, no. I don't hate it. Maybe we'll just play for eight kegs. Yeah, who big knows? Giant kegger. Um, but we need to figure out what to play for for that. If anyone has some sweet Dreg ideas. Mangler has made an appearance, ladies and Dreg gentlemen. Mangler. J Dreg Mangler. Dreg Mangler. That's a lot of damage coming at Cedric Boom. all of a sudden. Is that is that a a creature that cannot intercept in play? Yes, a there jungle lion. No interceptions. All right. How many of Alex West's creatures can intercept? Uh, three. Three, three of them. There's like a Seattle Richard Sherman joke that I'm not going to make there. Oh, well, Rakdos Cackler can, cannot block, but it is allowed to intercept. Uh, <laughs> so Delver's going to try to trade for uh, the front half of a Dreg Mangler here. Uh, he's going to take six and uh, really hope to draw that Engineer Explosives that's in his deck. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's going to be pretty good. Uh, Cedric was very worried about Alex's deck. Uh, Alex can just fight him on tempo so much and uh he's yeah he's he's probably in pretty bad shape to be honest in this matchup um 
see a Thalia in Alex's hand. Counterspell just doesn't match up against Which is a great one. Well. Oh, we have a Gore Clan Rampager and a Thalia, so... Uh, he does have red mana, okay, yeah. Yeah, said gonna have to work very hard to win this match. Um, what is the? Has anyone ever? Someone must have made a football related. I've been sitting here trying to figure out a football joke for Jungle Lion, like for the last. It's no Darrell Revis. Boom, we're done. Drop the mic. Yeah. All right. That's all. Yeah. That's all I got. Yeah. All right. I can get behind that. Actually, you know what it is? It's Dominic Rogers Camardi. He he just can't catch. On defense. He just drops the ball every time. Uh, I think we might be losing our audience here. <laughs> um, go clan! Boom! So that is six, <laughs> seven, eight, nine, ten. Putting Cedric to two damage or two life. How's that taste? And Cedric scoops okay, him up. Right All right. So uh, draw engineer explosive next game, Ced. You don't yeah. need it. This is a bad matchup for Cedric, I think. Yeah. He. Uh, he actually, he, I think he drew pretty well against uh, Tefmeeker. He was scared of that matchup also, even yeah, though yeah. Tefmeeker's like one and six or something. Uh, his his deck matches up pretty well against Seds, but um, he Seds cards like uh, negate and uh, or uh, like counterspell and spell pierce and stuff actually pair way better against Tefmeeker than they do against Alex because Alex is just all all creatures. So yeah, we got uh, another update from David Miller. Alrighty, so Sean Collins has officially gone o seven. Getting milled out in the last game of the last round with a memory jar into a wheel of fortune has his opponent cast off. Wow. He also dredged Dark Blast about six times that well, game. Well, you know what that means. It means wall of frost. we need to come up with a new name for the Sean trophy. Sean Collins lost like a wall of frost. He'll be in here shortly. All right, yeah, we'll get him. Uh, you want to you wanna hand me the Vault Scourge real quick? That means that Sean Collins gets to take home the Vault Scourge trophy, or the TED as we like to call it. Last draft, Teddy Vitro went 1-6 with his Time Vault deck and is the Vault Scourge. So that means that uh, Sean Collins gets to take this home and display it prominently in his home. Yes. And he will get made into the last place trophy for next draft. <laughs> hey there, Sean Collins. Hold on a second. We're going to finish. You don't get to just get on camera at 07. We'll tell you when you can get on camera. Okay? <laughs> so we're going to finish the match, and then we'll talk to you. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> He's so aggressively <laughs> tilted right now. It's awesome. It's not as bad as Teddy last time. We Teddy forgot. was mad. Teddy forgot the trophy oh, here man, last time, awesome. and we were like, "No, that's bullshit." And no, we, he did. He did. Yeah, I actually, I yeah, asked him. and we made him drive back yeah. for it. He, uh, <laughs> it was funny because we got him like as he was entering the highway. <laughs> if he'd gotten on the highway, he say he wasn't coming back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But he came back and he got the trophy. He's good sport about it. Good, good on Teddy. You know what? I'm going to chalk up Sean Collins' losses. He's been very sick all week. Oh, uh, yep. Yeah, that's got to be it. And, and, you know, it's not like he's had, like, a whole, like, month and a half to prepare. No, yeah. Uh, that's probably true. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I'll give it, I'll, I'll give Sean credit. Sean's gas. Yeah, I know. Sean's awesome. We love yeah. Sean. We like we just like poking fun at, you know, our buddies. Yeah. Wall of Frost, man. Didn't think we would ever see one of those. <laughs> it's, it's actually pretty hard to us. <laughs> right? <laughs> also, he played all seven matches. Well, that you know what grinded it out. I gotta give him a round That's of applause just... for actually doing it. Good on him. Good I on him. I would drink to that, but we're out of jack. No, we're not. Don't lie to the stream. Okay, you want to fill two shot glasses with that? I'll see what I can do. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, there's the little bottle. Oh, there is a lot more hidden in that corner than I thought. Can uh, are you hand us that little bottle of jack? We I come prepared. Right that could that could be on the trophy. Nate and Cedric both in five and one. Nate Ooh. and Cedric both in five Nate and one. Nate and Cedric in five and one. Who who do they who do they have left to play? Um, they have to play Paul and Cedric and Greg now. Alex has played two more matches. Okay. Oh, so Paul Cedric and Paul haven't played. No, said this is Ced's last match, right here. Oh, this is it right here. Yeah. And Nate's even. Nate is playing his last match. All right, what this, are we, what this are we, one's Deshaun Collins. Deshaun Collins. We hardly knew you. The, the Wall of Frost. Cheers. Oh, this is full. <laughs> we'll play that when he's on camera. Oh, yeah. Save that one. That one was rough. All right, so we are going into game two here. Ooh. We see a Mox Sapphire for Cedric, and it doesn't look like Alex has any of his three Moxes. Okay. 
sorry, I'm composing myself a little bit. That one was that was a full full glass. All right. Uh, so Sed starts off on uh, watery grave, concealing the mocks a little bit. He doesn't have anything to do with the man. I, I do need help from the stream. Okay. So we've been naming the trophies. Like the first one was the Jed. The second one was the Ted. We were trying to keep like the ED joke I think, alive. I think it's dead. Yeah, it might. Yeah. <laughs> but if the stream can come up with a great name for Sean Collins' trophy that ends in ED, I would love to hear it. Not just ends in ED. It has to rhyme. Yeah, it's got. Yeah. It doesn't even have to. Yeah, it just it has to rhyme like, with Ted and Jed. It can't be like ranched. You know, that's no good. Uh, said with a turn two Night Vale Spectre, uh, doming himself for two That basically damage. blocks all of Alex West creatures. Excellent. Uh, all except for... The circle ones? Yeah. So Nate, Nate Heiss uh, is battling Paul Tefmeeker. Greg Pelequin will play Alex West after this. Uh, and then this match that we have on camera is the last remaining one. So... Uh, it looks like uh, Nate and Paul is going to be an important match. Can we uh, get can we get that on camera? Are they playing currently? Well, we want to get this one on camera too. If Alex wins this one, if Alex wins this one, we definitely want to see Alex on camera because then there will be a fair. bunch of that's two fair. lost people. So that's fair. Okay, okay, let him go. Say the clock. We're doing good. Uh, so burning tree into Tin Street, sniping that sapphire growth. Ooh, said might be battling now. He's got a force of will, preordain, a disfigure, and another card. Yep, solid. I like that play, actually. Wow. I like this white faces guy in the chat. I don't know how we're going to use this for, but Jed Return <laughs> is a fantastic name. <laughs> oh, no, if Jed loses, that's good. if Jed like gets into the next draft and then loses again, that's what it's called, is the Jed Return. Oh wow! I don't know who some some mystery some person just texted me. I don't know who this was. Think of the dead, but someone uh Sean of the dead. Ooh, Sean of the dead. That's it's good. Sean of the dead. Yeah, Sean of the dead. That's it. Uh, I'm gonna leave it open. Okay, but that's pretty good. I don't know who this is. Someone he drafted listened. Lake of the Dead. Yeah, 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 yeah. So uh, we got a Night Vale Spectre picks up. Uh, is that true? Nemesis. Well, this is basically Cedric's dream. Situation here. Yeah, that's why he had to protect that Mox because he didn't have a third mana source. So, uh, yeah, he's gonna be. Um, he he's just trying to present blockers at this point and try Absolutely. to clock with. And he's got great blockers right now. Yeah. And Alex doesn't have any burn to go over the top. The good thing about all his blockers is they're kind of time walks, like just time walk for a turn, and then they start attacking right and just trying to get the clock down. Wow, he possible. follows it up with "Sorry, that was a dredgeful joke." White faces. I hope we see you again. You're a great guy. We see a Dreg Mangler, and he's going to just lose his guy here. All right, Trinity Nims is just yep. going to munch on that. Try to get in for two. Uh, so maybe he's We got a reader. Alex, I don't think, knew what Trinity did. Oops. Uh-oh. Yeah, well, I got got. A baby progenitus. I got I got got. Oh, he sad, lets, oh sad, 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 looks a great it. guy. Look at that. Oh, it's Christian Robertson. Uh Old oh, limited okay. master. Yeah, all right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so th thank you for that name, Christian Robertson. That's a fantastic name. We'll, we'll very likely going to end up with that one. S Cutthroat said he doesn't come out to play. Interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe he doesn't want it as much as I thought he did. Yeah. Well, you know, we are we we do have don't be a dick enforcer. That's true. On. That's true. That's fair. And uh... all right, so said drew, draws his fourth land. Uh, True name, just staying home on D. and uh, So, so like, this is an interesting situation. Like, when does Sutter get in a position where he can go on the offensive here? Like, how is Sutter going to win the game? Uh, in, like, two turns, I think. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, he has to have, like, some sort of, like, reactionary card in his hand. But uh, the Night Vale has Alex at 15, so that's a three-turn clock right now. So, yeah, like, yeah. he might actually just go on the offensive next turn um, if he has some way to, like, kill a creature. Um, and then just keep parity at this point because yeah, yeah, yeah. he's ahead in the race so he can start racing if he has a way to keep the race even um obviously if if he doesn't have any way to like stop alex from doing anything okay who? uh who paul wait wins uh wins the first game damn right i did damn right <laughs> i won that game Meeker, meef teaker the meefin man 
Winning games behind the booth. That's good. That's, That's when you know yeah. you're a champion. Thank you, Chris. What, what, what is the card on the far left? Is that a spike? Spike Jester on the spike left. Spike Jester and Flint, Flint of Boar on the right. Uh, these are all resolving. It looks like Sed's hand might not be very good. Uh, he might be just trying to hit a card that he can cast with that Night Vale Spectre. Yeah. Um, trying to hit a land, maybe. Um, but uh, he also might just have to leave it back now. Um, to block the Burning Tree Emissary and then hope the true name can trade off with one of the 3-3s. Three because uh, Alex is... Um... Jace Ball! Jace Ball. Jace Ball! Jace Ball Quarter Pocket. <laughs> so we've got a Jace the Mind Sculptor, or is... Uh... Did you know... I, I don't know if people know this. Patrick Chapin wrote a rap song about Jace the Mind Sculptor. I per choose to pretend that doesn't exist. Uh, the, man wrote, the, the man won a pro tour, er, yeah. and is also... An accomplished rapper. Pro Tour winner. Rapper. Yeah, you guys should check it out. I think it's called Jace. A real triple threat. I think it's called, like, Jace Better Than All or something. Yeah. You should all check it out. It's a great solo. It's not even a solo. That's not... It's, he's got, like, people it's a, on it with it's him. It's a collaboration. Have you yeah. ever... In the last seven years, has a rap song been released that hasn't been a collaboration? That's a good... <laughs> <laughs> Which is not to say that there are not a lot of good collaborations. Yeah. But, you know... It takes it takes the work of your friends these days. You can't do it by yourself. I hear that. Yeah, I hear that. So uh, Jason play uh, probably going to try to. F he's basically trying to force Alex into a bad attack here. Get a two for zero, right? Like get the card back with Jason, and then kind of trade off his two guys for Alex's two guys, and then take a couple yeah. damage. Yep. Um, we'll see what Alex has uh, has in the tank here. So how many cards that he draws is just basically in the game? I don't Ooh. think so. The Wooly Thoktar. That's a big guy, and he's got... Oh, Bush my Bush. God. And that's going to get okay. mental <laughs> misstep. That's, that's, I really wanted that to resolve. That would have been so sweet. Uh, all right, so Alex is now probably going to have to make a bad attack. So Alex is out of cards, right? Yeah, he's all in. I don't think he can just sit there and let that Jace go. So he's going to get in for like six or seven here, right? And yeah, I mean, he just attacks all the three power guys at Jace, and that's it. So he doesn't loses burning tree okay and then okay. he gets to make a trade with night veil specter so this is actually a, a much better attack yeah yeah, yeah. um i mean he'll, he loses a guy um and uh said's probably gonna down the uh the flint hoof boar i would imagine um and then just leave the night veil specter probably not trade it for anything can you ask me, can you ask me if there's one more match that we can do after this that is not the finals I'd like to get you and raise one more, but I want to do the final. Yeah, Ale Alex's last match is going to be... Okay, cool. Right. Greg, uh, Pelican and Alex West is the next match we're going to have on camera. Mm -hmm. yep. so. so you made me stand up for nothing? I did, in God, fact, make you stand Paul up for something, Jomo. Do you understand how fat I am? <laughs> I'm well aware. Yeah. <laughs> 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 okay, so as Joe you said, imposing himself on. Us. Yeah. Uh, so so basically, uh, exactly what you said happened is happening. Uh, Nightfield did trade with Spike Jester just to get the free card. Yep. Uh, true Worded, name. Okay. True uh, name comes back. Jace down. Uh, so we'll see what said uh, set up with that brainstorm that he activated Jace on. Uh, I was actually like a little surprised that he didn't plus it to five and force Alex to make a really bad attack. Yeah. 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 Um, because he would get the free card uh, by eating up the Burning Tree uh, MSR. Maybe there's but... something he's digging for. Yeah, it's very possible. Maybe it's Demonic Tutor. It's possible. So this is probably... Uh, so Alex's board is... Two three drops and a two drop? Uh, he probably doesn't want to engineer explosives because that kills his true name nemesis. So, um... Whoa! Uh, someone's giving a shout out to the man on the graphics. That's our band uh, from MTG Commentary, Chris Callen. Woo! He really is a rock star. He uh, this is something that I was trying to get going, and uh, you know, they started with humble beginnings. The first one of these we did was literally set up with cinder blocks over like a plot, like a piece of wood over oh, the yeah. top of the thing. You and me put that together. That yeah. was nice. And, uh, it was a surfboard, right? Yeah, yeah. It was yeah. a sur It was like a surfboard. like a balance board. And Chris contacted surfboard. me and was like, "Hey." Uh, you know, if you you guys are doing something cool here, like I want to help out, and he has just elevated this to a whole level we never even imagined. Word. He is awesome. Like honestly, like I, I, I like messaged him like one night and was like, "Hey man, do you think you could like I don't know like make it so we could just randomly pull up cards whenever we wanted on stream?" And he was like, 
Yeah, no problem. I can yeah, do that. Yeah, I got you. And uh, here we go. So, like, if any, I don't know, if, like, are you looking for, like, other work? I don't know. <laughs> if people want to contact him, he's Chris Cowan. He's in the Facebook group. He can help you out with stuff. Um, he's a fantastic human. For a price. Uh, so, Sedcast Gush here. Ooh, Maze of It. That's a good one. That's going to force some bad attacks, I think. Yeah. Uh, that buys you a lot of time. Uh, Sed's hand is uh, Disfigured Days and what looked to be a bunch of lands. Oh, Disrupting Shoal. Uh, Alex drew Eractos Cackler? Goblin Guide. A goblin uh, a Guide. Alright, so there's Dark Confidant. That Dark Confidant's going to be a great walker here. I didn't even know Cedric drafted Maze of If. Oh, yeah, he took it in uh, like the 30... Sixth round or something. Okay. Okay. So, so remind me again what happens here if Alex wins. How does this all shake out? All right. So if Alex win, if Alex wins, uh, hang on one second. Let me get to this draft. I want to find out when said took Maze of Ith. Talk to me about it while I check my phone. All right. Uh, Maze of Ith in the come on. Forty first. Forty first round was when Cedric took the Maze of Ith. Uh, so if Alex wins this match, uh, he will be four and two. Cedric will be five and two, and then Nate will be uh, is currently four and one is playing Paul Tefmeeker. so uh, the uh, or is five and Nate is five and one. So if Nate loses to Paul, uh, he will be five and two, and then uh, if Alex defeats Greg, uh, there will be three five and twos playing down for the one second place slot. Uh, so we'll have a crazy tiebreaker scenario. Uh, at this moment in time, uh, if uh, if Nate defeats Paul and Alex defeats Cedric, uh, Nate is into the finals. So. All right, Nate. Nate has won the second game uh, in his match so against Paul. One three. They're going to game three. Uh, so that one is uh, pretty critical, actually, uh, for our uh, uh, actually. Um, can we get David to? Can you hold them for game three, and we'll just get game three on camera? Yeah, uh, that one's going to hold a, a lot of weight, I think, in our in our finals preparations. So Absolutely, we're going yeah. to try to hold game three for uh, for the Paul uh, Teft Meeker uh, Nate Heiss match, uh, the uh, Red Burn deck versus uh, the Elf Elf Ball, as it were. Cedric g gets an island off Goblin Guide. Uh, I don't know why he didn't. What, what just happened? He revealed an island and then didn't put it into his hand. Was it actually an island? It looked a lot like an island to me. It's obviously not an island, right? Like, It's an island. Okay, he's just being weird about how he's Oh, it. sure. Okay, he didn't want to take any damage from Bob. Interesting. Yeah. Is it a May? Goblin Guide's a May? They're, they're checking. They're wondering if I'm wondering. Okay, the Polluted Delta was the next card anyway. Okay, okay. okay. we right. can confirm that was on camera. All right, so... Alex just jamming all of his guys in every turn, hoping, got to. hoping that it's good enough. Yeah, he can't give Cedric more time, uh, but Ced's defenses are are really strong at this point. Uh, he's got a couple of counter spells in his hand. He now has a library. I think he has a full seven. Uh, it's six cards in his hand. Do you want to know if you're about yes, please. We were joking, except that we weren't joking. We have a Rakdos Calcular come down for Alex. Is he going to attack again? The attacks are not great. Yeah, so it, at this point it. he just has to give up his entire board. Uh, I think Alex is uh, in a, a pretty bad spot here. He's been in a bad spot pretty much the whole game. But let's be real. Uh, Cedric is going to have to kill him, and he has Dark Confidant in play. So, things can happen. Um, yeah. True story. He's got that Brainstorm, which means he knows he's not going to take damage for a minute off that. Yeah, at least one turn. Um, but if he takes a couple of damage. Do you guys actually really just want to play your match out? Or? Yeah, because it, like, it could end up making everything take a really long time. Because right? there could be a three-way tie. That's what we're hoping for. Okay, so battle. For battle. <laughs> the three-way tie is actually the people, less time. Than the people want to see a three-way tie. People, you want to see a three-way tie, right? Tell them they just shut up. <laughs> It's, well, can it, you crush Tef? We're also only holding you for one game, so. <laughs> yeah. 
How about this? If if Cedric takes down this game, no. Yeah. If you lose to Teft, then there might be a three way tie, right? No, no, that, that would put me at X and two. Yeah, and that would be where the three way tie is. For second. Yeah. Uh, we're talking about three way ties for first. Uh, no, no, no. Cedric, six, uh, Corbett's six and one. That could happen too. If Nate wins and Ced wins. Six and one. Yeah. If Nate wins and Ced wins. Oh. There's a bunch of different three way ties. So. Well, I say player match. Okay. Player match. All right. We're gonna get. Uh, but if you could shut up while doing it, that would be great. <laughs> <laughs> so Nate and uh, Nate and Paul are gonna finish their third game off camera, uh, he and just died. Um, I also just wanted to sweet see Nate's deck on camera more. God, it's so good, it's sweet. Also, did we get Tefmeeker on camera? He doesn't care. Okay, fine. Um, but yeah, I don't know if we did. Oh yeah, we did. We did. There was yeah. that like flame. Re we were talking about the flame restore yep. dragon turn. Okay. Yeah, yeah. All right, so yeah, that's, the chat was behind. So, some reason our chat wasn't loading. So if you guys were asking questions, send them again. I didn't see them. I apologize. We got that sorted out. All right, so game two to Cedric here. We go into game three now. Alex gets to be on the play. Uh, probably pretty big in this yeah, in this type of yeah, matchup yeah, yeah. Uh, where Alex gets to put, like, four power into play before Cedric has a land. Yep. Uh, I think Cedric's mental misstep and force of will are going to be pretty important. I think Alex really needs to draw, draw one of his three uh, moxes. Huh? Ceremony, he can go home. He's driving well, who okay. is Sean? All right, uh, I'm gonna let you take. Uh, care yeah, of this hold one. up, hold up their game three. So we've got uh, Sean Collins here. Uh, do, do you want to do you want to interview him? You want me to interview him? No, you do. All right, we're gonna interview. We're gonna interview Sean Collins real quick. Huh? Nah, no sweat. Get him on camera. Whatever. It's hard to like put us all in the frame. We're we'll just gonna do a quick one here. Are you driving back tonight? I was thinking about it. You can say it. You can say it tonight if you want. Okay, I might do that. Headset up. Do you know who said them? I have a couple of like, All right, so uh, our mic's on, Chris. We're good. All right, so I am joined in the booth here by Mr. Sean Collins. Uh, could you hand me that? That thing right there? Yeah, that'll do. Um, okay, so Sean Collins, uh, yeah. unfortunately, you did earn last place today. You went 0-7. Mm. Big, old, <laughs> big old wall of frost. <laughs> yeah, you're the wall of frost, frost of the draft. Um... What happened, man? Like, uh, what, what do you think? Do you, do you bad draws? Do you think you just kind of had a bad idea of the format? What happened? I liked my deck quite a bit. I <laughs> can you turn the music like, off. I can't be drunk and hear that at the same time. Okay. <laughs> I uh, was it like six lands on turn four? Just like had six lands by turn four, like three or out of my four matches, and just. Yeah, I mean, I did, I did when I wasn't in the booth, I did watch a few of your games, and it looked like you were, like, a turn away a yeah. couple times. It just seemed like, you know, somebody's got to be in last place, and it just seemed like kind of luck didn't go your way. I think Mono Black is totally a reasonable deck. It's a respectable deck. I think you drafted it really well. I think you even, I think you drafted some cards, like, I'd never heard of that were pretty sweet. Like, there was the, the Black Sulfuric Vortex I saw you draft. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That card was, was that good for you at all today? Um, I didn't actually get to play it against anyone. Um... I boarded it in a couple of times, but I never saw it. Okay. Okay. Um, do you have any big takeaways from the draft? Is there anything, if you could do it all over again, that you would change? Um, I think I would have, like, gone with my strategy of drafting more one-drops. Mm -hmm. I, uh, since, like, people were starting to draft more creatures, I wanted to shy away from that. That makes sense. And go, like, a little bit bigger. But I think that just made my deck way too slow. Um, I played, like, 16 lands and still drawing a bunch of them, but... I don't know. This kind of variance. So, here's your trophy. Yeah. The Ted. Yeah. So, uh, you've got the Ted here, which means that you uh, you have to display this prominently in your home for at least one month. Okay. Do you uh, have a spot picked out for it? Uh, I I can I can do that. How am I going to get that back up to you? No, you uh, you get to keep it. Okay. You only have to display it for a month, but you okay. get to keep it for life. Oh, really? You get to. That's awesome. Yeah, so we'll take a picture with you a little bit later. You're staying the night, I think you were saying. Yeah. So we'll get you a picture with it later. That's but uh, let's get a, I was going to ask for a round of applause on the stream. If you guys at home could give us a round of applause for Sean Collins. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Thanks for joining us, buddy. Uh, all right. Thanks, everybody. We're going to get uh, the match back underway here.
some uh, black sulfuric vortex? What card is that? It's the. Oh, three, it yeah, it deals one every upkeep, and yeah. then if someone targets it, they take five. Yeah. Yeah. Also, can't gain life. Huh? Yeah. They're awesome. Yeah, so the black card, uh, thanks to slowly crashing, it's Forsaken Waste. It's uh, it only deals one on upkeep, but when it is gets tar when it gets targeted, I think it uh, target the person that targets it loses five life. So it's like not quite as good, but it's kind of sweet. Uh, Forsaken Waste saw a lot of constructive play back in the day. I was I didn't see it back then, but you know I wasn't around. That's a go deep classic. I agree. A go deep classic. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Welcome back, uh, Jesse Wilkie, former uh, Vintage Rotis Redraft. Uh, player and uh, in the mix I, I wouldn't be surprised to see him in our draft of champions at some point he's a fantastic player he uh, totally deserves to be there for sure um, so we're gonna go ahead back to game three Cedric Phillips versus Alex West Alex West is on the play which I think makes him the favorite this one's for some of the marbles yeah this is a pretty relevant <laughs> matchup that's a go deep classic that's just a that's, good line that's a good line way to yeah. go Wilkie I'm not surprised yeah he's just he is a go deep classic right there Wilkie's a go deep classic. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> All right, so win, win the win the big show or whatever you're down there for. By the way, Wilkie, bring home the bacon. So much bacon. We're rooting for you, buddy. All right, so uh, Alex on the play. I believe these are their sevens. I don't think anybody mulliganed here. I, I I think Alex is really looking for. I mean, it goes without saying, but he's looking for a uh, mox pretty hard here. Uh, yeah, I mean, it certainly wouldn't hurt. I don't see one, though. Uh, it looks like he's... And I see, like, no creatures. Yeah. No, he has a one-drop uh, death right Shaman and a, a lone two lion. Drop. He has a lone Lion. Lone Lion, death right and Phyrexian Revoker. What's that far card? Uh, he has four lands. What's But what's the furthest one? The furthest land? On the far... His far left card. It's a land. I don't know. Okay. And then we've got a... Ooh, a mental misstep for Cedric. So oh, maybe it's not, it's not a land. Cedric is really going to help. Uh, uh, what is that card over on the left there? Hmm. I can't see the card on his left. I thought it was a land, but it's not. Uh, it might it's be like a, a Caravax torch, but I know that it's not. No, yeah, definitely not that. He doesn't have a spell in his main deck, I don't think. He has uh, Vindicate, Banishing Light, Oblivion Ring, and Path to Exile all on the sideboard. Yeah. I don't think he has a main deck spell. So He did keep seven, uh, so we'll find out what he's going to play soon. Uh, it's a Lone Lion. I think that's going to get mental misstepped. Set has misstepped. Alex is aware and puts it in the bin. Yep. Uh, Volcanic Island from Cedric. It might be the Bushwhacker. Cedric also has Days and Preordain no. and Blue Elemental Blast. Okay. And is looking pretty good for here. Yeah, Blue Elemental Blast, a nice one. I'm um, just going to try to keep Alex from getting a clock into play. And while Alex is trying to decide his play here that's going to get dazed, I think that we should... Uh, um, it might not get dazed, right? If he leads with the one, the red one drop, then it gets blue elemental blasted. So. Sure, sure. So um, just a reminder to people, we do still have $50 worth of store credit that we'll be giving out. In order to win that, you need to be a member of our Facebook group. So join the Facebook group down below. And also uh, make sure that you're in the stream because we're going to give like a password or something during the finals match. We'll, we'll message you on Facebook. Uh, as long as you can message us back with a password, $50 to Northwest Sports Cards Online will be yours. Yeah. So make sure you join the Facebook group. Yeah. Make sure you're logged into Twitch, and you're good to go. Someone's asking, what is the deal with this? Is this cube? Um, no. If uh, it is a North, it is a vintage rotisserie draft. Um, where it, Flesh Reaver is the card that wow. we could not figure so out. Three, three, two mana, four, three, three four. for two. Oh, four, 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 four two. yeah. Um, we can go uh, a little bit into that about what uh, the format is after the game. Uh, it's a little bit complicated. But essentially, they're drafting with any vintage legal card, and they draft them. Yeah, so it, it, we can go over it really quick. Basically, the idea is that uh, we have an eight-man draft, uh, and it uh, goes back and forth uh, in snake style. So like, like a fantasy, fantasy yeah, football Yeah, like a fantasy football draft. If you, don't know how to, if you don't play fantasy football, then... You're a sucker. A little bit difficult to explain, but basically the guy in the one seat gets to pick any card from Magic in, that's legal and vintage. And 
almost always it's Black Lotus, and then the next guy gets to pick. Black Lotus has been taken, so he can't take Black Lotus. He can take any other card. Yeah. Uh, and then from there, it deviates, and then it goes one to eight, and then in the next round, it's eight to one, and then one to eight, eight to one, one to eight. And so we go all the way through. We draft everyone drafts 45 picks, builds a 40-card deck, and here you see them playing their matches. They don't have to draft basic lands. They do not have to draft basic lands. Those are provided. No. So, um, so it's a long day. I mean, we've been here. We started at about 11.30. Uh, Seattle time, so... Yeah, we've been know. playing for about nine hours now. Yeah, um, but it's a sweet format, and uh, we're excited to kind of spread the word about it. It's been kind of around for a few years now. I forget yeah. exactly who came out with it. But, uh, uh, Chris Pakula, I Chris believe, Pakula, is the yeah. uh, the originator. Uh, and, you know, it was really kind of popular back in, like, 2010. Ooh, me, and, me. you know, Wizards did a couple and things like that, but then it died off, and we're kind of really trying to bring it back. It's an awesome format. Yeah, it's really cool. There's a lot of design space involved, actually, because, uh, like, most of these people, when they were doing them before, were doing, like, one-shots. You know, they are just yeah, doing yeah, a draft, yeah. right? And then they would do their draft, and um, that was it. Uh, yeah, it, it was kind of over. Here we have the same group of guys playing again and again and again, yeah. and you get to see th- like things like meta games developing, right? Like, yeah. Uh, and uh, there's a lot of cool design space. Like in this draft, we had, you know, five decks that we haven't really seen before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and a couple that we had. So, um, figure it out. It's a puzzle for you guys. That's turn one. So uh, we have uh, wow. Maze of Ith uh, locking Maze down win, uh, Alex's. Um, Alex is Flesh Reaver, um, and Dark Confidant is going to start kind of clawing him back into the game. Alex low on cards, so um, he doesn't have a lot of... Uh, ooh, that cannot name Maze of Ith, unfortunately. Um, Alex doesn't have a lot of reach uh, in his deck. Yeah. He has a lot of creatures, not a lot of reach. Uh, also, he's getting flooded in both of these last two games pretty badly. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, his deck has uh, 15 mana sources, uh, and he has had five lands in, in Do we know what Revoker is on? Is it on Maze of Myth? I would I no, have it can't, to. No, it can't be on Maze of Myth. Oh, because it's non land. Yeah. Um... Uh, yeah, we do not know what Maze of Myth is, or what uh, Phyrexian Revoker is naming. So uh, Chris is going to get on that for us, uh, figure out what the Revoker is naming. Cedric looks pretty well set up to, to take this game, I think. Yeah, so what we're looking like, uh, um, and it sounds like Nate's his, his Lice Hole is a little low. Um. So. He's at eleven. What is it? What to is it? Clarify. Chris? Engineered explosives. Engineered explosives. Okay, okay that's a good so, name. So uh, we should also call out the the current life totals are wrong. Uh, Cedric is at eleven, and Alex was. Yeah, the 14. dice are correct. The dice, the are, dice correct. are always correct. Yeah, no, no worries, Chris. You're you're, you're rocking it, and you you can have. Yeah, a chop, little... chop, buddy. Come on. Chop, chop. <laughs> chop, chop. Uh, Dreg Mangler is getting. Uh, what what is that ability? Scavenged. Scavenged. Scavenged over here. Which is strong here. It is strong. Uh I mean we've got a maze of it. What so. is uh Chris, can you pull up Flesh Reaver uh over onto the uh little area? Yeah, that is one of the cards we unfortunately did have to proxy because we didn't no one's ever got uh, it before. Deals damage to a creature or opponent, deals damage to you. Okay. Uh so Cedric can trade for the revoker. Uh yeah, trade for the revoker and Maze of it, the thing. Interesting. I would have definitely done that the other way. Yeah. I guess, I mean, he really wants to use the engineer explosives if he does draw it. We've got a sleight of hand. So. Um. Hey, uh, Chris, that, the branding guy in chat has some questions. Do you mind dealing with that? If you got the time. Did we see what the sleight of hand saw? I did not. I did not. Chris right. er, uh, Cedric's pretty quick on all that stuff. I think it was a land. Is that Thank a you. is that a blast? We see a Demir Charm and a blast in his hand. It looks like. Yeah. So uh, he's gonna just keep that uh, Flesh Reaver going with the Maze yeah. of Ith. Is Demir Charm minus two minus two? Is that what that? A Demir Charm is kill target creature with power two or more. I think or two or less. Converted mana cost or converted power? mana cost. Uh, I don't. Know. It does something. It does something. That was. It insight. does in fact do something. That is we're, insightful. We're very sure yeah. that it does something. Um, so so Thalia into Bushwhacker here. Um, I love the Bushwhacker pick. That's a strong yeah, pick. it's really good. That's a good actually. one. Yeah, it's very good. And uh, all right, so now we are in top deck mode all around. 
Yeah. Uh, Flesh Reaver Literal versus Maze of Ith, and Sed gets the first draw. What did he draw? Do we see it? It's a good uh, one. Demonic Tutor. It's a good one. That is a good one. Arguably the best one. Do you think he just gets Jace here? Yeah, it's Jace. All right. The Jace ball. It could have been True Name Nemesis there, but uh, he, I think I think mm. Jace is more powerful. I think right? Jace lets him. I, I think True Name Nemesis at this point is just a, a glorified blocker. At this well, point sure, but he could have cast True Name that turn. Sure. And actually, it can just get through and kill Alex in five turns. Sure. Um, so, yeah, he did get Jace. Okay. But Cedric's deck is so powerful. I think you want to take Jace and just kind of like build up card advantage and make I sure think he I agree. pulls the game out. Yeah, I think I agree. Uh, I just, I don't know. I mean, for discussing. the people who weren't here for the draft, Cedric picked up like Demonic Tutor uh, and Library of Alexandria. Demonic Tutor it, in the 16th round of the draft. Jace the Mind Sculptor, like 32nd. Libra uh, Cedric had the best... Uh, post halftime picks. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he took coming out of the first break after the first intermission. Uh, yeah, like we took, we took a, we took a break and he was like, "All right, you idiots didn't take these cards. Yeah. I will take them. I guess." Also, he idiotly did not take them too. Yeah, that's fair. And then you know he just like well, I'm taking now, I guess. Uh, yeah, demon. He actually took. Uh, he actually took scalding or uh, volcanic island. First out of the first break, then Demonic Tutor. And then <laughs> yeah. in the second break, he led with Library and then got Jace in the 32nd round of the draft. Uh, Which is like 30 rounds later than yeah, what's seen 30 again. times 8 is 200. Je Jesse, Hampton, Jesse Hampton was in the last draft and he, he was talking about first picking it. Yeah. He ended up getting Ancestral instead, but. Third, I think, yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah, third. Spike uh, Jesta. So now one of those guys is gonna get all through. Yeah, but is he going at? Uh, is he going at Jace or? I think at this point yeah, you gotta go for gotta Cedric. Go for, he's gotta go for Jace. I, I think, think you gotta yeah. go for Cedric. I disagree. Like a description of how Nate won. Uh, in a minute. But it sounds like Nate won his match. Yeah, let's get uh, David. Grab the mic and yeah. Why don't you grab the mic, David? Yeah, yeah, yeah. David Miller on mic. All right, guys. This was an epic turn one. We had. Turn one strip mine into Black Lotus. Crack Black Lotus for Eternal Witness, getting back Black Lotus. Play Black Lotus again. Um, play Fast Bond, Quarried Ranger, Crop Rotation into a Taiga, cast Crucible of Worlds. Got there. Turn one. <laughs> <laughs> Nate so walks in and shouting, got well. there. <laughs> At a boy, Nate. I had to think about that turn. I just want to let everyone know that when we were voting for who was going to win this draft, I alone voted for Nate Heiss. What? True. Yeah, I was the only person okay. in the Facebook group that voted for Nate Heiss. Oh, oh, Because oh. you were all suckers. <laughs> I mean, I love all of you. You guys are one of the best streams on Twitch. But you are all suckers that didn't think Nate Heiss was going to do well. Yeah, Nate. Well, this is my previous performance. Nate's oh, yeah, he, he, he was terrible his first time around. So I totally get it. But oh, that was a sweet great job, Nate Heiss. Turn one, Crucible, Fast Bond, fast bond Strip Mine Whoa. Lock. I don't know who, who Mag Dargle is, but they just earned some points by comparing Jace the Mind Sculptor to Tom Brady. Can we give that guy something? You know, he might just be saying that Jace is, like, old and washed up. <laughs> Nothing. I think, he, I think he's trying to say that Jace is old and washed up. Why don't you watch your mouth? <laughs> <laughs> Please don't uh, no, he's definitely no, winning. Cedric couldn't take it down. He got two name nemesis. It's all right. We have a, I have it all set up. Don't worry about it. So, so what happens in the three? Uh, the Facebook group yeah, link can be found underneath the, the stream. Don't worry about it. Okay. Uh, if you click, if you scroll just down underneath the stream video there, you can click on the Facebook group and get added, which you will need to do to be eligible for the fifty dollar uh, giveaway that we're going to do during the finals. Yeah. So uh, Cedric has uh, true name nemesis getting in. Uh, Alex down to seven life points. Uh, Jason D. And with uh, Baleful Strix keeping things alive, uh, Maze of Ith, and a bunch of cards in hand. I think Alex is in uh, in, in pretty rough shape here. Um. So after this match, we're going to have Alex West versus Greg Pelquin? Uh, yeah, actually, we can get the tiebreaker match on, because if Al if Cedric wins this, that match doesn't mean anything. So who, who who's on match next? Uh, if Cedric wins, uh, there will be a three-way tie for first, okay. uh, and so we'll be playing off. So we have currently <laughs> three X ones. Uh, yeah. Wow. That's, that's I mean before. that's what happens when you have an O and seven, right? Like the wind yeah, 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 on the top yeah. end. So. Um, so if we do that, we're gonna have uh, Joe Bono back in the booth after this. He's gonna replace me. Yep. And we will uh, get Joe Bono in the booth. Yeah. Uh, the man, the master, and uh, then we'll have uh, me and Berkeley back in the booth for the finals. Cool. 
And we will give you away that fifty dollars for the finals. Are we gonna do it like right before the finals, during the finals? Probably like during Like after game two. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We wanna do it early enough so that like if someone doesn't claim it, we can give it to someone else. Okay. True name, TikToking. So that's gonna put Alex down to four and uh he doesn't have any way to beat it, so yeah. I think I think uh What a great pick. Yeah. True name nemesis, powerful card. Yeah. I don't think Alex really quite knew how it was. Uh, or how it worked. Because it says protection from a player, which is kind of not intuitive, honestly. Sure. It really, there we go. Match, there we go. match said. Three, right. six, and ones. Three -way ties. All right, three, so. We're in a three way tie situation here. Before the draft, Paul asked me to set up a bunch of tiebreaker scenarios, and I didn't think this one would come up. But luckily, I spent time on it. I figured it out. Uh, so, normally, what we would do uh, in a lot of tournaments, you would have like a head to head tiebreaker scenario i think that's stupid so uh we're not going to do that uh also it wouldn't matter in this scenario because we have three six and ones they all beat each other great planning um by yeah you, by by, the way. Mm -hmm. so uh we have what we're going to do is the three players will dramatically on camera high roll right and that the high roll will get a, a one spot in the finals uh -huh. okay then the other two guys We'll play one game, sudden death tiebreaker. So we can take a step back and just reiterate that we are about to roll dice for bottles of liquor. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Okay, I can behind that. So I'm going to get off the camera. <laughs> Clackety, clackety, clack. All right, I'm going to get off camera. Back. I'm going to get Joe Bono in here. We're going to get that die roll on camera because that's epic. Okay. And then we will have a two and three a seed match, and then we'll have a finals match. Roll them up. We're, we are not using... Game win percentage. Ten. Setter curls a ten. That's good. Setter curls a ten. Good job, Seti. That's an easy ten. Easy ten for Sed. That's yeah. uh, that play. The field. The field. The field plays. Oh, oh my god! Who was that? Corbo. Oh my god! The Crobat is Seti. running so well today. This is. This has got to be the best. That Corbe wow. has there ever run. There is nothing robbed. better happening on Twitch right now. This has got High to be roll. the best of his life. <laughs> is good. This is a good tiebreaker. He leads with a 10 and just immediately gets shot down. That's not an easy number to beat. No. Alex, roll the 12. Yeah, just box cars. Just, let's put out one six first. One six first. Yeah, one die, one die, one die, one, one die. die. One, it's an eight. It's Nate. Come on, Nate. Go, Nate. Go, Nate. Go, Nate. Box covers. Ooh. Run, doubles roll again. Yeah. Monopoly rules. Doubles roll again. Monopoly. It's not Monopoly. I have it. Good night. No, no, it, is it, is, it is Monopoly. Yeah. yeah. All right. Corbett. Corbett is into the finals based on high roll. Uh, and now we have a one-game playoff between Cedric. A one Cedric game and playoff? Nate. Yeah, it's a one-game playoff. Wow. Yeah. Uh, I mean, where how where are we at in terms of time? It's late, and it's gonna continue to get later. It takes me an hour to get back to Tacoma. Okay, Just you make a decision. Uh, well, I don't, what time is it? Eight thirty. Eight thirty. All right. I said before the tournament it was a one game playoff. It's a one. It's a one game playoff. It's been decreed one game. Yeah. All the marbles. Variants, embrace it. Mm -hmm. You just high rolled. Mm -hmm. How much? How much have you ever lost on the roll of a die? What is that from? Oh, what is that from? I don't know. Well, it, I the it's answer a flip the of a coin in the original. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. It's uh, two country for old men, right? Yeah. Yeah. No country for old men. Or yeah. Um, I but think I think, I think question. I think the most I've ever lost was twenty dollars. Okay. Yeah, on a dice roll specifically. Yeah. Because uh, my buddies used to like I used to play poker and all my buddies would like degenerately go yeah pit. go just super degen not even in the pit like in the fucking back rooms just like playing four five six for thousands. Um, but uh, I would never play. I would just sit there and watch and loot watch my friends lose thousands of dollars. And it was yeah, really yeah. really fun. Um, but the most I ever lost was at an F and M actually. <laughs> 
Uh, was it Charles Wong? No, no. This was back in Alaska. Okay. Uh, my, my oh, God. The, the best man at my wedding was at, sitting next to me, and we were just dinking around, and I was just, like, rolling a bunch of D6s for fun, mm-hmm. and I rolled, like, five of them, and I rolled, like, six, five, five, four, four, five, you know? And I was that's like, pretty that's pretty roll. good. And he was just like, you know what? I can beat that. And I was like, "That's no, you can't beat that. And he was like, all right, here's the deal. Even money, I get to add one die, and I'll beat that. And I was like, deal, bet. Yeah. We shook on it. He added a D20, rolled, oh. <laughs> and defeated me. Oh. Uh, the sick part so was. You played. Yeah. I, no, I got got. I pulled out the 20. I paid him. Like, yeah, I just yeah. definitely got got. And uh, he he actually rolled just all ones and twos on the D6. <laughs> and uh and and the the d20 was, the like d20 was a 19 yeah. and i was come on but yeah sometimes you get got man you know what are you gonna do so i pay the man That's his cool. money we're, we're still cool yeah yeah someday i'll get him yeah I, like that's that's the dream you right get got, yeah and you then get you, got you, sometimes you you get, yeah. we, w- we once had a guy uh run this the classic pool hustle of like uh you know if you let me move the ball like I'll make all seven balls or whatever. Sure. And sure. the guy's just like, okay. And then he just moves it every time. <laughs> and then just like sinks all the balls. And uh, the guy who got got was just like, after the second one was like, not paying. He was like, no, I'm paying. You better stop. If you like, I will get you worse than you are getting me right now. And the guy was just like, <laughs> I'm gonna get you. And then, like, he just sank all seven, right? So he got paid his seventy five bucks. And then uh, my buddy Jake was the guy who got got. And so we went to Costco the next day, bought like thousands of Dixie cups, went to the other guy's apartment, filled them all with water, water, and just carpeted his apartment in Dixie cups full of water, and wallpapered his house in like pictures of our friend just doing this. <laughs> That's really that's good. He like opened his microwave and there's a picture of our friend staring back yeah. at him. Opened his cabinets. And it was, yeah, it's actually on YouTube. There's so there's a tradition of pranks at my work okay. when people go on vacation for a serious amount of time. Um, and like most of the people have their own office, like tinfoil desk and yeah, stuff. So you yeah, so like, you tinfoil their whole desk yep. and stuff like that. One of my buddies, um, I, I forget, like his his friend was like a Red Sox fan. Um, and so they got like a giant Yankees poster and put it up, but they put it up outside the building on the outside of his window looking in. Uh, so he couldn't get it. So he couldn't get it. It's so like the fourth floor. Oh my God. Um, and like maintenance didn't take it down for like three months. Wow, that's really good. Um, What's the threshold of vacation time? Like if you take like a week vacation, do you get got? Yeah, I, like a couple days. Okay, yeah, that's fine. But like, right. yeah, you know, that's the, all right. You miss a, a week, work week. A week is you're where you want. Got. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, but like, if you're going for the really cruel stuff, you know, like the Dixie cups all over the place is a good one. Filling the office with balloons is like a pretty typical one. Yeah. But if you want to like go the next level, you put glitter in them first, and then you blow them up. Oh my god, that's pure evil. That's pure evil. You, you don't pull that out all the time. No. Wow. That's My favorite April Fool's joke that I saw, uh, I saw it on Twitter or on uh, on Imager this mm-hmm. this year. It was uh, so when you uh, like you know what color tang is when yeah. you like put the powder in the water. Well, it turns out that uh, macaroni and cheese powder makes the same color, and uh, somebody did that. Mm-hmm. They they put Just like replaced. yeah, so like they they put it in a pitcher. Just put it in the fridge. Sure. And then, like, had the Tang, like, container just on the counter, like, sitting there. Like, hey, I just made Tang. Yeah. Do you want some? It's right in the fridge. Yeah, there you go. That's for you. Made it for you. Yeah. Macaroni and cheese powder water. That's got to taste yeah, awful. It's not good. All right, so here we go. One game for some of the marbles. Some of the marbles. Some of the marbles. Uh, from... So SETI. SETI has a library in his opener. He uh, also has EE in his opener, which is EE, very He good also has Spell matchup. Snare and Counter Spell. Yeah. Uh, so he's decently set up here, uh, although Nate uh, Nate could theoretically overload him. Yep. Yeah. Uh, as to the point of the library not being very good. Yeah. There. So Nate has the wasteland in his hand. So he's got okay. An answer to so library. he's got an answer to the library. Uh, looks like he's got Query and Ranger and maybe a couple other elves, um, but he doesn't have any draw sevens yet. I think he might have a crop rotation. So it's potentially a very explosive hand. Yeah. Uh, in the game immediately before this against Paul Tef Meeker, mm-hmm. 
he tanked for like five minutes before he we said heard. he was keeping. Yeah, we heard. That was insane. Yeah. Uh, so the, the story got mm-hmm. told already? Yeah. All right. I'll, yeah. I'll keep Turn one, Lotus, side. Witness, Lotus, Fast Bond, Strip Mine, Crucible. Yeah. Queer and Ranger, whatever. Yeah. It's just yeah. Th- th- there, was, there was a crop rotation in there. Yeah. And like you could tell Nate was like, oh, I really wish I had gotten one fetch land. Yeah. And I could just be like, oh, I got 10 lands. Yep. Yeah, that would have been nice. All right, so we got the Quirion Ranger, we got the island. We got the Nate, Nate face cam going over there. All so right, Quirion Ranger getting in for a point, looks like. Yeah. So, so both kept seven. Really respecting, like, Priest of Titania, keeping up yep, absolutely. the spell uh, snare instead of playing library and totally. turn one. Yep. Especially because he didn't have a removal spell at the time, right? Yeah. So he did just draw one. Um, but... Uh, so we're we're really expecting him to draw on Nate's turn and then uh, and counter something or dismember something. Yep. Uh, Nate's setting up a he crop rotates probably for strip mine here. Uh, maybe cradle. Eh, probably strip mine. Like there's nothing really explosive he's doing yet. But like the damage is kind of done from the library. Theoretically, uh, it is possible that he just wants to resolve some super spell and maybe goes for the island, but that's probably that's pretty unlikely. Oh, breeding pool. Okay, sure. set up uh, Edric. Yeah. yeah, I mean, like if if he was or going for a strip mine, they would, the strip mine would be for the island and then wasteland the Correct. library, right? And just like set you back so much, right? Exactly. God. Have we drawn Edric? I don't know what's in Nate's hand. I can't Doesn't quite tell. Look like we have. I see like a regrowth. Yeah. Um, are they are they of... playing for third? No. So they're, this they're, is the finals. No, they're playing for second place. For second place, got it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the loser yeah. of this match is awarded third place. Uh, so these guys are both invited to the next draft if they can can attend. Uh, the winner of this game will play Corbett in the finals. Yeah. Uh, so I guess you're right, Chris. They are playing for third. Yeah, sort of. Um, yeah, the loser of this match is awarded third place. Or this game is awarded third place. One game playoff. Single elimination. Take one. Getcha. Here's the dismember. Okay. All right, so Cedric has counterspell to back up the spell snare. Now he's got force of will. It looks like he's got volcanic in there. So... You know, he's he's actually like really happy with how this game has mm-hmm. gone so far, I think, yeah. because he's not getting overwhelmed. He's right, and now he, now his counters can do one for one damage. Yeah. Yeah. All right, regrowth. So regrowing. Is it the wasteland? Yeah, it doesn't matter. Yeah. Spell snare targets that. <sighs> Draws the strip. All the land destruction. That's gross. I mean, Crucible's got to be coming off the top, right? Yeah. <laughs> this is just how Sad's going to go out. <laughs> just absolutely how he's going to go out. The most miserable. So we have Taiga. So he does have the Edric in his hand. Yeah. He has a Jiraga Warcaller and look what looks to be an Eternal Witness over there on the left. Yeah, that so is. So for a Strip Mine also. Yeah. So he's probably going to lead on Edric here. Yeah, you yeah. play Edric, and then next turn you get to Eternal Witness back mm-hmm. to Strip Mine, get the Island. Yep. Uh, maybe actually, I guess you get the dark, look, dark slick shores. Doesn't matter. Yeah. Like I always want to go for the basic land. Edric resolved. Mind. Interesting. Hmm. Oh, dazed it. Okay. Said needs to draw a land for Nightfall Specter here. Yeah. Ooh, I mean, probe. Honestly, okay. like he'd rather keep up counter spell. I think. I mean, certainly once he's well, he has force too. Oh, that's true. Yeah. So if he can get Night Veil down and then start forcing or yeah. and get get a force turn, you know, there's the island. Okay, so he's probably yeah. gonna tap out. And Night Veil is Night Veil actually good in this matchup at all? Uh I mean it can get lands. Yeah. You know, like he just can draw a land. Um and drawing and, and start drawing a clock. land every third turn or or sorry. Yeah, like every third starting turn. Starting a clock seems other. good, yeah. right? It's fine. I, like it's not nearly as exciting as it was against Greg Poliquin. Sure. Um, counterspell likely card that's going to get cast here. What are all of the cards in Sed's hand? I can't see the middle one. Uh, so we've got the EE, e, the counterspell, then that's Demir Charm. A gold card. It's Demir Charm. Demir Charm. Yeah. Yeah. 
our faded out gold cards. Yeah. Um, Force. What does Demir Charm do? Uh, it kills a creature with two or less toughness, uh, or counters a sorcery, or like you get to rearrange or mill the top cards of your opponent's library. I think it's like you look at the top three cards of target player's library, put two in the graveyard, one uh, on top. Okay. Something along those lines. Power two or less. Destroy target creature, power two or less. He did counterspell the Imperious Perfect. Yeah. And then is now casting his Night Veil vale Spectre. Hmm. Would you rather... I guess, given that you're planning on tapping out, you'd rather counterspell there so that you can just clean up whatever yeah. he casts with the Demir Charm. Yeah. Because the Demir Charm kills everything in Nate's right. deck, right? Yep. He also does have force if he needs it. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, I, that's why I was a little surprised he didn't just cast the Nightfall Specter first. And then, like, I mean, because this is basically the same decision he had before. Yeah. Except maybe even worse because now he doesn't have a counterspell when he untaps. That's true. That's so, true. Um, I don't know. Maybe he was just hoping Nate would draw a blank. He'd be able to counter whatever Nate played. Like the witness there. or something? Like, yeah, they get the witness. Um, but Nate drew a lord, and he was like, oh, well, I have to get that. Yeah. I guess, yeah, that's fair, because he doesn't have a way to, like, trade with the witness for value other than counterspell. Mm -hmm. So that makes sense. Yeah. But he was forced to use it. Uh, but luckily, kind of luckily for him, uh, Nate has drawn Black Lotus, which is not really fantastic here. Like, it lets him... He could the, theoretically play a Jiraga Warcaller as a 3-3. a little bit more, yeah. That's about it. Right, that's probably the best use you're going to get out of it. Yeah. Right? Oh, he can play Witness. Witness. And, yeah. and it out. Sure. And I think I would actually prefer to um, just keep the Witness to be able to get a gas card later on. Instead of just getting a free two one, yeah, if that's what he's planning, it's tough because at this point, like, unless he uses the lotus this turn and then witnesses and gets a lotus or whatever, right? Like, the witness is going to be like minus tempo later in the game. Sure, um, but like, he's not really, he's not under a ton of pressure. He's not under a ton but, of pressure, and he's already like, it doesn't matter that he's playing one spell a turn because he's drawing one spell a yep. turn. Yeah. Yep. He just wouldn't ever be able to have a turn where he's like, witness play the spell I played. Yeah. You know? Um, so War Caller's a 2-2. Two, two. Um, like, I, I would have just rather cast a 3-3 three, three War Caller there, I think. I perhaps. Know, maybe that's wrong. Hmm. Windfall. Interesting. Probably not going to cast that. Anytime yeah. Soon, yeah. Boom. Boosh. All right, so Night Vale with Jason Hand. What's the last card in Sed's hand over there? Uh, what is with these cameras? Elvish Mystic. Somebody likes messing with the cameras. Yeah, no kidding. I'm not sure what's going on over there, but... Uh, <laughs> use the Lotus Pell to cast Jace and Fate Seal. Leave on top. All right. Uh, Nate, Nate looks to have his Fate Seal slightly, game. yeah. Uh... 2-2. Two, two. It, suck, it sucks that this is how it goes down for Nate, but you know, yeah. he he defeated everyone in the tournament except for Cedric, and he's not in the finals. Yeah, But, That's you know, you have three 6-1 and one players. Somebody's yeah. going to Somebody's got to be left on the outside. And he's not walking home empty-handed. He gets some booze. He gets, and, he gets his buy-in back. In a, and and a, he gets to come back yeah, for and the a, next one. And, a, and he gets to brew again. Yeah. Yeah. And, like, this is this is an awesome deck. Yeah, and you know totally what? Yeah, mad props to Nate for putting this together. His deck is super, super sweet. Yeah, uh, and I'm a, I'm a huge fan of uh, how he constructed this. And like to be honest, I was like, you know, during the draft, I was like, God, why doesn't he have Vampire Demonic? This is ridiculous. And I talked to him after the draft, and he told me he was like, I knew they were there. I didn't want to like hurt my mana base to take black cards. Yeah. He and knew, he he knew how he was going. Splash. Yeah, he knew how he was going to build his mana, and it was already going to be tough, especially because Alex was over there on the other side of yeah, the wheel taking, taking all the, the fetch lands. So fighting for the blue it was difficult for him. Yeah, greens. and um, 
and he, he his philosophy is I just want fast mana and draw sevens. Mm-hmm. You know, I want to mm-hmm. empty my hand and draw seven new cards. I don't even want to tutor for Black Lotus that much. Because his deck is not a Black Lotus deck. Yeah. It's just, I mean, Black Lotus is very good because Black Lotus is very good. But it's not uh, It's not it's a deck not that like needs it. It's not an engine it, yeah. around Lotus. It's an engine around other stuff. And um, he constructed his deck very, very well, uh, as did uh, as did Cedric. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, like, it, it shows. Ced, Ced's deck has, uh, has been... Really good every time we've seen it on yeah. camera. No, these... he, got, he got blown out by Corbett in the two games that he played against him, right? So we'll see what happens there. Uh, and it actually, I mean, he doesn't have a lot of defensive tools that are very well set up to beat Corbett. So Corbett might win this thing. Yeah. No, I mean, it's, these guys both, you know, did a really excellent job throughout the draft. Mm-hmm. You know, Nate prepared. and They didn't honestly, waste any picks. Yeah. They oh no wasted God. picks. Most efficient drafts. Mm-hmm. Like these two and Alex West. Yeah. You know, they, they got a hundred percent out of all their picks. Yep. And really like the only villain here is Crobat for <laughs> rolling an eleven. We, yeah. Like I know, dude. Come I, on. Come just on. like roll a seven. Just let the ten fight, be good. Fight an eight. Yep. You know. Let him just two degenerate decks going at it. Yep. Yep. Oh well. But uh wow. yeah, last time last that time we had to be, a uh, a temporal spring. temporal spring. Yeah, that doesn't, doesn't seem do very good right here. Is Set is just trying to get Jace ultimate here. Looks like um, last time we had uh, our last finals was a red white deck versus a black green deck. No islands <laughs> in the finals, uh, which is not what you that would expect seems here. But, incorrect. Uh, it seems that this draft will have many, many, many islands. islands. The world has the ship is righted, as uh, as they say. Water has reached its level, <laughs> as the great Hubie Brown would put it. Uh, all right, so Jace getting uh, a little bit bashed. It looks like he's getting battled here. Uh, yeah, I, said said given the opportunity to trade slightly. I would I, a couple of damage from his lands. Uh, the one from a force of will. Sure. Uh, Got hit by a dismember. I think couple. he dismembered. Oh, the dismember for four. Yeah, has a big effect too. Yeah, that query ranger got in for like six. Yeah, got in for a lot. Lava asks you a question. All right. Uh, uh, lands for yep. Nate. Looks to be troublesome. What? God, the cameras are going crazy right now. We're definitely going to... Man, it's probably that drunk Paul Waite. <laughs> Just getting, getting all feisty. I know. God, Jace, leave another on top. It's both the best and the worst feeling in the world. Yeah. Yep, more lands. All right, one more from one more from Jace. So, what are you putting on the bottom of Nate's deck? Like, I guess I can draw seven. Yeah. Um, are there other? You're letting him have most creatures, right? I think that's it. Yeah, just from Nate. Ooh, gamely playing on. Uh, for the one more card in his deck. Yep. Nate Heiss. He has the heart of a true champion. You like that camera work? Yeah, it's good. It was just the that's best thing I've seen all It was day. camera work. That's some Emmy award winning camera work. Yeah. Yeah. Cedric Phillips into your finals uh, versus the Crobat. Uh, Nate Heiss falls just short. Uh, 6 1, 6 1, third place. Yeah. Is, uh, Congratulations. An unfortunate, to yeah, it is an unfortunate uh, circumstance of his, but uh, somebody had to fall. Yeah. He and, played uh, his heart out. Yeah. Really, really good performance. Yeah. His deck was sweet. I. I wish that it did not have to end this way, but uh, yeah. Well, yeah. he'll be back next time. Yeah, he'll be back yeah. again. We'll get to see what kind of sweet stuff he puts together, and uh, Seth will be back too. I think I man, I, even though Corva crushed him in the in the, in the round oh, round, yeah, I think, I think Cedric's going to beat him. He's like, just going to want it so much. Yeah, more. he's just going to want it so much more. He's going to like. I've seen these guys battle in cube yeah. when like money's on the line, and like he just he's I, so good. Like in Cedric did not keep the best hand go and tell. Wow. Um, and like, where are you gonna, uh, I, like, actually, the show and tell was probably incorrect because he already had a blight steel in play, and he's like, let me put this Emrakul in too. Um, but you yeah, know, what, whatever. Um, I had one weakness, and I had to play against him again. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it was very tough, Nate. Your deck was you played awesome. your heart out, it was awesome. Yeah, yeah, your deck was super awesome. Uh, so I am going to be stepping in, uh, you guys. Uh, continue to do an awesome job here, 
and do what uh, we do. everybody watching, thanks for having us on. Uh, thanks for having me on. Yeah. It was a lot of fun. Can you take it off? Uh, yeah. All right. All right, cool. Me. Joe's out of here. Good work, Joe. Thank you. It was a lot of fun. All right. Uh, I'll talk to you about coming on back for another one. Yeah. I think we'd be more than happy to have you again. I would love to do it again. All right, buddy. Thanks for all the hard work. Kick so, uh, thanks, man, you too. ladies and gentlemen of the chat, we have uh, our finals matches determined. Uh, last time, no islands. This time, mono islands. Um, it looks like... Uh, so in the, when these guys played in the round robin, uh, Corbett uh, had took the game, took the match in two very quick games. Um, you can probably get a little more out of that. Ooh, that's gonna be a rough shot. There you go. Get it down, Paul. Good man. I'm ready for the finals. Yeah, let's do yeah. this. All right. How are we doing here? Stream frozen. Uh. No, I blue screen. Uh, okay. Are we good? Can you guys see us? Can uh, we're getting some complaints about the thing? The roommates were watching Netflix. I apologize. We should be back now. If we could get a confirmation from any streamer that we look good right now, that would be fantastic. I know I look good. You always look good. Cheer. <laughs> it's the tie, man. It brings it all together, you know. Hey, can you guys hold off for a second until we're ready? Good old Twitch delay. Anxiously awaiting someone to tell us that they, they're watching us right yep. now. Do you know what's going on, Chris? Wait, we're getting the one second finger from Chris over there. He's uh, investigating. All right, we have it. We can see now. It's working now. Okay. Yay! Green light, yay! Yay! Okay, so. Where's that applause? Um, applause, applause. <laughs> Absolutely. All right. Um, so. But choppy and poor. Well, that's unfortunate. I don't know what happened. The the strain on the, actually, kind of just <laughs> the internet just gets worse at night around these parts. It's good old Comcast for you, fucking Comcast. It's anyway, a, it's the only option. So, here we are in the finals. We've got Cedric Phillips going up against not Nate Heist but Corbett Gray. Yeah. Um, we're also going to be giving away the big prize, the backup or whatever. Technically, yes. All right. Okay. So we are technically still back up. I think. Uh, the video is still totally effed. Yeah, so unfortunately, we're kind of in a situation here where, uh, thanks to good old Comcast, we're in kind of a what are you gonna do? bad spot here. So our plan for this, we're going to try to stream it as best we can right now. Um, so maybe you guys can just hear the audio. We'll try to keep up with the play-by-play -play as much as we can. We'll try to bullshit less than we normally do. And um, But we w what we will do is we will post the finals match later. Yeah, everything we're doing here is being recorded, obviously. Yeah. So, so uh, join the Facebook group. Uh, yeah. And then we'll post the link into the into the Facebook group, and uh, it'll be posted on the on YouTube at some point. Yeah. Uh, and then that way you can go back and watch the actual finals match in like you know clear form. So, and we're still going to give away that fifty dollars. Yeah, we're still giving that away. So um, uh, can people hear us right now, Chris? Or stream? Should, can you guys hear us? Yeah, probably. Yeah, they should be able to. Oh, I have to refresh this. Yeah, make sure you're window. on. The, make sure you're even like like scroll up to the thing. Pops All right, down. I'm gonna let you do it. It's your computer. It is my computer. It says we're connected, so... Yeah, we're good to go. Okay, so... So we're in the chat. Uh, we apologize, guys. Yeah, it's kind of sucks. a giant bummer, uh, but we will do the best we can here for you guys. Yeah. Um, and... So it looks like they're uh, about ready to go. So... Uh, so what we'll do is let's go ahead and just get this... Let's get this prize out of the way first off before we have any other technical difficulties. So... Uh, Chris, if you could uh, randomly pull someone from the Facebook group, um, preferably not one of the people in the draft, to uh, win f the fifty dollars prize, message them on Anybody Facebook. in the Facebook group. The at all? Uh, <clears throat> the password is Jack Daniels. Nice. Two words. Two words. Jack Daniels spell, is the password. Spell with one word. You don't yeah. Win. <laughs> yeah. You've got to put a space in it. Yeah. Um, so that old number seven is also. Chris acceptable. is going to message someone in the Facebook group, and uh, if they respond with Jack Daniels, which means they're paying attention right now, they will get that fifty dollar card or fifty dollars worth of credit to Northwest Sports Cards, which can be used in combination with their twenty percent discount for, uh, as well as with free shipping, everything right. It's yeah, just twenty percent off. Uh, vintage yep. vintage twenty is the code for the twenty percent off. Literal vintage no 20. clue, but I think yeah. that's what it I is. I just got the thumbs up. It is vintage twenty at Northwest Sports Cards. Okay. Um, so uh, Chris will let us know when he's ready to declare the winner. 
Dun, dun, dun. All right, winner declared. Winner messaged. Here we go. Do you want me to say it on stream? Yeah, yeah let's do it on stream. All right, the winner is Donald Sutton. Donald Sutton. Donald Sutton. You've just been messaged. Respond with Jack Daniels or that old number seven. So if you, you could be accepted. if you could message him in Facebook and let the chat know and uh, the, let chat know the password is Jack Daniels. All right. Yeah. <sighs> and uh, Greg, you, can you let them know that they're good to go in case yep. they're waiting for us? Thank you. So, like we said, we're going to do our best to correct, commentate this uh, over audio, and then if you uh, if your if your video is crapping out, which it likely is, we apologize. We will yeah, post. I don't know what's going on. We will post a complete uh, link to the draft later, where none of these problems will happen. Um, and thanks for sticking with us, guys. Uh, we've got a dark slick shores for Cedric Phillips to start the game off, and an island for Nate. Both players decide to pass. It's, uh, it's Corbett. It's Corbett. Or Corbett. Sorry. Uh, said ha- said has underground river on two. Uh, no no play. Corbett has Island uh, Grim Monolith uh, testing the waters against uh, against Sed's potential uh, days and spell pierce. And, and uh, there is the spell and pierce. there is the spell pierce. So uh, Sed follows up uh, with what looks to be, I think, is a watery grave. This is his third land. Um, his hand looks to be Counterspell, Ancient Grudge, Doomblade, Night Veil Spectre. Uh, Night Veil Spectre hits play on turn three. Uh, passing against Corbett, just hoping he doesn't have some busted card. Uh, Corbett did just draw a Tinker for his third turn. Uh, he does not have an artifact. And we got a Wake Thrasher in play for Corbett. Uh, yeah, that's going to be decent, except it said does have the Doomblade. Uh, and it, he has a Disfigure as well. Um, said battles for two and hits an island. Uh, uh, we have someone in Hapless Researchers wondering who won. It was Donald Sutton, I believe. Donald Sutton. Uh, he will be messaged on the Facebook group if he does not have the secret password, with once again is a Jack Daniels. That old number seven. So we've got a Devil or Secrets coming to play for Cedric Phillips and uh, Night Vale Spectre. He disfigures the Wake Thrasher as well. Yes. Uh, with tempo. Um, and uh, Corbett has uh, no fourth land yet. Uh, top activate, leaving up one one island. Uh, for everybody uh, who cannot see the, the stream at the moment. So Corbett is topping. He has Ancient Din, Saint of Cyanide, and Mind, uh, Mind Over Matter on top, which means he could get the Seed of Cyanide and tinker into Blight Souls, Colossus, or any other number of cards. He does have to wait a turn, though, uh, in order to do that. Uh, so now he's activating top again, stacking it uh, so that he draws the top card and then looks at the top three to try to bury the top. Uh, I believe he drew the Ancient Den, uh, and then now he's topping to to uh, probably put the top like one down or so, yeah. Um, leaving the uh, the seat of the sign on, on top. So uh, he plays the ancient den and passes, setting up a tinker for next turn. Uh, Cedric draws and uh, does not flip Delver. Uh, attacks with uh, Delver and Nightfall Specter. Hits the seat of the sign on uh, from uh, from Corbett. Uh, maybe maybe a little bit of a lapse there. Oh, I think I Corbett didn't want uh, Cedric to to get his his uh, top. I mean, he just doesn't activate the top, right? Sure. Yeah. Um, so I think I think that might have been a little. I, I think Corbett might have gotten a little cute there, but yeah. Uh, so said plays a fetch land uh, and fetches for volcanic uh, instead of um, instead of playing the seed of the sign on. I think he's probably going to cast ancient grudge on the ancient den, uh, keeping uh, keeping Corbett off tinker. Yeah, that is exactly what happens. So. Um, so said has uh, an unflipped Elver of Secrets still, uh, a Night Veil Specter, and uh, and uh, his hand is Doomblade Counterspell. Uh, Corbett has a uh, top and activate, uh, and again is back down to three islands at the Absolutely, moment. Absolutely, yeah. Uh, he sees Mind Over Matter, uh, a Blightsteel Colossus, and a land, I think. Uh, so we'll uh, we'll see what he tries to set up here. Uh, Interesting to uh, a, a interesting little game they can play here. Um, you know, Corbett can play around the uh, the Night Vale Specter a little bit with his top. Also, dig deeper with every top activation. Yeah. Um, if it wasn't top that Cedric was man- or that Corbett was manipulating the top of his deck with, there you might see a scenario where Cedric fails to attack with uh, a Night Vale Specter. You know, yeah. with a, like a weird scry situation or something. Um, but uh, in, in this place, it's it's because it's top. He can if if Corbett plays around the Nightville Specter, he can just rearrange again if you don't attack. So uh, Cedric's attack was uh, did not flip the, uh, Delver of Secrets again, uh, and so he's back down to just uh, Nightville Specter and uh, so Tinker and Delver. Uh, uh, Corbett goes ahead and, and with three lands in play, cast Tinker, sacrificing his 
uh, it was a t- top, right? Yeah, his sensei's top. Uh, yeah. Cedric with just the easy counter spell here. Um, Corbett follows up with workshop nothing, um, and uh, and Cedric is back to. Uh, he flips Delver this turn. Uh, now has disrupting shoal. Uh, six mana available. Uh, that's a very powerful card to have against Corbett yeah. at this point. Uh, gets in for five. Um, Corbett's, gonna Corbett's just going to scoop it right up. So yeah, Cedric so takes game, game one. Game off one Corbett. said. Um, that was a really good draw from Sed. Uh, really, a really poor draw from Corbett too. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he just kind of had Lango, Lango, Lango. Corbett had a couple, uh, maybe much, like a lapse so. in judgment there with the with the top shenanigans. Uh, perhaps, perhaps we're not sure if he meant to do that or not. Uh, but it seemed like he wanted that land. I don't, I don't know. Yeah. Um, and he definitely didn't need the mind over matter. So, uh, yeah, I was a little very surprised true. the way he played that. Who won the Who won their initial matchup between these guys? Uh, Corbett. But uh, two very quick games. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, said said he opened on library and then was dead on turn three. Uh, and then the next game, uh, I think Corbett cast a turn two Tinker plus Show and Tell. Uh, so getting Blightsteel and Emrakul into play on turn two. Hey, Chris. Um, Cedric's up a game. Yeah, get that fixed. Can anyone in the chat even like hear us or see us at all at this point? Just let us know. I, I think we're screwed, and we'll just have to put this up later. But uh, I get I get something that says the audio works. So, but then he says and frozen. So yeah, maybe not. Anyway, uh, we're gonna keep on trucking. Yep. At some point, you guys are gonna watch this. This is like uh, one of those guys who has like a, he's lost at sea, right? And he just keeps talking into the radio, hoping <laughs> that someone can hear him. Yeah, absolutely. Distress signals all around. Uh, so sideboard cards. Um, Set doesn't have a lot. Uh, he mained the ancient grudge um, in his in his nice little blue black deck, which is cool. Uh, yeah, he drafted the volcanic and the tropical to get both halves. So that was that was pretty sweet. Greedy, greedy. Um, he does have a null uh, that is coming in. Uh, he's setting out the doom blade, uh, and he's bringing in maze of ith uh, against dark steel. Um, so, uh, yeah, uh, it looks like Set has a couple of cyborg cards. Just kind of eke out a couple percentage points, maybe. Uh, his basic, I mean, his game plan is to hope that Corbett draws like one or two threats and be able to counter them, and hope that Corbett has to sacrifice some of his mana to get those threats to resolve, and uh, and give up some tempo, and maybe uh, maybe Set can get a a Nightfall Specter to stick or a Dark Confidant. Or Delver. Yep. Any one of those three cards is going to be uh, what he really needs. Uh, it's, a true name is going to be okay. Uh, you know, it's a good offensive card for him. But, um, but yeah, Cedric, uh, Corbett doesn't really care about it all that much. Right. I mean, all it is is like a 3-1 that is unblockable. Mm-hmm. That's doesn't, doesn't even block Blightsteel very well. Right. No, not at all. Um, boom. All right. So if anyone can't hear us, which I think at this point we've confirmed that we can't, I yeah, just want to. I'm getting pings like text pings that are saying like, "Hey, what's going on?" So yeah, uh, could happening. you like ping the room, Chris, and just let them know what's going on? I don't know if you've already done that. I'm just let them know like we'll get we'll get this up when we can. We apologize for the inconvenience. Cool, thanks, man. Yeah, cool. Uh, but I do want to just like when people do eventually see this, I do want to just like give a shout out to the stream. Everyone was yeah, super thanks awesome. for everybody for watching. It's really cool. You know, obviously like we wouldn't be doing this without you guys. So. Um, yeah, like uh, I mean, I mean, it's like I've watched a lot of Twitch streams. This has been like our viewers are awesome. Yeah, like, it's by the people for the people. Yeah, people seem know? to be enjoying it. People have been very helpful when we have questions. They're quick to answer, and we're not getting like tons of trolls. So like, yeah, shout out to the streamers. Or, yeah, the, the, like Twitch community. Like, thanks a lot, guys. Yeah, thanks for the views and thanks for uh, you know the interest. Really, yeah, absolutely. Uh, it's, it's pretty sweet. Uh, we're all happy to be doing this. Uh, obviously, we wouldn't be doing it if we weren't right but yeah uh it's uh just to know that other people enjoy yeah, it's, it it's, it's cool, cool to be doing something that people like yeah uh and i'm i'm a fan of that so um you know we we harp on each other a lot but uh that's that's only part of the fun the other part of the fun is is presenting a product that people enjoy and mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm glad that uh, we can do that so <coughs> excuse me um all right so opening hands for game two here uh corbett's hand is uh stroke inkwell tinker workshop Library Island, uh, uh, not library. I'm sorry, Tolarian Academy Island, Island. And for Cedric, we have library. So no artifacts for Corbett, uh, but he does have the Tinker and uh, some fast mana uh, if he can draw a couple artifacts. Absolutely. Uh, 
Sed's hand is library and a bunch of cheap counter spells. Yeah, I think um, he maybe has one island hiding in there. Yeah, I mean he has library. He has to like, it's got to be a thing. He right? might not even have an island. He, he doesn't. Might. I think he has mental misstep, hmm? brainstorm, a null. We keep that hand, right? I would absolutely keep this hand. Yeah, yeah. on the draw. Yep. Yeah. Um, he has Demir charm. Um, yeah, he kept it. Okay. Um, and he lights on the island. So the, he does not have an island. I mean, not island. He uh, lays library. Library, yep. Draws a card. Yep. And he draws... Ooh, ooh no land. He, in, uh, he can't, he even, can't even activate library. He's upset. Cedric is upset. Uh, yeah, so Ced drew uh, not land off library, then not land for his turn, uh, and then has to discard uh, a couple of cards uh, at the end of his turn. So... Um, his hand is stock full of one mana counter spells uh, that interact very profitably with what Corbett is doing. However, he does not have any blue mana. Let's see if Corbett can take advantage of this. He's uh, he's got a workshop in his hand, so you know he has the possibility for some explosiveness here. Uh, he draws a planes. His draws have been planes, much. planes. I think. Yeah, which um, doesn't help him a lot. Yeah, Corbett's hand is just all mana uh, and an inkwell leviathan and the tinker and a stroke. Yeah. Um, so we'll see what he can do in a couple turns. Uh, all right, there, oh. so it's a maze of it, which is drop, still does not make blue. Yeah. Uh, maze of it uh, does just tell Corbett what to go get with uh, with his tinker. Yep. Uh, however, he cannot go get that card. It is in his hand. hand yeah. yeah. Um, so he would uh, he would probably have to uh, oh, assault. Of, okay. Monolith so that's for gonna Corbett. that's gonna set up a uh, that's gonna set up an inkwell next turn. I think. Just hard cast? Yeah, I think I think so. Yep. Uh three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. More than plus enough. uh yeah, plus he has Academy for next turn, so yeah, that's just plenty. Um Cedric still doesn't draw a blue source. Off of that he taps his library to draw another card. And we're salt to the bot the salt monolith. I mean, does Corbett like Corbett doesn't get greedy here, right? What is he gonna get greedy? <laughs> oh, Tinker right now. <laughs> it's really tink- loose. Yeah, I think he, he has tinker. to just cast the inkwell. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Can you shut? Can you the close door? the door or something? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. All right. So, so he is going to cast. He is going to cast a tinker. Um, what's he going to go get? Blightsteel's not great here. Uh, let's see. Did he draft a third artifact, Fatty? I'm not sure. Thundering Titan is in Carl's deck. Uh, oh, we see a Koldatha Forge Master go to the front. Of this. That's probably not very good, right? I don't think it is. Yeah, I think Corbett may have made a pretty bad play there. I think. That uh, yeah, he might. He might. He might just be tinkering for Grim Monolith at this point. <laughs> like, ooh, I shouldn't have cast that tinker. I guess I really want this uh, artifact mana. Oh, man, Corbett, not playing great in the finals here. Uh, I mean, he played fine the last game. <coughs> like, we don't know if that thing was a mistake or if he legitimately meant to do it. Uh, it could have it could have been either way. Sure, sure. Um, but uh, this this <laughs> this seems uh, ambitious. Yeah, I don't know. Um, I guess he could. Yeah, he get, he like steel Hellkite is the other thing that he could get. Uh, yeah, just the inkwells in his Yeah, hands, I guess so. he can get steel Hellkite here. Yeah, but I mean, maybe he sided it out. I, otherwise, it seems like an easy choice. I guess oh, there s- is a steel Hellkite, yeah. so he can get steel Hellkite. I guess if he had some bounce spell, that he could just go get the blight steel. And hope to draw a bounce spell and bounce the thing. Yeah. I, like, the other thing is... Also, like, Lightning Greaves. Right. And the, the other thing that's interesting about... Um, lightning Greaves is very good, actually. Uh, because if he ever does get the uh, Blightsteel into play, mm-hmm. right, now it's like... I mean, he probably just goes and gets the Blightsteel. And then he can peel the Lightning Greaves and it's over. Um, it's be- it's better than doing it the other way around. Because if he... If he Gets Still, Hellkite has to hit to blow to, enter, to use its ability, right? Correct. Yeah, I mean, at this point, he's cast his Tinker, so I guess he's got to. I think he probably do take Blight Steel. Yeah. Hope to draw Lightning Greaves, and but like, uh, well, I mean, what else is he gonna do? Like, it, it, honestly, actually, he could. It, he, there's a very real thing that he could do here: is just go get literally be like, okay, I shouldn't have cast this Tinker. I needed the mana. I'm just gonna suck it up. 
and go get Grim Monolith and then cast Stroke for four or five next turn. Yeah. Like, but instead he goes with Koldafa, Forge Master. Okay. Uh, playing the long game, I guess, here. Yeah. Um, so, uh, giving uh, Corbett, or giving Cedric a, a lot of time, uh, you know, putting a lot of his um, resources in one basket and, yeah. and kind of setting himself back. Uh, um, we have a, we have a person in the chat asking, uh, how are we doing the giveaway? We actually have already done the giveaway. Has, has it been claimed yet? It's been claimed. Can, who is it again? Donald Sutton. Donald Sutton. Donald Sutton was the name. Donald Sutton is our big winner on the day, and he's already claimed it. Thanks for showing up, guys. Uh, we will be doing this again in about a month. The Facebook group will let you know all you need to know. But for now, we have Corbett Gray uh, casting a Mana Vault. And uh, passing the turn back to Cedric, who has still not found a blue source. Hey, got one. And there it is. It's a volcanic yeah. island. So now... Now his hand is on. He has energy flux in his hand also. Yeah, he's got all kinds of spicy uh, ones in his hand. Granted, um, Corbett does have plenty of mana at this point. But uh, if if Seg can get that energy flux into play, uh, it's pretty good. Uh, so Corbett is casting the two stroke for two. Not tapping Mana Vault. Interesting. He wants to be able to cast that Inkwell, I think. Okay. Uh, I guess he he just wants to be able to present multiple threats in one turn. Sure. Because uh, Cedric is obviously very choked on mana, right? Yep. Um, yeah, the Forge Master is an interesting uh, put in. Because now if he can assemble either Blightsteel or Greaves... Yeah, he can go get he the other piece. go get the other them. piece instantly. No mana... It's basically a pre-resolved tinker at this yeah, point. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. So. This is the card that he already cast. Uh, yeah, but now he doesn't have to pay three mana to resolve it. Right? Sure, it's sure. It's a preemptive tinker. So, so I'm going to tinker for tinker is basically what he did. Corbett has silence in his hand, which I know is one of his like favorite cards. So he does have lightning griefs. Uh, so yeah. So he casts silence. Cedric responds by uh, library of Alexandrian and uh, drawing another card. Now let's see what Corbett does with this silence. Uh, I think he's going to try to put Inkwell into play and then Forge Master away, Forge Master, Inkwell, and uh, yep. there it is. Okay, so he's putting Inkwell into play. He's he is now tapping Cold off the Forge Master to sacrifice Forge Master, Mana Vault, and yep. Inkwell goes and gets Blight Steel, equips it to and the Cedric starts to scoop him up. Yep, not even giving Corbett the satisfaction of actually getting to attack with the Blight Steel Colossus. Um, so game game two to Corbett here. So we uh, even it up one one. Yep. That was kind of an unfortunate series of draws for Seth. I mean, he he drew like two cards a turn and didn't draw blue mana until like turn six. Yeah. So. So Corbett pulls it out. Yeah. Game game two to Corbo. Uh, one to one. In this best of five finals match, all the other matches have been best of three. This one is best of five. Um. So it is. Uh, Who do you want to see take this down? Uh, I said he really, really wants it, like, pretty bad. Yeah, we don't, we, yeah. we, we want to get Cedric in that draft of champions. He, he doesn't have time to qualify for it other than this week, probably. Yeah. And Corbett's got another, you know, he's going to probably have a couple other And chances. Corbett's deck's, like, very sweet, right? Yeah. Like, uh, and, uh, obviously, like... I think both, I think both these players definitely deserve to be in the draft of champions. Yeah. Absolutely, 100%. I mean, so did Nate. Like, you know, yeah. it's, it kind of sucked that we had three people, six and one. Somebody has to just be out of the finals. Yeah. Um, you know, I mean, we... Can't sit here and uh, play a bunch of five game tiebreakers. Yeah. So. Um, so, uh, game three, Cedric going to be on the play here. Uh, decently important, probably, you know, to get two mana into play before Corbett has Tinker up. Yep. Uh, yep. Although, to be fair, Corbett has Mana Crypt in his deck, so he could just Tinker on one. All right, looks like opening hands are coming soon. We'll take a look at Seds here first. Court does have the Mana Crypt and a Basal Monolith and a Mystical Tutor. And yeah. there's the Blightsteel he drew. No land, though, looks like. Oh, Dark, Dark Steel Citadel. Citadel. Ooh, wow, okay. This is a sweat. Uh, Sed has Library, Days, 
preordain. Cedric has had library basically all of his open hands on camera. Yeah, it's I'm pretty, starting to wonder about the big cheats. It's pretty insane. No, nah, no, no, no. But a couple gold cards for Ced in his hand. I think a Demir charm and uh, I don't know what the other one is. But uh, yeah, Ced, uh, Corbett is uh, debating very heavily on uh, keeping his opening hand that has no blue mana. Uh, he has he, a mystical tutor. His, he has the gasoline if he draws a blue land. Uh, not man enough. Uh, ooh, he would have drawn on turn two. Which would have been on time. Sort of. Because uh, he wants to mystical on oh, upkeep, sure, right? Sure, like, sure. Because he wants to tinker. Yeah. Uh, so Corbett Mulligan's to six here. Said keeping his opening seven. Uh, it's a good start for Sad to get up, uh, get up another game in this best of five match. Um, I can't see what the two gold cards in Sad's hand. One has to be Demir Charm. but One is Demir Charm. And the other, I think, is actually... Can't tell. Oh, is it's it... it's Young Pyromancer. Young Pyromancer. Yeah. So actually, said might not lead on library here. Nah, he's going to lead on library. That's That would be stupid, right? Yeah. It would. So we've got a bunch of islands and uh, Mystical Tutor for Cedric, or for Corbett. He... Draws, plays an island, passes the turn. Is a planes, a stroke, a muddle the mixture, and a mystical tutor, right? Yeah, yeah. So it goes to 18, plays a mox, and, a and plays a young, young pyromancer. That's a good turn, too. Pretty well set up here. Uh, Corbett is considering mysticaling, but doesn't have anything good to mystical four. Uh, at this point, so I think he's probably just going to try to draw a card. Um, what what could he mystical for here? Not a lot. He could just go for the tinker for mana efficiency, but but uh, he needs to draw. He needs to draw an artifact. He needs to draw first. multiple pieces. Yeah. Or does he have Dark Steel Citadel in his hand? No, that was his opener. So he has Show and Tell. Uh, yeah, his hand is a little awkward. And this uh, young power master is going to get in there for two to put Cedric and both Corbett to 18. Yep. Cedric plays a preordain. Makes a guy. Corbett responds with Mystical Tutor. Okay. Which resolves. Which probably gets... Show and Tell? Show and Tell's in his hand. Oh, really? Yeah. I thought it was Stroke that was in his hand. Uh, Cedric gets a dude off young power master from the preordain. Yep. While Corbett's looking. Gets a Tinker. Okay. So now he has Tinker and Show and Tell. So if he draws a Fatty, he's good. If he draws an, an artifact, artifact, he's, he's good. good. I mean, good. Good. As good as Corbett can be. Yeah. Uh, uh, so preordain's happening now. Wow. We see a Dark Slick Shores and an Unknown card. Unknown card goes on top. Dark Slick Shores. It looks like a Demonic Tutor. Yes. Yeah, Shores went to the bottom. Uh, he kept the, uh, kept the Demonic Tutor, so... Uh, it looks like uh, Set is off the library for this game. He got his card out of it, and, uh, and now he's done. Yep. And he's probably, he knows. He, I'm pretty sure he's demonicking for Force of Will. Yeah, here. I think he knows that Corbett's kind of stuttering here, and Cedric can probably close the game out just along with Wild Pyromancer. Yeah. So he's just, he's just, he doesn't care about library anymore. He might be. He could go get Gush, uh, which would turn the library back on. Yeah. I don't think that he will. I think, he, I think he's going to get Force. I agree. There yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah it gets Force. All right, so Force is the card. Uh, and uh, Young Pyromancer begins the beats. So, so, so. Uh, Corbett draws. We have two Cs in this, dra uh, in this game. I don't like this. <laughs> uh, so One's a hard C, one's a soft C. Core. Said. Yeah. 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 Uh, so Sed has taken four damage from his lands, two from Water and Grave, two from Steam Vents. Uh, his... Uh, He's at 16. Corbett has taken two from Young Pyromancer. Here, oh, he did have Dark Steel Citadel in his hand. He's casting uh, Show and Tell? Show and Tell first. I actually, have? and I like this. What does uh, he have? He just gets a counter I right think, away. I think he was trying to get it forced. Yeah, yeah. Because he I, knew I said demonic for it. Yeah. Um, and he was just trying to get it. He was just get him. Because he has stone nothing. His yeah, muddle he, and tinker, right? Yep, he has nothing. Uh, I actually really like that play by Corbett. Yeah, that's a sick play. I like that. Uh, you know, I mean, now he's going to... It's not gonna. His tinker's not gonna resolve, but like that was his only chance. I think. Yeah, here. I agree. Because um, he can, he can use the tinker now because he has dark steel citadel in play. But right. 
That wild pyromancer is starting to get out of control. He's put three tokens into play, and Corbett's at thirteen and going to get closed out pretty quick yeah. here. Yeah, Corbett took five last turn, uh, and if he plays a spell, it's going to be six this turn. Then if he plays another spell, it's going to be seven. So yeah. I mean, he's on a two-turn clock really if he's playing spells, and a three-turn clock if he's not. Um, I mean, is there a situation where maybe Corbett thinks? No, he has to think that he got forcible because I was like, maybe he thinks that he got days. No, which no way. Just the miziest. No way. Yeah. yeah, there's no way that happens. Uh, yeah, I mean, he has to just he has to just hope. Uh, okay, Demir Charm, the choice from said here. Uh, put another creature into play. Uh, so Corbett on thirteen life, about to take six damage from Young Pyromancer and at all. And uh, we see a brainstorm going to the hand for Cedric. Uh, yeah, Sed's hand looks uh, stocked at the moment. Formidable, if you will. Uh, yeah, Brainstorm and Force of Will. Um, he's brainstorming on upkeep. He just wants another dude. Yeah. So now he's got five. And Corbett's going to pack him just up. Gonna pack right up. So All we're right. going to move on to game four. Game number four, Cedric Phillips up two to one. On we well, got uh, the back Robert and Curry. forth going here. This is kind of nice. This is what you like yeah. to see in the best of five. You like to I see do. it go to five. Yeah, I do. And, uh, I mean, there's a little bit of interactive magic there. Yeah. Uh, you know, I mean, granted, it was just like uh, game-ending spell countered, game-ending spell countered, and match over, right? Yeah, yeah. But, uh, you know, that just goes to show, like, uh, Cedric's young Pyromancer pick. And, like, when he came in uh, after the first break yeah he had uh tropical was his splash yep and he was considering like queer and dryad and like miracle grow right yeah, yep and um i asked him like you know what's your plan there and he was like well i kind of got maybe forced off green because like a mystery reinforce got taken and uh um like greg signaled green on sylvan but the weird thing was like they both switched out of green and yeah. Yeah. um and then so Cedric was like, well, I'm, the Volcanic hasn't been taken yet, so, like, I can do that. And mm -hmm. then I can take Red Wraths to deal with, like, the aggressive decks. And I was, he was like, well, what, like, quick clock thing can we add here? Mm. And Young Pyromancer is doing work in his Absolutely, deck. Absolutely, yeah, yeah, yeah. His deck is basically uh, a Jace, a True Name Nemesis, a Dark Confidant, a Night Veil Spectre, a Young Pyromancer, and a Delver. And, and then, that's, that's, that's and what gets it done. All instants. Yep. You know, uh, all cantrips, all card selection. He gets to make the best decision he can make with all of the resources he has available to him. So, yeah. uh, and he gets to chain through these cantrips, and that's even better than Quirion Dryad when you're putting like a different one one into play. Yep. You know, uh, against all these decks that don't have creature removal, don't have sweepers. Like, it's very good. So, uh, all right, we're we're getting set here for uh, game four. Um, Corbett's going to be on the play. Uh, his hand is an island, a mox diamond, an island, a cons consecrated sphinx, a dark steel citadel, an island, and an island. Pretty terrible hand. Yeah, he has a mox, five lands. He capped he it. Okay. Yeah, okay. There's a sleight of hand in uh, Cedric's hand. So yeah, like Ced has out. sleight of hand, a null, um, a bunch of. A null, cheap very, stuff. very, very strong in this matchup. So he's got a null. Uh, preordain, it looks like. Energy Flux, I think, is in his hand. Um, I'm trying to be quiet because I heard that they can hear us. So Yeah, but fuck those guys, right? Um, it, ooh, <laughs> so he really wants to take the days here to like protect a little bit, but I think mm. he has to take the Volcanic Island because he's short on lands. Yep. Um, so he's like, if if Corbett does draw one of his nut three drops, uh, like, Sed's in trouble. Um, oh, oh, Corbett drew Mystical Tier, but he didn't have it or... before this turn. So Corbett's, or Cedric is going to get to untap with Counter Magic. Yeah. And, um, uh, Cor Cedric also has Duress, but can he cast it? No, he doesn't have Black yet. Um, but, uh, yeah, if, if Corbett had had that Mystical in his opener, he would have uh, he would have a Blight still in play right now. Um, and uh, Cedric's... Um, a null versus steel sabotage really coming into play. Absolutely. Um, so he draws a dismember for the turn. Uh, not going to do a whole lot at this point. Uh, Kills really, Metal Worker? Uh, really, well, at this point, it's not going to do very sure, much, sure. right? Uh, so he's going to preordain here. Uh, really needs to find a third land. He did find two. Uh, probably going to keep them both? No, just keeps one. One on top, one on bottom. Uh, one on top, one on bottom. Keeps the library, plays the library. So Cards of him? Uh, I, I believe he has seven. Uh, end of turn mystical is resolving so what pick did he get library again 
uh, 31st. <laughs> yeah, 30, 31st. Uh, that was it, a mistake. Uh, it was the 241st card selected. Jesus. No, that's not true. Uh, he picked in the so in the thirty first round. Are you trying to do math again? Yep, that didn't work out so great for no, you. We're last gonna time. do good. We're out of Jack Daniels. He picked sixth, fifth in the thirtieth in the thirty first round. So two forty two forty fifth two hundred and forty fifth. I was gonna say two forty five, but yeah. I don't want to steal your thunder. Mm. Yeah, you're just smarter than me. Not not you true. Know. I was actually lying. I didn't know when it was at all. <laughs> um, so we so, got some stuff going on. So said went or uh, Corbett went for Tinker. Uh, has it here and is like sort of kind of tanking. So Cedric uh, has preordained on his turn, so he is not going to be able to counter this. But he's going to draw a card. He did not draw Force of Will. He drew Demir, Demir Charm, Charm, which but... is not good enough. So Corbett's going to probably go get Blightsteel. Yep, and it's going to be good. I think it is going to be good. Uh, unless said peels into, oh, he gets Inkwell of I think. Uh, probably just as good. Uh, yeah, that's pretty good. Um, so we Seth might can, go five. We might Seth go five. Can, Seth can buy himself a lot of time here with an energy flux. Um, can we pull up energy flux? Because that'll kill the Mox Diamond and uh, like lock up Corbett's mana for the next multiple turns. Um, also, theoretically, a thing that could happen yep. in this game is uh, Cedric can. Um, like, if he can assemble a big enough army, uh, he can gush the islands back to his hand and block the Inkwell of yeah. Uh But it's going to be difficult for him to do because uh, he doesn't have any young Pyromancer in play. So, yeah, uh, uh, yeah Flux, go. Uh, so Seth's play is Energy Flux. Uh, it's going to kill uh, Corbett's Mox Diamond and uh, and kind of tap him out a little bit. So uh, Corbett is, is definitely all in mm -hmm. here. Corbett drew uh, an arms chant. But Inkwell is, uh, he doesn't have white. Oh, he doesn't have white so, for yeah. him. Said is uh, is digging deep. Uh, he needs he needs something. Um, ooh, there's, there, there's the, the Iron Man, so. so now we can gush the islands back to his hand, be all t tricky, and start blocking. But I don't know if he can win. Right. But he's bought himself some turns. And uh, Cedric is actually at thirteen. Sed has taken one hit from the inkwell now. Um, so he only has one more turn to assemble an army. Um, and he's going to have to get a lot of guys into play real Cedric, quick. Cedric, uh, Taxian probes to reveal Orm's chant and uh, a, it looks like a consecrated sphinx. Yep. Sed's uh, hand looks to be just an annul and a gush. Um, and that's that's about it. So... Um. <laughs> Instead of <laughs> trying to put too many wild power match tokens into play. I mean, so what's the play here? Like, Cedric, oh, I'm pretty sure all Cedric's lands are islands in some way. Uh, no, he has, like, Dark Slick Shores. Okay. Uh, so he can do that. Well, there's a Maze of Vith, but do he can't do it. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, what's he. What, It's going to be tough to get out of this one. Yeah, yeah, I mean, he's certainly trying. Yeah, said don't give up. Said he don't fold. He also, you know, might forget to pay for energy flux. One, two, I don't think they're going to let that happen. We're, we're on don't be a dick rules enforcement. We're also on a don't be stupid rules enforcement. Fair enough. Yeah. If you pay for energy flux like three turns in a row and then untap and don't pay... Like you deserve it. Fair enough. Yeah. All right. So it's, it's Corbett, Corbett game, remembers to pay. Game of five, boys. Yeah. yeah. Final final game. Don't have it be best of one, Seth says. Yeah. And here we are. Cedric Phillips gets to be on the play. Uh, so far, each player has won their on the play game. Is that true? I yeah. thought Corbett won the die roll. I don't think so. Oh, okay. Who knows? See, the worst part about this is neither of us can remember, but the people watching this yeah. get to call us stupid because they can rewind. <laughs> but I'm pretty sure Cedric took game one, Corbett took game two, Cedric took game three, Corbett took game four. That I th happened, but I think Corbett won the die roll. So they bro both broke serve? 
No. Uh, so. Yeah, Sid you're right. Serve, yeah. And then Corbett held serve. Then okay, Seth okay, held. Okay, then yeah, Corbett yeah. held. We're getting tired, man. And this Jack Daniels. We did do some work on this. Yeah, I honestly don't even feel it. Yeah, I feel pretty all right. Yeah. I'm just, like, tired. Yeah. We need more Jack Daniels is what we need. Do we? I'm telling you, open that Glenlivet right now. Right now. Right now. All right, here it is. This one for most of the marbles. Yeah. Most of the marbles. I would, some, some might say all the relevant marbles. Yeah. 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 They get the trophy. There's a couple it's irrelevant for marbles. The tro- let's, look, let's take a look at the trophy real quick. Yeah. So Enjoy everybody, yourself. this is the uh, this is the trophy for the Northwest Vintage Rotisserie Draft Series presented by ShotgunLotus.com. Now, if, if Cedric uh, if Cedric wins this thing, yet. if this Cedric if Cedric wins this thing, I I fully expect this to be prominently displayed when he streams. Oh yeah, this thing needs oh, to be yeah. within full view when he's on stream. Absolutely, this could use a little more glue on the back there. Hmm. Mm. Uh, so yeah, the uh, the the base. Uh, is is beautiful acrylic displays all five uh, colors of magic all five colors of magic the gathering spells and then uh, we have the pillars of let's the, put that let's put let's put the, let's put the trophy down we're ready to battle but, uh, it's a great trophy you did a great job putting it together and Amanda Sharp great job on the lotus Dover of Secrets for Cedric Phillips that's a good start one. he's gonna need off that. on volcanic island uh, he, also, like he has the days too gross. Flip. Oh, oh, now he has the days. I read it. I knew the future. You. Yeah. I knew the future. Double flips. Tax for three. Is this fun? Are you having a good time? I really feel like we're playing Legacy right now. Yep. Oh, God. Into the pre day. This is nice. So Corbett playing around the days did not play Mana Vault on turn one. Interesting. Unfortunately for him. Well, I mean, now he can play around the days because it's the second turn, right? Fair. Um... Said's hand is Gitaxian Probe, Daze, Spell Pierce, a second land, I think. Oh my god, his hand's good. Why don't you keep up for a second and check something? Okay. So, Gitaxian Probe reveals a hand of Island Island Plains, Dispel Mystical Tutor, Mana Vault, uh, Orm's Chant. So that's why he didn't play the Mana Vault on turn one. He was setting up Mystical for Tinker into turn two Mana Vault Tinker, uh, trying to slow roll set a little bit. Um, and now that actually plays around the days, except for he can daze the Mystical Tutor. Yeah. So uh, Corbett, uh, Corbett had a nice little setup, uh, but um, if he waits a turn or two, he can actually dispel whatever Cedric uses to counter. So um, he's pretty decently set up. He also has Chant. So Corbett is actually better set up for the long game. Yeah, absolutely. Than most of us may have thought, uh, given that he did not play fast mana on the first turn, which is like what his deck really wants to do. Yeah. Um, so uh, Sed's hand is Brainstorm, True Name, Spell Snare, Spell Pierce. Uh, e- Oh man! And so if, if Cobra goes, gets... if Cobra goes for the dispel, he's going to get dazed into oblivion. He knows that he has the daze, though. He revealed it off Delver. Yeah, that's true. So maybe he knows something we don't. I think we got a daze here and get that artifact off the board. I don't think you can let I that agree. thing resolve. Like, yeah. Yep. 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 Yeah, I absolutely agree with this. I think you have to daze it. Yep. There we go. Now it's Delver time. So Corbett drew Ancient Den for the turn there. Uh, so he's kind of... Uh, Ooh, we've got a Disrupting Shoal from Cedric, too. So He doesn't have a three... He does, he does have True Name. Okay, so he has another free counter spell. Uh, he also has Brainstorm to refuel um, and Spell Snare. Uh, so Corbett, obviously, setting up the fact, like, d- battling over the Mana Vault, right? Yeah. So that... Because Cedric obviously didn't know that Corbett drew Ancient Den for the turn and knows that... Like, Corbett knows he has another artifact to sacrifice. Mm-hmm. Uh, gets the days out of uh, Cedric's hand so he doesn't have to worry about that anymore. Yep. Uh, he obviously doesn't have anything to do with that actual Mana Vault mana, so he didn't really care about it. Yep. Uh, decent play from Corbett there. Um, so he's going to upkeep into uh, Mystical, uh, which is going to meet a Brainstorm from Ced. 
uh, which draws Gush land. And uh, God, I did it again. I said Gush because I thought it was the first card he drew, and then he drew it as the third card. It was a sleight of hand that you thought was Gush. I need. I don't know what it is. I like to lean into the mic with certain it's things. So Just be like, I'm talking closely into the mic right now, and my voice sounds quite a bit different. It sounds so good. Yeah, yo. yeah. Anyway, back to not that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Uh, so instead of putting two cards back with Brainstorm, uh, he has Sleight of Hand, uh, a Land, a Disrupting Shoal, a True Name Nemesis, a Spell Snare, and a Gush in his hand. Um, we're going to let that Mystical Resolve, I think. Uh, I don't think he has anything to do. Uh, I guess he could just um, he could just Shoal, removing a, uh, removing a Sleight of Hand. Uh, which would be a decent play, because then he doesn't have to worry about Corbett randomly getting a thing that he can't shoal. Um, so, uh, granted, he has all he has all of it covered uh, because he has a he can shoal for one, two, three, or five. Yep. Um, and I don't think Corbett has any fours. So, yep. um, so we'll see what he does here. Um, he is going to shoal. Is he's okay. going to shoal. Yeah, Disrupting Shoal, very, very good card. So um, now Corbett's going to just rip the Tinker off the top, I think is the plan. That is absolutely what he's going to do. Uh said did just, not this turn. said just trying to get that Delver down, just get it deep enough. Boom. So Corbett's going to 11. Um, it looks like uh, Sed's going to, ooh, okay, two, float two, gush, and then he's going to play a land and cast True Name. Um I like it. I like it. Yeah, this is this is actually really good. So he actually drew the perfect card. Uh, he he drew a maze because now I don't think Corbett has enough time to yep. inkwell. Um, if he does, because he needs to go land, he needs to go artifact and tinker, and then get inkwell and have it be fast enough. Uh, and true name, uh, true name plus Delver is gonna uh, put that clock in. Like Corbett's on a two turner, so he has to go blightsteel, yep. and then uh, Cedric can beat that with. Uh, with them, so, so uh, Corbett does a brain geyser. It looks like yeah, he's, he's gonna, gonna cast fire it for it two. Um, so uh, he's just dead, I think. Yep. Um, it looks like uh, he has a chant and a. It silence looks like Cedric lands. Phillips is gonna take it down and enter our draft of champions. Yep. Um, it's not quite over yet, but congratulations, said. Uh, I think uh, I think we have a. The people's champion. Unless we have a just a super peel. Ooh, stroke of genius. Doesn't actually draw anything good. Looks like we're done. Corbett gonna go pretty pretty solid deep in the tank. Oh, he has two white mana, so he can chant with kicker for a turn. Buy himself one. Boom. Chant with kicker. Getcha. <laughs> I'm gonna cast my spells even if I'm gonna lose. Yeah. I guess he could have peeled Scepter there. Sure. Oh, but said head spell snare anyway, so that doesn't yeah, do anything. Yeah, yeah. Um, so uh, yeah, said is on uh, land pass and uh, go. Corbett draws uh, nothing. He can. I don't think. I think he's on zero outer. And we reveal a basalt monolith, and that's yep. going to be it, folks. Cedric Phillips takes down Vintage Rotisserie Draft Five to enter our draft of champions. <laughs> uh, Corbett, Corbett Cor gamely playing on. Corbett refusing to give up. We all know it's over. Uh, he gets to do whatever he wants this turn. Uh, he can stroke for one. And uh, that's about it. And, uh, maybe draw something. Who knows what it is. It's uh, nothing. Sensei's top. Land. Yep, there it is. That's going to do it. Congratulations to Cedric Phillips. <laughs> Woo! All right, so next up. The strategy of Sangria. Next up, we've got. The booze draft. Again. The favorite part of the draft for everyone. I think Sed's just going to first pick Sangria. Yeah. Yeah. So, Even though um, it's not available, but he'll do it. I'll go deal with that. You say that. All right. Yeah. An actual, legacy, uh, actual legacy game there. Yeah. You drafted the deck that you said you were going to draft. I, yeah. I tried. All right. Well, uh, so that was that was our finals, everybody. Uh, thank, thanks for watching. Uh, oh. We got the camera on the booze here. Uh, it looks like um, commentary Sed, for the booze. Yeah, Sed's, Sed's gonna get the first pick here. I forget what the order is. I think it goes one, two, one, two, three. It's one, two, one, three. two, three, two. No, one, two, three, one, two. Then one gets the rest. Okay, all right. Uh, Cedric also did not 
bring his bottle because he's scum. scum. And we, we let him draft? Yeah. We lowered our standards. Yeah, we did. Look at the people we allow. Yeah. The draft already started, and then we were like, where's your bottle, Sid? I forgot it. You know, he, had a, he could have gone to the store at some point. That's too. true. But uh, he also just knew he was going to win. So. So, now, so now he's just like, gift to myself. Yeah. Must. Must be nice. Yeah. So, so, so I'm going to turn the microphone on on the camera so they can we can hear their picks in there. Absolutely. Smart move. Smart move. Well done. Well done, Chris. What would you first pick? Easy, right? Oh, yeah. It's the Glen Lid. It's not yeah. even close. Clearly. clearly. Yeah. There's no wild turkey this yeah. time. Said if you don't take the Glen Livid, I'll take it for you. Yeah, no wild turkey. That's yeah, no no turkey soup. I'm I'm halfway through the wild turkey now. <laughs> I'm drinking it. Good. Like I'll drink it. I don't give a crap. Yeah, oh, yeah. It's so bad. Like I like I said, my Facebook status: don't drink it with Diet Pepsi. Yep. The Glen Livid number twelve. Yep, clearly. First pick, Cedric Phillips. Way to go. All right, so what's what's number two? Corbett is going to take something. Oh, we got the Corbett vodka. took Corbett took his uh, wheat yeah, vodka Nate that he Heiss. chose. Uh, Nate Heiss, uh, the the maker's mark is selected uh, in it's Nate Heiss's uh, honor. Yeah, I think, and then, uh, I think the I think the liquor this time is a little bit better than the last one was. What's that? I think, I think the choices this time are a little more classy than they were last. You time. You think? I don't know. Last time we had like Everclear and stuff. I mean, there's no yeah. Yeah, combo pack. Uh. Nice. <laughs> Bush Mills, Bush Mills. Corbett, you already have a vodka. You can't take two vodka. That's just not good. That's not a good pick. That's a bad pick. That's a mistake. Oh, Corbett, no. Punted. God, Corbett. Yeah, vodka. Vodka. Okay, cool. Sweet. All right, and uh, Seth gets the Bushmills and the Malibu. 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 <laughs> there that is. That's happening. That That is there for all the world to see. Yep. So oh, no. We got a new profile picture from now on for Star yep, City. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, we'll do our quick sign-out. All right. Oh, yeah. Yeah, let's get him in. I got it. Wait, I didn't get a winner's interview. Suck it. You did, actually. Present him the trophy well, and all that. I don't, yeah. you get a trophy? Yeah, you get a trophy, man. Yeah. Oh, 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 no. We're good. We're good. You broke it. We're good. It's all good. I didn't know he had a disrupting show. God. It's yeah, it's almost as if there wasn't a list of cards that he drafted. Champ's here. <laughs> Champ's here. Champ's here. How's it going? I don't get to play Magic ever. And this when I do, I win. This is for you. Champ's here. Modest champ we have. Boom. This Boom. one... I want to uh, I want to thank a few people. Yeah, I'd like to thank Star City Games. Um, <laughs> That's not allowed. I appreciate. We're gonna cut that out. I appreciate the weekend off of work. That's oh yeah, really <laughs> nice of you. You know what? I would like to thank Star City Games. Yeah, I'd like to thank Star City Games <laughs> for the weekend off of work. It's really really nice. If you don't have Star City Games Premium, I don't like you. So, uh, <laughs> thanks for letting me play, and thanks for uh, everyone out there, all seven of you who let me get Library Thirty First. And Jace 32nd. And Jace 32nd. And Demonic Tutor 16th. 17th. 17th. Yeah. Corbett, I'm not going to high five you. <laughs> no. no. Yeah. Because you let that happen. Yeah. So. That's true. I didn't want half so, of those cards. Thanks that's to not everybody. true. Thanks to everybody out there for that. And uh, thanks to Delver Secrets for flipping on turn two legacy style. <laughs> yeah, that was pretty good. It's called Delver Draw. Yeah. That's the first time so I've done So was, was your plan going into the draft to get Jace in the 32nd round? Uh, coming in, I had a feeling that, no, that was not my plan. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Can we full screen that? However, um, we did what we needed to do. We got Jace, and uh, I like. The, I said that you had the best po like you had the best post halftime. You had the best halftime pep talks because like after each break, right? You came out with demonic after the first break mm -hmm. that just no one should have let happen. Yep, that's not a thing that should happen. After the we... second break, your first pick was library. Yep, and then you took Jace. Yeah, what are people? What is happening? Yeah, just a yeah, quick this. little talk with myself. Okay, okay. You got to figure out a new what game plan. Happening? Found it, figured it out, and that's Game Boys. Yay! Game champion. Yeah. Boom. Cheers to this. Pleasure as always. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. I don't know if I'll do it, be able to do another one again because I don't have free We don't time. need you to do another one again. No, no. no draft champion. Draft yeah, champion. you do have to do that one. Cool. Uh, yeah, I'll be there. Yep. Whatever that is, I'll yep. be there. And we'll fly to wherever. And That's I'll, not uh, true. We won't uh, do that. Spoiler alert, I'm going to draft another Delver deck. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, you guys can try to stop me from doing that, you I guess. Know what? 
I'll be there to take your snap caster. Yeah. That's fine. Yeah. That's fine. I did just fine without it. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to step out of here and let you guys close this up now. Cool. Bye. Thanks, buddy. All right, so uh, thanks again to Cedric Phillips, our, ch our newest champion. Yeah. Uh, so that's going to bring us to a close here. Absolutely. Uh, thanks to everyone. Like I said, uh, the next draft is tentatively set for April, uh, June 14th. June 14th. We'll uh, update the uh, Facebook group with the official times. Yep. Uh, but and, thanks again, uh, everyone. We're going to send out... Uh, so at the end of this, uh, like in the next couple of days, we'll post a thing that's like, hey, you know, give us some feedback. Uh, anybody who has ideas of how we could be better in the future... Um, and uh, you know, make this thing maybe more fun, more uh, more serious, whatever you think. Ah, uh, oh, I don't know about more serious. Fine, only more fun suggestions. <laughs> only allowed. more fun. If you suggest a serious suggestion, you will be booted fun style. One hundred and ten. Yeah, we'll have fun booting you. That's All not right. true. We won't do that. But we'll uh, love everyone here. Yeah. Thanks again, everybody, for for uh, watching the stream. Uh, I'm Paul Waite. This I'm is Stephen Berkeley. Stephen Berkeley. We'll see you guys next month. All right. Have a good one, guys.